The Aegis of Champions. Over the span of a decade, the finest Dota teams in the world have fought, struggled, pushed beyond all possible limits for even a chance to claim this eternal prize. And throughout, the faithful supporters have followed, eager to bear witness at the International. And like the competitors they cheer for, lay their hearts on the line. When powers last met in Shanghai, reigning champions defended their hold on the Aegis for the first time. They forged a new legacy as the other established powers could only chase behind. But this year, the champions faltered, and the Aegis awaits new contenders on the main stage. As we gather at last in Bucharest, nothing is certain. The wisdom of the old order is now in question. And many await the birth of a new paradigm. Three teams battle for ultimate glory. Only one can seize immortality. Who will emerge victorious? The battle begins. We are live from Bucharest, Romania. It is the final day of the International 10. And in the arena, three teams are nervously biding their time bidding to become legends and raise the ages of champions. My name is Frankie Ward. I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Lacoste Purge. And blink daggering her way onto the desk, we have Effie. Hello. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been hearing all your knowledge on the draft panel all week, so it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Are you excited? Oh, definitely. I'm excited to watch this game in particular, but... It's also weird for me to talk about anything but draft at this point, so it's going to be a good time. We got your back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling you're going to be an absolute natural, although I know you are um, hideously biased towards LGD. Yes. <laughs> yes, but actually the other team that I was rooting for was um, Spirit, so if Spirit can win, which I actually think that they can do here, I'll be fine with whatever outcome. That's like the true test to tell how who you're really biased against when you're like two favorite teams play each other. Then you got it's only in that moment that you really find out. So I can't wait to say what she says, if if Spirit wins. I mean, I think I'll always be LGD biased a little bit. They're just way too good, you know. That's but true. watching Spirit throughout this entire event has been amazing, and it's I feel like they must be so proud of themselves too. Yeah, they just seem. Story. Yeah. They just seem like a bunch of good dudes, you know, hanging around with each other, having a good time while playing Dota. And they're like comeback story where they are not having a good time during the first day of the group stage and then making a huge comeback uh, with uh, like everything they've been doing throughout this event. It's just been amazing, you know, with the interviews, with everything. I, I think everyone's kind of rooting for them. Even though you might be a fan of LGD, you might be a fan of Secret, like these new up and coming themes that you always, you know, have a special place in your heart during the tournament. Purge, have you got final day tingles yet? Uh, definitely. I mean, I, I think all these teams have it for sure. Uh, it took me a couple of days to really understand what that word meant, but I'm, I'm here now. I understand it. And I'm excited for all these teams to put out their best. Like they've all shown magic at various stages. Maybe secrets, tingles feel the least confident right now because they kind of got destroyed in their last match more or less. But, um, but yeah, all these teams have great potential. Um, and it's going to be a really good day at Dota. Well, tingles or not, let us know how you guys are feeling using the hashtag TI10. You know we're on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and we really want to hear from you. And if you're not quite sure what to say and how to express yourselves, just watch this recap of all the action from yesterday and I think you're going to have a few words to describe it.
in the pit. Fly, fly, working away at Roche. They have to know about this. Got some buddies helping. This is scary times. They have that rapier done for Emo. A ton of damage ready. Looking for the opening, but DY he gets the ulti off. Now the turn. Doom oh, almost throws it out there. Doesn't get it onto the Lotus Orb, but they have two rounds of it. The Phoenix. Rapier's still there. They're looking for that opening. Try to take him down, but he gets the Evil Scepter afterwards. Control, does he get the angle? They kill the other one. Now the Ori RP. ends up falling. The RP afterwards. Do they have enough? They try and kill them all up, and they will. The Rapier doing way too much damage in this fight from Emo. They I'll have do. no control at all. Bring them all down. Jump in, Kaka breaks it. Now the turn, Fisher out, Doom on to Lesh. Is it gonna be enough though? Wait for him through, Emo wants to get a target for the kill. They get one, no buyback on Ori, and the damage on Avicii, he died. Wait a minute, what? They, they just evaporated. <laughs> no buyback on any of them, huge win for IG. Good game, well played, called. IG top four, they got a date with Spirit. Let's summarize what Ame has buffing him up right now. He has 4k health, by the way. So he has Ancient Granite Golem for the health. He has Bloodlust. He has Wolf Bite. He now has a Christmas tree as a wolf. This is a new tradition that PSG LG is trying to get the Avalanche Talk Mountain. Oh. Gets blown up. Even pops the BKB, but cannot live through that. Merry Christmas, Puppy. Early Merry Christmas for them. Puppy does survive the Onslaught, though. <laughs> That's the Disco Wolf. <laughs> I can't say this game seriously. Gets the Avatar, there's the RP from Zai, but it's more of a defensive maneuver. Two dead for Secret, and no buybacks to work with. The egg is popped. All right, Nisha is able to get that at the very least, but his BKB won't be around for that much longer, and so will his life. Oh, Three dead and only one kill for Secret here. Anyway, doesn't even have to expend the buyback. Gale Force is forcing them back. Wait. All right. They jump in, but they're just immediately retreating here. Matu can't make up his mind. Going for the LC now. Gets four steps again. Matu is going to find the kill, but that's a buyback now for him. Matu able to earn shot to the other side. The splitter on the both of you. Boundless strike. What a god. Jin Q and company just decimating secret now. Over aggressive without the buybacks to work with. And PSG LGD hold. Big time. And yeah. with that victory, PSG LGD is in the grand finals of TI-10. And Secret down into the lower bracket finals to await either Team Spirit or IG. They've they put these BKBs. Exactly, they have their timing here, they want to force a fight. They're gonna get the opening, Kaka jumps in with a center on attack, is gonna just go straight towards JT, in with the BKBs, they're under the time. Oli gets taken out, JT to fall as well. There'll be a buyback from Oli. Flyfly's gonna be the new focus in Collapse, spears it back. Collapse still has the arena to play with if he needs to. Flyfly taken down the ones. Kaka missing the start, arena's out, they've caught the ball, Collapse locks them in. The heels from Mira keeping Collapse alive, the triple kill for Yatoro, all to kill for Yatoro, Emo. Jump over Toronto, Toronto Kennedy's looking for his target, but he gets caught over there, fly, fly! He's into the back lines, he's got the Chrono down onto Yatoro, he needs more damage, for. Oh, is he gonna be able to take Yatoro down? He is, that's the ace, he's gone! A second Chrono, locks the two of them down, Emo's able to wrap him from the side, on to Collapse, he goes, Collapse will drop the two dooms, but Collapse will fall, Static Storm controlling fly, fly, as Yatoro gets out of the second round of the Chrono Sphere, over the one, the leader goes, JT drops the Echo Slam, but they're all falling on IG, it's an on to kill! And you know, before this main event, there had only been four rampages on the TI main stage. It's now six because Yator has two of them. Page and when in doubt, we're just gonna run down mid. This spin. I'm dead. I'm super dead. We didn't want Juggernaut anyway. 
Clear the comms. I'm going to lane. I'm going to lane. DHA, clear, clear the comms. Clear the comms. Clear the comms. You can do this, Brian. Find all you. No, I know I probably lost this. No! Oh! I blame Aiden. Clear the comms, guys. Clear the comms. My word, that show match was one of my favorites I've ever seen in all of esports. But Purge, I, I think that maybe Team Dragon needed a coach. Uh, I don't know if I would have <laughs> helped too much. Uh, it's uh, I, I had a really good time watching it, genuinely. It was really fun to watch everybody play. I just I tweeted about this already. Maybe I'm just salty. I just don't like Dagon's and air damage. It ruins the fun, makes the fun end earlier. And I wanted it to go a little bit longer. So I was sad we didn't get more. Effie, how did you find it? Well, it was a lot of fun. None of not nobody on Team Dragon had played Dota for two weeks. We just hop on. We're playing against five angry Eastern European men with <laughs> five Dagons, and they were. It was just hilarious. We had such a great time, and we we saw them in the lobby afterwards, and they were like, "Haha!" <laughs> I, I have to say, you got us. <laughs> all angry Eastern European men and Dendi, who I have to say is one of the smiliest, <laughs> lovely people I have ever met in esports like he's a champion and yet he is also the most <laughs> humble guy uh, yeah you could ever wish to come across uh, we should look at the brackets though and remind ourselves of the real competition no shade epic so here you can see our 16 teams who fell when and who is still in the running and if we look at the upper bracket lgd already secured their place in the grand final yesterday but the lower bracket still has to play out with our consolidation final between Team Secret and Team Spirit. There's only one place left in that gauntlet against LGD. Lacoste, have you got any uh, psychic senses telling you which way this one is going to go? Uh, we did, you know, have something revealed yesterday at the end of the trailer for Dragon's Blood. At the end it said, uh, you know, that's a lot of freaking dragons. And first we had dragons in the show match, uh, and also Team Spirit, their logo are dragons, so that's five dragons plus their coach dragon silent. So, you know, there might be something happening with that. I love this. So basically you're saying, because of Dota Dragon's Blood Series 2 coming in January, Team Spirit, are of the moment and they're going to have the momentum. Oh yeah, they, they got the buff. Can we can we talk about Marcy really quickly, please? Because I have to say, I was watching this in the interview room, the, the trailer for season two of Dragon's Blood. And firstly, I was freaking out at Lena, partly because we love Lena. Secondly, because the lovely Moxie, I know hopefully she's watching now. Hello, Moxie, good morning to you. I know that you love Lena probably more than anyone else in the entire world. So I know she was screaming. And then when they started playing the Marcy animation, I was like, Oh my God, oh my, oh my God, Marcy's new hero, Marcy's new hero. And Helen, our fabulous translator who's been, you probably would have seen translating for the many Chinese teams here, was just like, what the hell is going on? And I was, I was just a, a very rotund woman screaming. Uh, is anyone else equally excited for, yeah, for Marcy? Yeah, after watching season one, I think the whole community kind of expected <laughs> Marcy because she was a lovely Fine. character in, in season one. And uh, yeah, they, they gave it to us, you know, and uh, everyone's uh, super excited. Uh, during the trailer, we saw Marcy killing the neutral creeps, killing the jungle creeps. So it could be a jungle hero. And she can create light with her hands. That's all we Very know. Very cool. And she punches people. That's that's all we need. Yeah. It would be really cool if she was just a, like, a true carry hero, you know, not a jungle hero. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's the same at this point. Your carry goes jungle. But we haven't had a real carry hero be introduced as a new hero for a while, right? Dawnbreaker. So I mean, she's, she's not a true carry, though. All, you know? all heroes are carries if you want them to yeah, be. Yeah. But... Uh... She, she looks nice. like she's going to be a, a broadly kind of melee hero. She she looks, I mean, obviously, I'm not the expert on this panel. I'm just the one that queues up the videos. But from just the, the animations that we've seen of her, she looks like she is going to be what you're, exactly what you're describing, Effie. I mean, in the anime, she was punching people a lot. And snapping so necks. It's, it's a pretty good bet, I would say. Yeah, yeah. She'll <laughs> buy some damage items, no doubt. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, she's coming. Works. She's coming later this year. Um, yeah, we we absolutely cannot wait to see her. However, while we talk, spoke, spoken about the future, we should revisit the past as we like to do here on the TI panel, because last TI, Topson was in those grand finals, and you can never exactly predict what he's going to do. You just know it's going to be great. So we're going to take a look at one of those moments. <laughs> Thank you. 
The International Grand Finals is a strange place to try unorthodox builds, but that didn't stop Thompson at TI-9. OG versus Team Liquid. Grand Finals, game four. Look at that build by Thompson. Diffusal gyrocopter. Wait, what? Diffusal? It gives you a lot of agility and it gives you ways to run around and chase heroes down, I guess. Uh, it's like it's different. Did you guys talk about that beforehand? Nope. We did not talk about anything that we were buying or doing, uh, more or less. I mean, we had everything that we talked through, but the, uh, the future gyro is not a thing that we ever that ever came up. No, we didn't, no. No, I, I don't think we knew. We didn't practice it a single time. We were in the middle of something. Uh, something was going on in the game. Like, I don't know, we were smoking or something. And then I was like, all right, gyro just, my gyro just got a diffu. I just made a joke out of it. And then we just kept on playing, right? We just trusted him. Hi, diffu. They have no work here. Yeah, it's no mana. Yeah, I rocket at the uh, Omni. See, they have Defo actually. They're gonna remove my mana. Yeah, I can kill. I, I can mana. kill the Wisp. I won't have mana. There we have it. Miracle's mana. It's pretty much entirely gone by Thompson's focus. He'll look for GG. He's trying to roll, but he can't get out. There's no mana. He's dead. OG pushing Liquid back to the base. Mind control out of mana. Thompson with his Diffusal Blade picking them apart. The Diffusal, the diffusal is absolutely working for all their mana. But I don't think anyone would have expected to see Gyro, the deciding game. I mean, I always had a bit of a different view on Gyro. And that game specifically, we were playing against some Bristol Omni. Heroes that are really mana dependent and are really tanky. So like, you know, you buy some mage, what does it do? Not really much. Basically the problem was like, if they run out of mana, their heroes are pretty useless, basically. So I was like, I mean, defu, so like, why not? Just try it. You thought you saw it all in game two, you thought I saw it all in game two, and then GG is gone! OG are your two time TI champions, they've done it for The diff was him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How did he thought about it? Like, I, I, don't I don't know. It's good they want you. He won them the game. Yeah, it's yeah. Well, my mana, Vivi mind. mana, and uh, he burnt. Uh, he just I was so good. The diff was. Yeah, he's playing fast. He's playing fast. One of the two Lebanese, and Fucking pop song. I was not surprised by the diff itself. I was more like very like, wow, he's really good. Like, he's smart kind of thing. Because doing that, it takes a lot of courage. It takes um, creativity. There's just very few players who have an open mind. And Thompson is one of these players. Flopson is like, he's a, a master of uh, weird builds. He thrives in, a, in an area where like, he knows something more than you do. It's really, uh, it's really good to see, like somebody pushing the ideas. I try to not be influenced by like other other players' uh, play style, and I just try to do what I think is the best thing to do instead of doing what they think is the best thing to do. Yeah. Dola again is such a nice game because things come together in a funny way, and this was the perfect item build in the perfect situation. And for Thompson to make that that call, yeah, I mean, it was genius. It was genius. He just felt like buying the food. Honestly, at the end of the day, that's all it is. Just like when you play a lot of Dota and you're in, when you're really good at the game, you have that instinct, you have these ideas, you just got to trust yourself and go with them. It seems to make total sense when you watch that back, why Topson made that decision. So why Purge was it so shocking at the time? Uh, just because um, it's very uncommon for carries to buy like a Diffusal Blade. It's like kind of like a ganking, like I pick off a guy t item. Um, Ursus do buy right now, but Gyrocopter, basically nobody does it except for bad players. But against the heroes he was against, a carry Bristleback. Carry Bristleback is only good if you cast a lot of spells because it gives you bonus damage. And the spells are cheap, but like if his mana goes to zero, he just isn't fast, he doesn't hit hard. He doesn't contest anything. It was just genius in the moment. There's just no one quite like Thompson in this game. And there's no one quite like these two. It is Sir Action Slacks and Casey. Hello, thank you down there, my friends. It is I, Sir Action Slacks and Casey, indeed, here on the grand finals day of the International 10. Oh my goodness, grand finals has come, Casey. It is a day truly steeped in tradition. You know, speaking of tradition, I feel like you've dropped the ball on a couple of those. Okay, such as? Well, like, we always put Myron on camera. Okay, that's easy to fix. Come here. Give me your, give me your thing. All right, no problem. I'll take it. Oh, oh God. Oh. Oh. Look at fuck. There's Myron, our camera guy. Woo! 
I've been, I've been really sore. You know, Casey, uh, when are you coming back? He's dragging me through the ringer. Yeah, I can't believe it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Myron, you're never going back. <laughs> All right, great. All right, tradition. What I have a tradition I would love you guys to see that maybe you haven't seen before. Follow me, Casey. I'm going to show you something a little special back here. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Jesus. If you get close to that thing, I will stop you. All right, come, come. Okay. Come. You're almost there. It's a great tradition we can do. Casey being mirandering on the stage. Great. All right, we're looking right in the back here. Sorry. Hurry now. You see this, Casey? Yeah. That's an empty yep. slot on the back of the Aegis of Immortality. It will be filled by the end of the day. It will be a magical time, and someone will take it home. I cannot wait. Are you excited for Grand Finals, girl? I can't even wait. I keep going back and forth on who I want to win. I think I'm going to be pleased no matter what, but I can't stop thinking about touching the ages. So can I just give it a quick? No, really that's quick. for champions only, Casey. No, you cannot do that. So please stay there. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us here at the International Tent. Stop it! And we will see you very soon. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy the grand finals. Bye! Thank you so much. I'm glad the tradition of showing Myron on camera has been uh, re-established for TI10. Myron, you're an absolute legend, mate. I'll see you on the sidelines later. All right, then. If you would like to sport some fancy TI10 threads, then head to the international.wearenations.com because the secret shop is now open. So get them threads before they are gone. Just like I'm going to get a load of Tsunami and his knowledge before he's gone. Tsunami, what have you got for us this morning? Are you trying to get rid of me, Frankie? Who said that I'm going Never, anywhere? I'm putting you in my suitcase. Okay, perfect. Well, let's go. <laughs> I'm a, I can fit in a carry-on generally. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another exhibition of uh, a little bit of imbalance. I would like to warn any support viewers, this is graphic, graphic content. Viewer discretion is advised. You see a winter wyvern? and then you don't. Yeah, uh, we saw this game won LGD versus Team Secret yesterday, and we were learning a great deal about heroes, items, damage. Uh, we learned that a wolf bitten, double damage tiny, can take a winter wyvern from that to that. First you see her, then you don't. It's, uh, it's concerning, and I'm sure you're wondering, how did we get to this point? Well, there are a variety of reasons, obviously. Wolf Bitten, that's one big buff. Double damage, that's one big buff. But there is some itemization that is also key to making Tiny so popular right now in this tournament. This was LGD's lineup, and there is one item in particular that I find has uh, been quite concerning recently throughout the International, and 7.30 in general. And it's this one right here in the top, the Silver Edge. Not really that popular of an item before now. 7.30 brought some buffs, and I'm sure you're wondering what changed about it. Back in the day, I only got this item whenever I was trying to get a break mechanic on somebody. Now, it's proven to be quite a slot efficient damage item for carries. So, what changed? 7.30 suddenly gave it a Crystallis component instead of an Oblivion Staff. Also made it cheaper as well. And if you know carries, you know that they love slot efficiency items. That's why things like spider legs were so important back in the day before it got nerfed, because you were like, oh, I have a six slot now. I don't need boots anymore. As a result of this change, things have been going up for the Silver Edge. Throughout the DPC season two, the entire season two, upper division and lower division, there were only 33 Silver Edge pickups throughout the entire thing, all regions. That's a 0.35% pickup rate. Meanwhile, at TI-10, one patch later, we already have 134 pickups and a 7.24% pickup rate. It's part of the reason why you're probably seeing a lot of this emote in the chat every single time that you see a Tiny or a Shadow Fiend, Lena, Sven, Slark, CK. It's a little out of control. So I recommend you go into your pubs, start taking advantage of the item now, because chances are it's probably going to get nerfed by the time Marcy comes out. We'll have just to see and find out afterwards. Back to you, Frankie. Oh, all right then. So basically, get Silver Edge while you can. Uh, Effie, you're a fan of this item build? Definitely. Um, when the patch first came out, I think the, the first tournament that happened was ESL 1 Fall, and 
what we expected was generally any hero that filled Silver Edge will be the popular hero. And most teams were actually doing that with Kunko for some reason, right? The first hero that came to mind because he would naturally buy it anyway. And they thought to themselves, okay, he must be broken. And a lot of teams tried him out and I think he lost maybe 10 games in that tournament. So as the meta developed and progressed, people found that it was actually best on carry heroes and heroes like Tiny who can just hit once and do a bajillion damage, right? And I honestly think this is strongest DPS item right now. Any any hero that can build it is the most viable in this patch, with yep. the exception of some support heroes that are viable just because. And it's not just like the that, that burst damage, it's also the fact that it builds into an invis item. So it like lets you fish for kills. You you can like just look for solo kills as a carry. That's always been Shadowblade's strength that you can see them before they see you. It gives you opportunities to have the best possible fight. It's a vision item as well. So it covers both bases. It gives you damage, it gives you burst damage, it gives you escape sometimes, you know, invisibility, invincibility. Um, and then also the, those pickoffs that we see from uh, Tiny's. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. They, you know, said it uh, nicely. Got nothing more to add. You know, maybe play a couple more games uh, before it gets nerfed. That's all, you know. Watch the TI when it ends. Click play Dota and, uh, you know, get a couple of games. I, to go back a bit to Silver Edge, I thought we are going to see a bit more of a Spectre being picked up at the tournament, but I guess the Silver Edge can be built from the multiple cores we see it on the mid lane as you mentioned and the safe lane sometimes even the off laners tend to get it so it's uh, it's very hard to play against spectre in one game i believe there were two silver edges against spectre so kind of yeah. hard yeah spectre looks good in the group stage at various points but it's like more gank heavy and yeah there's just counters it typically loses the lane a bit there's just better heroes it seems like in the patch but it's mm. strong hero don't be mean about spectre because our stats master leah spectre is his favorite character so yeah. We have to be very nice about Spectre because otherwise we won't get no more stats. But we have got a lot of action coming up on the final day of TI-10. So let's take a look at the schedule. We're kicking off with Team Spirit versus Team Secret in our lower bracket final. The winner will go on to face LGD in our grand final. That's going to be a sweet, sweet best of five. But will it be clean? Or will we see some reversals from either of the teams? You're going to have to wait to find out. And also, sandwiched like some lovely quality jam, we are also going to have an all-stars match between those two. Sorry, I know it's hashtag a bit soon, Effie. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be Team Gollum versus uh, the, the Eastern European team, Team Thunderhide, who you saw uh, whooping the dragons on stage last night. I do want to ask your thoughts on Gollum because we've actually, we're familiar with a few players. We've got Sheepo, aka Sheepstick. We've got Blitz as well, I think. Mm. I believe in them. They they came here to play, right? They arrived a few days ago. They're not rusty. They, they've watched us. They've developed the strategies. They're just going to go Dagon, and I, I think they're going to take them. Yeah, I talked to Dendi in the van in the morning when we were coming here, and he said, you know, this second match that they're gonna play looks a bit more rough for them because you know he saw the names he's like man blitz uh, you know it, it's gonna be a rough one for them compared to the previous one you know it was a walk in the park <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> I, it was pretty close to be fair it was like it was. three it lives was. lost for them it was sure, close it was and fun. then uh and then brian got techies Brian got every hero and complained about it. I was like, is this guy random? Like, what's going on? Uh, me and Fog were commenting, you know, while the show match was happening. And uh, that's the thing we noticed. Except when he got, I believe it was Shadow Shaman. And then he was like, wow, man, that, I got Shaman. This, this is a good one. So, yeah, maybe less complaining. That, mm -hmm. That's the strat. And maybe uh, talk a bit more uh, during the game. Because Cinder, and he said, like, two words every 10, 15 minutes. But then he got a hero that he was really happy with, so it's, I think he said three one. words. He got Clockwork, that's like his best hero. Like he's, I've heard him say that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Clock is probably my best hero. He's like master tier. He lived for a long time, he got a lot of kills, but you know, there's only so much he can do when Brian gets techies and instantly dies. You know? <laughs> it sadly wasn't to be, was it? Maybe it was a tactical death, because the mode that they were playing every time they died. They had a lot back. of those, a I'm lot of sure. tactical deaths. <laughs> Did he yeah. plant one mine? I didn't see one mine get played. Depends Guys, kinda... you're, you're talking to Team Dragon, remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, feel free to flame Brian. You're obviously kicking him after this <laughs> no, event. I, we Burn had a lot of fun. It, it was a lot of fun. Um, we just wanted to kind of run at them nonstop. I, I, at some point, I was just placing vision. I was like, why don't we just play on vision? Because there's no way they're warding. And then everyone was like, no, well, we just have to go. So we just ran into fog and fed over and over. It was so much fun. The final horn has sounded. We are ready 
to get Championship Sunday underway. I'm so excited. We're going to be kicking things off with Team Secret versus Team Spirit. And you know what? It'd be great to compare the two of these teams at this year's TI and also see some of their key numbers as well. Because this is... I like the phrase, I'm always going to use it, a David and Goliath matchup because Team Secret, they literally have a former TI champion on their ranks, Purge. They do. Uh, it's been a couple of years, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but there's there's no way that you can talk about Team Spear without talking about some of their monster success. They've had, you know, three to five month periods where they're just clearly the best team. And it hasn't just happened once. It's happened so many times that it's, it's kind of like the OG effect that you're like, you know, there's a really good chance they're just going to show up and be amazing. This is the first time they've done so good at TI, so certainly they're looking better than normal, but yeah, it's impressive. But their approach to this competitive season is was a bit different than usual. We actually didn't see them play that much, so a lot of people didn't know what to expect out of Secret coming in. And even yesterday when they lost, Poppy looked pretty relaxed. So some of the whispers that I've been hearing are he's got something up his sleeve, he's comfortable, he's confident, but... At the same time, I think that, I don't know if this is going to be a hot take, but I think that even if they do beat Spirit here, I don't think they can beat LGD because I think that the way that LGD have approached the season was kind of the opposite. They just grinded non nonstop and right, different things work for different teams, but it just feels like they're on top of their game and we've seen them and how consistently they've performed. And we have to keep in mind, they've been the most studied team, right? So. So let's take a look at the key numbers then. Now you can see Team Spirit, they have got six combined TIs. That is literally because Miposhka has two and the rest of them have just the one. Secret on the other hand, I mean, it's insane. It's insane the uh, amount of talent and experience on this in this roster that cost. Team Secret? Yes, Team Secret. Yeah, I mean, this has been a very stable team. Uh, they have, uh, you know, Puppy monitoring the situation in the back <laughs> lines, you know, figuring out what's wrong and fixing it. And uh, he always has a couple of aces in his sleep when it's necessary. So if you're Team Spirit, are you are you quaking in your little booties right now? Effie's shaking her head. No, no absolutely not. not. They are not afraid. They are so confident. Like, the run that they've had, cannot be anything but that, right? I feel like they've hit their stride and they're gonna go into this thinking that they're going to win. All right then. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are just two more series before the ages is lifted and both of these teams want to make it through to that grand final, Team Spirit and Team Secret. <laughs> Team Spirit have continued to defy expectations since a difficult first day of the group stage, powering past more experienced teams with their natural lethal synergy and lightning fast mechanical skill. They thrive in dangerous situations and play without fear. But can they keep their fairy tale run going all the way to the grand finals? It is the moment of truth for the boys from Eastern Europe. And here's... Secret came into this tournament as one of the favorites to lift the Aegis, and you better believe they're ready to meet those expectations. They are led by 10-time TI attendee and former champion Puppy, and they're one of the most dynamic, flexible teams in the world. They are ready for anything, and they're especially ready to win. Can they resist? the weight of expectation dragging them down today? Or will they take their rightful place amongst the legends that have come before them? Well, on the spirit side of things, Captain Maposhka there is ready to take his team 
into the draft. But before we talk about Team Spirit, let's hear from them. Наверное, те, кто говорят, что, ну, точнее, фразы типа, что люди начинают играть в интернешнл, это просто можно ее переформулировать, как люди начинают играть эмоциями. Типа они не особо стараются уже как-то разумно думать, там, рассчитывать и логически что-то продумать. Они больше на эмоции начинают ну, играть на эмоциях, типа как-то плюс-минус на автомате, потому что ну, какое-то волнение, давление, оно все равно всегда присутствует. И люди, которые не у которых не получается с этим хорошо справиться, они на это сильно отвлекаются, и их как бы часть разума ну, затмита, скажем так, и у них не получается а, много времени уделять игре, и, и как-то в целом просто мысли не складываются, и, соответственно, вот. Короче, как мне кажется, International — это просто тот турнир, где, где максимально сложно становится сдерживать свои эмоции. Вот. И чем больше ты в этом плане развит, чем, чем, чем лучше в плане контроля своих чувств, эмоций и все такое, тем лучше ты будешь играть. Вот. Если ты сможешь во время игры не просто там типа да-да-да, го-го-го, давай это, а говорить типа про, ну, про себя, что типа что я должен сделать, кого там прыгнуть, кого убить, кто меня, меня может убить, как мне действовать в драке и прочее. Если вот такие вещи получается проговаривать, а это вот на таких турнирах вообще порой не просто, то я думаю, вот такие вот люди, они и будут добиваться больших результатов на таких турнирах. It's interesting hearing Mapushka talk about emotions there because yesterday talking to Mira in the post-game interview, I asked about how they reacted to the Yutoro Rampage, his second of the entire tournament. And Mira said that basically they were all celebrating and Mapushka said, guys, guys, we still haven't won yet. And I think that's one of the things about Mapushka that people don't realize. It's obviously not just about what he's bringing to the field. It's also the fact that he's got his a wiser, mature head on his shoulders. You could say he's 24. I mean, their youngest player, Yatoro, is just 18 years old. And, and he's leading them so, so well, way beyond expectations. However, I do want to talk about him, uh, particularly his, his Bane. Uh, oh, we're gonna, you know what? We've got Yatoro on screen. He's shaved his head off. We'll talk about Maposhka in a bit. We've got Yatoro here. He has played 19 different heroes here at TI. 12 unique heroes in the 12 main event games. This is insane, uh, particularly the Drow Ranger perch. Yeah, it uh, looked a little bit weak in early stages of the game, as Drow Ranger typically does, but in later stages, she can be really effective due to cutting through base armor, kind of similar to that ET effect. And Yutaro's clearly been the most impressive, like two rampages at main stage when there's only been four in history ever. He's got like a one out of six chance of getting a rampage. And when you get a rampage, kill the whole team, that's that's a lot of gold advantage. Normally you don't see teams win fights that soundly. So he's been playing great. And I'm wondering, is this man out draftable? Well, we're soon going to find out because we're heading to the draft panel momentarily as we get this underway. Team Spirit versus Team Secret. Game one. Welcome to the first draft of the day. It's Team Spirit versus Team Secret. We have a angel lineup here of Jenkins, BSJ, and Ava Plus to analyze this draft. How are you, my gentlemen? Great. Fantastic. Great. Now we have a draft, but before we get into it, I want to ask for expectations from this game. BSJ. High tempo on both sides. That's what I'm looking for. Low cooldown, all run at you, brawl. I think uh, the only longest cooldown we'll see here is Tidehunter, potentially. That was Jenkins' courageous pick. Going I believe this. Tidehunter will receive a pick or a ban, and if Team Secret don't ban it, it will be Spirit's first choice. Okay. What about because Mars? Because of Collapse? No. Nope. Yep, because of Collapse. It's their favorite guy. I know people like to see Collapse on something that's cooler, something Mars? that's more high skill, let's say, but it's been, a, it's been a classic for them throughout this tournament. They've kind of... Uh, rested their hopes and dreams on the shoulders of this Tidehunter, and it's worked out for them. Uh, but so has the Mars, uh, the collapsed Mars with the armlet, with the hitting the spears, now Blink Dagger, that looked really great as well. 
With viewers that have missed other, other days, haven't seen the grace of Tidehunter, BSJ, can you tell us why he's such a great hero? Uh, team fight always comes into play at TI, and Tidehunter's just the easiest hero to execute. Mm -hmm. The Kraken Shell makes it almost impossible to burst you down. We're seeing specific lineups and specific combos that are crafted just to remove that. And yesterday we saw like a Silver Edge Tiny, we've seen that deal with it. We've seen Disruptors, Dooms, uh, PA got picked exclusively for the fan of knives ag shard purchase that team uh, spirit did that was a way they bursted down the tide just a crucial hero in this meta that simplifies your game plan and there's another hero that we've been seeing a lot magnus yeah this is a great one uh we've talked about it a lot we've talked about it with seb and all the pro players that have been here and the the, the biggest theory around magnus is that during ti Team fighting is incredibly important. BKBs are incredibly important. Magnus is great at dealing with both of those things because of reverse polarity. But probably the biggest thing is the fact that if you have this kind of structured, uh, you know, you're, so you're standing on a high ground, you're just like playing with this formation, Magnus just breaks it. He just goes in there, tosses you up with his horn, and then skewers you 20,000 feet away. And it's like, good luck holding a formation when you're in the enemy fountain. That's true. We heard the counter to Thank it you, is uh, Yule Scepters as well as Force Staffs. That's the way, if you Force Staff or any Force movement on Mag when he skewers, it will cancel the skewer effectively and whoever's getting skewered will stop moving. So we have to keep an eye out for that as a way for Team Spirit to prevent what we saw happen to OG where Sumail started sieging the Tier 3s and suddenly he's in the fountain. Ended up in the fountain. Yeah, that was, that was rough. Uh, the cooldown, the cooldown is really like the big thing for me where Mag is in and out and in and out. It's like, so you, you start off this chaotic fight by breaking the formation and then because your formation is broken, it's like, it gives the Mag Magnus a second opportunity to skewer you into an even worse position because this chaotic fight has started and Magnus just loves chaos. Near uh, Team Spirit goes for an emblematic combo, Io plus Mars. Purge made a whole segment about these combo, uh, how strong it is, how they win lanes with this. And it's not going to be Jenkins type, but it's going to actually be the, the Mars instead. Yeah, they, the nice thing about the Io is most of the offlaners that have been building Armlet have some sort of innate sustain, uh, such as the Legion Commander. Uh -huh. And it didn't really seem like a viable build on Mars. The reason why Armlet's being picked up so much is it's been buffed several times. It's 75 damage for any strength hero when it's activated, and the IO allows the Mars to actually use it, and they've been putting a lot of pressure on the tower uh, with that, taking it really early, something Mars doesn't always do. And you also have a built-in crit with your, with your bulwark, so, or uh, God's Rebuke, excuse yeah. me. And the, the like infinite sustain, too, with Mars, I, I remember, like, the, one of the best ways to win a lane on Mars, and the reason that, like, at, at least when he was first added to the game, people were like, this hero doesn't lose lanes, even to get something that's a lane dominator like Elder Titan, like Slark, like Ursa, these sorts of heroes that just punch you and lane dominate you. You have, you have two nukes. You just spam your nukes with regen, and so people were building a bottle back then against these counters, and the IO just makes it so that you don't need any regen. So you've got that combo in the laning stage. It also means the Mars has the mobility so you can build into the armlet. You have the sustain so you can build into the armlet. And what do you want with an IO? You want a hero that can set up a team fight somewhere for you on the other side of the map. So if they pick a carry with this, Mars can set up with his ult into, into Spear, and then IO can relocate the carry in, and all of a sudden you've got this huge disruptive team fight, which IO loves. Yeah, you were, you were mentioning the Tide coming into this series, and the thing about Mars is the way Collapse adapted it is he kind of turns into a Tide. Like, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't rely on the Blink, Surprise, Yule, yeah, like, Spears. He's more of a guy, I'm walking, I dare you to go on me. If you don't go on me, we take control of this area, whether it's Roche or the Triangle. Yeah, you and if you do like go on me, item. yeah, yeah, you just, he just arenas because he's so tanky. And suddenly you're trapped in there with him. So it's like a pseudo stun, more of a crowd control that lasts much longer yeah. than most ultimates. He was being so patient with the Mars ults yesterday, and I was really impressed by that just because I feel like traditionally, and I know it's a relatively new hero, but for the hero's entire existence, it's the initiation. You start with the Mars ult. It's not this thing that you hold off on like the Tidehunter ulti. But that's also how Tide started. Tide was an initiator. You call Tide an initiator these days, you sound like an idiot. It's a counter initiator. You wait for a fight to start, then you hit a big ravage. And so Collapse is kind of doing that with the Mars ulti as well. You know, we've seen actually this transition in a couple other heroes. Legion Commander was in the same pool of by Blink First. People realized Blink First is pretty bad. You need stats. Now we're seeing Armlet Legion. Before we were seeing Pipe as well. So it's... Maybe that's just the best offlaner to play, really. A, a third core, not just someone that can go in and stun someone. Yeah, I think at the very least, 
having that in your toolbox for what you can do on the hero and knowing when you can do yep. it like that. So like you can obviously still play Mars as an initiator. Mm -hmm. Tidehunter as well. We've seen blinks into Ravages on literally just a solo carry. So you're effectively, it's like at that point it's a lion stun. Yep. Which sounds terrible for like a 200 second cooldown ability or whatever. But you need but, to. But sometimes that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And so having these different options available to you is what makes a hero stronger as the game progresses and people get better. Let's talk about a different hero here, the E.T., also a very popular pick. Uh, thoughts on this with the E.T. Magnus? We have seen E.T. kind of carry games with his Empower plus the Cleave talent. Yeah, I think the difference between E.T. and what we saw yesterday when Team Spirit ran Mars I.O. against I.G. was the I.G. had an Abaddon 5, which is a support that to do his job has to be right next to everybody because all of his abilities are really low cast range. So I think the E.T. is not only good for all the reasons E.T. is already really good, yep. but the fact that Mars Arena probably isn't going to trap him. He's not going to get caught if he eventually gets an Ags, gets played as a 4 position ult, maybe. You just ult into it Yeah, well. yeah, you mm -hmm. cast all your spells from outside of it, so it, it shouldn't affect him at all, which makes the pick even better. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but th this is something that maybe this is because I'm like a bad E.T. player, but I, I noticed that people are using the E.T. ult at like max range now, so that that way the moment that splitter hits you, it pops, and so it's catching people. Like, they're using it with setups. Yes. Whereas before, I remember it used to be like, ETs would kind of walk into melee range, and then ult, and then it was this like, slow thing that you had to have set up for. Speaking of setup, th that's a nice. hero. That's crazy. I have, we have not seen this hero much. We have not seen much success on this hero yeah. at all. Only small buffs, like the dual breath, for example, cast point got buffed, now it's harder for Rubik to counter it. The Liquid and Fire also got buffed, though. Yeah, Liquid Fire got Pretty small significantly. This, this was an unplayed hero until now. This is literally just an unplayed hero. During, during the main event. In the main event. It was definitely picked in the group. Oh, yeah, sorry, for, so, sorry for, the, for the last week. So, yeah, during the main event. Okay. Uh, and so... And then there's the Rubik counter. The Rubik counter. And there it is. That's funny. Okay. Yeah, it's such a good hero. To, and another really, like, low-played hero is the, is the Rubik, at least in the main event. And so it's a great hero to steal a bunch of spells from. You've got a stun, you know, if you steal the macro pyre, you've got like the extra range on it, the extra damage on it. You want to steal Ice Rubik. Path though, that's the Ice way. Path is like, yeah, that is the creme de la creme of spells. But Jakiro, I really do think the buff to the, to the Q and it being such a low cast point is a, is a huge, huge upgrade. I remember I talk, talking to like Aoi after the hero got changed and he was like, yeah, I, I think the Jakiro's an offlaner now. Like Jakiro's good enough that you can play it in the offlane. Mage just, Slayer. Just because of that buff. Yeah, Mage Slayer. Honestly, even Dragon Lance or something yeah, like yeah, yeah. that. And the, his, uh, what is the tower damage? Liquid Fire. Liquid Fire is a lot of damage at level one, too. Like, it does a ton now. So you can actually siege with this hero as well from a five position. Yeah, the Storm is necessary for Team Spirit's lineup as the Jakiro, usually they'll pick something like Disruptor or Bane from a Poshka here. But instead, since they don't have as much setup for the relocate, the Mars is more, most likely going to be with the IO for the early portion of the game. You do need a mid laner that's going to be that setup. Storm Spirit's been the best one so far this tournament, I think, especially for Toronto, Tokyo. The Terra Blade, really nice lane matchup against the Mars. Uh, you can eventually tank the spear with your illusions. The spear will do damage to multiple targets, but it won't. It'll only impale. It won't impale yeah. yeah, one target. So you can tank those in the early laning stage, and then also. Uh, Terra Blade's like a pseudo range hero in the laning phase, so ET front lines for you. You'll be able to hit a lot more on the Metamorphosis. But they're super greedy on Team Spirit. Uh, and, or sorry, on Team Secret. You have Magnus Terra Blade. That's, uh, that's a pretty weak mid game. Big damage, though. Huge yeah. late game damage. Like borderline unbeatable just because of the, the Empower buff on top of the TB base damage. I actually don't mind the idea on Spirit of sending the Jakiro against the ETTB lane. I, I feel like that would do extremely well. It's weird because it breaks up the IO Mars combination, but an ET is never gonna run at you if he has a Jakiro slow on him. And the Terra Blade, this is a hero that has really high armor and also wants to right click you. So you've got the attack slow with the Jakiro spell as well as magic, tons of magic damage, right? So maybe they'll do that, but we've thought that before with some IO combination and then Teams just don't like to break up the IO from, from whatever the pairing is, whether it's Slaughter or Mars. Spirit especially. I want to point out though that this is a TB that's picked into a Storm and a Jakiro, so a fair amount of magical damage in that mid game. Not too difficult to burst them down. And this could play into BSJ's uh, point about it being quite greedy. There's going to be a power spike for Team Spirit that's kind of hard to deal with for Secret right now. Yeah, I'm wondering about their carry matchup because Terrorblade ET covers a lot of heroes. Usually you want like a melee a strength hero that buys armor against ET because he only removes base armor, but then those heroes like Sven 
are pretty bad versus the Terrorblade in a 1v1. Really? Because yeah. uh, some teams had the theory months ago that was the Sven was actually the... Uh, that was the patch that Sven was like completely, yeah, that's true. completely that's true. busted as well. Uh, Ur Ursa's banned, Monkey King's banned, Tiny's like Troll. banned. Troll looks like the best hero for me from Team Spirit. Best Tro left. Troll Jakiro sounds insanely strong against like literally anything you can put in that's the true. offlane. Like you would basically need a purge hero, but it's Team Secret's pick, so that's not you're not going to get that unless you're preempting the troll. They Which, might go for the Quap. Oh no, they banned the Quap. Have a Lina, something to lane dominate the storm. Death yeah, Prophet. That makes sense. Oh, okay, spirit. of course. So they go for like the game counter then. Like that's fine in the lane because you just nuke it out. And then the game counter is that you have the Yule Scepter to catch the storm. And there's going to be a Spectre then. Uh, uh, it does fulfill a couple of the things you're talking about. Not the most edgy carry per se. The armor is not what makes Spectre strong. She still has her passives. And even though her core to core against TB is bad, she can avoid him in fights. That's they also the have a lot of jump and magic burst yeah. on the side of Team Spirit. And it wasn't if it's not quite enough to bring down a Terror Blade, suddenly he's going to get that Sunder, turn the entire fight. The Spectre offers that little bit of extra damage with the Ags that now cast the Dagger, so it's an extra 300 damage yeah. coming in from the Spectre. They, they rely completely on map control in Team Spirit, and it's going to come down to Collapse because Storm, Spectre, super greedy in the laning stage. And we saw yesterday that Collapse was able to get them through that early to mid-game, so that's the hero I'm looking out for here. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think Spirit wants to make sure that they're shutting down the Terror Blade because they have good ways of mitigating the Terror Blade and, you know, not taking damage from him, like the Mars Bulwark, for example. But they don't have great ways of killing him once he gets, like, the Satanic Scotty sort of thing. So, like, once he has those items, I could see Team Secret completely popping off. But Team, Team Spirit wants to pop off in the laning stage and with the rotations around the map, as opposed to just, like, in team fights. So there's going to be a small uh, window opportunity for Spirit to be able to pop off and destroy Secret before they can get on. Definitely, them. and Secret just wants to farm their own it's side like of the map. It's like 25 to 40 minutes is all Spirit, and I think as you go on from there, Team Secret will take it. I don't even need to send it to you for the last word. Now I got it already for well, free. Get, there you go, easy. Uh, that's incredible. All right, so what uh, can Secret do to prevent this early pop-off? What's their best bet? Uh, I really do think it's holding their tier one towers. You got Mag, okay. you got Terrorblade. You just need space on the map to farm. But we saw the collapse armlet Mars. We saw we have the Jakiro coming into play. I think if you can pick on Toronto, Tokyo, and perhaps Yatoro, uh, it'll make them have to commit resources on the time to, on the side of Team Spirit in order to protect them rather than be on the aggressive. And I think that's the best way they can do it. A lot's riding on Nisha because he's like the only active hero in the early game. Even the supports are not so active. They're good plus ones. Like they're good at running at places with Nisha, but Nisha is like the, the absolute baseline for everything Team Seeker wants to do. And, and now we're gonna send it not to the last word, but it is gonna be to Silent regardless, as Sir Action Slacks is standing there with Team Spirit's coach to tell us about their draft. Thank you so much. Sir, uh, Rubik picked up on the other team. What a Yap Source favorite, a traditional counter to Jakiro. Do you feel like uh, you've done a good enough job preventing him from winning? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, I'm still satisfied with our draft and I think we can play this game. Were you surprised that they let Collapse, the Giga Chad, get his favorite Mars? Oh, I think it's a passive from Pope. You know, he always can give you hero, your best hero and try to counter him. Sometimes he's passive procs and he <laughs> wins, maybe, maybe not. Well, maybe. We'll see, my friend. Best of luck in game one and uh, we'll jump right into it. It was Cinderin and Sunspan. Thank you very much. Slack Secret versus Team Spirit. Game one of this lower bracket finals of TI-10. Cinderin, welcome. Surprised to see you here. Yeah, um, just a uh, surprise to see you here, if not more. But here we are. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this will be a great series, of course. Uh, so much on the line here for both teams. And I think, you know, we like to talk a little bit about the mental game in situations like this. I think for, for Team Spirit, you've kind of exceeded expectations. Teams like those are really dangerous in this position because Team Spirit kind of, in a way, have nothing to lose, right? I think going into the tournament, if you ask them, hey, would you guys want to take third place and not play, they would have said yes in a heartbeat, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. the field is so competitive and getting that position for their team was already incredible. So now everything is just icing on top and they're just go going further and further in this. It's reminding you of certain certain runs from T previous events at TI, right? Like TI6 with DC, with TI8 OG going the whole way. You know, teams that people didn't necessarily think were even gonna make top eight, right? Yeah. And I suddenly mean, you find yourself in this position. To give Team Spirit some credit, like DC, we were picked to be like 12th range OG mm -hmm. by some people were picked to be last 
Spirit, uh, people thought they would be in the middle, probably, like eight. I think I yeah. picked them sixth coming in because I really like the way that they play. But yeah, you're right. Either way, still the underdog mentality. I'm sure they have that chip on their shoulder. But kind of what the panel has talked about so much before, that such a young lineup overall yeah. that just makes things like really exciting for the future for the Eastern European region in general. And then on the other side, you have Team Secret who have kind of, you know, TI has almost been a kryptonite in a way. And it's weird to say because this team has had so many land victories across the previous years and have just looked dominant year after year in so many tournaments, and TI has just not been it. Yeah. And I think, I'm trying to remember, I think at TI 6 they got 13 to 16, and then they've like taken one step up the ladder every year, and now it looks like finally it could be within reach. And that can be both, you know, uh, can both put some pressure on you that you feel so close, and at the same time probably also a bit of relief that Finally this year for Puppy, things are just clicking with the squad. Yeah. And they're looking like a, a very hot contender for even the whole thing. Got to get through Team Spirit first. And Absolutely. Spirit, like they talked about, have some of their trademark heroes here. We've got Collapse on the Mars. I believe I saw a stat the other day uh, from the Haas on Twitter that Mars... Collapse was 6-2 and two with Mars. And every other player at TI combined was 7 and 25 outside of him. It so doesn't surprise me. We've talked about pretty how incredible. This, this hero has just fallen off so much since the Animator, except for Team Spirit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he does. I mean, buys the armor. Well, right now he dies. From Matu in that disgusting form of his, and the right clicks from Puppy. It looks like it's going to be enough. So first blood goes the way of Team Secret. Yeah, and taking full advantage of hitting level two first here with the ET and Terrible combination, getting the reflection as well as Metamorphosis running. And they will take that. It's a nice start for Puppy. In the mid lane, Nisha is going up against Toronto Tokyo, Void Spirit against Storm. I think this is a pretty even lane. Um, going Nisha quite is well doing. For Nisha, though. Nisha has been looking incredible in lane. He was also doing great against Nothing to Say in the series yesterday in the upper bracket. Um, yeah, the upper bracket finals. Um, I, I think in many ways, maybe together with Somnus, I think perhaps the standout just 1v1 mid laner of the tournament. Somnus obviously running some incredible stats, but unfortunately their team did not place very well. Yeah. Um, and then finally top lane, Zai and Yap. Sorry, this is a classic lane for Secret to play, the Rubik plus one, where both heroes have some sort of wave clear. Uh, a lot of the time what they're going to do is just push in the wave with Shockwave as well as Fate Bolt, so that they can try to pull hard camp and prevent the enemy team from pulling small. Obviously both camps have been blocked this far. Uh, but Mipushka this time is going to leave the big... Wait. Oh, it's still inside the camp. Okay, it looked like it wasn't, but it's not going to spawn either. Well, how about the lineups as a whole? Because Team Secret, they have they have a lot of team fight. Obviously, the RP, the Earth Splitter, they mm -hmm. have a good Roche. Uh, well, not to kill it as fast as some other lineups that we've seen, but good counter Roche potential, at the very least, with a lot of these heroes. Yeah, neither team is very good at killing it. Yeah, yeah so that, their, their lineup is uh, is more teamfight centric, whereas uh, I would say Spirit's lineup can do it to an extent with Arena and Jakiro, as well as Haunt. Uh, but their lineup really thrives on more skirmish style play, on splitting the map, and then finding picks, because they do have relocate, Haunt, as well as Storm. It doesn't get yeah. much more global than this. Bottom lane. Yep, telekinesis into the skewer, back into the fray for the tier one tower. Makoshka taking heavy damage. Shockwave keeps him at bay again. Yapsor and Zai not able to get a kill there, but you can see that Matu actually finishes off Collapse again. It's going to be a trade, though. They yep. actually kill each other, technically speaking. All right, Collapse got the kill first, so I think he's going to be pretty happy with this. Yeah, wow. Okay. Uh, getting some more experience, but Matsu is a full level ahead of him as it stands right now, and Puppy as well as Mira have the same experience, so basically a full level advantage for Team Secret in that bottom lane. Um, one of the worst starts I think we've seen in a while for Collapse on that Mars. Yeah. So, got to be slightly concerning for him. Keep in mind this matchup in the lane, by the way, the Mars against Terrible, it's pretty interesting because Mars, you know, you have one magic damage component in the spear, but everything else you have is physical, and Terrible has so much armor. So... Can definitely stand his ground a lot of the time and fight, and Puppy is just, you know, being a bully as well. In terms of, like, the mid to late game scope here, Cinder, and how do you like Spectre in a game like this? Obviously, the hero comes online a lot faster than, you know, for people that haven't watched a ton of Dota in the last couple months. Uh, historically speaking, more so a late game hero, but now you kind of get ramped up a little bit sooner thanks to the Ags that I would assume he goes for. I think it has okay conditions here. I wouldn't say it's an outstanding Spectre game. Uh, I think the primary purpose for a large part of the game will be to haunt, to give Storm Vision to jump and kill Rubik or ET. Uh, I think that's how Spirit opened up the fights. Uh, in terms of just uh, a flat-out team fight structure, uh, 
Spectre doesn't fare very well against Terrorblade, but that's not what Team Spirit are going for anyway. Bottom line. Yeah, Mikoshka, again. Mikoshka, Astral Step's going to connect from Nisha. That's going to be an easy kill for Secret here. It's bot lane, Mira is still connected with Collapse, who, like you said, off to a little bit slower start. But, I mean, if this was any other Marge, like, oh, they're actually doing pretty good. Not too bad. <laughs> Considering this hero is <laughs> just so unpicked. Or I guess just the win rate more specifically. Not doing too hot. Uh, Matu, 28 and 12 in terms of his actual CS, and then 30 and 8 for Yotaro. What are the chances, Syndrome, of another Rampage <laughs> for Yotaro in this series? They're not good, <laughs> I'll say. Um, I think right, based Spirit's on his percentage, winning, pretty team, good, right? Team Spirit's chances of winning the game are good, but uh, yeah, Spectre finding a Rampage in a game like this would be pretty unexpected. There's just... It, it, it's That's more not a word, this. by the way. Puppy getting harassed here. Good effort, though, Cinderin. I just had to correct you. What, what's that? Unexpectable is not a word. It is now. Okay. Teaching English to the masses, Cinderin. There's nothing Future better teacher. than inventing words. I mean, I agree with that. Yotaro is going to get run a bit at here by Zai and Yapsor, but obviously has already got that level six. So, yeah, he's doing great in the safe lane. He has very good conditions here. Um, I think Secret aren't too phased by it, though, because they've also, you know, got what they wanted. Magnus is getting a good start, almost has the Helm of the Dominator here, does Zai. And, of course, their safe lane counterpart doing well, too. And let's not forget Empower um, for a hero like Terrorblade. Yes, he goes into ranged form when he pops Metamorphosis, but he also has really high base damage. And that means that Empower percentage-based improvement is pretty significant for Terrorblade's ability to win fights. I mean, it's still obviously really good when he's in melee form too, right? You don't have to pop yeah, meta or anything like sure. that. You actually farm at a higher clip than you're used to as a Terrorblade. As Nisha has the haste room bottled up right now. Toronto Toki just trying to push out the wave. And, well, we can see Electric Vortex. Toronto Toki pressuring a bit, but doesn't have any backup, so likely not to go for a kill here. We'll be getting a D ward, though. And top net worth Nisha, like you said, off to a really good start for him. Uh, 600 difference between the mids in terms of just the gold discrepancy here. Yep, that kill he found earlier onto the Jakiro definitely adds up. Their CS is roughly the same, but Nisha does have 10 more denies than Toronto Tokyo, so a bit of a level advantage. Aiming for the bottom rune here. Yapsar's come over as well, but Toronto Tokyo still got the rune, actually. Nisha a little bit off the mark with the timing on his Aether Remnant. He's going to be very happy with that on the Storm. Unfortunately for him, it was an Illusion rune, so not exactly what you want. You would have loved either a Regen or an Arcane rune, you would imagine, there. Or even a Haste early yeah. on could be pretty nice for Storm. Now, Double Nisha. damage, basically anything else. <laughs> true, true. Nisha working on a Yule Scepter for himself. Uh, I assume that Toronto Tokyo will end up going for Orchid, but obviously the Yules is going to end up countering that to some degree. Yeah. All right, the, when you can get a Yules and it has multi-purpose, not just for the Dispel, but setting up your own Aether Remnant, just such a good pick up this game. It's a feel-good item for, for Void Spirit, for sure. Little detail there from Nisha, by the way. I think he's trying to fish for a ward mid. Wonder if he's going to find the one that was placed on his half as a result of that. Storm is... Perhaps going to make a move. Toronto Tokyo will be farming up the stacks for now. Has the potential to make a move top if he wants to. Yeah, that is a pretty juicy stack oh, to be good. taken here. And Toronto Tokyo looks like he's going to get most of it, if not all. No pressure being set here from Team Secret as of yet. Although they do have a two-man smoke on the way towards the top lane here. As Nisha ready to try to get some kills now. Starting to ramp things up. Mira, not quite level 6, so can't relocate top as of yet. And we'll see what the tower defense is going to be for Team Spirit, if any. Because we've seen some teams just give this up super early. We've seen a lot of contests, more so than in previous patches. Zai is kind of baiting Yatoro here to try to go for his creep so that they can get the opener. Yeah, but we'll be spotted out by the illusion here. I think both Yapsor as well as Nisha. Nisha might not have been envisioned yet. He's going to try for it. Yeah, Yataro doesn't have mana. He has the wand to be able to haunt successfully. If he really wants to. Is Nisha, all right. There comes Mira. Hooked up with Toronto Tokyo, but Nisha needs to get out. It looks like he'll do so successfully, at least for now. Yataro continuing to pursue, though. Very hard to catch up to Nisha for sure here. As Toronto Tokyo 
as the horsey, ready to go. Double damage bottled as well, so we'll see if he wants to get active. Yeah, that was addition. a multi-purpose mid TP. That was oh, pretty nice. We have a haunt coming out. Mira looks like he's going to get dropped by by Nisha. Yataro in the meantime taking out Puppy. So it's a one for one on just the supports. Poposhka in the trees will likely fall next. Although Yataro has something to say about that potentially. Coming in from the downside of the trees here. Still going for that Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, Toronto Zai Tokyo might want to do something here with the DD. Fine. Yeah, skewer out to safety for Toronto Tokyo with that double damage. RP on the two! Beautifully timed from Zai into the fade. Well, that is going to be a super easy kill in Toronto Tokyo. And now Yataro not reciprocating the high five at all. Trying to TP out. Oh, oh my god, how much HP did he have? Barely gets out. But still, secret. Obviously would have loved to get that kill. Either way, we'll... Get the Storm Spirit and probably the Tier 1 Tower to boot. Great play from Zai, though. I don't think Toronto Tokyo was expecting that RP to come in instantaneously like that, but that just sets things up. You had Yap Sword sitting out in the tree line on the left for the extra damage from Fade Bolt, and this is something that Secret have played a hundred thousand times. The Rubik 4. You can always count on Yap Sword to be involved at the right place at the right time. And this is going to put Secret in a very good position right now. 2k gold lead. And effectively not allowing Team Spirit to do what their lineup likes to do at this point in time in the game, right? Like, you ideally want to find some sort of opening with the Storm and then haunt onto it and find these picks, but mm -hmm. Secret were kind of dictating the pace. So Storm TP'd mid to defend the tower and take the DD rune. Okay, and Zai. Zai is going to skewer to safety for now. Is Nisha coming from the backside? Looks like they're just going to focus on Maposhka to start things out. Going to be a relatively easy one for Secret to clean up. Mira attempting to TP out, will not be able to do so. Toronto, Tokyo on the run with very little mana to speak of. So two for nothing here for Secret. But Toronto, Tokyo at the very least gets a regen for his troubles. And it collapsed, as we can see. It has his armlet in toast and <laughs> just buys armlet on every single hero, it feels like. And, <laughs> on I mean, every he, single Mars. Every single Mars. No, he buys it. Oh, that was you that bought on Storm Spirit. My bad, buddy. <laughs> Hey, that was ARDM. Yeah, true, true. I started building a Midas, and I was like, wait, this game is way too short for Midas. What can I use my gloves of haste for? Yeah. Uh, that Good was choice. a mistake. I should have just bought Dagon like everyone else. Tryhards in a show match. Well, whatever. Yeah, Dagon tryhard, no doubt. It's very good in ARDM in a show so match, I'm believe told. it or not. All right, Yataro has At least has I didn't buy BKB like solo. Okay, let's move on. That's true. That was pretty bad manners for sure. As Collapse in the mid lane now. And working toward... I mean, he went for Blink Dagger pretty late, I want to say, in the last series, but uh, prioritizing a little bit earlier than what we're used to seeing on him. Uh, but still quite a ways away from finishing it, so... But once yeah. they get that, they'll have their initiation in, in addition to the Haunt and Zip-In from Storm. It, it, 1,500 gold is quite a long time in a game like this, though. Um, yeah. Secret doing such a good job at just pushing out the waves and controlling the flow of the game. Both Matsu and Nisha are top net worse. Obviously, the Terrorblade has been largely uncontested, primarily because of, first of all, all the action in the top half of the map, but also he pushed that mid tower earlier with himself and um, in Metamorphosis form, forced Storm to TP there to defend that tower and take the DD rune, then he backed off and farmed. And eventually, that led to Secret winning the fight top because Storm couldn't connect, and that in turn builds up more space for himself later to just be greedy in the jungle. So, like, just uh, kind of a domino effect that he started himself with a push in mid can make a huge difference. Nice gear from Zai that just barely yeah. getting out. Oh, the zip is stolen from Yapsor. Very annoying to deal with as a storm spirit. Nisha, he's going to get initiated by Toronto. Tokyo, though, here comes Zai to try to help out. RP is being faked out here. Toronto Tokyo basically uses most of his mana to try to zip away there. Ends up being somewhat of a stalemate here, but Team Secret still with a pretty decent lead at the 14 and a half minute mark. Yeah, it, it genuinely just feels like Spirit really wants to kill someone and they just can't. The, the heroes that are being offered up to them, they don't have the most damage in their lineup if they don't all connect together. Yeah. Uh, and Secret are very tight-knit when it comes to these team moves that they're making. There's always the protection of the Rubik, of the ET, of the Mag. And it's only going to get easier for them when Zai approaches this Blink Dagger very soon, so... Looking very good for them. Interestingly, for Spirit, top net worth actually currently the oh, Mars, but that might change might be now. in some trouble here. Telekinesis in the midst of all this chaos. He's trying to run away, but... Matu is able to get credit for that kill in the Tier 1 tower as well. So Team Secret 
Off to quite the good start here. And like you said, Zai not too far away from Blink Dagger. Collapse still like 11, 1200 away from finishing his. And I feel like the Blink Dagger on Collapse plus the Ags on Yataro are the two big, like, that's the power spike that you're probably going to try to get a little bit more aggressive from uh, from Team Spirit's perspective. For sure. Uh, my concern for them right now is we've seen a similar strategy to this being run by IG uh, earlier in the tournament. Um, I don't remember who was on the receiving end of a game where they absolutely stomped, but I don't know how well this dire strategy is going to fare this from this far behind. Like if you're if you're basing your strategy off finding these picks and playing quick, and you have two kills after 16 minutes, what could eventually end up happening is that Secret just find their item timings, group up, take Roche, and then push high ground, and you don't get right. to play that separation fight whatsoever. Um, Storm Spirit looking for the bottom rune will not get it. It was a region top for Nisha, so losing the flip there. Let me ask you this question. Who do you think there's more pressure on, team-wise? Secret. Secret have all these high expectations. They have a lot of veteran players. Team Spirit's just like kind of YOLOing it <laughs> to some degree. That's kind of how the DC mentality was mm -hmm. at TI6, so I can definitely uh, relate to some degree. I, I, and I, I think that's a good thing for Spirit, like that they can just, yeah. you know, they can play free. Uh, like we talked about earlier, they've exceeded expectations already, so now, you know, everything is just a bonus and they're just enjoying the ride and doing, like, playing amazingly good Dota for the last couple of days of the main event here. And they're... I, I feel like the thing about this game for them is they have not had this bad of a start in a single game of the main stage, I think. So, it you know, you've got like yeah. to try to find some sort of recovery path. When your team has been used to just having the momentum in all of these games, you're, like, doing great, you're feeling yourselves, you're making moves, they're just working, and now you're hitting, like, a brick wall, basically, 17 minutes in. And here's the play from Secret we were talking about, right? Just group up and take yeah. Roche. Like, what a... What are uh, Team Spirit really going to do about this? Nothing, it seems. They probably know it's happening, but yeah. aren't interested. I mean, this in is a pretty slow Roche, based on what <laughs> some of the Roches we've seen at this yeah. tournament. But regardless, Secret will get it successfully. So that is an Aegis for Matu, who's closing in on, I believe, his Scotty here pretty soon. Yeah. Just a point booster away, essentially. I think they might go high ground with that. No joke. I, if he gets Scotty and they just go push top, perhaps they can look to end the game. They don't have to, obviously. It's not a requirement for their lineup, but. Uh, they do hit a very, very strong timing soon. Zai with the dagger complete. Maybe you wait for the Ags on Void Spirit, but that might not overlap with your Aegis timer anymore then, because he's like 2,000 away. Uh, we'll see what the choice is for Secret, but for now, it's still just very calm. Push hey, Gen Nisha. Haste goes to Toronto, Tokyo. He does have the Kai Assange, so... Okay. And they do have the Blink on and Collapse, blink on and Mars. they have the Ags yeah. on Yatara. So. They want to do something here for sure, and there's the smoke. Maybe they'll try to find Matsu. He will have the Aegis, though. And a Zai Magnus covering on the respawn. Yep, wrapping around the Roche pit. Looks like Zai might be the Sounds first like one they Christmas run song. into. We're not going to do more Christmas songs here. Zai able to blink out to safety, along with the rest of his team. The zipping from Toronto Toki is basically out of mana. Now Zai gets the skewer off, but it's on an illusion. In the meantime, a post game gets picked off. There's the big arena coming through with the Earth Splitter to follow Matu. Trying to go on top of Collapse will finally bring him down. The buyback now to the Jakiro. He's going to TP into the outpost. Matu still has that Aegis online. Looks like they're finally going to expand it here pretty soon. Toronto, Tokyo might be happy with that engagement as Nisha. Looks like he's going to walk away safely. Matu still has that. Or use that Aegis. I mean, not Nisha in the meantime. Looks like they'll pick off Yataro. That is a really big kill. Just away from his entire team here. I thought they were going to try to go for the Aegis and then just back off, but couldn't cleanly do so. Yeah, they couldn't get Spectre out of that trouble in the mid lane. And yeah, effectively what Yatoro ended up doing there was keep the Rubik and, and Elder Titan at bay for most of the fight, right? But oh, Toronto, Tokyo. Straight in on Nisha. There's yeah, a good spear. Nice spear from Collapse. Can they actually bring out Nisha? He gets off the Dissimilate Nisha. Another Aether Remnant buying him some time. But Toronto, Tokyo is going to get Yules immediately and basically out of mana to speak of. And Nisha... Astro Step not for another four seconds. Actually trying to get aggressive here. Can they go back in? Zai gets in with the huge skewer out to two, and they bring them down instantly. Team Secret clicking on all cylinders here. I think it's called firing. Clicking with... Clicking on all clicking, their mouse buttons. All clicking two of them. every button on their keyboard as Matu <laughs> trying to go for this tier two tower here. Top, Cinderin. 
Uh, it's gonna get glyphed off, though. I, I don't think they're gonna get it this time around. And yeah, even though Team Spirit do lose a lot in this engagement overall, which is a very extended one of the kind, at the very least, the Aegis is down and Secret will probably not force high ground, but the advantage is building. 7,000 gold lead now. And it just it just looks like it's gonna keep going up unless Spirit can find, again, oh, some sort of picks. That combo is actually so sick. Ice path coming up top. Tower is down, but the TP is coming in. Like you said, Matu's in a lot of trouble. So Yutaro jump in, but there comes Zai. He gets off the skewer into the telekinesis, but Toronto Tokyo is more than fine. Sunder on his teammate from Matu, trying to keep himself alive. Yaps are stealing the electric vortex, but Matu attempting to TP out. Will he be able to do so in time? Absolutely. Just no damage coming through. Zai uses the RP on the retreat as Puppy comes oh, with all the right clicks. It. Toronto Tokyo getting extremely low in the meantime. They take out Io. And it looks like it'll be a trade for Zai's life at the very least, but Nisha's not done yet. He destroys Toronto Tokyo. He has so much mobility to work with. Nope, Dissimilate, not online in time. There comes the Spear from Collapse. So Spirit at least gets something out of this, but they still lose Toronto Tokyo. Yeah, I think Nisha wasn't really expecting that Spear to come in there, but Collapse obviously extremely confident on his Mars and caught him before the Dissimilate cast, so they get a nice extra kill there. Actually a really big streak to end Yotaro getting the 700 bonus gold from killing off the, what was that, monster kill streak on Nisha. So a little bit of a, the first good fight really here for Team Spirit, they doubled their kills from three to six. I didn't even realize their kill count was that low. Yeah, it, wow. it was not looking too hot. And it still isn't, but it's the first step of the way. Yep, collapse oh, jumps good. in, looking for Yapsar. Toronto Tokyo makes his way here as well. They should be able to pick him off. It takes a little bit more effort than you would think, though. As Matu pops that meta, going on top of Mira now. Toronto Tokyo picks up the rune, but Mira not able to be saved here. Mapushka, that is the pig pole cinder, and I don't think it's going to save him this time. As Nisha comes in to finish him off, he does have the Aghanim Scepter, so Resonant Pulse has two charges, does more damage, and more importantly than anything, silences. And the question is, what dispels do they have for Team Spear? I know BKB is being built for Collapse right now, but still quite a ways away. It is a big Same concern Toronto, for Tokyo. Toronto, Tokyo, for sure, uh, that he's this far away from solving this, this Ags. Secret will definitely t try to take advantage of this and just look to get on top of him in the fights with Void Spirit. Most of the fights so far that Team Spirit have taken, it's really been Toronto, Tokyo leading the charge, going in first, finding some sort of Vortex, and they try to pile onto that. That's very dangerous now if he doesn't see the Void Spirit, because that's an instant counterplay. Even though you have the status resist of Kai Assange, the double silence into RP or some sort of Rubik Lift, Echo Stump, whatever it is, would definitely kill him off. So has to be very careful with how he approaches this in this game. And Matu, hey, Matu closing so in rich. on a Satanic, oh not that goodness. far away. Yeah, can pick up the Reaver here pretty soon, and then just a 1,400 Claymore afterwards. I mean, you can see he is top of the net worth by quite the long shot right now. And things right now looking good for Secret. But from, all, right, all right, we have the Skewer in from, from Zion to Collapse. You can see the Horn Toss as well. Echo Stop. Look at the layering from Team Secret. Just masterfully done. And Collapse will get dropped as a result. Yataro. Oh, he actually uses the Haunt. Is reality rifting all over the place. That's definitely not the ability name center. That is not CK, believe it or not. Oh, we have Maposhka's ult coming in from the high ground. Yotaro getting extremely low and is brought down again. Just a really weird fight from Spirit there. Looks like Maposhka, at the very least, will be able to live. I, I think they were trying, they were hoping to find Secret caught off guard there, but again, they're just tight. They're ready. They have the heroes there and the opening from Collapse just gets instantly countered, and when they try to help him out, it's just not possible. Like, Secret are in a way too strong position there. Very easily make quick work of the Mars, and then Spectre with the Haunt. Like you said, maybe a little bit of a misstep. Hey, Poshka. Yeah, oh, the Horn Toss into the RP. Toronto, Tokyo will be able to get out, and Collapse jumps in with a huge arena, taking out the Rubik to start things out. Matu getting extremely low. The Sunder on his teammate will live as a result. And Zai just burning down to Maposhka's dual breath. So Spirit having a really good defense here as Satanic is picked up by Matu, but he's stuck in a lot of trouble here, Cinderin. And he's going to be brought down as well. Team Spirit, they're not done yet. They have Nisha in their sights, but you can see the silence coming out on Toronto Tokyo, who's not scared to pursue apparently, but probably should be. Yeah, Nisha can kill him in five seconds here if he sticks around. He is thinking about it. He has some power still. All right, Collapse was looking for him. Yeah. Oh. Oh. 
Okay. Now the blind spear, typical. Oh, sometimes it hits. For collapse, it feels like it always does. Yeah, true. Great. Despite from that, Spirit. yeah, that was you a very good without fight. Spectre there. This was effectively a four and five. Obviously, Secret Hero is not in the best position, and this RP, the ice path from Eposka, just saves everything Ooh. there. If not for that, that's a dead storm, and they can just start piling on the kills here with the great combination. Another good ice path here, almost clipped Matumba as well. And honestly, in many ways, Secret. That could have even gone worse. Like yeah. that was pretty close to losing Matu way earlier in the fight, and then they probably just clean up fully. At least now, uh, Team Spirit had to expend quite a lot more resources on him. Uh, you know, he reminds me. He reminds me <laughs> of I'm the dude. <laughs> have you ever, you've never seen that movie? That Which movie? movie? The character is named. I the haven't dude. seen it. Okay. Yeah, you didn't even let me finish. Great. As we have a pause here, this is the lower bracket finals game number one between Secret and Team oh, Spirit. And I would say Secret on paper is the favorite, but I said that yesterday with IG, yep. and Spirit absolutely destroyed them. Momentum is a crazy thing, that something that can't be really quantified, Sindarin. For sure. Uh, speaking of that, Secret obviously have a lot of it in this game, uh, but that little last fight from Spirit could inspire some hope in them. According to uh, Anki Gaben, a 3-1 to one favor for Secret right now, 75% win probability is what the algorithm gives them right now. Yeah. Um, obviously, the big moment we're looking forward to in this game is the next Roche, which will largely decide a lot of the the potential ending of the game around the 30 to 40 minute mark. And Aegis on Terrorblade going high ground here will be really nasty for Spirit to deal with. You saw how hard it is for them to kill him once. So the second time will prove to be very challenging, but they've done a really good job after a rough start to at least stay afloat. And with the Orchid on Spectre, maybe they have an approach into this game that we should be exploring a little bit more, because he can obviously haunt, and then he can go in and Orchid either the Rubik or the ET. Mm -hmm. uh, Yap Source Rubik does have a Ghost Scepter, so he's not going to kill him, but the Elder Titan, he could effectively zone out of the fight pretty much the entire way. Or go on the Magnus as well, would be very strong with the Orchid. So again, for Secret, it's really important to, you know, stay close and... Um, and cover each other against this Orchid from the Spectre. Okay, we're paused, Shannon. You know what time it is. It's too, we're not going to be paused for long, Cinder, and it's too late. You had your chance, but it's you just kept talking. I get one question. One question. Okay, go. What is the name of the passive of Grovebow? Uh, there is none. It's a trick question. Incorrect. Damn it's it. called Magic Amp. It amplifies magic. You know it has a passive. Wow. That's actually even more boring than I was imagining, and I had low expectations with that question, Cinder. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Matu in the jungle right now. See, what's next on the list for him? He has the finished Satanic that we already saw, has the casual Yasha. Uh, looks like it's going to be BKB. Uh, does he not want uh, Manta or even SNY this game? Mm, I think it could make a case for even finishing a late SNY here to get the status, but I think BKB is just more powerful. Oh, oh. Zai was looking for him. Didn't get the Horn Toss connection there. Yeah. RP was still on cooldown for five seconds. Maybe he thought he had it. seconds here. Maybe he was trying to RP, but I think he was trying to hold uh, us. No. Anyway, wasn't going to happen. Toronto Tokyo with the fresh BKB as well. Obviously, will be a much harder target for them to lock down now. And for Secret, you have a couple of options. I think primarily right now you want to protect the Roshan area and see if you can farm up the Terrorblades BKB. If you line those two things up so you have Aegis and BKB going into the next fight, that would be crazy strong. Um, if you aren't able to have both, I think... You know, you could probably have the BKB in the fight while be centered around Roche, so you might need to contest for the Aegis. Yeah. So playing your triangle area right now seems very well advised. Just stay here, make sure you get all the camps on Terrorblade. While you keep pushing out the mid lane as well, and just leave bottom lane empty. It doesn't really matter right now at all. Mm -hmm. They're going to make their own smoke move, though. They're actually not waiting for either the BKB or the Roche. Just going for it here. 30 seconds respawn left on Roche. Maybe they want to find a pick and then try to get Roche off of that. If they do find Yatora, he will not have buyback, so he would be a huge find, but just barely stayed outside the Observer Ward that Secret have down there at the Secret Shop area that sees a little bit into the lane for a little bit of a glimpse there. He went right around it on spec. Or that like of Spirit are kind of aware that Secret's up to something. Obviously completely off the map. And Secret don't have vision themselves. So Roche probably has assuming the same. Spawned. Second Roche available for the taking. So whoever wins this fight well, will get likely a shot. get it. I mean, they, depending on how many are alive, it would be pretty difficult to take Roche with either lineup still. 
Uh, we require Mott to at the very least for secret. Speaking of shard keep in mind, Rubik bought his. Um, oh. pretty, pretty key item here, I think, to reposition people out of arena. When you get telekinesis, you get height. And if you have height, you can exit the arena, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why Slark can pounce out of it, for example, on Marana can leap. Yeah. Um, so I believe now any hero on Secret's lineup will be able to exit. As long as they are pinned to the wall, Yapsor can toss them out. And that is a huge amount of damage mitigation, technically, uh, for any hero in his team. So really cool, creative approach to this. We don't usually see him buy Shard in this spot. Uh, Yapsor will generally buy, you know, bigger items. Yeah, I could be very interested to see how that works. We don't get to see that often at all in pro matches. Well, Toronto Tokyo offering himself up a little bit here, but will back off. And you yeah, can tell the tension here. here. Oh, Secret yeah. are just staying at, grouped up as five the whole time. And here comes the key item, Matu. Will be completing the Black King Guards flying out. He sold his wand for this, obviously doesn't need the slot anymore, and they will use this BKB to try to claim Roche. He is so insanely far ahead of everyone else in this game on that Terrorblade right now. Yeah. Paladin Five Sword K. will go to the to the bank. All right. Keeps the Titan's liver. No yep. surprise there for Terrorblade. Indeed. And into Perfectly the Roche we go. Perfectly crafted for Terrorblade. As, yeah, you're right. He's going to attempt to solo Roche for now. He effectively has double damage when he's empowered with the Titan's with liver. With Titan's liver, yeah. <laughs> that is pretty crazy. If only he had Shard, it would be even more disgusting yep. in this melee form. But something tells me... Uh, Nisha, does he have... He might be taking the Shard off of Roche. Nisha's Shard is quite good. Spirit, no, this is happening. And they're planning their way to attack here. They do have Haunt for Vision, of course. Not quite in range. Maposha gets off the Ice Path. Of course, they have some pretty good zoning capabilities here with Maposha's ult, who's going to get initiated on to start with. Toronto Tokyo jumps in with a BKB. Can't really find anybody, though. But Pusha gets up to full HP, collapses with a huge arena onto several heroes. But the right clicks from Matu might be enough for Toronto Tokyo to take a tumble. He gets out just barely with any HP. The Taro in the meantime, he's going to take the damage from Matu instead. Nice. Zai gets in with that skewer collapse, taking additional damage. Your Roach is still only at half HP, so they can't really steal it. As it looks like your Taro will go down. No Haunt available, even if he buys back here. So two for nothing as collapse looks to be the third. Team Secret is doing a really good job of armor toggling, <laughs> but not good enough here. Cinder is Maposhka sucking harm's way. Zai able to get to, to safety here for the moment. Dissimilate. Looks like Nisha might go down if they can find a little bit of distance here. Up oh, the Sunder from Matu, keeping his so hit, teammate alive. Toronto Tokyo gets dropped now. Double kill for Matu. The Sunder on the teammate. That is absolutely huge. And this is going to be a dieback now for Mira. A full team wipe and Team Secret lost nobody. And Spirit actually executed that really well, but Secret with the double buybacks on the supports coming back into the fight immediately really helped seal the deal there. Elder Titan and Rubik having a huge impact both on their second lives. The Absor with the stolen ball lightning gets a lot of it. And this opening for Secret actually doesn't work very well, so you commit a lot of spells from Void Spirit. He still gets healed up by the yeah. and here's that amazing arena, but the RP and response from Zai buys enough time that at least Yapsor stays alive for a while. And then he will buy back, of course, and reconnect and with all the spells down. This is the kind of situation that terribly just cleans house in, right? Like, everyone has used all their resources. He still has full HP and mana. They can't deal with Matu at all. A very elongated fight, and it did require two buybacks from Sika, but still only on the supports here. As they're able to claim full set of racks here, in all likelihood. So Team Spirit on the back foot now. 16k net worth lead for Secret. Aegis online. Who got the shard here? Looks like it was Nisha as expected, so the Dissimilate's going to have that extra ring. And it will... It does more damage too, I believe. Oh, all right. Puppy gets picked off. That's technically a dieback. We'll see if Spirit can actually take advantage of this. Toronto Tokyo has to activate his BKB. Oh, Zai. Faking out again, that RP is Toronto Tokyo is who they really want. But Nisha will find a collateral in Maposhka. Mira, looks like the relocate will take him back to safety as well. Yep, so we're going to steal the level one spirit. It's probably the single worst spell he can get in this game. So, except all work. Not going to be too happy with that, but... Yeah, nice pick from Toronto Tokyo. Again, delaying here. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get pushed without Puppy alive, but still three and a half minutes left in the Aegis on Matu. You would imagine that Secret just go down mid to top as soon as Puppy is up. 
will be the shortest path to attacking these barracks. If you wanted to push in the top lane now, it would take you an extra 10 to 15 seconds, which could make a big difference. Yep, and Team Spirit have to find a way back in this game. Of course, it is only game one of this best of three, so not a do or die scenario right now. But Matu looks uh, pretty unstoppable. Working on the silver edge right now, that will likely, yep. I mean, it could replace the boots or the Yasha, depending on if the Aegis is still in tow. As it looks like Secret is going to smoke up now. And Nisha. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Goes for the Resident Pulse in mid ball lightning. Doesn't work that way, sadly. For Secret fans, that is. And Puppy getting harassed a bit. Has the Ghost Scepter to try to live through. Yep. This could that be a specter. really big jump from Zai. Any horn toss on a key target could start off this fight, and he'll get There's it. There's the horn toss on Collapse. He pops the BKB. RP not going to be expended here. Collapse has to pop his BKB instead. The RP is expended in the end on the single target. Here is Mira getting harassed by Nisha, creating all the space in the world. Collapse is dead, but does have buyback. He used Arena, though, trying to stay alive, so they know if he buys back, that key ability is not there. Yeah, but now the smoke up from Team Spirit. Trying to delay. Collapse will almost certainly have to use his buyback here, but like you said, no ult to work with. Maybe even just giving up this second set of barracks here. It feels nigh impossible for them to kill Matsu twice. Their lineup just doesn't have that good single target damage against the Terrorblade right now. Yeah, meta is almost down though. We'll see if Team Secret want to bide their time here. Still a minute and a half on the Aegis, but that's not really going to align really well for another meta afterwards. And obviously couldn't even go for Megas to begin with because that tier 2 bot still stands. Uh, Nisha is actually going for a Dagon. So going for the blow up build. Has the Eon disc, so can survive if he goes. I mean, I've been seeing Nisha do this a lot where everybody goes in with, like Zai jumps in, for example, mm -hmm. picks one person off, brings them back into the fray, and then Nisha goes in the front line and just goes for the supports and makes sure that creating all this havoc that they can't even do anything about. I think that's one of the kill. biggest strengths of this hero in general is just control, right? Like we, we talk a lot about Void Spirit's ability to kill single targets with all the damage from Astral Step and the Resonant Pulse and the whole combo, but in a lot of situations, if you're in a game where you don't need to specifically kill heroes all the time, mm -hmm. um, the zone control from this hero is incredible. You create so much chaos, the AoE silence, the, you know, he has the Yules that he can now start potentially that. using offensively because he has Disc. Yeah. Um, it just makes things so easy for the Magnus and Terrorblade to set up kills in the meantime while he just controls basically the entire enemy team. So kind of a big deal if there ends up being a fight in the next three minutes, but Courier was just killed for Toronto Tokyo, and that had the point booster on it. Yep. And he has enough to finish the Ag, but obviously cannot combine it. So, I mean, that is a, a game-breaking spell to not have, or upgrade, I should say, with the Electric Vortex AoE. And Secret should have some idea that that is the case here. It's Matu. Pretty much ready to go here. Meta's up in 10 seconds. Looks like he's going to be working on, I don't know if they're going to get to this point, but consuming an Ags of his own to get that extra meta time and the fear addition. But yeah, two racks advantage for Secret. And they are looking very, very good in this game number one. Yep. Can choose to stall for the next rush. The uh, early respawn is in two minutes, but they've scanned out Yatoro. If Nisha finds him here. Oh, Nisha. Oh, they're in the area. He gets off the Spectral Dagger, though. Oh, they, they they're going to see the him. The Yules into the Aether Remnant to follow. He gets off the Haunt, though. Realiting all over the place. Gets silenced for the time being. Silenced a second time. Zai not able to connect on the Skewer. As Collapse even pops a BKB. Matu. Gets off his meta in the meantime. They're trying to go for the Spectre. The break is there from that Silver Edge. And Nisha not going to be able to connect on a kill here, but they do make Spirit use a lot of resources to try to defend here. There's the Horn Toss. Mikoshka is going to get dropped immediately. Toronto Tokyo pops the BKB. Just has no damage to work with now. And this turns into a 5v4 as Matu just hitting the buildings. Going and for the Mega still have all their spells except Elder Titan Ulti. So the RP is still in play. Zai, as well as Nisha's discs, are used now, but they're going to get Megas off yeah. this. Spirit just aren't ready to fight. So Mega defense attempt here from Team Spirit. 
Oh, the horn, horn toss, toss from Zai. And I would assume the RP to follow here pretty shortly. Looks like they'll have enough damage. Ataro gets off the Manta for now. Looks like he's going to live for a little bit longer. The Yules from Nisha in the meantime. But the Fade Bolt on the other side takes out Yataro. And it looks like this is going to be a game one victory for Secret here, Cinderin. As they are looking extremely warmed up in this game number one. Yeah, this game has just not really been close except one or two fights where Spirit lined up everything perfectly. And Yapsor now finally gets the dream steal of the game. I don't know if this is the first time in the game he's had it. It kind of feels like it, but has that level four ice path with maxed oh, out yeah. arcane supremacy, effectively turning this into what's that? Over a three second stun. Instant yeah, cast. Toka showing off the axe, but the here. instant telekinesis. Oh, they're doing a lot of damage to Zai. Looks like he's going to be dropped down in the end, but. Secret getting the better of this exchange as Matu pops the BKB, just going absolute ham on Collapse. There's the Ice Path again. GG's is called, Cinder and Secret take game one in convincing fashion. Yeah, they did, especially what really set up for this huge lead for Secret, just the way the first five minutes went, right? Or the first 10 minutes. They're doing great in their lanes. Spirit, when they do get their levels on the heroes that need to make the plays, they just aren't able to. Secret just one step ahead every time. They have the right amount of heroes for the plays. I think especially both Puppy and Yapsor just doing some really, really good hero placements on the map, right? Yeah. It, from our perspective, it might look easy because every time Spirit go for a move, they're ready to counterplay. The challenge in this isn't necessarily the spell casting. It's being there. It's reading the map, knowing that you need to cover these exact angles at these exact times. And just a masterclass from Secret and how to play around your pores, really. So very nice job. Team Spirit's Cinderella run is at risk of being stopped here in the next game, Cinderin. But Team Secret take a 1-0 start to this best of three lower bracket. Let's see what the panel has to say about this performance from Secret. Thank you very much, Sunspan and Cinderin. Let's start with the draft for this one, because I think one of the things that often happens when teams are facing Spirit is they go, OK, right, we're going to target Mars. Well, we're going to target Collapse's Mars, not let him have the hero that is really his signature. Or they're going, oh, maybe we should try and target Yatoro. But what we saw with the, the first round of bans from Team Secret was actually targeting the Poshka Purge. And they take out his Winter Wyvern and they took out his signature hero, Bane. And it seems to be that that's really where Spirit's troubles began. It, it definitely hurt them a bit. And that's uh, kind of a continuation of how other teams have tried to beat Spirit. They said, oh, well, we'll ban all Collapse's best two heroes. Then he dominates with Mag. And now they finally get to do it against Maposhka. Instead, they put him on Jakiro. And while Jakiro is an effective hero, He's not the laning dominator maybe that some of the other guys are. And, and also the other crucial thing, he maxed out Ice Path. It makes their mid game really strong. But laning stage, he just doesn't do nearly as much damage with Dual Breath, which makes the game harder too. So it was a cool way to push them on the back foot. And it definitely made their lanes weaker than they should have been. Do you think that Spirit were probably like, oh, hang on a second. We've got our favorite duo available. We can just get the IO. We can just get the Mars. This is going to be great, guys. This is going to be a shellacking from our side. Effie. I think you definitely go into every Dota game that you play with a certain idea, right? And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. For me, the biggest thing that stood out was just giving away Magnus. I think after the last couple of days, you just either try to take it for yourselves or you van it out because it makes the way that you have to navigate fights very different. And it's all very subtle things that we can't really see per se, but you have to always be careful of your positioning, where you're standing. And that game was insane. It was fight after fight. And the spell casting was ridiculous from both ends, but I don't particularly want to blame the draft alone, but I do think that they could have changed it up a little bit. And while Jakiro is a hero that's capable of fighting a lot, it's just not that good at the moment, I would say. He has his very niche moments, but I don't know. I, I just want to take it back to something that was said about the first 10 minutes. I think that Nisha's ability to just control the tempo of this entire game is actually what yeah. set up Secret. They, they really set him up for a really good game. Nisha was having a good time in the mid lane, staying almost a full thousand gold ahead of Toronto Tokyo's Storm Spirit and uh, yeah, just uh, playing from behind on the Storm. Yeah, they made him some stacks, but it was not enough. The movements and to go back to the amplifying your carry, because if you look at the, yep, yeah, you have Io. Io is not a hero that wants to play with uh, Spectre that much compared to Magnus, who provides uh, you that extra damage, provides you cleave when you're in a melee form, and also going for that Solar Crest, which is, you know, kind of a big deal as well. So just And you have ET on your own team. Yeah, and just to add on to that point, like, outside of not having the most synergetic kind of carry for Io to play with, 
if a void spirit has that kind of game, you're in danger all the time as an IO. It is so hard to live through such a big void spirit. Yeah, Toro just seems to be having so much fun with the different carries that he's playing, though. At this stage, he's now played 13 heroes in 13 main event games. So the question is, is he going to be going for a pick we've they, seen before for this yeah, next they, they game? Yeah, might, they might just pick another hero for him if it's available, because for the long duration of time, there has been this meta carry where you try to counter a certain... Um, line up with you know just picking stuff how do you counter this like you don't know what he's gonna play it's very hard to focus on him it's very hard to go into this matchup and try to prepare anything because you have no idea what he's gonna play but there's also some a bit of an extra spice coming into this matchup because you have uh, you know toronto tokyo in one of the pub games he said to matumba man you know see you at ti it's gonna be 2-0 for us in 20 minutes so far it didn't happen so i want to see them bounce back can I just shout out to production, you the real MVP, to try and get that Spectre to fit somewhere on the graphic. It was also predicted by the draw panel that Secret just had this late game unbeatable damage. Was there a point where just Spirit didn't have the availability to come back? Or did you maintain hope, Kurt? Uh, the, the, the last, like... 20 minutes of fights looked hard because you want to kill Terrorblade, but they didn't quite have the best disables to do it. Like if Mars gets on him and they spear combo him and they jump on him, it can kind of work. But the Spectre versus TB matchup isn't very great for Spectre at many stages unless you get really far ahead. And like there's always the threat that he's going to like sunder somebody. So it's like it, there's just a lot more danger when you're trying to get those really important kills. And the other thing was that they just kept chasing around the Void Spirit consistently. Like Storm jumps on him, tries to catch him. He casts Dissimulate. Then he jumps this way. Then he jumps that way. You spend all this time chasing the guy but it's like you also need to kill tb in the meantime because he's killing somebody else on your team so they picked the wrong target yeah uh, i can see what team spirit decided to go for with this kind of a draft having a global presence with uh, io storm and specter but the team spirit heroes uh, sorry spirit, uh, team secret heroes were really good at just s standing the ground and uh, taking a fight you have this uh, you know super farm tb who can always use the sunder and specter as you mentioned it's really not a good matchup against the uh, specter into tb into et as well also one cool play there was is puppy he was holding a fan grenade Usually we see Shaker, who is the one, you know, the primarily one. This might be even a better one. The two supports, they die in one hit plus Fae Grenade. Effie. Yeah, no. So I wouldn't say that they picked the wrong target. It's just that there were too many targets, really, because, again, going back to that lead that they got in the first 10 minutes, typically you don't want your games to go that way against line of second snowball. And just to take it back a little bit, we were talking about the Magnus factor, just the hero's existence and the way to play around him makes it so that the fights are always going to be a little bit awkward for you, who you're going to go on, where you're going to take it, right? These things that we don't see may look a little bit objectively like, oh, why why this guy? But it, that's just the strength of that hero. It's, it's a very subtle kind of threat on the map all the time. Well, while Team Spirit may have somewhat limited experience here at the international, their opponents, Team Secret, have been here countless times before, so let's find out some of their favorite memories. My favorite memory from an uh, international that I myself attended, um, you could always say that it was TI7, the Grand Finals, but really what like I felt like it was the turning point for me in that particular tournament was our series against Virtus Pro in the lower bracket. <laughs> The truth is Team Liquid will eliminate them from the international and advance forward into the next round of the lower bracket. Keep After that, it was kind of meant to be to win the whole thing. For me, yeah, it's kind of, they're kind of intertwined these two moments for me. One of my favorite memories is obviously that I won the TI that I played in. So the first one, I mean, hands down, obviously, comparison to the losses of the other ones. The feel of TI1 was that it was definitely unique. Some things felt very uh, professional, some things did not. <laughs> uh, the Chinese, they started a strategy, which was uh, every time you died, they would, uh, they would make loud noises on their desk. They would hit it so hard that you would feel it from the, in the other booth because the desks were connected. And so they said, don't do that. We also, uh, you know, started kind of jumping around every time they died or like, you know, because they would see us. They would, they would literally see us when uh, we would kill them and jump around in our, in our booth. So yeah, we, they kind of like put garbage bags on the, on the windows so they, you wouldn't be able to see. So no noise, 
didn't see the enemy, and that's, uh, yeah, that, that's how it went down. Well, Poppy, don't worry. We're into recycling and keeping litter at bay here, so I expect if there's any mess in your booth, it's on you, son. All right, then. Secret looked hot to trot in that match against Spirit. Clearly, they've been doing their homework. They've been seeing everything that Spirit have been throwing at their opponents. Is there anything now that Spirit can do on the flip side, maybe to, to try and exploit some, some chinks in Secret's armour? Effie? I mean, well, all I can say about Secret right now is they are on their A game right now, just looking at that game one. And Spirit have to be very, very careful about giving away certain heroes, I would say. And I don't want to make everything about Magnus, but he really has been the hero of the last few days. And I think if they just address what they're going to do with perhaps the Magnus and the Tiny and the Mars and which one they place more priority to and to just make sure that they don't get sloppy in the early game, they definitely have a chance to strike back. And losing one game, it may have offset their momentum a little bit, but I do think they're capable. They just kind of need to take a deep breath and regroup here. Well, the teams are taking to the stage now, casual, casual as you like, for Team Secret. But they have the upper hand in this best of three series, and they know it. They are so confident as they head into their player booth. But Team Spirit, when they came to this tournament, they were expected to maybe make it to, you know, obviously make it to the main stage. But top three, they surprised us all, and they would be more than delighted to surprise Team Secret today. Now, we didn't get a chance to talk about it much earlier, but Team Spirit and Team Secret boast these incredible, electrifying, flashy carry players. How do you expect this next Matu and uh, um, Yutoro matchup to go, Lacoste? I mean, Matu has been uh, looking really stable. I believe he has four out of four wins on Tiny. He One of the also comfort heroes that he played really well is Ursa, even though it's only 50% win rate so far. At the TI, I like the aggression that they make with the hero. Usually when they are playing Radiant, you need to ban it out because of always that uh, Roshan threat that he provides. And Matu, I mean... It's just, you know, Matu kind of a style where he will find the farm, he will play it with the team. One of the reasons why he is so farmed is because they, they enable him. They enable him so much and also their offlaner Zai doesn't take that much farm on the map. One of the reasons why Matu gets a bit more and also Yapsor. It's an interesting point that you make then about about the farm because that's one of the things that I learned first about Team Secret is they're a team that is much more flexible, it sounds, in their farm priority than other teams, Effie. Yeah, it feels like sometimes they just kind of create gold out of nowhere when you're watching a Team Secret game. But I think that just goes back down to their strengths of being able to play defensively when they have to and being able to hold their farming areas, right? Team Secret play best in situations where the enemy kind of feel pressured because they're all farming so much and they run into them, so they make a mistake, right? And that just comes from their ability to read the map better than others, maybe due to experience, due to Puffy's leadership, but they it just feels like when it comes to map movements, they have that down more than any other team. And Paj, how would you compare Collapse to Zai? Because Zai has so much experience. He's clearly one of the most intimidatingly clever players I think I've come across so far. And then you have Collapse, who we can see on screen right now. So maybe they'll talk about him on the draft panel. Versus Team Secret Game Two. Hello, hello. We're here live with draft number two. I have my two stellar panelists. You can turn around now so you can see the draft. Okay. Great, wonderful. Thank you. What <laughs> great direction. And we're here ready for game number two between Team Spirit and Team Secret. PSJ, yesterday, you, or yesterday, sorry, <laughs> before you gave us a great rundown of what the game would, ha would happen in the game. As you said, Team Secret just need to hold down in the beginning, and then later on, they'll be able to come online. Yeah, you think you that's saw, what happened? You saw the Team Spirit's team fight. Like, despite their effect that they were down by 7K, 8K gold, they were still able to get some crucial kills and some crazy 
ice pass from Mikloshka that I think kept them in the game. But that, that early momentum, I, I think that first death in the lane by collapse. Uh, collapse was very detrimental for them because in the mid game, his job is to set up all the plays, Storm Spirit to follow up, Spectre to follow up. They had a lot of follow up, but he was forced to be defending his mid tower rather than playing on Secret's part of the map. And you just saw that's how they accrued a massive lead. There's a lot of spirit team fighting too. I think yep. a big thing that we that we thought during the draft that they were going to do was kind of play the map more. Uh, but it's it really is in team spirit style to just run at you and kill you in team fights. So perhaps lean more towards like team fighting heroes in this game is is an option for them. Not that Mars is particularly bad at team fighting or anything. Maybe a but, little bit more. But if we're talking about the the, the style of team spirit, we always think of them as. Group up around the mid game timing with yep. a strong carry, team fight as much as you can, and win the five on five engagements. And that is not what this draft looked like. So, are you saying that we want to go back to basics, Jenkins? Yeah, I think so. I think that's fair. You know, Wisp being banned out uh, perhaps makes the Mars a little bit less of an option that's appealing. Uh, perhaps so you want... Tide Hunter could come out. There you go. Uh, yeah, we got a Magnus on Team Secret. Of course, looked great in the previous game, even against a hero that's considered to be somewhat of a hard counter in the Spectre, or definitely a hard counter. It's just that this, this new style of Magnus that people are playing, it's not necessarily countered by Spectre in the same way. Like, Magnus isn't really about team fighting or just team fighting anymore. It's also about the repositioning element and pickoffs. We got oh, it. There it is. Okay. So okay. now, what do we do against a Tide, PSJ? Uh, you want some way to easily counter the Kraken Shell. We've seen Silver Edges, we saw the PA. I'd say Disruptor's a worthwhile candidate here. Doom's probably not on the not on the table here because you you would have like a shown a mid lane and off lane first two picks. But just straightforward, ease of execution, we use this spell or this combination to kill the tide. Teams like Team Secret, like yes, they're gonna value strategical advantage, but ease of execution is always something you want to consider at this main stage of TI. Enchantress, okay, well this is I, I think special. Secret is the most successful team with this hero. Uh, they absolutely snowball the lanes with Enchantress and then just have a monstrous mid game. And I would assume that Spirit has some sort of preparation for this, that they're gonna be second phase picking, or maybe they think that this Tide hero, the way that he team fights, the way that he groups up early is something that can deal with an Enchantress. And he can stand in front of a tower, for example, and not get, not get uh, pushed early. I don't know how much in trouble I'll get for talking about what Seb said behind the scenes, but uh, the offlane meta is Helm of Iron Will right now. Pretty much every offlaner is either building Armlet or Helm of the Dominator, which allows them to uh, get that early sustain, the six armor and six HP regen from such a cost-effective item. And what that does is it allows the fourth position, in this case the Lion, to roam on mid and give a lot of momentum to the mid laners, such as these spirits, the Storm Spirits, the Ember Spirits. And what Enchantress is so good at that most other fives cannot do is she can harass the offlaner through the armor that the Helm of Iron Will gives you. The mm. impetus is pure damage, and she also does a lot of harass in the early game, which delays your ability to get that Helm of Iron Will. If you saw last game, Zai, he went for the Tango Quelling Blade straight into the Helm of Iron Will, and that's a kind of build that a lot of offlaners want to go for, but it's quite difficult against a hero like Enchantress who's so powerful early and then also breaks down that timing with the impetus. It's, it's a kill hero as well, right? So if you have anybody else show up with an Enchantress in the lane, like four position Earth Spirit, I don't know, like any four position, you're gonna get a kill on the Tide Hunter. And then you also, like if there's a carry, you and the carry alone can kill the, can kill the Tide Hunter just because there's so much damage. There's a creep to go in front and body block. I think, you know, you can enchant, which of course can be purged off, but the purge is not that good in the early game because it requires so much HP. So that's not super effective. So what, what, the Enchanter has become quite popular for Secret, but we haven't really seen other teams pick up the strategy too much. What is it that makes it so special about this team? You just have to be an Enchantress master. She's not a hero you see okay. some other team pick and you're like, oh, we can try that out, it's gonna work. We were talking about how many permutations of the, the map that you can play purely based on the creep you get. You know, if you get a Wildkin, you're gonna look to pressure towers. If you get the Hellbear Smasher or the Centaur, you might be ganking with it. If you get the Satyr, you might be harassing or burning their mana with the blue one. Yeah, it's like, there's so many different things you can choose to do purely based on the RNG of the camps. And it's not a matter of which one's better than the other. It's like, okay, I've got this iteration. What am I going to do with it? There okay. was a point in the NADPC where I remember that Enchantress had quite a low win rate and the pub win rate was like 42% too, pro level pub win rate. And then people started copying like the puppy and, and some of these like European teams rotating towards the mid tower at five minutes where a creep with that much armor is 
too strong for a lot of lineups to deal with. It's like the earliest tower pushing timing that you can really get yep. out of that enchant. And then the win rate skyrocketed in DPC, and then it skyrocketed in pubs as well from that single rotation, because the earlier you do a, ro you do a rotation, the more impact it has because of the you know, butterfly effect on the game. And so I think it's little things like that that make enchant good enchantress players good at the hero. Tanking the tower with your heal, things like that. So while most people would consider this hero a, like a micro-intensive, you know, very mechanical hero, you're talking about the tactical Yeah, it's super macro, super macro. It's actually right. a very easy hero to play. I mean, you're microing, you're microing one, one thing. Yeah, yeah, you can send it, just send it down a lane. And it's, it's really about, like I said, like using the catapult timings and then late game, you're just kind of walking in and dying and then buying back if you're a puppy. I think this is a really cool pick for Willow because it's a, a support that can solo kill Enchantress with even just like a plus one stun. And she might even be able to do it with just the Bramble, but the... The Bedlam doesn't get slowed down by Untouchable, even though it is technically attacking. But Team, Se Team Secret also is likely to take a Spirit Hero for all the reasons I talked about with Enchantress. And you could potentially do Willow Puck, which the Terrorize Fear combo with the Coil on fourth pick for Spirit. So I think yeah, they're setting up some potential, like, five head, this is what you're going to pick, we know what you're going to pick, pigeonholing you into a specific hero and uh, being ready to deal with it. And the Comfort Pick as well, because that's Mirror's Law's best hero traditionally. I like the Willow here too because it's a Yule's buyer and a four staff buyer versus the Magnus. So it gives you some sort of way of dealing with the horn toss, which I think a lot of people, that's the thing that they're questioning. Like, okay, how do we deal with this hero? It's not really, let's pick purges and dispel the RP. Nobody cares about the RP anymore. <laughs> it barely matters. It's all about that horn toss. So a hero that can pick up both of those items and a hero that will also get in there where you can Yule somebody, because that's a pretty short range. And there are other heroes that might pick up a Yule's, but like Willow, goes in the fight because she can press W and she's just immune to everything. We what might you... also see a Morphling though, with the Willow. Oh, that's true. Why don't you be able to also set up the Bramble Maze, a defensive way, so that Mangus can't just jump yeah, and yeah. skewer? Yeah, yeah, even if he skewers through it, like he gets stuck in one of the Brambles and it gives you some sort of follow-up, something, some way of killing him. Yeah, yeah for okay. sure. You get the Juggernaut now for Team Secret. Uh, what's the reason behind this bit? It's just so good against Willow specifically. It's a Jug Mag Tight as well. combo. Yeah, it's just a free Jug game as of now, and it's similar to okay. what we saw last game with Matu's Terrorblade. Is they had to pick heroes that killed it after the draft. So it's a hero that its an innate survivability mechanic has not been dealt with, which makes it so there's much more limitation. Like I wouldn't want to pick Puck now if I'm Team Spirit. I wouldn't want to do that combination because Jug's one of the few heroes that can get coiled and not really care for the majority of the game. This, oh, oh, wow. oh man, okay. That's a combo. Yeah, imagine a grim stroke. Okay, like if you name the two most difficult lanes to lane against as a tight hunter or even generic off laner, Juggernaut's in both of them, and then it's probably Grim Jug and probably Enchantress Jug as well. The only other here is like maybe CM or Jug. Lich. Lich Jug, something like that. But I, li I think both of these heroes are worse than <laughs> Lich though. Like you basically have the two strongest Jug lane pairings. If there's ever a rotation to this, safe lane, it's like a guaranteed kill. And I don't even think it's necessary to have a rotation to the safe lane, because Ench Jug will dumpster a Tide. So I'm curious to see how Team Spirit deals with this. Uh, there's the Morphling. Good job, Ish. Hey, now that the combination's off the table, this is definitely, this is the first duplicate hero, by the way, for Yatharo oh. throughout the entire main event. Something to keep in mind. He did cap out at 13. The dire straits now. It may be the millions of dollars potential is better than the, the memes of picking a different hero every single game, but... You mean uh, the pride of winning TI, because they don't think about the money. Players have never thought about it. Sorry, the pride of winning TI. Thank and you. And I think what I want to see from Team Secret here is that Magnus has really no way to pressure Morphling in lane as he gets like level three or four. So I would expect them to start the Grimstroke top. And then uh, when we talked about the Helm of Iron will timing, where Mag, he's not going to pressure the Morphling, but he's going to do his own thing. He's going to survive on his own. They'll rotate to the Jug lane in order to get him the momentum with that Ink Swell. So that's a specific rotation that I'm looking out for for Team Secret. I want to make a point, uh, if we go back earlier about Grimstroke Jug, that most people stop playing Grimstroke because of the Inkswell change, I guess, right? Where now it takes longer to get the stun off. Yeah. But this might be the one combination where it's actually beneficial because getting the, bu the movement speed buff on Jug for longer, especially against heroes like Tide, yeah, well, you get lo longer spin on them. And then exactly. It's like you're, the spin, you're not hitting anyway, so they don't need to be stunned. You're just exactly. click move it, you're just moving on them. That's literally it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really strong. I'm worried, though, for Spirit that they do get a Morphling illusion from this Grimstroke that presumably <laughs> is going to be a four position here. So there, that will be a very early Morph illusion. But then on the flip side, the Willow Morph combination doesn't exactly have great counters in general, just because it's one of those like extremely strong combos. A lot of teams were first facing it for a while for that reason, because it requires like an entire draft 
to counter. So just getting a Morphling Illusion is not like, oh, the, you know, the game is over by any means. They also have the budget disruptor from Grimstroke, the Phantom from his, his second ability cannot be dispelled by yep. Tidehunter. Kraken Shell, so That's true. you can afford to use that in fights. It'll buy you an extra couple seconds that he's going to have to use to hit that bug off, and that might be just enough for them to ignore the tide long enough to bring down some crucial targets like the Morphling. I do think with this draft for Team, for team Spirit, if, if this goes to like 30 plus minutes, they could completely, completely crush Team Secret, at least with these current heroes that we're seeing here. There is the Mag and Jug where you're going to have the Empower, so there will be like a presumable item advantage. But if these two teams are on an even playing field and it's 30 minutes and they have the Willow Morph, there is nothing currently to deal with that. And they're going to do enough damage to completely obliterate a Jug. Like, what is Jug going to Omni Slash a Morphling? He's got six different ways of getting out of it. He just yep. becomes the Willow and presses W and then he's fine. I expect the Jug to probably go Defusal this game. Uh, it's so good against both of the supports. Even though Willow, you won't be able to hit her, you can do full damage to her through the spin. Uh, one of the few carries that can do that. But then also just the mana burn against Morphling now, the fact that Morph takes mana yeah. yep. as a, a, a attribute, attribute shift. Attribute shift yeah. Yeah, uh, tide now tide as well, mana. honestly. You, yeah. you spin on the Tide, you drain his mana, and it's like you don't even need to kill him. He, uh, he just has no mana. I wouldn't be surprised by like Yasha or Falcon Blade into the Diffusal, yep, sure. just to ramp up the pace, like sure. you said. Because once we get to that stage of the game, Team Spirit's representing the same threat that they had last game with this immense amount of team fight, like one or two item timings. But then you saw Secret, they're all about that laning stage dominance turning it into a mid-game dominance. This is the final spirit here that we're talking about. Area damage against Dark Willow, pretty decent mobility, good magical burst against the Morphling. Probably the best spirit hero you could run here against a potential Puck counter. Yeah, for sure, because you can get the Yules, which of course you can set up uh, for the Puck. You punish uh, Face Shift with your Remnant. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it also pairs really nicely with the Grimstroke, because you can put the bubble onto Nisha, it runs in, gets that you know huge stun duration. Uh, and then on top of that, I think that Team Secret needed an incredibly active hero. Like Storm Spirit is active, but at like a later point yep. than Void Spirit. And, and, and between all of these heroes that they have here on Team Secret, once again, there were a lot of plus ones. There's a lot of heroes that want to do stuff, but they don't want to be the one that's going in first. And so Void Spirit is probably the best hero at doing that, at least in terms of the earliest. Your mid tower is going to get dove on Team Spirit so early. The Void Spirit was like a little bit of that oomph that they needed from the mid lane to enable the ink swell as yep. well as the enchanters rotating. So whatever hero this is, Kunkka, oh. I, I like that. You probably needed more of a frontliner, more of a hero that doesn't mind having heroes run at him. He free farms pretty much against Void Spirit. The only heroes Kunkka struggles in lane against are ones that prevent him from continuously walking up and tidebringering the creeps. Uh, so I, I think that's really good for them here, but it's a matter of... It's those first two rotations I'm looking out for from the secret supports. The first rotation to Jugs Lane in order to kill Collapse with the Ink Swell, and then the second one diving Toronto Tokyo's mid tower. So if either of these cores on Team Spirit suffer early, I don't think the Morphling's gonna have time to get to his Ag Scepter timing. And not only does Team Spirit have the lore going on where they have Tidehunter Kunkka and then they have the water in the Morphling. Wow. Yes. Also, oh, wow, that's very good. Good. Tidehunter and Kunkka. It's very disruptive in team fights. I don't know if you guys have fought against double ravage and torrent storm in a game, but it feels like you're just always stunned. You you can't walk into fights and you can't even get a BKB or have jug spin or anything like that because there's it just covers too much. If Spirit goes late game, it's an easy game. Well, we're gonna see what Secrets coach thinks as Reaction Slacks is there in the sidelines about to ask Heen some questions. Hey there, Heen. Thank you so much for taking time to speak to us. Grimstroke, not the most popular hero this tournament. Uh, you seem pretty confident picking it. You think it still works in this lineup? Well, we haven't played it so far in this tournament, so we're about to find out for ourselves. It's just that at this point in the tournament, we've kind of um, developed a feeling for heroes without mm -hmm. even playing them. It's just um, uh, we're confident, though. Mm. How's the team's uh, energy right now in the booth after game one? Are they ready to continue this? We're super happy with the way we play game one, so just positive vibes all around. All right. Well, we'll see if those positive vibes continue. Thank you for your time, and we'll throw it straight into the game with Sunspan and Cinderin. Thank you, sir. Action Slack, Sunspan here with Cinder. We got game number two of this best of three of the Lord Rack of Hives for TI10 Cinderin. This is going to be a good, juicy game. I can feel it. Yeah, for can sure. Can you? Yes, I feel it. Are I you feel sure? It very much. Yes, I do. I feel that these two teams are going to be playing very, very differently. And interestingly enough, it's kind of, it's not really a flip of the last game exactly, but 
the team that feels more on a timer is now on the other side, right? In the last game we were debating, okay, Team Spirit, you know, you're going to look for these skirmishy fights, you're going to try to play fast, and uh, Secret will eventually outmatch you and have stronger team fight in late game. This time around, it might be the other way around, and Secret will need to play a little bit faster, probably. Uh, the good news for Secret is when it comes to winning early games, there is a guy on a hero in the pink slot right now that has a very high impact in general when it comes to that. Puppy on the Enchantress can be absolutely absolutely disgustingly strong early on in the right conditions. And I see this as the kind of game where enchanters can actually shine. You're not playing against anyone who deals with your enchanted creep. You have really good lane partners to gank for in the Magnus, the Void Spirit, and the Jugger. Uh, so oh. all eyes on Puppy, I Smoke think, in this game popped. to get Secret ahead. We got the Earth Spike to come out onto Zai with the Bramble to follow. He is forced to skewer. But we'll live through the day, Cinderman. 30 seconds to battle. He'll be able to walk back and should be able to be fine to help contest these bounties, I would assume. Not sure if Team Spirit is going to stick around for a while, but do get some good damage to start this game out. So looking at the lineups, uh, obviously Morphling, Dark Willow, that is a combo that yep. I, mean, I wouldn't say it's quite at the same level as Earthshaker, but it's close. It's really, really good. Collapse is going to run into trouble. Yep, that is trouble. And his name is Matu. See the Grimstroke coming out. With the slow into the Blade Fury, Matu gets first blood for Team Secret. Spirit were just not expecting Secret to have rotated over there and planted so many heroes, and he just walked straight into it. Usually as Tide, you feel pretty confident level one, but um, this lane matchup is, is kind of scary for you. The Jugger as well as Ench, and of course you had the Grimstroke as part of that play as well. Uh, Yapsor resisting the temptation of skilling Inkswell for the first blood didn't need it, so he goes to lane with Stroke of Fate, which is much better bottom together with Magnus. You just want to push in that wave and try to open up for poles. Also a better trading spell for him against the line of Miposhka. They're going to be hitting each other a bit here in the bot lane. And Keep mid lane, they, they already discussed, but it is the Kunkka versus Void Spirit matchup. Toronto Tokyo versus Nisha. Kunkka typically very good against melee heroes. Do you agree yeah. with the panel on this matchup overall? He, he's favored in this lane. Um, I think it was PSGLGD that ran it twice as well against, uh, I don't think it was, was it Void Spirit in one of the games? I don't remember, uh, but they ran it as well and had great success with nothing to say on that mid conca against one of the melee spirits. So yeah, expecting Toronto Tokyo to pull ahead here. Obviously has the added luxury of being able to very quickly farm small camps on the side. So I can just push out, take this and come back to lane and get even outscale the Void Spirit in terms of the farming capability on the side camp as well. Void Spirit isn't as good at it early on. He will eventually be equally quick when mm -hmm. he has levels. But in the beginning, uh, Nisha will be playing at that disadvantage. Puppy continuing to be that absolute nuisance that you were talking about earlier has that troll creep, which finally runs out. But in addition to the Blightstone that he started the game with, just oh, very annoying to, to get deal the with the here, stage. I think. Or is he going to go all the way for the... Oh, Mud he's golems. Do the pull. Okay. Gets a three creep pull, which is this is the small camp you want to see if you're looking to deny a wave. The ghost camp is very, very good at killing the creep wave, and he's going to protect it as well with him, his own hero as well as one little skelly boy That's running true. after Mira here. And now he's going to go and take a golem. Uh oh, golem time. There's first stun coming out. As Mira's just going to continue to get harassed here, but this is kind of what he has to do. Bramble, all right, we'll connect onto Puppy. Oh, he, oh, he gets two of procs on it. Oh. All right, Puppy outplayed by Mira here, and the the tip ensues, Cinderin. Yeah, that was just flat out a rare mistake there from Puppy, usually very mechanically skilled support player, but Mouse was not working as intended there as he... Yep. Walked into two brambles. I, I think the first one might have been undodgeable, but the second one definitely wasn't. Mouse was not working, and potentially his monitor, if it continues to mm. go down that road, Cinder. We've seen that before. Well, when I did play the show match yesterday, my monitor did go black, so maybe that's what happened. We'll explain oh, okay. the pathing there. Yeah, but he's definitely back. He TP'd correctly, so he does see everything, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Puppy and uh, Cinder are good friends, guys. Very good friends. Okay. Uh, I believe you. One thing I do want to mention, Cinder, uh, the grim stroke here. Yep. You talked about how the Phantom's Embrace is really good against Tide because he can't crack and shell it off. Uh, mm -hmm. What about like late game potential with like Dark Portrait against a Morphling? That does sound That's, very that good. That is very good indeed, yeah. I think it's something Yapsor will be considering. Um, obviously, about Dark Portrait, it 
is magic immune. You can't really hit it with stuff from uh, from Team Spirit, and it's very fast. So only in their lineup, only really Morphling himself can kill off that portrait. So would imagine Yapsor has definitely got that in his mind. But t to me, the primary reason they're picking it is they want to support that pairs up well with Jug. Oh, we're seeing Jug kill Mira here. No way out of that yeah, one. Blade Fury finishes him off. As Collapse can take some residual damage as well. So, yeah. Grim, Grim together with Jug for the Inkswell. And of Aposhka. course, the, the Silence against Getting Titus. Chase, Godly. Shockwave, back into the right click of Zai. So, Secret off to a good start in terms of just the kills here. Yep. And we can see mid is advantage for Team Spirit. 31-3 and three to the 23-5 and five of Void Spirit. Keep in mind that a lot of those CS are the small camp. So, um... Basically neck and neck and gold right now. A 50 ahead here for uh, okay. Toronto Tokyo. Surprisingly enough, there's more denies on the Void Spirit than on the Kunkka, who will often be able to bully out the other melee hero and then find those denies, but hasn't really been able to dominate Nisha. Nisha, again, similar to game one, just doing exceptionally well in lane. Doing what he needs to do for sure. And now that he's level five, now he can start doing the same thing as Kunkka. So he's going to be farming up the small camp next to the lane and close in on his level six. Mm -hmm. So from secret side, Juggernaut, Cinderin, not a hero. It's not like the standard carry these days. Like Morphling feels like more of a, a go-to pick for a lot of teams is Mira. No, it's versus Puppy again. Let's see if he uh, gets brambled twice again. Not not this time around. Uh, but going late game, secret. Like, can they survive the late game? Jug does scale better than he used to, mm -hmm. but still not the traditional, like, super mega hard carry that we're used to seeing. And I, I would say, theoretically speaking, yes. I do think their their lineup can handle late game. You do have, obviously, you know, hang on, collapse. Okay. Matsu will yield. Back off. Um, empowered Void Spirit and Jug can definitely fight late game. Uh, it does feel like the execution ultimately should be easier for Team Spirit with the Morph Willow with double Ravage when Tide gets Refresher. There's just a lot of stuff that Secret will need to play around effectively, but there's no time in this game that I would just flat out write them off, you know? I would mm -hmm. I would favor the other team at some point, but uh, the, the Dire lineup can definitely win this game even come super late game. That's obviously... Ra uh, RP is always going to be an X-Factor, BKB piercing stun, Empowered Cores. The, the Portrait might become the X-Factor, as, as you pointed out, as well. So I think, uh, I think Secret aren't too concerned. Okay. As we see, Blade Fury from Matu in the top lane. You can see the Centaur making his way over to try to get a potential stop here. But Shadow Realm going to keep Mira alive at the very least. Collapse very low on HP here. And Matu does have his ult, but no mana to work with. His puppy going to get ganked here from Toronto, Tokyo. X with the boat coming in. And Collapse just wants to get some XP here, Cinder. Oh, okay, the stomp comes out. Puppy still survives, but finally that second right click. Yeah, if that stomp would have hit, he might have lived both of the Team Spirit heroes just narrowly dodging it there. So it's a good gank from uh, from Toronto, Tokyo. They do find a kill. It's going to cost him a little bit of health on the mid tower, and actually his bounty rune here will be stolen by Nisha. Ooh. Uh, but a... Collapse was in trouble. He needed help. Oof, did he run? Oh, Nisha, did he get vision there? I don't think he saw him. Oh, man, that was oh, super did. close. He must have. The TP out from Collapse okay. there. Was looking for the higher priority kill, potentially. Yeah. Bouncy. There's now Mira. <laughs> Very wary of this area now, but is back to basically full HP. And Toronto, Tokyo on this Kanka Cinderin. What's what's the build this game? We've seen Halberd. We've I mean we don't really see Radiance anymore, but I mean, right. it's not the most unusual thing for a mid Kanka. Might go face armlet. Okay. Nisha opening up on him a bit. Just harass. Level advantage right now going the way of Toronto, Tokyo. By the way, as Nisha just trying to be annoying here. But yeah, you, you like uh, just Armlet into what, Armlet, then? Armlet Halberd doesn't sound too bad. Halberd against Jug can be a little bit dicey because, you know, you need to find the right timing to get it off mm -hmm. between Omni Slash and Spin, but it it also just gives you the in uh -huh. inherent tankiness. Yep, Sora looks very dead here. Nice setup overall from Team Spirit, and Meposhka very kindly gives the kill to Yataro. What a bro. You'd never do that for me. I have I have very good reason to not do that yeah, for you. So you say. It's still very I have even uh, game to start statistical things. evidence that <laughs> it's better spent on me. Stats lie. That's, I'm pretty sure that's a segment I've heard of. Uh, collapse now level 6, so Ravage is good to go. It looks like Bottle's going to be refilled here in the mid lane for Nisha. So what, what's the go time for each each team? Is there a certain item? Is there a certain level? Is oh, like mid Tokyo. potential gank on Toronto, Tokyo, taking heavy damage. Still has his boat to work with. 
And here it comes. The rum buff is there, but Astral Step is going to do a lot of damage. In the meantime, the reinforcements have arrived. Look at the Tidebringer just destroying Yapsor. And there's the Curse Crown into the right click. Mir actually gets credit for that one. It's a two for nothing. It's Toronto Tokyo being pursued by Zai. Not able to find an RP, though. And now yeah. Puppy is going to take heavy harassment. In addition to this, Tidebringer with the X into the torrent. That's going to be three kills potentially going the way of Team Spear, but there's the RP to try to counteract this. Zai gets it off onto Mira, but the Shadow Realm keeps him alive for now. And the Hydukin is coming from the Seder Tormentor Cinder, and the Skewer is going to miss, but the Shockwave into the Hydukin. Puppy gets credit for that one. What a sick combo. Shockwave into Shockwave. That's right. <laughs> they didn't have a new name for that one. That's why I call it Hadouken. Is that the only spell that... That's a t terrible time for trivia because we have an X into the torrent again. Toronto Tokyo won't be able to find a kill here, but is wreaking havoc right now on Team Secret. Such a difficult hero to kill in general, especially once he gets that boat off with all that damage mitigation. Yeah. Spirit had a very good read there of how much they could get away with on Toronto Tokyo. Very nicely done, and they do come out victorious in that fight slightly. Um, and with RP down for another minute, Secret will probably just chill, farm, and more than likely look to stack up some more Ancients. They haven't really stacked yet, and I think now is the time that you want to start building up for Jugger to really start making some progress. Puppy will stack both camps here. Take the... leave the bounty. No, he will take it. Change his mind. And this, uh, this shouldn't be a surprising thing for Spirit either. In the next couple of minutes, they will want to try to invade that triangle, get Vision out, and try to fight. Their team fight, obviously, Extremely strong on the back of Kunka, Willow, as well as Tide, when they all have their sixes. Willow is a little bit away. I would imagine they give him the Tome and give Lion a lane for six, since he is very close. And the Tome should be flying out to Willow. It is indeed. So, uh, Meposhka should be looking to find that Finger of Death somewhere sometime soon. Maybe Ataro queuing up the SNY into E-Blade. We'll see if he... Look uh, at Secret's with wording, by the way. Very, very centric around that bottom half. Obviously, mm -hmm. again, multi-purpose wording. They want to get info about the enemy team on their side so they can make ganks. But this also effectively works as a very nice protective layer for the triangle. Since invasive moves from Spirit will be impossible without a smoke. And if they smoke, they're likely to do it down here. So Secret will see it coming and won't have to be scared of the smoke all the time when heroes are missing. They will simply know when it gets popped. Bottom lane. Yeah, Matu trying to push here. We see some TPs here. There's an Earth Spike into the waveform with Toronto Tokyo making his presence known, but the healing ward does go off for Matu, keeping him alive. Looks like he'll be just fine as a result. Zai does get X, though, after the skewer comes through. Gets the RP off, though. That's against a counter Magnus, it looks like, as Yotaro jumps in with that waveform, but the double damage on Nisha. He's going to get waveform into death. Big death there for Secret. Nicely done from Team Spirit, knowing their limits. Yeah. Great Hex from Mipushka there as soon as he comes out of that Dissimulate. Gets instant Hex, doesn't get a chance to use the second Astral Step. And they do find a kill, defend their tower effectively with this, at least for now. Uh, they will expend a lot of spells for it, however. Only Ravage is really online. I think if Spirit want to hold this tower, they need to bring down Tide now, or they're likely to concede it. Secret are kind of sticking around. They seem a little bit indecisive, but... Oh, well, they had a feeling there was a ward. They're going to find that one. Hex Mark. Yep. Matu will be fine here. Uh, we did see Morphling turn into Magnus Center. That is kind of hilarious. You waveform in, you skewer them back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this early on, that's basically like having a blink dagger. That's yep. pretty high impact. You get him power, too. Yeah, true. It's pretty strong. Yeah, Nisha. On Morph. See the smoke coming in from Team Spirit. Looks like Nisha is going to be their target of choice. A very slippery hero to find, though, but that's what X is for. But Nisha already on his way to his jungle. Yeah, going for a Matu. different build this game. This is going to be a little bit harder. They can get the torrent to start things off into the earth spike and the finger. Nicely done from Team Spirit. Blade Fury did not go off in time for Matu. Yeah, despite all of those wards Secret had earlier, two of them either got expired or dewarded, and they just did not have the read that this play was coming in from Team Spirit. Very nice with the torrent opener. And the burst. And they're going to just rotate straight to back down to bottom to try and still defend this tower when the Jugger isn't here pushing. First of all, they knew that he was in the triangle because he wasn't pushing bot. And now that he's dead, he can very easily hold this with the primary pushing hero of Secret on the sidelines. Team Spirit will defend that bottom tower, no problem. And 
terms of item progression. Uh, Toronto, Tokyo, pretty close to BKB. Just the recipe away right now. Going for a very early one. So double bracer BKB. Extremely tanky on him. Yep. Not very often you see BKB this early. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I don't I don't know how good it is in this game. Uh, it's really against the Void Spear more than anything. Primarily Void Spear, a little bit of the Grimstroke silence, you know, but it's not... I don't think this is an obvious key BKB game. Um, but I think maybe what Team Spirit are planning for is just to feel really strong approaching that mid game so they can just group up and go fight and have a clear front line in both him and the mm -hmm. Tide. Uh, you could argue that Collapse doesn't want to frontline in this game because of the Grimstroke Silence. It just puts him at risk of not getting Ravage off. So maybe Konka can just do the job since he can just remove that Silence. Is it with also the... recognizing that Team Secret's power spike is more mid-game centric and they just want to be prepared for that potentially? Yeah, it could be. Uh, I... I feel like you could also prepare for that with the Ar Armlet Halberd, to be honest. I think that would also make you really strong at that point in the game. Uh, but this way you guarantee you get your spells off, and I think he might be rating that more highly. You know, their, their lineup has insane spell bursts, it's just about getting them off. You know, Matu empowered now, level 11. And going for this bottom tower. There's going to be some pressure mid from Team Spirit in the meantime, though. We'll see if this ends up being given up. Top tower has already been killed, so looking for the potential overall trade. S and Y picked up by Matu, so both respective position ones will be getting S and Y, it looks like, Cinder in this game. Yep, I'm going for that extra status resist. There is a lot of stuff on both teams that you can get value out of status resist against Puppy. Puppy is dead. dead. Jinx. Jinx. You can't say it. You're not allowed to speak until... Uh, I like give you a soda. I think that's the rule. Is that how it goes? That's how it is in America. That explains the obesity rate. Right now. A lot of jinx is going on. Zai in the trees. Obviously not with a blink dagger yet. About 500 away. But blink dagger is on the way for collapse. So collapse off to a much better start than last game. That is for sure. He has the hood. He is a super tanky. Oh, Soulbind with the Phantom's Embrace. It's not going to connect on anybody in terms of a secondary target, but Maposhka is taken out by Secret. Good connection there from Yapsor on the Stroke of Fate, but it can't really follow up. And there would also have been a BKB for Toronto Tokyo anyway, but maybe they were hoping to force that. So Secret hold their tower, but it is getting very low, and you imagine Team Spirit will just make another attempt there very, very soon with their Tide and get that cleaned up. So it's looking great for Spirit compared to last game, right? Like, not only are they ahead on gold in the game, but also the overall flow of the lineups is going to yeah. help them get in a very good position in the mid game. I think Secret were hoping to get more value out of Puppies and Chantress in this game, and, and Mira just didn't let it happen on that Dark Willow. Contested him a lot, got the kill like we talked about earlier, and slowed him down and, and made sure Collapse still, despite playing against a very hard lane, in my opinion, for Tide, he did completely fine. And they're just rolling off the back of that. Secret yeah, probably will just... have to be cautious with fighting for a while. Yeah, for sure. And it's unfortunate because when you have a, a Juggernaut, you kind of want to... I mean, it is, like you said, an empowered Juggernaut, so you will be farming at a much higher rate. doesn't have to go for, like... I mean, we've seen Battle Fury way in the past, but more Maelstrom or Echo Saber type builds. Just straight for the tanky SNY because you can take advantage of the cleave from Zai here. Uh, but we'll see what uh, Secret wants to do here to try to get back in the game. It's not exactly an insurmountable lead by any means, but anytime you have a Morphling and you're off to a good start, that usually bodes pretty well for the Morphling team. And I would assume he's going to go E-Blade first before the Ag, so that's when Shadow Realm really <laughs> becomes yep. completely filthy. And I believe it works with the Talon, if I'm not mistaken, right? The, uh, the waveform striking through targets. Yes. Level 20 Talon. Oh, God. Yeah. So looking forward to that one. Morphling is one of the <laughs> gotta be the one of the hardest heroes to balance in the game. Yep. Along with Rubik. Well Rubik is more bug fixes than anything <laughs> actually. And here goes the mid tower. So Toronto Tokyo will get it. Sika will annoy him a little bit with the glyph, they might as well. Actually, yep. they're going to back off. They were worried that Secret were turning this into a fight. So showing a lot of respect here. That was a one hit away, and now it's going to get denied instead by Yapsor. 
Damn, respecting the blink RP potential. Might be it. I feel like Kunkka was pretty safe there, but there is the risk, I guess, of getting blink skewer RP'd and then Omni slashed under the tower. So yeah. perhaps there. Yeah, we didn't really talk about that potential, but obviously Omni slash will cleave because of the empower on top of that. Then you have the soul bind with the double phantoms embrace. They have, they do have good wombo combo potential. But Team Spirit still sporting this 3K net worth lead. And we can see Toronto Tokyo working towards an AC. So going for even more tank and obviously some damage to go along with that. As Spirit Vessel almost done on Mira. All right, Toronto Tokyo. Oh, not able to save his teammate. Mira gets taken out by Nisha. Really wants a high five, does Nisha. Not even his teammates high five. <laughs> He's like... Well, Puppy's probably like, you know what? Just let that go on cooldown. I want to mess Not with Not only playing solo mid, he's Top. just solo in the game. There's no one else in it. <laughs> I wonder Lion. if bots oh, will just high five barely you dodging everything here, Mipushka. Tranquil Boots, Windlace helping out massively there to just run away. If either of those spells hit, he is dead immediately. Oh well, yeah, Secret do get a pick on Mira. It's something. Um, still, you're... Uh, it feels like Spirit are pretty comfortable with just farming up their Morphling in particular. I think maybe when he hits the E-Blade is when they will be looking to play a little bit more aggressively and fight. Yeah, I feel like the I mean the pressure is on Secret to start something. I think, like you said, Team Spirit more than happy they to farm Zai. Uh, Inkswell okay, with the Skewer. I think he overshot nothing. his Blink. So obviously the range penalty when you click the Blink too far away. Mm -hmm. And then you can't really do the Shockwave-Skewer combo off of that. So... Mira will get away. A very slow-paced game for Secret, as Team Spirit are sitting pretty right now. now. I thought that with the Blink Dagger on Zai that they would try to get a little bit more aggressive, but hasn't come to be. Is there something that, like on Matu that they're waiting for? Because looks like Scotty is the, the big ticket item for him, only a point booster away, essentially, now. Mm. Oh, hang on. We, we have a smoke, rush. Team Spirit. Oh, the oh. Aether Remnant does spot them. We'll see if they notice, if Secret did notice that. It looks like Nisha did. Yeah. Oh, he's going to get Ravaged, though, into the waveform and blown up. Noticed it or not, Cinderin. He's dead. Yep. I still don't know after that whether he noticed it or not and just got surprised by how quickly they found and killed him. But it did feel like a defensive Remnant you placed to avoid that exact play, and then you still got hit by it when you, when you yeah. got the vision. But... Well, it is Ravage down. Secret will try to get a tier 2 tower bottom out of this. Yeah, Toronto Tokyo just <laughs> doing the old X marks the spot shenanigans. I'll try to push this and out of the meantime. tower trade. Great kill for them, though. Already, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Nisha with this game has now quadrupled his amount of deaths on Void Spirit in the main event. Okay. By getting three in this game. Wow. Very impressive as Roche um, is being taken out by Spirit. E-Blade was already completed for that kill on Yataro, so on his way to the Ags next. So this is going to be a freebie for Team Spirit. Aegis likely to go to Yataro. For style points, he's going to waveform through it and grab it on the way out of yeah. the pit. That's when you know he's really feeling himself here. Yeah. It's that efficiency. Oh, we have a skewer back onto Collapse into the Blade Fury, but Matu just doesn't do that much damage right now. Needs the Shard, which he is going for next. E-Blade, apply to him for now. Nisha able to blow up Maposhka on the front line here. So this turns into a 5v4 situation with Secret having the advantage, but they don't have the Roche advantage. Oh, Zai, RP only onto one, but can't really find a maneuver to try to skewer him back, but it doesn't matter. Nisha and Matu blow up Toronto, Tokyo. And they're not done yet. Mira. Mira. Looks think, like he... Oh, the skewer does cancel the TP in Shadow Realm form. And that is going to turn into a third kill for Secret, despite giving up Roche win that fight handily. So that basically, based on just the net worth alone, evens up the game, which is what Secret obviously needed with this more mid-game centric lineup. Yeah. Gabe's neural network still likes Spirit quite a bit better from the yeah. overall team fight and scalability of their lineup, but that is step number one for Secret to put this into a better position for themselves. And yeah, you just, you don't count out melee carry with Empower. 
it can always happen. Team Spirit need to be on their toes the whole game to avoid getting RP'd into an Omni Slash. Mm -hmm. Even a hero like Morphling that's generally considered super difficult to kill can just die in a burst. Has to be careful. Obviously that time it was the Kunkka they went for. Uh, there was no... First of all, Morph had the Aegis and secondly he wasn't in position to really get caught. Another big item coming up soon for Spirit, by the way. The Dagger, Miposhka 300 away will definitely be very helpful for them. Because he has been getting caught a couple of times. Oh, instant Hex bottom. Oh, they predicted boy. this for Nisha. in a lot of trouble. Boat's going to be connected with the Finger of Death, but Nisha jumps forward to try to get Retribution. He does just that. Miposhka finds his way to the grave. Nisha X marks back into the fray, though. And it's eventually brought down, but at least he takes somebody with him. Yeah, he had a choice to make there. I actually think he could have escaped. Uh, but he doesn't know that for sure that reinforcements aren't arriving, so he's going for the kill instead and hoping he can get out, but not possible there. So, if you're Team Spirit, you're happy with this. Even though your lion died, he still made progress on the Blink Dagger from just the assist gold and obviously having the good old Philosopher's Stone. AC completed now on Toronto, Tokyo. So, can I give... A lot more armor, some attack speed. It'll help the push as well if they really want to try to take some buildings here. This is a good time for a question for you. Okay. You're never going to guess what I'm going to ask you about. <sighs> my question for you is, what is my question going to be? <laughs> <laughs> what is the active of Fey Grenade called? Yes! No, uh, what's the pat? Yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> You're right, that was oh what I was going to ask, but... You're so predictable, well, wait. actually. Hey, you didn't guess I was going to ask you about the question itself, though. <laughs> that caught you off guard. Team Spirit. Well, what's the answer, then? I have no idea. Shadow Brand. Shadow Brand? Wow, that sounds painful. I feel like nobody in the world knows all this by heart. I'm sure there's somebody. Actually, probably all of chat knows. It's just yeah, us. Yeah, they've looked it up in yep. ahead of time. They knew it. To be prepared for this cast. All right, Team Spirit, you have 1 minute 20 left on your Aegis. You're going to put it to use here in mid. And tier 2 tower is going to be forded here. Aghanim's Scepter now online for Nisha, so the silence comes out with Resonant Pulse. And Yataro, yeah, only a minute to go. I don't think they're going to risk this, especially considering he's so close to finishing the Ags for himself. Yeah, it's a huge upgrade for him. And they're just going to bide their time. Not that big of a lead for, for Team Spirit, but they still are the favorites in this match. And Collapse, he has a Vlad's now going towards an Aghanim Scepter for himself. So going to get the AoE Gush. As Was Sharp actually not picked up by Matu? I guess not. He's prioritizing going for the Shadow Blade right now. Figured that the, the Shard would be pretty nice for him this game. Apply Scotty to everybody he's hitting, get the extra attacks and more movement speed. I think the, the thing about this is he just wants to hit as fast as possible with Empower, and you kind of stifle yourself when you go into Blade Fury. So That's he, true. he might just want to just deck out on damage. Uh, he has a lot of health, so the Blade Fury defensive capability is less important. I, I say that now, just wait until Morph gets to lay into him with the Axe, right? But true. Um, I think from Team Seeker's perspective, you're looking to try to win the fight fast instead of playing extended fights because you're not going to win those anyway. So in that case, would, would it be worth buying the shard? Probably not. Yeah. You want to get that very quick advantage with that so, Shadow Blade here. Ags officially online for Yataro. And he's already turned into Dark Willow, just getting used to the feel of the new body, as it were. Mm -hmm. So Shadow Realm with Ags, for those that don't know, you can basically attack consistently while it's on, so you just get this extra magic damage boost. Well, seeing it put to use here. Yep. And you get the extra range. It is very powerful. Nothing wrong here? Nope. Well, it's not two fissures, so... <laughs> not two enchant totems with fey grenades. That either. is a very dangerous way of thinking about balance in Dota. If you're, like, <laughs> yeah, rebalancing true. heroes, you're like, well, at least they don't have two fissures, so everything <laughs> is fine, right? Well, that's the beauty of Dota. Is Justify almost anything. Most of the <laughs> ultimates in this game, like, if you just look at it in a vacuum, it's just like, wow, that is actually overpowered. But that's the beauty of it. Yep. Every hero has is kind of, quote, unquote, broken in its own way. Well, not every hero. Troll's ult still sucks, let's be real. His, uh... <laughs> it's broken in its own way. It'll, that's true. <laughs> in a different way entirely. But no. Uh, man, Troll, I wish he was picked more in this tournament. One of the more exciting position ones to, to watch, because... 
Uh, the ultimate, you just never know what's going to happen, right? From a viewer perspective, at least. As Puppy taking out some illusions here. And the real question is, Yapsor working on an Ags, and he is. So yeah. about 15, 1,800 away from finishing that. Dark Portrait could have a big impact on this game, as we illustrated earlier. Yeah, he is also queuing up the shard. It does give him some interesting uh, counterplay potential with that okay. strong dispel. Okay. If he precasts it on Jugger or Void Spirit when they go in, uh, can obviously save them from Ravage or from Terrorize or, you know, line combos. If they, as long as they instant press one of their defensive abilities coming out of the swell, uh, could prove to be really useful. But uh, not. Oh, so I guess off the horn toss skewer into the RP, but the BKB is activated. It's not really going to help against the Omni Slash, but a lot of it is tanked with creeps. So Toronto Tokyo getting some backup with Collapse and a huge Ravage. Down goes Matu, and now you see Yataro at his best. E-Blade, double kill, three dead for Secret. In his Shadow Realm form, just decimating. Nisha able to get a pick off, though. But very unfortunate that there was a creep wave there, Sinner, because I think he was dead. I'm not even sure he was dead there. You, it's you gotta, possible. You've got to look at the stats for this. Like, it, it's... I don't really like this try from Secret. I like the logic of going for the play itself, but you got to take into account what the numbers are, right? This is a Kunker with 3,000 health and 40 armor. Mm -hmm. He has AC and Blast Rig. So super tanky against this Jug Magnus combination and kind of seemed like a bait the whole time that they put him in front like that. Oh, no, that's all right. a deadline to try to ward. Dude, Nisha finds so many picks in these games on the supports just randomly. You know, instantly assassinates the Willow and now finds the Lion. This is still, despite losing those two heroes in the end for Spirit, a huge win for them. Getting the core kill onto Mag and Jug. And having RP and Omni see the expended. replay here. Horn so toss. look at this Omni. So yep. there's like That's there's four. three swings. There's no way. All right, it would have been close. But yeah, you're right. I think he would have lived. He is just insanely tanky. And Willow, uh, I mean, more more flow just more everyone. flow. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be funny if for no particular reason it just changes the hero name temporarily while you're in that form. <laughs> just combines them. The secret have now smoked up. So what trying to get back into this game. What would be the best name for Morph in this game if he took half of another hero's name? Morph Hunter. Morph Hunter is pretty good. Yeah. Morph Spirit. Morpheon. Almost sounds like a Matrix mm. thing. You wouldn't know anything about that, of course. Secret More trying to find not. something here. Nisha at the top of the hill here. Actually going to use the Tome of Knowledge for himself. Toronto Tokyo and Company are trying to g gain control of their triangle RP again. RP is up again. No Omni for another five seconds, though. So uh, Team Spirit probably don't have the perfect timers here on spells. They might have felt like if we go right now, the ultis are down. Um, Secret will have them now, though. But regardless, is not gonna. The fight will not break out anyway. Roche up in one minute. Silver Edge complete on Matsu gives him the possibility of killing Tide very easily. And of course, I think I think Matsu plus Nisha can just kill the Tide from full HP if they get the Silver Edge hidden and they just mm -hmm. go to town both of them together. Uh, but Collapse has been doing a good job at not getting caught out. Interesting to see Tide not really play a frontline position for the most part for the lineup. It has been that Kunka BKB. He yeah, waits that is behind true. and finds the Ravage. He can straight up buy Ags right now and collapse, but obviously wants to preserve the buyback in case yeah. a Roche fa fight has uh, is going to come here soon, I would assume. As, oh, Puppy's found. The X with the boat, Puppy. Crimson Witness, will it save him, Cinderin? That is a red nature's attendance. Is Absolutely. Not he lives. Yeah, he's tanky. He's got the Solar Crest Glimmer Cape and the level 4 heal plus the Attendance talent on 15 and the Magic Resist talent on 10. One of the biggest upsides to Enchanters in the mid game as a support is honestly just your ability to soak damage. Whether you die there or not, the enemy team has to commit a lot of spells. And if you're fighting next to your own outpost, you can buy back, connect back in, and maybe your team can win the fight off all the spells that are gone. So, yeah. Didn't even have the strong dispel on Yapsor yet there. I don't know why I thought he had that. But he's obviously still working on the Axe. But that will help eventually. Yeah. I mean, Grimstroke scales so well. I mean, it, it's it's cool to see a hero that was originally kind of like, okay, we picked this hero for a double spell because of Soulbind. They don't really have that at all here, right? Right. But he's picked for multiple reasons now. Uh, one of which is the, the shard with the dispel like you talked about, and of course Aghanim Scepter being a pseudo-counter to some of these ridiculously high agi 
or stat-based uh, carries like Morphling. But still a ways away from finishing that. As Toronto Tokyo making his way to Secret's Jungle. Nisha's in. All right, Nisha doing a lot of damage to Lion in the meantime. We see a skewer on the other side. Toronto Tokyo gets RP'd again he won't into the Omni time. Slash again. Will he live this time, Cinderin? The Blade Fury is out. He's not doing that much damage, but finally goes down. It takes so much to kill him. Oh, great Earth right, Spike on Nisha, e -blade, but there's the E on this to proc. A huge kill for Seeker, but my lord, Cinder and Gaben Almighty, that took a lot. Yeah. Into the Roche Pit, I assume they will attempt. Yeah, no buyback on the Kunkka. They don't know this, obviously, but they might have a feeling because of the Crystallis that he was showing in that fight. I don't doesn't seem like they have the confidence to try to push for it, though. Even mm -hmm. 4v5, I think Team Spirit can still win a fight. Well, they don't have Ravage either, though, so maybe not, but I'm never counting out Morph Willow. True. Crazy stuff can always happen, yeah, and they're going to the find it. Initiation, Yataro's in here as well, but Nisha jumps in and blows up the lion. Buyback to come right afterwards. It looks like Puppy's going to live here. Matu continuing to go ham. Double kill for him. Three dead for Team Spirit. Yataro in his Shadow Realm form gets the silence off. Can they actually bring him down this time? Impetus does quite a bit of damage. There's the Astral Step to follow. Has his Attribute Shift. Can't, they just not doing enough damage to him. Yataro getting spinned out with that Shard Matu into the Aether Remnant. Another buyback for Team Spirit. Yataro gets the waveform off. There's the burst damage from Lion. Yataro finally taken out by Nisha. It takes so much to kill these heroes. The most but secret find it. E play combo I have seen in my entire life. <laughs> he did a grand total of like 150 damage with his E play. <laughs> Adaptive strike onto Matsu. Fully strength morphed. He threw everything he had in the bag at him, and it was nothing. And Secret, all of a sudden, this one fight. Yeah. Oh my god, talk about dropping off a cliff. Look at these graphs. Oh, yeah. That is uh, that is quite some graph there. As we see... Look at this graph. The beginning okay. of the fight here again. Nisha doing a great job. Oh, such of a good start for Secret in that fight. And yeah, they just... You can see, okay, Matu Shard makes a huge difference here, Cinder, and that, that Blade Fury absolutely decimates. Yeah. I, I really like his choice of waiting with getting it until after the Silver Edge, though. I think that Guy's was so overall tanky. a good choice. So we're going to see the rest of this replay play out. <laughs> Try to pay attention to this E-Blade okay. coming yep. in. Out of all things, I am focusing on it because it's such a standout low damage spell. Right, let's wait for it. Morph down this far. Wave so they form. find Jack here, and here it is. Boom! Oh, oh, yeah! Damn! That, that felt real good, I'm sure. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Zai, very animated. You don't see that very often. But oh. Team Secret, knowing that they have turned this game around. Double damage is available for Matu. He's going to bottle it up. Aegis is in his inventory. Secret know how much is at stake here and how they, they're very experienced players. They know this game is hard and they know they were behind. So that fight means so much to them. And they're going to try to snowball off at Matu. And the Silver Edge will not find anyone. He's actually going to run through an ob sentry combination here. So Team Spirit know he's coming up. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even sure who took the shard because every single member of Secret has their shard now. Uh, I would, Might have been Yapsor. I think it was Yapsor, yeah. Probably. So that is very cool to see. And Matu and company waiting for... All, all their ults are back up, so it can go at any time now with that Aegis still in tow. As Collapse has a Shiva's for himself. I mean, from Team Spirit's perspective, is there an item or maybe a talent that they're needing to get to to take to the next level here in these fights i'm wondering if tide needs bkb um oh they found him bottom matu oh, yeah mafosha gets the stun off matu that's gonna be the aegis good catch not they a ton expended out. here they got what they came for really really nicely done not overstaying for the second kill straight back to mid that's a big pick that aegis is important for secret if they wanted to pressure some high ground and now they might have to calm down a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Especially Zai. You can't show emotion like that. It's not on brand. <laughs> Take it easy, bro. Oh, well, <laughs> you have the initiation on Toronto Tokyo. He's going to force out the BKB. So nicely done for Seeker. Didn't look like they were wanting to commit anyway. So ends up baiting that out. Butterfly now on Matu. Uh, any big talents we're looking forward to here, Cinder? And 25 is close. For Matu, you can go for the extra HP or Omni Slash duration. Nisha's will be huge, Yeah, Nisha's is... Oh, we've talked about that so many times. Kunkka 25, Ghost Ship Fleet. Yeah, uh, he might take the Tidebringer cooldown as well. Um, it will lower the cooldown from four to two seconds. He has a lot of damage items, so okay, could could be a decent choice here as well. 
Uh, Morphling 25 will more than likely take two waveform charges. Will most definitely take two waveform charges, especially when he has Willow in his team. You turn into Willow, you waveform through the entire team twice, and well, you probably don't do that at this level. They'll probably position properly, but you get the idea. Thanks, Mark. It's all about the theory. Way. Yep. Yeah, Secret can't really access the base right now, but they do have them cornered, and that's what they really want here. They have Team Spirit pinned down. They will find the one avenue to exit their base, which will be through this bottom lane, yeah. as Secret are clearly holding on to the triangle. I mean, something to keep in mind here is we can see the buyback status. Matu doesn't have his, but everybody else on his team does, and zero people from Team yeah. Spirit have one, but obviously Team Secret won't be privy to this information, or at least most of them as Morphling only needs a couple, or 400 gold to get his. And now new neutral items are dropping, Cinderman. Uh, we got Spell Prism, okay. Goes on the Morph. I think he's going to keep it. Very good for him to get the CDR. As we have a Ninja Gear on Secret, so... Uh, could be potentially put on Zai. Yeah, I think I believe he picked it up there, so... We'll give him that uh, single target smoke so he can get off his initiations without being seen. And Matu gets the Penta Edge Sword. I think this is one of the best heroes in the game to get this item on. Uh, you get the, obviously the flat damage, but the attack range. Mm -hmm. And then the, the maim. That Old school Saint Yasha maim. Man, yeah. happy they brought that back, actually. I missed that. As Yotaro is in his Dark Willow form. Zai is going to show in the bottom lane, but only to defend. Keeping a safe distance here. He's going for a BKB for himself as well. Very tense game here, Cinder. And oh, yep. the Hex initiation from Miposhka. Into the gush to follow. Collapse actually blocks off the tree line. Very nice. And with the finger and the E-blade, Zai takes a tumble. Puppy. They still have buyback on Zai if they really want to fight here. Puppy feeling pretty confident. There's the jump in from Nisha. Trying to go for the Dark Willow. Not going to be able to get the kill yet. And looks like Secret are playing a little bit more defensive, but they do force the buyback out of Zai. Yeah. Secret, that hmm. was a little bit uncharacteristic for them. You know, the, there's nothing for Zai to really TP on. There's no tier 2 tower. There's obviously no outpost in this area that he can connect with. And Team Spirit have all the opportunity in the world there to disengage. There's nothing pinning them down so that Mag would be able to connect in time. And eventually just, ultimately, that just feels like a wasted buyback that doesn't really give them anything unless they find an opening now. Nisha completes his Octarine core. Yapsor will complete his mm. eggs in 50 gold. And Ooh. despite that secret, are still looking to fight so close to a really key item, potentially. Oh, I'll try to find He's going to get sheep right off the bat. This will be a dieback for Team Secret. And they lose Yapsor as well. Matu, oh, he's going to get, get his TP canceled as well. There's the Terrorize to follow. Team Spirit. Three quick kills in their favor. They had that old Ob sentry down here from four minutes ago wow. that Secret were standing on, and it makes all the difference there for getting that Hex onto onto the mag. I think Yapsor got one shot with the Kunkka Cleave as well, he by the way. definitely disappeared somewhere. That was just that Silver Edge hit onto the mag. Yapsor just vanished. That's yeah. huge. They don't have buyback on Jug or mag. Yeah, this, this is at least if... If they push for it, they could almost win. This is reminiscent of the IG game in the upper bracket that we started out the entire main event with, yep. where Team Spirit fall behind, they find one key fight, and they just go for everything. Let's see if they have the confidence here to do it. They yep, know they there's no the buyback three. on Mag. They don't know about Jug. Yeah. Not knowing about Jug means that they probably play this a little bit safe. So they're going to get the bottom set of racks. No, nope. we collapse about like... the same Team Spirit here? Yep. They're going for the win here. We have the X into the boat. Down goes Puppy. He does have buyback. Nisha jumping in, trying to buy some time for his team, but still 40 seconds away from these core heroes coming back. Nisha, Eondis does proc. Fortification is finally forced out for Team Secret. Team Spirit looking to finish this game number two to force a game three in this lower bracket finals. Dark Portrait is available for Yapsor. As we see the Soulbind, there is the Dark Portrait. Morphling doing a lot of damage. The Silence coming in from Nisha as well. Yatara getting extremely low, trying to focus the, the Ancient. He dies, but buys back into the game. The Ravage now, though. Nisha's dead, buys back himself, focusing on the Rax. Where is Yataro? He's still trying to make his way onto this side of the map. They're just going to focus the Rax, and Team Spirit take game two in very, very exciting fashion. What a way to win that game. You know the saying, wards win games. 
I don't think Team Spirit, when they placed that ward combination down there, expected that that was what was going to win them the game four minutes later. But what do you know? Secret Wander down there. They get caught off guard and they don't have their buybacks. And this was a game that Secret pulled back from looking really, really rough. They get into a favorable position. They lose their ages on Matu bot, and then they still continue to play offensively in the enemy jungle, and they get punished really hard by an incredible play from Spirit. These guys just have something. Yeah. They just have something, you know? <laughs> There's it's, something uh, they have that I want as well, Cinderin, but we're too old for that, sadly. Uh, but it is tied one to one in this lower bracket finals between Team Secret and Team Spirit. Let's go to the panel to break down this game number two. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Effie, as soon as you saw the draft, you were just like, yep, Spirit, I've got this in the bag. And you were right. Yeah. Uh, to me, that looked like a really free Morphling game, to be honest. There was no pressure for him on lanes. It looked like he would hit his timings really well. And of course, he had the Willow combination. I, I know that a lot of people were praising Secrets draft maybe in that game, but it didn't look very good because I don't like the combination of Enshagrim supports and I don't want to just make this about draft, right? Because they took some really good fights. Nisha played out of his mind and it looked like there was a moment where they were just back in the game. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I, I don't want to make it specifically about drafts, but there is a couple of things that I wanted to highlight, which is number one, Dark Willow looked so good in that game, right? Yeah. And when you think about it, BSJ was talking about this Helm of Iron. Oh, sorry, I'm like out of breath. I'm like <laughs> drinking. We, we, I mean, we also but ran out to the desk, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's sorry, allowed. I'm like, I haven't caught my breath yet. But uh, so BSJ was talking about the Helm of Iron Will meta and how Enchantress is actually one of the very good heroes at punishing that, right? Because she hits it through armor and kind of zones them out of the lane. But the thing about Willow is she's a lane support. She does not really go mid unless she has to. So she was able to just sit on that lane and secure his game. And oh boy, did she bully the end. We like a little bit of a bullying dark Willow. Never underestimate the tiny fairy. In terms of the supports on secret side, Enchantress, and then we have the Grimstroke as well. Yeah, not, not the support duo that can go around the map and like do stuff. Puppy was very annoying as he always is on the Enchantress, you know, being in your face. Uh, I feel Gapsor should have given a bit more farm priority to be able to finish off that Aghanim Scepter. Could be a game changer. Unfortunately for them, there was no big boy Philly, no Philosopher draw for them because it can make the difference. It's probably the best item you can find on the Grimstroke, especially in this situation. So you want to make a replicate out of the Morphling, which uh, did not happen. But to go back to uh, Dark Willow, I think he had a really good game and also a bit back to lore, you know, Mira playing the Miraska. So, you know, a bit of a, bit of a nice... With Purge, with you, the name. Would, would you like to see an Enchantress and Grimstroke maybe swap lanes? Um, almost certainly no, just because okay. it's really important that Enchantress is able to stabilize Juggernaut. And that's why it was so important that Mira did a good job pressuring him, because he, uh, Puppy made that uncharacteristic mis characteristic mistake. He walked through two Bramble Mazes and that got him killed. And Enchantress typically wins lane. Now, Puppy still had a great mid and late game because he was tanking team fights, and that gave his team a lot of opportunities to do, like, disables on Kunko with Omni Slashes. But eventually, Team Spirit got those great hexes and disables, and that's what opened the game up, was initiation. And that's circle is strength, really. Like, if you place Brambles on ramps, that's, it, it's so hard to dodge those. And the th I was thinking about it, actually. So not only does she outright click the Enchantress, it would have to like force Enchantress to play on the lane and not on the side, which is something that Enchantress does not like to do. And if she did that, she just gets gushed by Tide and killed by the Dark Willow. So I honestly feel like maybe a lane swap would have actually been better in that. Team Spirit did the, a lot of uh, good like smoke rotations, uh, invading the enemy triangle, going for that Juggernaut kill, using the Torrent from the Fog and getting also a couple of stacks from there. Also nice cute little play from Collax, Collapse, backpacking his Vlads while there were smoke, so you can see them coming. You know, they're coming through the creep wave, but he's backpacking it, so there's like no, no that buff on the creeps. And uh, yeah, just the, the efficiency of the Team Spirit has been out of the roof so far throughout this tournament. Mm -hmm. Do you think though, sometimes Team Spirit are allowed to get away with certain mistakes. Like, for example, they didn't get away with it because uh, Secret farmed them. But when they got Roche about 22 minutes in, they were then just picked off by Team Secret. And that was a great advantage for Secret, but they couldn't quite capitalize on it. And I'm just wondering if, if Spirit deserved to lose more from that moment. Yeah, typically they would have lost more, but given the nature of their draft and how Morphling was under no threat until Juggernaut got a Scotty, and then maybe another heal reduction item even, it 
didn't translate into any kind of map control, really, just because of the nature of both drafts, right? And for Secret's draft to have won at that point in the game, they would have had to take it very, very late, because then that's when they would have struggled. But a hero that I wanted to highlight, who was kind of an unsung hero, was the Kunkka, right? He tanked so many spells. He tanked Omnislash, he tanked everything, and he just didn't die. It really felt like they had damage issues at some point. Well, Toronto, Tokyo, I suppose we didn't really talk about him much in the first game. Uh, in this game, then, is, he's your MVP, Effie. Um, I think collectively, <laughs> they all played very well. Uh, my personal MVP would probably be just like the Mira plus Yotaro combination in that game. But his hero did a lot for them in terms of absorbing damage. What about you, Purge? Yeah, that was really impactful. Like having those really tanky strength heroes with high armor. In this case, he got the AC relatively quick with the SNY and the BKB, and he was the frontliner. And it's really important to have that. Um, that was something the Team Sacred Draft kind of lacked. It makes it harder for Zai to do his job, to jump in, initiate, catch the right people. So he had to, to struggle with that a bit, unfortunately, for them. So, um, But as a whole, he played excellent. He's had great Kunkka performances pretty consistently throughout the tournament. He still had great GPM, last hits, everything. So, yeah, yep. still playing really good. It wasn't 20 minutes, but it was a good game for Team Spirit. So in some ways, we're now going to see a bit of a grand reset between Spirit and Secret because this next game wins it, the cost. Yeah, this is just the best of one and uh, which team can reset. I think uh, for Team Secret, they had a huge boost of confidence once they... Once they uh, won against OG and uh, dropped them to the lower bracket. Uh, this was like the big rivalry, not just in-game, but also on Twitter. A lot of memes, you know, they had some beef before. And this is where Team Secret, you know, got a bit of a good win in the back. Uh, looking at the Team Spirit, th this is a team that just doesn't care. Like, they like they don't care about what's happening in the game. They're going to be playing this uh, top tier Dota. They're not going to be over using their abilities. There's not going to be like almost no mistakes made. When you watch them play while they're winning, it's just, you know, beautiful. I, I, I don't think I've seen team perform so well under so much pressure and being so relatively young. You know, they have some experience coming out from the silent, their coach and also Miposhka, but the rest of the team is very young. That really showed, I think, yesterday when they won their match as well. I was, I was surprised when they won. They they sit up from their seats and they're not like freaking out hype when they yeah. got top like, three instead of top whatever. four. They're like, all right, we won next next game. It's like, uh, and I, Frank, you said that earlier about Miposhka. He's like, oh, we haven't won yet. That's, that's like the crow mentality that we've heard in years past. Like, it doesn't matter until you win the whole thing. Well, one game stands between Poppy, who has been to 10 internationals standing between him and the final is of course team secret this could be his last game on the ti10 stage so we're going to check in with him and find out what he thinks of his teammates i probably have the best connection with these people than any team i've ever been in if all of us didn't need to play dota together we would be in a very very good spot as people Nisha is our quiet, skilled boy, really great guy. Like nothing bad I can say about this dude. Same thing for Zai, you know, skilled dude. We hang around all the time. All of our team just constantly chills out at Discord. Matu is just the greatest. He's just hilarious without knowing that he's hilarious type of thing. Yazid is just, you know, he's just a clown, honestly, but he's just like the things, the funny things he says and the charismatic strength he has is very high. And uh, he is just like, he's just great. You know, he's literally a very good rational person. He just can listen to you. And even though he disagrees with you completely, he can completely disagree with you, like hate everything that you just said, but it won't show. He's a politician, goddammit. This guy doesn't show anything. He's, he's, gonna, he's gonna go far. But uh, for now, he's, you know, coaching some, you know, uh, little children playing Dota, like me. It's important to actually be a child in this game. It's important to do it. Because if you don't have that same feeling, uh, a child's gonna beat your ass. Sorry. Interesting there. I like the puppy's own description of himself is as a child. And the team of kids are now making their way to their favorite kind of playground. It is the main stage here at TI10 at the National Arena Bucharest. This is the moment of truth for both of these teams. One game standing between them and the grand final against PSG LGD. These booths have probably never felt so intimidating, but one of these teams, they've been here before. They've been here many times and for Team Spirit, well, 
They know it's anyone's game. And after that second game performance, they're going to really be believing in themselves right now, Lacoste. Oh, yeah, they're just feeling themselves as this tournament progresses. Uh, they tend to play better. They don't crumble under the pressure. They, It's just, I don't know. I been praising them so far throughout the tournament i don't think i can find like another way to say how good they are and how enjoyable they are to watch may i just say i love what puppy said in that interview about having to be a child to be here and win this game because you still have to enjoy what you do and you have to love the game and you have to just be able to not feel the nerves and just kind of immerse yourself in this environment to win and look how far they've made it. And that's exactly the quality that Team Spirit has, by the way. That's taken them this far, I would say. Yeah. In, in this interview, Papi was, to sum it up, it was pretty much, you know, just a bunch of uh, dudes being bros kind of a mentality. It really it, helps a lot too when you have uh, losing streaks where you have a bad game, then your morale doesn't drop. You can still like keep your head together. No one's like mad at each other. Any of those like underneath problems that you have with each other don't like boil up and become big issues. You can just reset and play another game as, as long as you have a slightly better draft or different strategy. And I'm glad that Team Secret can do this, but also just, I remember at the Animator, when every team was always so stressed, every night they would go to their practice rooms and just do whatever they do in there. Sometimes they're just talking, sometimes they're reviewing drafts, but in their free time, Team Spirit would just go play ping pong and then <laughs> they'd play ping pong for hours. <laughs> Anyone who walked on to get anything from the animator lobby would just see them playing ping pong. They would hug the table. So just the fact that they can just have fun together and not be that nervous during these kinds of events is really cool. Yeah, and we've seen some spice because they've been acting, you know, the, like those Giga Chad dudes, but we've also <laughs> seen a Giga Chat coming out from Toronto, Tokyo with the easy game. You know, that's, that's the stuff that I like to see. <laughs> Well, for Team Spirit, it has certainly been quite the journey. Speaking to Mira yesterday, he was talking about the fact that he joined in February. He'd played with Collapse earlier on in 2020. And now this team is in the top three at the international. A Cinderella story, if we ever heard one. Team Spirit versus Team Secret. Game three. And we're here with a draft of game three between Team Spirit and Team Secret with my panel of BSJ and Jenkins. There we go. That was way less cool than we thought it would be. I thought it was very cool. Thank you. Especially with a slap. Anyway, we're here with the third draft. What can we be expecting, my wonderful analyst BSJ? I think we're expecting a Magnus again, but they may have to ban out the tide. It just makes the game a lot more complicated when you have a hero you can't RP. That's walking right at you. Would you agree, Jenkins? Yeah, that seemed like a nice solution uh, to, the, to the Magnus, the, the RP. Even, even the fact that, you know, okay, when we're talking about Pudge Hook, you know, going back to Pudge, who's the one hero you don't want to hook in? What, it, why? Be, because, why do we have to go back because to Pudge? Everybody we're knows, see Pudge at this draft. No, 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 everybody knows this example. Yeah. Literally every single Dota player knows the example of, oh, Pudge hooks the tide, he ravages, you die. Magnus is the same thing, but also, okay, actually, no, it's not banned out. Lion is banned, all supports. Huh. So I guess you're King saying Secret that he disagrees? doesn't want to skewer in the tide. Yeah, you don't want to skewer. Well, so I think so was so the entire point. So you have the Kraken shell for the RP, okay. but then also the element of you don't want to skewer in a tide hunter, and tide hunter but, is going to stand in your face. It's the same thing where when the, in the Animator, people were picking Dragon Knight, and then the counter to it was to put the tide hunter in front, who's going to Kraken shell off the, the stun. But it's not just that. It's also like Dragon Knight doesn't pull the tide into the fight. But they banned Lion. They did indeed ban Lion. Yes, yeah. that's, that's like a Tide, but with only one direction. Maybe, maybe, they, maybe they enable the Tide with the Lion, just because Tide, like historically, you just don't fight him. So you just play the split push game, farm yeah, it up. Pick off. Yeah. Yeah. OK. That's fair. It's been happened before, though. I remember in the, uh, I think it was TI9, when they fought against Liquid, uh, they were talking about the Alchemist plus Chen strap, right? That was TI9, I think. And they, after in the, in the exit interview, they said that, or Puppy said, that they thought the Chen was the problem. It was actually Alchemist the whole time. So it might be one of those repeats when they see a combo and they think the Lion's the problem, but it's actually the Tide, as Jenkins yeah. said. Yeah, or, or like the flip side, like maybe this is like the five head play from Puppy is that the Lion is the actual issue and it's not necessarily the Tide. I, I would trust him more than you. Yeah, generally. of course, naturally. naturally. Yes. So they should probably pick IO here. Oh, they're going to plan for the IO. Oh, and they okay. get the Magnus. So what happened against LGD was that secret, okay, 
This started with Team Spirit seeing a tiny in the lower bracket and responding with Wyvern Mag. And then, L and then LGD, okay, I'm sorry. Secret did the same thing to LGD in the winner bracket finals where they let LGD have the tiny and responded with Wyvern Mag. And, they lost and you don't want to pick IO into Wyvern Mag because the IO tiny will just get RP'd and cursed together and the IO will just die. So they replaced the IO, like the buffer, the attack speed, with an ogre mm -hmm. on the side of LGD. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing like three series carry over from one to yeah, another. The, the ogre was first phase banned here too. Yeah, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. They it's banned the so ogre. interesting, yeah. It's like you never expect an ogre to be first phase banned prior to like two days ago. Yeah. But because of how things have progressed in terms of essentially countering the tiny, this is, this is what has happened, that Ogre is first phase banned. So it's interesting because that was probably a read by Team Spirit saying, we still have Tide in the pool. And they actually probably agree with you that if they pick first pick Mag, we just Tide and we beat them again. So they knew the Tiny was going to happen, which is why they last banned the Ogre. Yeah, it's a lot of mind games going on. We see the Tiny when it's first picked is almost always a Necro, Ursa, Lifestealer are usually the three bands that come out in yeah. the second round. Uh, these, these teams, they just learn from each other. They see things that work and don't work. And sometimes it's a matter of like Lifestealer, for instance, isn't a free game versus Tiny by any means. But we saw one of the few heroes that doesn't mind getting slapped by Tiny for 10 seconds in a row because he will out sustain it. And also ET's aura doesn't work through magic immunity. So that's a hero I'm keeping an eye out for. They've actually banned the Ember. Hmm. Interesting. Ember Mag. Yeah, last, last time we saw LGD actually do this against Secret, where they picked the Tiny and then they banned out like, all of the counters in the second phase. What and then, but, but then they also picked the Phoenix into Snapfire. And I was thinking a big reason that they did that is because they essentially decided, and we were, we were talking to Seb backstage actually ab about this, that LGD had essentially decided that those were all of the heroes that they didn't have an answer to. And anything that they had left in the pool, it was likely that they had, they had some sort of counter pick you know, like a, a Pugna versus like Necrophos, for example, if you've got a great Pugna player. And then Phoenix, picking it into Snapfire is kind of insane. It's like you just press, oh, I always forget the little shredder. Little, shredder. little shredder, and then you kill the egg, right? But, but the thing is, it's like a tiny counter, and then it's also good for the team fights. And so you're block picking it, and then you're also getting it, it's better for the game. But we also made a point that in that specific draft, it was really difficult for the Snapfire to get into position and actually shoot the egg down, which actually forced Secret into the, the Weaver heroes, pick. Like, there was like a puck and, and exactly. other heroes like that. So yeah. Secret went for the Weaver trying to break the lines, and then they got a bad core to core matchup. So we might be seeing something similar for Spirit if we see Secret going for more team fight. I think we will see a Weaver or a Snap come out for Spirit. Okay. Uh, in the landing phase against Tiny, those are two of the best supports because he starts with zero armor. Ah, this is the BSJ theory. How do you counter the Tiny according to you? It's the zero armor in lane. Like until level six, Tiny is not, not good against physical damage. And these heroes eventually are still a nuisance for him because the Weaver bugs. Uh, they take a lot of attacks to and remove and Tiny, Tiny does a lot of damage per attack but doesn't attack very fast. Yeah, like he basically has to build into attack speed in order to make up for the fact that he just has he has none. Uh, another nice thing about Weaver too is like obviously Spirit, they've been picking this throughout the entire tournament, so they know how to play it. That's going to play into whether or not they pick it. But if you're playing against two melee strength heroes, very easy to get the bugs on them. And then also you're going to pick up a Spirit Vessel on Weaver and percentage magic damage is how you deal with the Tiny's massive HP pool and armor. I have the last ban here. So what was the, they banned Lifestealer, I remember. And what was the other one that they considered? Uh, it's usually Ursa. Yeah, Ursa the Lifestealer. Life I'm, I'm, because you have the ET, I think the Lifestealer is the better ban because he's not only good against Tiny, but he's also really good against your other hero. So could this be an Ursa pick for Spirit, Jenkins? It could, and I would assume that Secret obviously having dealt with this in the LGD series, if they're letting an Ursa through, it's something that they think that they can counter. It's something that they think that they have an answer for. And I mean, that's, that's what pro drafting is in general. It's like you think you have an answer for something. It turns out you don't. You ban it the next game. So whether or not Puppy's right about that is, is you know, up for debate. But they could definitely pick the Ursa. It's great against Elder Titan, too. Like, there's absolutely no way an Elder Titan's going to run up and start punching an Ursa. So it's just a really easy hero that you can kill in every team fight. And it's worth killing him, too. Yeah, it, there's two thoughts going into this Ursa pick, because if you want the Ursa really badly, you're going to pick it here, but you're also not concerned that Secret's going to take it, because they already have most likely what is their carry, and if it isn't their carry, they're most likely going to leave it open until the last pick. So you have to ask yourself, do you want, if you plan to pick the Ursa anyways, you probably pick it here, because if you pick it fourth into counters that they already picked, then there's no reason to hold off, but at the same time, you don't, you're not worried about the other team taking it. Rubik ban. Could, also, could be the Weaver that you were talking about. Yes, it's Jay. Rubik or Snap. It's a Weaver or Snap. I'm okay. pretty sure. 
But Rubik is also good against Magnus for the telekinesis, zero cast point stun, or almost zero. You know, the nice thing about Weaver as a support position is that it's, it's kind of similar to what we saw when, I believe, Secret picked it as the, the carry position. It's that you can survive the tiny burst, well, you think you can survive the <laughs> tiny burst, and then you press R and you're full HP and tiny doesn't have the burst, right? And so it's the same thing we saw Faces Void actually beat the tiny uh, earlier in the tournament because of the, the same principle where you're just dodging all of the burst and obviously Weaver has a longer cooldown on that, but as a support, you can have a carry who's actually building into Scotty, building into Satanic, these tanky items, and then save them with the Weaver Aghanim Scepter, and then all of a sudden Tiny's not as much of, a, of an issue. Oh. I was not expecting the Willow again. It worked really well last game, but I don't think these heroes on Secret are the same as we saw, like the Magnus combo. They don't have, they don't have like a clear time that you're supposed to terrorize in this game for the Willow. But maybe they, they also are unlikely to go for the morph because you have E.T. on the other side who removes all of his armor. Maybe, Interesting pick. Maybe the idea is around the brambles because Tony is not the traditional BKB carry due to his stat resistance. And then you're constantly getting brambled and you can't run around freely. Might also stop the potential like and tiny combo. Yeah, sure. And it's also, it's also like disengage too. You can just you know, pick and choose your fights and that sets up for the Winter Wyvern and the Magnus to hit better spells. Uh, obviously, they're big counter initiators, and you want to pick and choose your fights. There's the Lycan regardless. That's okay. it's the LGD draft. Uh, yeah, Lycan I wouldn't tiny. think I Willow see. is that great against Lycan. It's like you're not going to die the Lycan because you have Shadow Realm and maybe terrorize to cover yourself, but none of this threatens the Lycan. Uh, okay, now that you've controlled him or saved yourself, well, now what? And we saw that in the past, Mag, he used to build like Treads Echo Saber from the mid lane, or even sometimes build a little bit to right click from the off lane. And this cleave was good against Lycan's summons, but now Lycan's aura is global, so the hero is usually never anywhere near his summons. And then you also build like mobility on the mag, so Lycan's really good at zoning out the mag. And he's got one fight. summon, one huge summon instead of two little necro Like in units. necro books, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which you which, which would kill. So, so this. SD looks like it's preemptively kind of countering the Morphling, who you can steal illusions of, and I really do think the Team Spirit's about to pick Morphling. This draft looks like, to me, that they're just saying, we're really confident in this strategy, we just won with it, it looked really good, like, we don't care if you counter us. It might be preemptively countering Ursa as well, That's because true. you have the Covers constant dispel against the Overpower, but you also have the save for the Winter's Curse and the RP. The disruption is incredibly powerful this game because Team Spirit doesn't have a way to jump him yet. They have to draft something like the Storm, and these heroes mm, don't wow. want to be okay. playing into, like mm. Storm Spirit mobile heroes, don't want to play into really beefy Lycans and Tinies. And Sven, Man. yes, it looks nice because of the armor, the Warcry, but that is also purged by Shadow Demon. Yep. And if he gets to an Ags at any point, if it's a, maybe a four position Shadow Demon, that, dis that break as well as Dispel consistently, it just ruins Sven. Yeah, this is a really kiteable Sven, it, it looks like right now. Uh, in terms of at least Team Secrets draft, they have the Disruption from Shadow Demon, they have the Ult from Shadow Demon, they have all the tiny stuns, which are on a low cooldown. Elder Titan, who's throwing all of these spells into melee range. BKB piercing, of course, the Earth Splitter. Uh, the Lycan can run his units around you. Of course, you can cleave those. We already talked about the cleaves not as good as it was before. But then on the flip side, there is a lot of setup potential from Spirit in terms of having some crazy wombo combo in the team fight. You have the Sven Cleave on top of the Magnus of Power, giving him even more Cleave, uh, as well as these like massive team fight ulties. They could 100% uh, have the Sven 1v5 in this game, but it requires some team fight synergy. And no Shadow Demon. Because the Shadow Demon really destroys this whole idea. If, if he gets purged, you lose the Empower there, you lose your War Cry, you're getting kited. True. Yeah. Like, this Shadow Demon has completely no It's nullified. a great pick. Yeah. It's a great pick. Yeah, this is this is what Seth was talking about off panel yesterday as well, where these teams know what kind of hero you have to pick. They've picked Lycan and Tiny. You have to pick a durable hero that can clear the summons. Yep. Shadow Demon is good against pretty much all these heroes that do that. So they pick the Shadow Demon knowing that no matter what, you're still going to pick it into a counter. Like you would never on paper pick Sven into Shadow Demon, but there's other issues that they have to solve on the Team Spirits draft, so they don't mind one bad matchup. It's just really really cool like thought process from these drafters. Uh, and then Spirit bans out the puck, which is exactly what LGD ran with a very similar draft yesterday. Yep. Uh, I would be surprised if Secret doesn't just go for... Okay, so the Void Spirit is banned out, Ember is banned out. We need a Spirit-type hero because none of these Secret heroes want to go in and actually get stuff started. This is what we've seen in all of the drafts so far from them. So what do we have left? Storm's could, a little slow. Could they run something like a DK, for example, instead? The problem is you don't know, you don't know the lane matchup. 
Oh, they go with Alina. Okay, uh, so yeah. suddenly something that's going to win the lane no matter what. But you, now you lack the initiation you were talking about, so Tiny's going to have to be the one. That... It, it's going to be Lycan's job. Oh, Lycan. I, I think okay. it's going to be Lycan's job. They're not going to have hard initiation. They're going to have cause right. chaos, and eventually you'll separate, and the Tiny will be able to land his abilities. They have a lot of poke, a lot of prod, and then eventually, once they get the fight started, their d damage on Team Secret is immense. Uh, I, once you get to the... Once you get the tiny lichen timing, the wyvern's really good against tiny because of the slow from winters uh, from Arctic burn. But that doesn't matter if you're hasted. You get it here. And they go for the, you have to go for something like this to jump the shadow demon. But uh, my emphasis is this hero is not good conceptually against push lineups. You don't want your towers getting pushed. You want your team setting up the rotations. I think Team Spirit's gonna be on the back foot. I don't like being on the back foot when I have a, a Sven. He's a pretty strong laner who wants to pick fights on his own terms rather than defensively. Uh, if any team can pull it off, it's Team Spirit, but I think Secret's got their number on this one. I think the way Spirit wins this is through team fighting. Uh, there's always the snowball potential of a Storm Spirit if he gets an early Orchid. There really isn't much to disable him. I was thinking maybe like a Yule Scepter would be pretty good on Nisha this game, but it's just such an uncommon Lena build, and you've got the SD to set up for you already, so Maybe you just don't go for that Yule Scepter, uh, even though uh, if the storm does pop off, you probably need one. But uh, yeah, I think I think Spirit can can definitely win team fights. But Team Secret Strife is looking a lot like LGDs, and that looked pretty unbeatable, to be quite honest. But, but Spirit wins for a comfort draft, right? This is the draft that they've played through and through. This is the bread and butter. Team fights, strong carry, Yatter yep. on this fan, like even Mirror's Law on the on the Dark Willow. Yep. All these heroes are heroes they know how to play. So maybe they're just trying to go for a good draft they know how to execute. Well, the way I think they win, honestly, is being close enough in the game once Secret goes high ground to win off the skewers into base. I think that right. is their best option because eventually the Sven can match the Tiny, but he needs like four or five items to not only do enough damage, but also tank through what they're addition out on Secret. By the way, interesting on Secret is they swapped uh, El Tiny and Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon's going to be a five this time. I see. Uh, and ET's going to be the four. Yeah, ET running in and disrupting seems really good this game. And as yep. a five, you can't do that because you just feed due to no items. Uh, but like Wyvern and Magnus, they're looking for these big counter initiations, which if you're using all of your spells to stop this like position for ET from punching you, then you can't do that. So I, I do think that actually makes a lot of sense. And the disruption is what's important from the SD as well as the ult. And now, as the game begins, we're going to get everyone's favorite casting duo here on the stage. It's Sunspan and Cinderin. Hello, everybody. It all comes down to this, Cinderin. Game number three. Millions of dollars on the line. Team Secret versus Team Spirit. We have a tiny Lycan combo again. But sadly, no Christmas tree. Oh, no. What does I he know. have? Matu, he has a regular tree. It's very, very oh. sad to see. Maybe, maybe if they win this match with that extra few million dollars, <laughs> he can buy, a he can buy the Christmas tree for himself, Cinderin. But what do you yeah. think of these lineups? What a game this is going to be. Yeah, so Secret are playing a strategy that's very similar to what uh, LGD did yesterday against them with the, the tiny Lycan. Um, I do think some key components are very different, though, uh, from what made the, the strategy successful for LGD. I think the mid-hero by nature, having Lina instead of Puck, makes the dynamic of the game very, very, very different. Simply, you can't really catch in the same way. You don't have the same space-making type of mid. So Secret's lineup is slightly more on the greedier side. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as Team Spirit goes, they have insane team fight. Obviously, Collapse on the Magnus has looked incredible this event. Um, they have a lot of initiation power with the Storm, as well as potentially a Dagger Sven somewhere down the line. So. I think it might sound crazy seeing how Seeker got absolutely destroyed by that tiny Lycan yesterday, but I think Spirit actually have a really good shot at this game, uh, primarily because of the difference in the mid lane, the way they set it up with their bands in the draft. And then always that wild card of Mag. Indeed, and it seems to be a wild card in every game because he's picked every game, gets past that first phase of bands. Disruption. And disruption from Puppy. As Collapse will try to make his way uh, to that top lane here. And yeah, this is going to be, I don't know. With the, we, we talked about this in game number one, and maybe we can revisit it a bit, but a lot of pressure on Secret to perform because they are the experienced ones. Team Spirit kind of free flowing, I guess is a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. But this has to be a pressure for everybody right now. Because I remember back in the deep when we did. 
uh, DC in the lower bracket finals against EG at TI6. Everybody was nervous on both teams, and that l led to a lot of mistakes, which made it really exciting. Right. So we'll see if that ends up coming to fruition in this game three. One thing to focus on for uh, for Secret when it's crunch time and you really need to get the win is that in this tournament so far, Nisha has been a standout player in that mid lane, and he has himself one of the best possible matchups against Toronto Tokyo Storm playing as Lina. Uh, so even though we don't have that same playmaking potential that we saw out of uh, Kiss your duty yesterday. Disruption. Uh, Matu's there. Okay. All right. Oh, nice neutral creep Hero. gets the first blood for the neutrals. That's a lot of extra gold for all those creeps. They combine, and then you just get even more gold when you kill them, Cinder. And that's definitely how it works. Mm. Denying first blood gold, though, that's pretty big. That actually sounded like a suggestion Slacks could have found. But, <laughs> oh, if the neutrals kill, they should get all the bounty. And then if you kill the neutral keep, it gives 300 it just gold. gets larger and larger. Why yeah. not? Now, why? I don't know, just because. <laughs> why neutral items, Cinder? And I love them. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so Matu playing the Tiny, as we alluded to. Uh, collapse, finally not. I mean, he's playing the Magnus this time, Cinder. And he, basically, every performance that he's had at this tournament has been quite stellar. It's been kind of his showing out party as we have a disruption again, Collapse. Putting himself in the way of Matu so that Mira is not collapsed upon. Well, he needs to be a little bit careful here, actually. Puppy yeah. coming in with the no, Illusion Skewer. The skewer with the Shockwave. They're going to try to 1v1 battle this. The Brambles come out as well. This is going to be first of all going the way of somebody. Cinder is Matu. One right click. Nope. Looks like Puppy will get credit for that one. And with the Avalanche, he could... He's opting not to chase down, but rather to straight up go up and salve Matumba Man and probably give him a Tango here as well coming out of his own tango in a second. So, yep, Secret will get first blood there. That was very close. Obviously, Collapse playing off the knowledge that Avalanche would be on cooldown for quite a while there. That's been nerfed over time. It's 26 second cooldown level one. Honestly, for what it does, a really long one when you think about it compared mm -hmm. to other heroes. So, probably need some buffs to Tiny after this TI <laughs> so that he can do better in lane. Yeah, I'd like that as Curry yeah, is going to get sniped you here from Yapsor. Uh, looking forward to the briefcase uh, <laughs> being shown here in this game. But Nisha in the mid lane on this. Lena is at 19 and 9 for CS versus the 11 and 1 Toronto Tokyo. He's gone woods. Yeah, I, I can't out. blame him. This is uh, not going super well for him, but he does have a nice stack here. So we'll be getting a good amount of gold overall. But Nisha is just left to his own devices, Cinder. And that's. And we've been seeing him on Void Spirit mostly this series. It's a scary proposition for Team Spirit to leave him be. Puppy. He harassed it a bit here from Collapse as Matu making his way over as well. It is only a 1-0 advantage in this early game for game number three. So much on the line here. I can't even imagine what's going through the heads of every single player in those in those booths. But Team Secret, they, they have a ton of experience to fall back on. And Team Spirit... They have, I would say, the momentum from the tournament, from the beginning of the tournament and in the from last, the last like, game. few months even. Right? Yeah. That, that was a game that they were doing well in, then it looked really grim, and they just grabbed the win out of nowhere. Um, that's got to be a real confidence yep, boost. Sure. Sure. Not really going to follow up the on it, The crowd goes wild with that shockwave. Yeah, I didn't go for the skewer. I, I don't know if that would have led to a kill, but definitely could have done some significant damage to the tiny. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to opt to just chill here. And let's talk a little bit about bottom, because we've been focusing along the other two lanes. So it's going to be a Taurus Ven against Zai Lycan, obviously with a, the Elder Titan of Yapsor battling up against Bipush, because Wyvern actually Yapsor could be in a bit of trouble here, but oh, never mind, that's not actually the case at all. Sorry for the misleading information. Okay. Um, this is a good lane for Sven. Right? He's one of the carries that does the best against Lycan in lane. You have the natural building cleave when you skill up great cleave. You have good armor. So... And you have it power for pressure. double cleave, Cinderin. Very important. True. It, it just it puts pressure on the Lycan in lane that he always needs to micro his wolves. There are some carries that you can play against where it's a lot easier, but you just have more stuff to manage here, more mm -hmm. things that can go wrong. Uh, CSing just flat out gets harder because your wolves can just get stunned and they can cleave them down. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, unsurprising to see Yotaro pull this far ahead of Zayas. He is obviously sitting now at 34 and 13 against 16 for two. Which is a much bigger lead than what Secret have in their top lane on Tiny, but the big story is Nisha is level six and a half, and yeah. Toronto Tokyo just got level five. And mind you, this is without a kill in that lane. 
Indeed. It's the App Store has come farm. as well. So Toronto, Tokyo just getting forced out again, which means it's going to be extra damage to the tower in all likelihood. And Maposhka being spotted out now as the App Store is going to get even more damage as a result. And it's just one of those position fours that you just cannot ignore. Be able to beat the crap out of people with that briefcase of his. Or stapler, depending on mm -hmm. what you like. But Toronto Tokyo looking for the bottom rune. He will get it, and it's an arcane. But still, not level six, so can't really take true advantage of that. Yapsor applying some pressure to Maposhka in the meantime. The Arctic burn is proc. Toronto Tokyo has to walk up and go into the jungle. <laughs> As yep, top lane, oh, Poppy's in a lot of trouble. Looks like he's going to take a tumble, but collapse will well, likely the die to this poison, so it's a one for one. I think Matsu was out of experience range for that kill, though. So still call that a win for Team Spirit. If Matsu got the experience from that kill, that would have made a big difference. Maybe he did. I'm actually unsure. But Nisha yeah, Toronto, Tokyo does hit level I six now. Six. Yep, and he's going to jump on top of Nisha, but Nisha... Pretty healthy. Yataro making his way over. Mir is there as well. So it's a three versus one. Even God Strength used oh. whatever it takes to take out Nisha and into the jungle, into the triangle. Yataro goes. He wants to farm stacks here, Yataro, since he rotated anyway. So might as well use God Strength there. They're going to stack one more time and then clean up whatever they can. Yep. Indian power buff up as well here. Oh, yeah. That nice. is juicy. Very nice. So how's the Lycan Ags with Tiny this game? Like, is there a game where it's not good? Or is it just something, if you have these two heroes, that's something we should expect no matter what? I think we should expect it in this game, at least. It's just, it puts so much pressure on the other team that they know that if Tiny isn't under control, you could literally get kind of one-shot comboed on almost any of your heroes mm -hmm. once he has the items. So I wouldn't be, I'd be rather surprised if Zai doesn't go that route after his Helm of the Dawn, which I believe is flying out now. It's on the way on that courier, so I'll be grabbing that. Good kill here for Team Spirit in the mid lane. Taking advantage immediately of hitting level 6 on Storm to punish Nisha, who was playing hyper-aggressive. Obviously, what won him the lane to begin with sets him back a little bit there with Storm oh, Arcane Rune. Top lane. Matu's getting forced out. Has the Bramble there, but will walk away. Seeker actually pretty far ahead in these two lanes. Collapses level 5 to Matu's level 7, and mid Nisha, even after that death, is still a level and a half ahead of the Storm of Toronto Tokyo. Bot lane, Zai level 6. And what is the Sven? Sven is level eight and a half. So all the way across the board, slight advantage for Secret overall. Um, and I guess that's good news for them, right? Keep in mind what their lineup wants to do. This is a similar story to what we had against LGD yesterday from Secret, where uh, LGD were content to just farm for 20 minutes until the they got what on. they wanted. OK, that's not that much damage. Collapse is actually perfectly fine. So yeah. continue your thought. Cinderin. Really yeah, apologize. So carry, carry Tinies will generally not do that much damage with that combo. Want to get the points into three grab. Uh, tree grab. Three grab. Grab it three times. Yapsor. Yep. Stormhammer's there. Yataro pops his ult, and Yapsor just going to get chopped down into Oblivion. Oh. And I guess it's like, hey, Yataro, you want too. another 150 gold? Here you go. <laughs> Gets his Dom Creep, as well as Wolves, cleaved off in two swings from Yataro. He's going to be very happy about that. And yeah, Nisha. Essentially, a recipe away from finishing Yules. So that'll be a nice setup for his LSA combo. And, well, it's kind of cookie cutter build, I would assume, for Matu as well. Echo Saber, uh, Silver Edge, maybe probably. a Blink Dagger at some point, or BKB. Yeah, probably Echo Silver. I think it's fine. It gives you a possibility of one shotting the Storm. You can one shot Storm, Willow, or Wyvern as Tiny with a, a Silver Edge. Mm. Uh, on Willow, you need to be very quick to toss. You need to basically attack, instant toss, and then avalanche while he's in the air, or he will get off the realm and, and escape. But the other heroes are very easy targets. Miposhka looking to defend bottom. It is a hard defense. There are wolves. Yeah, but Miposhka Dominator is range creep. level six, so curse is available here, which can be really annoying for Lycan players. All right, they're going to give it up. Secret aren't going to try to continue pushing. Maybe too intimidated by the missing storm. And Yatoro now, t or sorry, Toronto Tokyo now TPing mid. They could find Nisha here. Yeah, LSA is going to connect with the Shadow Realm. Comes out, Matu coming, backstabbing, gets the Avatos, but still not enough damage to really do much to Toronto Tokyo. Curse Crown connects, and that'll I break up the fight completely. 
I feel like there might have been a potential play there for Secret to get a stun off from Lina onto the Storm if the Avalanche Toss were staggered as much as possible out of Matsu there. Oh, the big jump in from Toronto, Tokyo, and the Terrorize to follow. Puppies in the vicinity. Can they save him? Shadow, or the disruption is there, and that Toronto, Tokyo looks to be the one taken out. It's going to be a one for one, though. Laguna Blade expended, and now Mira getting absolutely beat down. Looks like Puppy gets credit for that one. So a two for one overall. Who died first between the mid laners? I think the Storm was killed off first. Okay. Yes, he was. Uh, did get the return gold onto Nisha there. But in the meantime, of course, let's. You've got to look at the rest of the map as well. Secret are gaining this bottom tier two or tier one tower, excuse me, with the with the siege creep. Oh, nice deny attempt from Biposhi. Actually, almost got it there as Wyvern. But Team Spirit will trade for top. Didn't get the last hit on Yotaro, but still opens up the map. A little bit. Yeah, Yotaro has the Mass of Madness going for the Echo Saber, Blink, and then BKB. And from there, we'll, I mean, I, I would assume Silver Edge. Yeah, Silver Edge could, could be a thing. Um, I think maybe on second thought in this game, you might want to just go AC. I don't know if you want to get the Silver at all. You want to Blink in, and then you're going to just stand and deliver. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to get the Silver Edge surprise jump. So, yeah, I, I like, I definitely like Dagger out of Echo and then BKB into probably AC and then either Satanic, Daedalus, you know, the standard stuff. Mr. Collapse himself, he has the, the mech ready to go. You can see Toronto, Tokyo getting close to finishing Kaya. So again, not opting for the Orchid because there is a Yules on the opposing mid. Uh, I mean, is there any consideration for, oh, Nisha? Gets off some spells, gives him some nice movement speed, but Collapse finds the RP, and with Yataro in the area, all three cores, in fact, in that top river, he's a big able to kill. Take out Nisha here. It's worth it. You you want to slow down the Lina as much as you can. Gets caught there. The Yules wasn't able to save him. It is a lot of mana out of Storm's pool every time he does this, so can't really farm too much out of it, I suppose. But you just want to again kill the Lina on. Every opportunity you get, you're, you have a Sven that's totally free farming as well. So maybe in the next 10 minutes, you know, Secret will, again, they just want to build up their Lycan as mm -hmm. well as their Tiny. At some point, you might be able to flat out just contest them if Lina isn't strong enough. Seems to be the plan. Secret Nisha here is queuing up Whoa. the BKB before travels. We'll see this if that is the order. Be, I don't know if they can find him without the RP, but this would be a devastating kill onto Nisha. Yeah, that would have been huge. But still, Blink Daggers are coming uh, soon enough for Team Spirit, which looks like that is next for uh, for Yotaro on the Sven. Mm -hmm. And Puppy puts down a ward. He can see a little bit there. Both Collapse and Yotaro should have a dagger in like two or three minutes. So that would be a really good time for them to look for opportunities that could potentially lead into Roche. I think it's maybe a little bit of a stretch for the lineup to do Roche this early unless you get a team wipe. Nisha, Nisha LSA connects. Laguna Blade to follow, but does not have the damage oh, to the finish it off. The tree okay, <laughs> disjointed by Toronto, Tokyo. So decent amount expended, but Nisha's just going to go back into the jungle with a nice triple stack. They here. find Collapse top. Yep, they sure do. Cinderin got the Avatos combo with Puppy's ult. Collapse gets to skewer off, but can't make it to the high ground, and is eventually brought down by Secret. There's a smoke on Toronto, Tokyo right now, but they are headed towards that bot area. Zai, almost done with the Helm of the Overlord, but might have to wait here, Cinderin, as Curse Crown with the Bedlam damage coming through. Looks like that's going to be an easy pickoff for Team Spirit. So it's offlane for offlane, essentially, as Miposhka. Getting destroyed by these wolves has to curse the creeps just to survive. And at least he does so. <laughs> it's funny to think about how for a short while Wyvern was considered the st one of the strongest support counters to Lycan. And then Lycan was just like, well, what if I just don't run in my hero? <laughs> and all of a sudden it wasn't fun for Wyverns yeah. anymore. Uh, this was obviously back in the day when we had Necronomicon. Uh, Made it a lot worse for the Wyvern as well, just the overall mana burn and total damage, how quickly it came in. But still, even with Helm of the Overlord, once that comes out on Zai, you just pop your ult and you run the golem at Wyvern, what are you going to do? Indeed. It's, it's tough. And that'll also help amplify his farm to be able to actually get that Aghanim Scepter to be able to bite his teammate and turn the Rockman into a wolf. 
As Yotaro is top of the net worth right now by a pretty decent margin, but that is kind of to be expected from a Sven. With Empower. With Empower in addition. Obviously, Tiny not able to get his shard yet, but that's Yotaro when wants to show off permanent. his blink here. And Puppy gets off the disruption. Nisha on the back line. Yotaro jumps in with the, the blink dagger, but a nice Yules from Nisha. You can see the Bramble is going to apply to Nisha. They're going to apply all their pressure onto him now. Earth Spitter comes out. First to fall will be Puppy. The skewer into the RP. Several heroes caught in there. That is going to be a kill from Toronto, Tokyo. Buyback now on the Puppy as Collapse getting beat down by the tree. So Secret do get a collateral kill here, but it's going to cost them dearly, Cinderin. That worked out super well for Spirit, the way they jumped that with Toronto, Tokyo, and followed up. Yapsor didn't really manage to find a good stomp or splitter in that situation, so... They couldn't really... That's the key counterplay that we'll usually have in a spot like this. Diving Elder Titan is really scary, but... Or against Elder Titan, rather. But with Puppy already using the disruption, they feel way more confident just locking onto a single target in that Lena and getting her down as soon as possible. So that was an instant cue to go. And the RP from Collapse, like you said, wonderful. So, was that actually only a two-for-one with a buyback from Secret? Yeah. What? How did... Toronto, Tokyo okay. dies Have bottom. to admit, I wasn't wow. looking there. Matu. Shadow Blade reveal. Shadow Blade, yeah. That is a huge kill for that Secret. That is big. He was dominating, that so essentially, he gets 650 bonus for that. That negates that mid to fight entirely. Yeah, Basically, he's a wash now. Big find for Matu. As you see, the Rock Golem come into play now with that Helm of the Overlord. I feel like I haven't seen the Dragon in a long time, Sinner. It's always the Rock. Yep. Maybe there's a higher chance when Tiny's on your team. Shadow Realm popped to try to get away here. Yeah, Matsu's going to wait for another tree before he goes and finishes this tower. Or they might just not do it at all. They're going to respect the potential play here from a Blink Skewer, mm -hmm. as well as a respawning Storm, and Seeker are going to wait for later. Honestly, I understand it. I don't think you have to really stress taking this tower. You have passive ways of slowly getting it, like wolves, like the Helm of the Overlord. It will fall eventually. And if, if at any point Matsu makes a map read that he isn't going to get jumped, he can Shadow Blade and double hit it and it's gone. So, don't have to risk anything to get it here. A lot of composure and discipline there from Secret. Yapsor. Tokyo, yep, wants to He's find dead. Yapsor. And it looks like he'll find him. Easy pick off for Spirit again. Yotaro makes his way to the mid lane, and like you said, that uh, that Golem ends up getting the kill onto the tier 1 mid. So it was inevitable to fall. And that's going to give some nice gold over to, to Zai, as we have another Avatos killing off the Storm Spirit. Are you kidding me? Matu is just finding these incredibly important pickoffs. And it's just with a Shadow Blade, too. It's not like this is Blink Dagger and Shadow Blade to be able to come from He might even the find fog. another one here. Oh, he's going to find a ward. Okay, so won't get wow. the Wyvern. Two huge picks from Matu. Yeah. With those kills, he's actually tied with Sven on net worth mm -hmm. all of a sudden. So we're going to see the replay here of, I believe, the previous one. Yep. Gets off the first right click with the Avatos and just enough damage. It's actually relatively close there. So a couple very important deaths going in favor of Secret this time. Toronto, Tokyo, four and three. So he was four and one before that. He was having himself quite the game. But you can see just in terms of net worth, he is just right in the middle. That is not where you want to be. He is below the Lycan who was laning against Sven at yeah. this point. That puts things into perspective. But he does get an essence ring, so. He does. That'll help. That's a nice one. It'll help if he doesn't get burst in a one-shot combo from Tiny. Unfortunately, that's what generally tends to happen against Tiny. Uh, also, Lena, similar story. If he gets caught by a stun, might not even have time to use the Essence Ring. So it, it's nice in a lot of situations. Might even sometimes want to pre-pop it when he jumps in just for safety. Mm -hmm. But it is pretty expensive to use 200 mana cost to something Storm doesn't really want to throw away for nothing. Team Secret sporting a... 2k net worth lead now. It's right on the edge. We saw that. Yep, the back up to 3k now as Yataro. He is the, the member of Team Spirit. A lot of pressure on him now, Sinner, because of Toronto Tokyo's Curse game. Man. Winter's Curse. It's only on to Puppy, though. The skewer back from Collapse. It looks like they'll get this one. Nice and easy. Pretty much a zero risk play with the Blink Skewer. Does cost them a Winter's Curse, but not the longest cooldown. No. And. 
I don't think Secret are going to be super eager to go, especially not with Puppy with a buyback on or with a dieback here, essentially, right? This was an old death that is yeah. being added on top now, so out for a minute. Uh, don't need to worry about not having the curse. Nothing's going to come the way from Secret right now, most likely. As a matter of fact, it's going to be Team Spirit again going for a move. Oh, they might see Nisha here. Oh, yeah, so are oh, wow, they didn't manage the to get a jump out of that. Not not yet, anyway, Nisha. Yeah, Nisha. In this room. Right, or in this room. As the Golem is trying to create some space here, Cinderin. And Matu ready to go. It is 20 minutes, so expect that shard pretty soon for Matu. Uh, I mean, how much do you prioritize that before the Silver Edge, actually? It is oh, really important golem. to have. Yeah, Golem is dead, but it's golem okay. Get you gone. There'll be another one soon. Sorry, you were asking about the Silver Edge and Tiny? Yeah, when do you prioritize the shard? Because I feel like it is hmm, quite yeah, important. Good but. question. I think probably now that you had these two kills that you just got, you might want to get the Silver Edge first mm -hmm. and keep the snowball rolling. I think if it's less of an active game from you where you're just more farm-centric, you will get the shard as soon as possible. Now, under these conditions, I would imagine he will finish the Silver first so he can just find bigger and, and more and more frequent kills. Toronto Tokyo we'll picks up an Orchid, by the way. So a little bit later one didn't prioritize it first. Yep. Obviously, we talked about the Yules on Toronto or on Nisha. Who do you and Orchid, the though? Yeah, he has Orchid? to go for the back line. It's got to be like an Elder Titan or something. He kind of has to Orchid Shadow Demon or the save comes out, right? But Puffy does have a Ghost Scepter, so he can't solo kill him anyway. And Sven can't kill him either. If Puffy is quick on the Ghost, he can counterplay a lot of the stuff that uh, Team Spirit offer up here from their team fight, except the Skewer, of course, which will get him killed. So he can Orchid Skewer him. Uh, that's a lot of stuff to use just to set up for the five, though. And any other target can potentially be saved or at least delayed by Puppy. Storm can't solo kill Lina with the Orkin anymore as Nisha got the BKB. Obviously been playing from ahead against the Storm the whole game. And if Storm wants to solo kill Lina, you need to get that Orchid before that BKB timing. But Secret are effectively conceding Roche at Indeed. this point by playing the bottom half. And Spirit will say thank you very much, get an Aegis on their Storm. Yep, very important. Probably the best hero in the entire game to get the Aegis, but it is a hero that has not that much net worth. So it is a bit of a trade-off, actually, this game, I'm surprised to say, just because the net worth on uh, Yataro is crazy high right now. And Matu. Cleans up the wave. He did get the shard first. So okay, so has the shard in tow, so the tree is going nowhere unless he wants it to go somewhere, Cinderin. Yep. There's Nisha working on the Shadow Blade now, so... From Seeker's perspective, is it just... Uh, oh, I was going to ask if they're going to wait out the Aegis, but it looks like Matu wants to at least get some... I was going to say chip damage, but not with Tiny. Fortifications what? pop, and Pushka's in the area. It has this curse available. But needs to find a target next to Tiny so that Matu kills a teammate. Friendly fire is definitely a thing. Oh, it's going to effectively a get a deny out of that. I don't think Spirit are too happy with this. They TP'd down multiple heroes, and they didn't even get to mount the defense that they were trying to set up. And they will now have to just back off and go top. So, at the very least, the deny, probably a little bit of a a little thing going their way. Not too great, but oh, Ags online. We have the wolf bite ability in the game. Oh boy! So Matu, did PSG LGD have Elder Titan in that game yesterday? I don't uh, think they did. I think they were against it, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. So. Expect if Elder Titan is also in the play together with Lycan and Tiny, that the Tiny will ignore all the armor too, effectively dealing pure damage as True. a wolf with a tree. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, most. I mean, if you told me about this hybrid a few years ago, Sinner, I wouldn't have believed you. There we go. Matu is now a rock wolf hybrid with a tree that you can't see right now, but it's there. It's not his tail. That's a tail and a tree somewhere, Cinderin. Yep. Hidden. Not sure where he... In the depths of his bowels, probably. He has a very big mouth. Probably coming out of his mouth, yeah. That's what I would imagine, <laughs> at least. Lore-wise, it makes a lot of sense, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's so funny about this egg. It's just... It never gets old, I feel like. Gonna TP bot. Yeah. So Looks like Secret will still want to make another move here. So they didn't really accomplish much with that first shape shift or the first wolf bite. It's up again in 40 seconds, but at the very least for Secret, Team Spirit aren't really progressing on the map. They still haven't taken the mid-tier one. 
uh, 25 minutes in. They're not really opening up that much, so the obvious play for them is to go top, which is now being marked by Yotaro. He wants to go there. Has to be really careful, though, with the flank angles that Secret's lineup can find in that area. Secret do have dagger. a pre-placed OBS that is expiring in 10. Yeah, Might want to get a new one up there for... When you lose that safe lane tower, getting a ward somewhere around your outpost can have really high impact because the enemy team will often play up there. Uh, sometimes you can find some, like, cute spots that are less likely to be dewarded, and that could lead to something big here. But Secret have lost the area entirely, and now that means you just concede this tower. We'll be going the way of Toronto, Tokyo. Aegis for another minute and 40. Yeah, and they're Maybe trying Maybe Secret to get... just want to wait for I that. Mean, they've only... They only have one tower to the name, like you're saying. So this Aegis, it feels like more of a denial at this stage. You yep. only basically get, get a tier two. I mean, the tier one is still up for Team Secret. But you can see Matu picked up a Blink Dagger. Not sure if Spirit has seen this yet, but you have a double damage oh. now with Shapeshift. Oh, and it could no. be a Blink reveal for Matu. I saw this yesterday. It I think we've seen this many times. It did a lot of damage. <laughs> All right, here comes the Wolf Rock. Matu has his BKB ready to go, pops that Shadow Blade. But Team Spirit, they know. But does Mira know? Is he? No, he's, he's dead. Oh my god, he dies in midair. <laughs> the that double damage. Pretty, that is actually pretty close to Little Red Riding Hood there. That was on Dark Willow. That, I'll take that. That's oh crazy. my god, Mokoshka oh gets god. off the Winter Scourge, but it's not going to last that long because he's all alone. Matu, oh, he throws the tree and destroys him. Cold Embrace, saving Collapse for now, but you have to think that he will die here. He gets tossed up into the air. Matu pops the BKB, but a lot of damage coming from Itaro. The Gossard's actually ripping through this rock. He's going to get the kill. Nisha looks next on the target. He gets inside the trees. Nice vision from Toronto, Tokyo. Double kill for Yotaro. Collapse is still somehow alive here. Puppy getting some cover thanks to the Echo Stop, but triple kill for Yotaro. He's just bringing every down, everyone down to their knees. Out of nowhere, Yatara. I mean, he's been top net worth for a while, Cinderin, and it's really showing in that fight. Such a heads-up play there from Eposhka to not die, right? They kind of got a little bit desperate with the dive. Matumba thought he could kill him no problem, but the two swings he got in were not critical strikes. And Eposhka got to reset out, dodge the tree throw as well. You're going to see the replay here. So the two swings come in here. Ooh. Curse. None of them crits. Now he wants to throw the tree. That gets blinked. And this is where Matsu probably just gets out, right? But Nisha has committed in from the back, so they feel a little bit forced to yeah. go. Great cold embrace. True. And the damage just isn't enough there on to collapse. Nope. And yeah. then Yotaro just goes in wow. cleanup crew, no Yotaro problem. Yotaro getting another kill to his name here onto Yapsor. And that was past the tier two towers, and <laughs> the tier one was still remaining until just now. His gem is on the deck. Yeah, crucial. Crucial, crucial hold for Spirit there. Could question the dive from Nisha. It's easy to say from our perspective. It looked like they were just going to kill Wyvern on the spot and get more. And he's already in there. Can't really get out with his item build on Lina. He has to go to try to BKB TP, but he's still playing against RP. So, unlikely to work. And Yotaro now has a Satanic. So, Blink, BKB, Echo Saber, Silver Edge, Satanic. Going for the Swift Blink next. As we see the replay Bonk. on Yapsor's death here. And Yotaro is just on another level this tournament. His performance, and we've talked a lot about Collapse, and again, the entire team would not be able to get this far without everybody doing their work, but Yotaro, as a position one, has really shined this tournament. And Nisha and company looking to find their way back in this game. Still pretty even, I would say, 29 minutes in, 3k net worth lead for Spirit. And next Roche, we won't know for a bit. Outpost being taken. Will be successful as Team Spirit are fully smoked right now. Matsu finds a big item here. Got himself the Titan Sliver on Tiny. That's a very big pickup for him. Yeah. A lot more damage. The status resist is nice. Oh, Puppy. Puppy. He has this. Oh, Eon this Prox. Toronto Tokyo goes to the back line looking for Zai. Looks like Puppy gets off the Ghost Scepter as well. Will be brought down eventually. But there's the Laguna Blade with the LSA Nisha. Do they have enough damage? They do. Matu gets the kill. Onto that Sven. Yotaro is donezo. Earth Splitter comes out. Not doing too much, though. Collapse. Attempting to get out. But Matu's right clicks are just too much to withstand. Toronto Tokyo creating enough space there. A big fight for Secret. They do lose Nisha. But Yotaro, at the very least, is taken out of the game for a little bit. Such a huge... 
like just the itemization from Puppy, look at how much a difference it makes that yeah, he has that these was exact a long time. items. So he has Ghost Scepter to buy the time against that Sven, and then he gets the Demonic Purge and Disruption off because of Aeon Disc. He would have died in the stun if he didn't have that disc, so kind of offering himself up and gets the full counterplay out. Demonic Purge on Sven is such an insane counter. Uh, it was talked about on the panel as well, right? They were like, yeah, you gotta pick something, uh, and that's the one bad matchup Sven has, and Puppy just showed why there. That Demonic Purge just ruined the Sven's fight, and they burst him down. That was some solid spell casting from the rest of Spirit, though. That could have gone way worse. It was a good curse onto the Lina to at least salvage things somewhat there for Team Spirit. Toronto, Tokyo pushing out the top lane now. As we do have Shard online for Zai, so the Wolves... Mira gets stomp mid. Spawning. This could be a setup for Matu. Okay. Thunderhide is available uh, there. Oh, the four the staff from Matu, but... Oh, Collapse gonna force is so out his BKB. good. Mira saving or getting cold embrace for now. Pops the shadow realm as well, but there's collapse with the initiation onto Matu, and now the organ on top of it. He's already used the BKB. Nice save from Puppy for the time being, but Matu's still stuck in a terrible spot right now. Has to just stand his ground, and there's the terrorize to follow. Big kill for Team Spirit. Looks like Zai is next on their list, and down he goes, Cinderin. Great execution from Team Spirit. Oh my god, I hope we get a replay of that. What an insane force staff from Collapse there. It wasn't even Mira that he force staffed. It was the tiny of Matu. The second he blinks in to go for the Avatos combo, he immediately gets offensively force staffed. And that puts him out of position. It doesn't only save Mira, but jeopardizes Tiny, and they do end up getting the kill in the end. That was sick from Collapse, and then he finishes it off with the Blink Skewer, too. It doesn't get better than that. That's collapse. just world Blink class. Blink getting cancelled perpetually by Puppy. On the other side of the trees, you see the Horn Toss finally being used. Puppy resigned to his death. And Yataro gets another kill to his name. See a little detail there from Puppy. He backpacks his Aeon Disc. He doesn't want to use the charge right. on it. He wants to keep the cooldown as low as possible. Knows he's dead anyway. And wants to have it ready when he respawns, but Spirit all of that momentum right now going their way from these last couple of fights and you got to keep in mind it's been secret initiating these moves and spirit just reading them and counterplaying them perfectly both times now top and mid matsu getting punished after having an insane early game these two deaths set them back so much and into the roche pit they go team spirit the underdogs of this tournament could finish this Look game this. and go Look to the grand four finals. Staff. Yep, the four Insane. staff there. And then Cold Embrace, cold embrace well. right after. <laughs> so clutch from the supports of Spirit. Yeah, that is... I cannot believe Mira lives through this entire that fight as so well. That is so crazy. They're going to get the... Yeah, Wolf is showing this out, but not able to deny anything. So Toronto Tokyo gets the Aegis. It's and a hot, Shard as well, so that's high, the overload High stakes active. match here. There's a lot on the line, so you definitely remember the Aegis this time. <laughs> Team Spirit gonna get that. Well done. They gave a shard to the Storm as well, right? He didn't buy this. He just picked it up and used it. So they get the active overload. That's right. Effectively improving their damage quite a lot. Gives himself some attack speed too, but I think primarily helpful for Sven as well when they initiate together. Yeah, and he has the he's had that shard for a little bit on Sven, so can dispel like Yules and whatnot. Uh, pretty helpful. Or killing Nisha specifically, actually as Matu is in wolf form again. And 9k lead for Team Spirit. They have a pretty firm grasp on this game, Cinderin. Can Secret come back? Yataro jumps in, Puppy, that's the Eon Disc again. And the, all right, he gets slept a bit here from the Elder Titan, but a big jump from Toronto, Tokyo. Ghost Scepter immediately used by Puppy. Looks like he's done again, though. Does have buyback, but again, that Eon Disc He's going to be on cooldown for quite a while now. And Yataro wants to make use of this god strength. It's, it is running out, though. Looks like they're not going to go for the high ground yet. Still three and a half minutes on this Aegis. They don't need to get over-aggressive here. We've seen a lot of teams do that this tournament, in fact. Yep. And really, their only high ground is Sven. And I would assume he want to be ulted in most of these cases. Yeah, for sure. So it's and just like a small window. There's a lot of risk involved with having the Sven hit the tower when you're playing against Blink Toss, right? Like, it's kind of the skewer problem uh, that we've seen teams run into in the base as well that you are facing. Yeah. The wolf is a hunting. There is a gem on the storm, though, so Toronto Tokyo should be able to react in time as long as he is not under a ward, which he is right now, but he will find that one. And Matsu will redirect his attention to Mira. Seems a bit hesitant to jump, and he's yeah. too slow. That's a very quick Shadow Realm again. 
So Mira with the quick fingers. Matu gets nothing out of that. Opted to go for the Howl cast first with Lycan at the same time. I don't know if that was a bit of a tell. I am not sure if Mira noticed that, but either way, he gets out, makes the right read. And look at the bounce back from Toronto Tokyo. Look at his net worth, Cinderin. Yep. <laughs> it was not looking good for him halfway through the game. Obviously, Yatara creating a lot of space and the rest of his team as well for him to make this massive comeback. But second net worth, I would not have thought that would be the case at 35 minutes. Just masterful play from Team Spirit. And again, whoever wins this game will be playing PSG LGD in the grand finals of TI-10. So, And something we maybe haven't touched on so much, right? One of the key things for Secret in this game, compared to a lot of the games that they do well in, Nisha has been so quiet. Oh, they might have found Matu. Does have the BKB, Avatos to follow, but Collapse gets saved. And Matu is just completely alone, Cinder, just looking for some sort of collateral. But it's not going to happen. Down goes Matu, does have buyback, however. And expect Team Spirit to force this out. I mean, they had to use basically nothing. Yeah, they, they still have the two bottom strength. towers for free if they want to, but they might look for more. They have another smoke on the Wyvern. Sven's God Strength is ready with Swift Blink. Yeah, Toronto Tokyo gets the Orchid, but doesn't have a whole lot of mana to speak of. Still with the Aegis intact, and they're going to use it. It did cost Secret the Laguna Blade, and there's Winter's the Winter's Curse. Curse. Not going to last too long, though. Nisha getting jumped, but there's the BKB. And Team Spirit still super happy with this, this exchange. 13k net worth lead now. As Matu, I would assume they want to force this buyback. Yeah, the Wolves in the mid lane are going to try to cut this wave. Zai, making it more difficult for them to reach, but they will kill them off now with the Storm to save those precious seconds on, of the Siege. Oh boy, Arcane Rune on Toronto Tokyo as well. Yep. BKB is ready as well, and they know there's no BKB on Lina, and that's big. Puppy has to be ready here to save Nisha. They're going to jump him at basically all costs. The high ground defense is there, Team Secret. Oh, Toronto Toki goes really deep, and there's a big skewer from Collapse on the two. Good lord! Double kill for Yataro! Basically, in just one Echo Saber double slap. Absolutely filthy stuff here from Yataro again, and a great initiation from Collapse. And this means likely a mid-rax to follow, but Puppy's going to get initiated on. There's the Eon this to proc, the buyback now on Nisha. Matu has spawned naturally. And it looks like they might actually be able to defend this. As the God Strength is running out here shortly, Cinderin. Matu in wolf form again. But there's that really annoying Curse Crown with the Shard into the Bramble. And Team Spirit, oh my, they are so close, Cinder, into getting to yep. the Grand Finals here. It's unbelievable. If you, would have, if you would have asked me the odds of this before the tournament, of Spirit, and Game Spirit getting to the Finals, man. Well, Matu, all right. Well, let's not Finding count the Mira has the extra the tosses X. to work with. That's two deaths now in quick succession in favor of Team Secret, but still the buybacks remain. We'll see if Secret can force these out. Seems relatively unlikely. It's so scary for them to go to the enemy high ground at this point with the, with how much pressure they're under. And also their gold, right, on their heroes. So Tiny doesn't have buyback gold. Lycan doesn't have buyback gold. Shadow Demon does. Yapsor used his previously on the Elder Titan. Very quiet game from him as well on that ET. Just yeah, very true. low net worth. He's not very farmed. Hasn't been involved in too many kills. It is a difficult ET game, in my opinion, against the Storm as well as that Max Cure and just the general vision that Team Spirit have been playing with the whole game. But really, both Yapsor and Nisha just not having the games that they're used to, and that's what's made this so hard. Yeah, Mats has been caught, caught off a couple of times and made some mistakes. These other two players just haven't found their footing in the game, largely. I mean, look at the net worth. Yapsor is literal bottom by a long by shot. Far. That yeah. is so uncharacteristic. That. I literally cannot remember that ever happening. It, it's it's very rare. And it's also, if you think about the way Secret prioritized these heroes, I think having all the gold on Puppy has been massively impactful. I think his net worth has been put to really good use. Uh, but in some of these strategies we've seen from PSG LGD where they play a yeah. four Elder Titan, he ends up having an Aghanims and he just becomes a, th a fourth core. That's just not the case for Yapsor here. He doesn't ever have the opportunity to really go in and get much done. Maybe he doesn't feel like it was an option anyway because of the hero matchups. Like maybe he just thinks it's too hard against Wyvern, Sven, and Meg to yeah. ever do I mean, it. Puppy has definitely survived through a lot of this, but 
Yotaro now has a nullifier, so you can dispel Eon Disc. And, oh, Puppy is going to get the disruption off. Gets stuck inside the Bramble. Pops the Ghost Scepter preemptively, but he's going to die shortly after. Great oh, curse. Yep, that's a huge curse on the three heroes. His Team Secret get RP from Collapse, and the right clicks are there from Yotaro. Triple oh kill for him. Making an ultra kill. Will he get another Rampage at TI-10? Absolutely, Yotaro does it again, Cinderin. Holy Jesus. Yotaro and company are right at the edge now of going to the TI-10 Grand Final. Secret have zero buybacks. If they just get a wave into the base and go for towers, it's over. They could finish maybe even before life can respond. I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, they're definitely going to go for this. 100%. It's and over. they're going to call GG. The underdog story is still alive. Team Spirit move on to the Grand Finals. What a performance. Team Spirit, man. It's hard not to be rooting for them right now because they have been the underdogs for so long. Even in just their region. It's been VP the entire year that we've been talking about. But Team Spirit showing up big time now. And again, the storyline, it just feels like it's such a repeat story of TI6 and TI8 with DC and uh, OG, respectively, with this underdog team that gets knocked down in the lower bracket. Remember, Team Spirit got knocked down in round one. They lost to IG 2-1. They've crawled through the lower bracket the whole way That's true. to that now get true. to the grand finals. They've just beaten one top team after the other to get there. They've, caught, they've got so much momentum going their way. And in many ways, if you were to compare it to a previous TI, I think TI6 is the most similar one. Now it's against the absolute giants in PSG LGD. At TI6, it was Wings. Two of the players from that Wings squad is now playing for PSG LGD. That's right. Can I remember that again? vividly. We'll see if it's a repeat performance or not. But with that, let's see what the panel has to say about this absolute god-tier performance from Team Spirit. Well, that was a god-tier performance from our casters, Cinderin and Sonsan. Thank you so much, gentlemen. As you can see, the lower bracket has been conquered by Team Spirit. And it's fair to say they have gone from 0-2 on day one to top two here at TI-10. And it's not something that we expected from the start of that group performance. Lacoste, your mind is blown. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, it's an unbelievable performance by such a young squad. Like this storyline, them coming into this tournament by being, uh, you know, th everyone was saying this is the second best the team coming up from the Eastern Europe. Then they knock out the, the Virtus Pro. Now they knock out the Team Secret. Suddenly they're gonna be in the Grand Finals. I, it's, I don't know. The Dota is such a weird game where there's so many Cinderella, Cinderella stories that happen throughout the history. This one feels really good, though, I got to say, because they did show hope, and it's like the perfect represent representation of the DPC season. Season one, they looked okay. They had good moments, but they were sloppy, too. Season two, they were looking better, and then all of a sudden they show up and have a slightly rough start, but then they just get to prove themselves, and those are, those are the best stories. Evie, I want to come to you in a moment, but right now we do have to head down to the sidelines because Avo is standing by with Puppy. Thank you. I'm here with Puppy. Top three at TI. I know that's not the expected result, but still impressive for a lot of teams. I'd like to ask you just a bit about the game that you just played. Uh, it was rough. Everything was going wrong. So uh, every time uh, we got something, uh, we went a little bit too further. Uh -huh. And uh, basically, we just kept on losing momentum, basically, on our heroes. And, you know, it was still kind of like good at some point, but we couldn't abuse the light and tiny whatsoever because we were just getting caught off guard all the time. So yeah, pretty much. Your team comes as one of the strong teams at TI, and also a lot of innovations in the draft. Other teams started copying some of the things you were doing. Did you feel like there was a bit of a target on your back this TI? Oh, I don't think so. No. I think it was fine. I think uh, everybody here started realizing, because everybody was kind of drafting similarly, I would say, in this tournament. We had been seeing like, we, we saw like every type of draft from every other team once in a while, but I think like the ones that actually get to abuse it to the potential are the ones that were winning, obviously. Is there anything you'd like to say to the Team Secret supporters? Thank you for believing in us. You know, as the numbers go, next time second place, next time first place, I mean, it's fine. Losing sucks, but what you're going to do, life goes on. Exactly. 
A surprising defeat for an incredibly strong team. Next year, as you said, if the numbers go, we're going to see them again in the grand final. Back to you. Thank you, Ava, and thank you, Puppy. I, I, I think that's what they call a classic Puppy interview there, Virg. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. Uh, he he was pretty straightforward about what happened. Uh, they their their little skirmishes went a little bit rough. Their best moments were probably uh, Matu get, killing Storm twice around the enemy jungle. But what was significant is their gold advantage never really catapulted high. Like Sven uh, Yatora playing that was able to keep his net worth so high the entire game that eventually he actually just had more net worth than Tiny, and they just won some fights. It was it was really impressive by Team Spirit. How did you find the performance, Effie? And I was so happy for them. It's just this team are such a beautiful Cinderella story. It's so much like DC from TI6, and it's so hard to not cheer for a team that runs through the tournament the way that they did. But um, for me, it's just a matter of, yeah, Team Secret had an idea, and it was a really good one, and their heroes had certain timings where they would have just been insanely overpowered. They just they just didn't play it very well, to be honest. And of course, like like Puppy said in the interview, it felt like everything was going wrong and it just kind of slipped out of their hands, right? And sometimes that just happens, but I would like to attribute that to Team Spirit getting their comfort heroes in the, the deciding game of the best of three. They got Toronto Tokyo on Storm Spirit, they got Collapse on Magnus, and they got Yatoro on Sven. Like, everything that they, that would have helped elevate them psychologically happen just through getting these heroes. A team That's Secret, a they're, they're getting closer, closer and closer every single year. TI6, 13th place, TI7, 12th place, then you have TI8, 6th place, and TI9, 4th place. Now they get, get the third place. So as Puppy said, you know, next next two years are going to be big. They still go back home with uh, $3.6 million, which is a lot of garlic bread in the end. <laughs> so I think they should be pretty happy about it. I mean, it also speaks volumes about Spirit's communication in game as well, because as Puppy was saying, they basically overextended at times and it cost them things. They got maybe overconfident and they were trying to get the most out of the tiny lichen. Basically, the wolf tiny, that there was one moment where Marty, he got the, he got the kill with the double damage onto Mira and then went to uh, went to the top lane. I know that's not the technical term for it. It, was, it would be his off lane and tried to target uh target Miposhka as well and then spirit had already made the call they'd already made the call to basically come in and rescue their position five and i, I think that maybe that's the key really for secret success it's that foresight and the way that they communicate that yeah i think that was the crucial team fight moment I, and when he said oh we went a little too hard you do that when you have a dd because you're like i have this little window we just got eggs their timing was incredible right there but they had great tools for it like the third skill on winter wyvern it just stops all physical damage it doesn't matter how much damage tiny had it could have been infinite but for four seconds he's sitting there waiting for collapse to come out of the cold embrace he dodged the the, the initial burst himself and buying time like that and getting them to i was very surprised Sven was able to kill the Tiny even. So that, that turnaround was really big because then Sven's accelerating net worth, Tiny stops moving for a bit, and that just kind of kept going for the rest of the game. Well, Sir Action Slacks is standing by with a TI-10 finalist. So let's see what they have to say. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Miposhka, the team captain of Team Spirit. Hello. You're here. This is it. This is... You're on your way to the grand finals. Just tell me how you feel out of the booth, man. Mm, to be honest, I, I guess I actually don't understand really what's going on right <laughs> now. And I'm not even thinking like about our place. And I, I guess I just don't uh, really understand exactly yeah. uh, what, what's happening right now. <laughs> so right now my feelings is like, oh, fine, we're going to play a game today against Lerdin, so I'm thinking about next game. Well, that's a very good headspace to be in. Um, let's just talk about your journey that you got here. I'd like to remind you of a few things. Fanatic, OG, VP, IG, Secret. Mm -hmm. These are teams that are the greatest of all time in Dota 2. These are teams that have rocked the scene for a decade. You guys just took them out. You're an open qualifier team. You, got, you, you went yeah. the best of five in your open qualifiers. I mean, you lost all your games and groups until you started winning them. Not almost. We lost only against... Uh, 
in the first oh. two days or first day, right? Yeah, yeah we lost four, six games against Vichy, RGD, <laughs> and Secret. Right. Against good opponents, but uh, we won other games. Of course you did. <laughs> well, obviously, but uh, this. Oh, we lost against favorite favorites. Mm, mm. Yeah, remember. <laughs> but with all of that, you turned it around, and you have <laughs> defeated the greatest of all time in, in the land of Dota. What was that like to start off with that hard road and then just just do this? Can, can you repeat, please? Yeah. How did you turn it around? Ah, uh, I, I don't know. Like actually, uh, when we start, when we came here, uh, we practiced a lot. We played a lot of converse, and our um, our our warm warm days was really hard. Mm. So we know that we we also won a lot of clan wars and we played against team mm -hmm. uh, teams which which are here. So we know that we are not that bad. <laughs> and we have <laughs> some ideas and we have potential. Mm. So we know that we we will show uh, how good we are. Well, you're so, definitely showing how good you are yeah, here. So after we lost uh, in our first two days, we mm -hmm. know that uh, Kikas, we played not that well uh, that we could, so we need just to make a, uh, to, I, I forgot what, <laughs> <laughs> to make, make, how is it? Make adjustments? Make adjustments. To fix our mistakes? Yes, yes, we, just, ah. we, we understand that we just need to fix our mistakes, yes. we, we know mistakes, and we just start to fix it, and, mm -hmm. uh, and we just keep playing. Okay. Just keep trying to make preparation for every opponent, and that's it. It certainly worked. Um, well, this is a incredible moment for you. I mean, uh, you'll think about probably for the rest of your life. Yes. Before <laughs> now, and then a few hours from now, is there any message that you'd like to give to your teams as the uh, that your team as the team captain, or any message that you'd like to give to maybe even yourself in the future in a few hours? <laughs> Uh, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything for uh, to congratulate your team or uh, your fans that are watching, just to say, uh, you know, here say, we are. I would say that I love my team, every mm -hmm. teammate. Uh, they are really good guys. And maybe others don't know, don't think so, because they usually play against them in public games or, or anything like this. Mm -hmm. But they're really cool guys, and I really like to play with them. Also, I would say uh, thank you for no, thank you for every fun for your support. So now we are in grand final. I guess nobody can believe in this, <laughs> but we here and we will we will show that LGD is not that monster. How the how others thinking? Well, absolutely. <laughs> I, I hope. Yeah, <laughs> me too, my friend. Well, there's no better place to slay a monster and this close to Transylvania and in Romania. So my friend, congratulations. Best of luck to you in the finals. It will be a hell of a match no matter what happens. And that is Mokposhka. We'll send it back to you guys on the panel. Thank you so much. Uh, what a lovely human being Mokposhka and the rest of his teammates are. Here we go. Just two teams remain. LGD and Team Spirit. We're going to see them in the grand final later today. It's going to be a best of five. Spirit will be looking to carry the momentum forward. But before then, we are going to have the match to end all matches. The games that will decide whether a team of Russians who have all been to TI before can conquer some of the greatest minds and voices and personalities from the Dota 2 community. This is the culmination of the All-Stars final that we got the pleasure of witnessing yesterday where Team Dragon was basically beaten by, you know what, I can't say their names. I'm still too upset about it. I'm too, too upset about it. They call themselves Team Borscht, but they're actually known as Thunder Hide. Thunderhide, that's it. Yep, see, I can't say the names. I can't, I can't look at them. Um, no, I can, I, I can look at them all day. Look, look at this, so cute, Thunder, so cute. But at the same time, who are Team Gollum on the left? Well, you're about to find out. You're going to find out the hard way, Team Thunderhide. Uh, do you know some of these faces in Team Gollum, Lacoste? I do, I do. I quite uh, frequently play against Vagamama and his stack because we're unranked grinders. You know, there has been developing... Uh, 
unranked meta where it's like uh, very high skilled and you just enjoy Dota with uh, no stress uh, with your friends. Also, you know, our ex-colleagues, Merlini, Blinz, we have also Shippo and uh, who did I mix? 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 Excalibur. Excalibur. Okay. Yeah, Excalibur is like 14k MMR or, or whatever. I might be exaggerating, but he should be around like uh, 11 because he's extremely skilled. Sheepstick is technically our colleague as well because she appeared on the draft panel yes, earlier this you week. you are correct. That's true. And I have to say, maybe she's going to appear on, on the panel more regularly in the future because she knows so much. She was one of my uh, Dota tutors. Mm. She came and helped me learn so much. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't put much of it into practice yet because we've been here. But do you have hopes for this team, Effie? Can they avenge Team Dragon today? You know, I just want to see some all random deathmatch shenanigans. I want to see them run at each other nonstop, and uh, I have hopes for them for sure. They've got they've got the great Blitz Dota. Yes, who Purge is intimately acquainted with. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a he's a big tryhard. Uh, when I was getting ready to leave <laughs> for the event, I was like, weird. I see Blitz online every day playing ranked. What could this be for? He's been practicing, guys, yeah. for this moment. But what Effie was also hinting at Purge is the fact that. You used to be on Team Zephyr with Blitz back in 2014, 2015? 2014 is correct, yes. And uh, you, the peaked, gold days. you peaked with this epic battle in, in South Korea. Oh, yeah. I was the highest win rate pro for, for a good, like, six months there. Yeah, I was better than PPD, Puppy, trash compared to me that year. <laughs> and then eventually we started losing and it dropped. But, you know, I had a, I, was, I was good for a bit there. You tried to resurrect the team, didn't you? Team Veggies, I believe, during one nah, of the... No, that was me. I was just tagging along mostly. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I can't just, take credit for that one. Just tagging along for the ride. What is Blitz like in game? Um, he is pretty serious. He he gets a little high stress. Like he sometimes has, uh, he gets nervous sometimes. Uh, but uh, he he tries really hard. Um, puts a lot of emotion into it. Yeah, he's a, he's a good player. And that's and, not what we want to see, Purge. <laughs> what do you want me to say that he yells and he gets angry? But hype. Well, he get, does get hype. He definitely gets hype in game. Is well, that what you want? Oh my goodness! Look, Shepo, she's got. She's actually got a plan. Do you think that Blitz has given her that? Because Blitz is currently oh. the coach of Team Liquid, which means he's insanely his boss. So in some ways, it could have been really awkward if Team Dragon had won yesterday, because it would be insania versus Blitz. Look! Look at the difference. The, the left, they seem like they've organized they're, they're something. They've, chill, they've got yeah. notes. No, they've got they've notes. Been, they're chatting. It's, they've been smoking uh, cigarettes for 20 minutes in that room. And and look right. at Klaus. He can't even fit the badge they're in his just, pocket. Like, he's struggling. <laughs> they're just standing there like, when are we going to get on there? I have to give props, though, to Team Thunderhide because they've just been in the tent next door to us uh, commentating the, the games and, and, and doing panel like we're doing right now. On, on that lower bracket final. So they've just witnessed Team Spirit, the hope of Eastern Europe, go through to the grand finals. And now they've had to run over and do their bit for the cause as well. They're probably hyped up on that win though. So they're probably pretty excited. I got to say their morale has got to be high right now. That's, that could really make a big difference if they continue randoming heroes that they're a little bit sloppy with. I was talking to Dendi in the morning and uh, yeah, he says that this is a huge upgrade to the you know roster that we had yesterday. You know, and that they, he's really afraid of playing into Excalibur. And uh, he, as he said, oh, as you said, you know, Blitz, he's a tryhard. He's really afraid. <laughs> so I, I think the strategy that uh, maybe should have been executed by literally anybody in the show match yesterday, maybe <laughs> maybe we'll see it today. You get some, like, good farming hero, and you just need, like, a good 10 minutes, you know? Like, BSJ got that axe mid. He went, he stacked his medium camps, and they just died mid. It's like, well, if he just, like, if he just had, like, a good 10 minutes, you can get, like, a quick axe, maybe a fast Midas. That can propel you forward. you got to be a little bit tried. Not too tried. Don't buy a Dagon, but, you know. Effie, would you recommend, apart from buying a Dagon, because I know you would, uh, would you recommend just dying if you get a hero you don't like? Or is that going to put you at a distinct disadvantage in this particular type of game mode? <laughs> I mean, you don't want to give away dust, but just have fun. That's This is what this is for. We're just talking it's about not, stacking camps and farming fun. for 10 minutes. That's not what we want to see. We want to see just a deathmatch, bloody you just, battles. You just need a casual... 10 minutes of farming to get like a quick level 10 that yeah. way anytime you respawn you got your talent <laughs> you got like some items and then you run at them that's all just a little uh, believe me I don't want them to See, farm all game but... if Purge had played it it would have been the most boring thing in the world I'll call it if streamers get Templar Assassin on Vagamama they win 100% I, I love that Effie's just like, no, we want to see actual action. And Purge is like, no, this is like a coaching session. I want to see patients farming and not have any fun. But you know who's going to have fun? Slacks and Sumi. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of the TI-10 All-Star Match! I'm Sir Action Slacks here for you, and with my lovely and wonderful co-host, Sumi! Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It's just me. <laughs> Stadium's empty, so <laughs> continue. All right, Jake, so what do we have today? We have two teams yes. fighting for the ultimate title. Oh, that is right, Sumi. This is what people have fought for in All-Star Match forever, for so long. We have it up there, replacing the Aegis of Immortality, the Aegis of Immortality, in fact, the Chiefs! They fight for the Chiefs! You know, a lot of people in Dota think that only the Aegis matters, but the Chiefs also matters, and that is what our community team and our Russian talent team will be fighting for today. Yeah, you'd think so, but ironically, at this event, many have not really cared about the Aegis. But uh, no, that's okay, though. They've left it several times. At any rate, though, the all-star match separates the strong from the weak. Yesterday, we saw Team Thunderhide, the Russian broadcast team, absolutely decimate those that I shall not name because they mean nothing now. And now they're up against even harder opponents. Yes, they are. They will be fighting against Team Golem, the roster of which we have kept a secret we have. the whole time. Kinda. <laughs> what do you mean kinda? Oh wait, until now. Until the panel. Until yeah. the panel. <laughs> but anyway, so sure. tell me a little bit about what to expect with this mode because we've been seeing a lot of captain's draft. Yes. But what are we doing here? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to All Random Deathmatch. If you don't know what that mode is, well, let me tell you. You start off with a random hero. Every single time that you die in your game, you respawn as a random hero. You keep your spells, you keep your items, but you keep only that. Your pride most likely will take a massive hit. At any rate, you will continue going through this until all of your lives are depleted, and at that point, you may not respawn again, and the game ends. Every team has 40 lives. Oh. Every respawn subtracts a life. And once you get down to zero lives, it basically becomes permadeath for your team. It's a lot of math, Sumi. Too much math for me. Hero die good, ancient die good, hero die for you bad. <laughs> All right, Jake. Well, it seems like our teams is they are both ready to come out. So let's bring out first Team Golem. his bowels during a Street Fighter match. <laughs> oh my god. Disgusting. <laughs> All right, Sorry. Jake, what's up next, though? Oh, are we doing next now? Well, you might have remembered them from yesterday, ladies and gentlemen. It is the unstoppable, the hard boys, the Thunder Hearts! Oh, my voice cracked. <laughs> That's right, my friends, we've got Havost, Dendi, Resolution, Smile, and Solo. These guys had absolutely zero mercy for the boys that came out last night. And now, they seem to have no mercy for the folks that are coming out here today. They keep trying to rename themselves Team Borscht. We keep asking them not to, but they'll do it anyway. Havost, are you ready to take another team down? Yeah, for sure. Another CIS team in the finals. 
We represent the same. God damn, hell yeah. Dendi, you are representing yet again your region, your skill, your people. Any thoughts on this match? No mercy. Ooh, I feel it. Resolution, you always say something nice. Would you like to say something not nice this time? You don't have to, it's okay. I think you come to this match as a favorite, obviously. Like, I mean, look at them. Like, this is not going to be a game. Act know. Wow. Super easy. That was surprisingly brutal. Thank you very much. How are we feeling for the game, boys? I have no idea how to play Dota, but we'll eat them. They got no chance. Okay, seem confident yet again. Team Thunderhide getting ready to roll with this. And now we have a quick interview with our very own Team Gollum. Sheepsick, tell me, you saw your friends get uh, a little bit obliterated yesterday. How will you do things differently to secure the win? I mean, we've been playing competitive ARDM for 17 years now as a team, so I think we're you know a little bit better uh, than those you know wash, washed up players. So I think we got it. Washed up players. They Whoa. called you washed up players. Oh, oh my, my goodness. We are on a we're on a roll here. All right. Do you have anything that you want to say to team Thunderhide? Hi Roman. Hi Dendi. Hi everybody. They waved back to you. All right. What hero do you want the least and why? Techies, because I lose my soul. <laughs> Techies, because you lose your soul. All right. How did you prepare for this match, sir? Trying to pump my team up. I'm the most experienced here. I've filled the most pre-TIs, pre-grand final panels here. So we're ready. Thank you. He prepared the panels by being ready. All right, the final question, and perhaps the most important question of this entire interview. Are you aware that your comms will be live on stream during the entire match? Yep. Uh, no, no one told me. No, no, no. Well, you know now, <laughs> gentlemen, ladies, everyone, we are about ready to start this match. Teams, please head over to your pod. go, go! once again sending these poor people to the slaughter for our entertainment. It's what we're all about here in Dota 2. <laughs> Jake, you have to put a more positive spin on it. Give me a positive spin on what we're about to see. Ice Frog literally nerfed every hero I love into oblivion. Techies will never be picked here. Omni Knight had one game and he lost. I don't have to be positive about anything. I'm extremely upset for the last year and a half. All right, thank you very much, Jake, who is the biggest win runner fan. Thank you very much for all of your time. Thank all you. Right. Are you so cutting me out? I'm still not watching. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it alone. I'm still here. Continue. All right, Jake. So, yeah. We've talked about this a little bit yesterday, but for the people who may not have been here yesterday, let's talk a little bit about the meta. Oh. So, yesterday you told me, and we saw, that both Team Thunderhide and Team Dragon built, I think they built like 10 Dagons. That's right, that is right. It was mostly Team Thunderhide. These guys know all random deathmatch. I told you, don't itemize like a normie. You're not gonna have the same hero over and over again. You need Dagons, you need Blinks. Somebody put a veil! A veil? <laughs> and he had a slam of Janna? They can't, they can't hear you, Jake. They I don't can't hear you. Moron! You don't buy a veil? What if you get anti mage, alright? You got to pick items that will transfer to hero to hero to hero. Aghanim's shard. Does it transfer or doesn't it? I literally don't care. But Aghanim's scepter does, my friend. That one is always a good one. Every hero has an axe. So now, what is the best hero to be playing in this mode? They said no techies, so... It is it is techies. I don't know why. I mean, Brian is just too uh, incompetent to understand the power. You need to pick a hero that is going to be good for you. For example, Sheepo, one of the greatest Meepo players of all time. Fantastic hero in this game because no one knows how to play against that hero because it's been irrelevant for two years. Things like that, that pop up that you can use your Dagon Meepo to win the game. Now, Sumi, keep, keep with me here. All right. That's the power. Don't play normally. This is all random deathmatch and you're against tryhards. You have got to think outside the box. So tell me yesterday, Team Dragon, it looked like it was pretty even and then suddenly they were 4v3, or they were 3v4 
and then all of a sudden, all three of them died at the same time. That is right. What, what do we do to avoid that this time? Well, you probably don't pick bad teammates. I think that uh, right here, Team Golem, they have some strong teammates. They have someone that might be able to stand up to CIS, because uh, let's be real with you, that region is dominating so far. This is quite, quite similar to our grand finals here coming up. But Jake, the Eastern Europe region, they have ex-pros. Yes. I, I'm sorry if I confused you. Golem has literally no chance of winning. I'm, I'm not trying to make this weird or anything. Blitz is on the team. I won't lie to you. I asked Blitz to play one game with me to raise my MMR to boost me, and he lost eight in a row and then asked Fog to fix it. I mean, the guy has no clue what's going on. He's Liquid's coach, for God's sakes. Oh my gosh, I hope Team Liquid is not watching this. Jake, you are putting everyone blast tonight. There are no blasts here in Dota. This is actually very non-toxic behavior. Uh, I disagree. <laughs> I very much disagree. All right, well, All right. let's say some positives, okay? Yes. Waka Magaga, this guy, don't mess around, drops items all the time, picks them up before someone can steal them. He ain't pulling no swindles. These guys play a lot of Dota, they play a lot of streamings. I mean, they have li they basically no lives. You can go on any kind of platform at any day and see one of these guys doing something Dota related. The only one that has a life is Merlini, and somehow we still got him back. So, I mean, it it's a sickness, and that sickness will lead them to glory. All right, well, they have people that have, that apparently have no lives. I'm so sorry to the team that will probably be watching the VODs later. But let's talk a little bit more about Team Thunderhide. Ah, yes. they, are our, they are our home team right now. They are coming in from a win. They have experience on the TI stage, both, right, both yesterday and literally, like, eight years ago. That's right. Team Thunder High is a team with a lot to prove. Not that much to lose, though, because they have lost many times uh, in recent memory. Much to prove, though. Do, do not want to lose against these guys. Is there any bigger shame than losing to Blitz Dota? I'm not sure that there possibly could be. So they're going to try hard, as we saw yesterday. I don't even think they were trying that hard yesterday. There was a lot of laughter. There was a lot of joy. Yeah, a very strange thing to see. But Jake, they said no mercy today. They did. They does that mean did. that they're that they're going to try, mm -hmm. or does it mean that they're not going to try and it's still going to be no mercy? I. What? Not gonna try? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever you just tried to say does not matter to me. What matters is that Dendi was not smiling when he entered the arena. I've never seen that before in my life. And delicious cheese. I don't know if you've seen Team Golem. Many of them look malnutritious. I think that they are actually going to try to just live by getting that cheese. Uh, it is a big motivator for them. Hunger. Literal hunger. We have to balance this out. <laughs> so I'm gonna say Team Thunderhide, okay? okay. Team Thunderhide! Ah, Jake. yes. Team Thunderhide, I mean, they're just motivated by being here. When's the last time Havost has been to a TI? I mean, they just want to literally come. So uh, their motivation is to continue to stay on the stage for as long as possible, potentially warm up the seats of uh, Team Spirit. And that could help. It's chilly sometimes in Romania. If they can get enough accumulated lower heat to support their brothers in their region, I think that that is a big motivation for them. So I'd expect a longer game. I'd expect a lot of cheese to be eaten outside the booth to make it a healthy playing environment. And I expect them to do extremely well. Do you think that they're, the fact that they are experienced Dota players and captains vote will transfer over to ARDM? No, I don't think their experiences at all will transfer over to AR. I don't think anyone's experiences transfer to ARDM except for panic and fear, which is something that a lot of support players and Dota players know. So uh, captain's mode is for tryhards, all pick is for the people, and all random death matches for people that just gave up. And uh, if there's one thing we have in plenty on this stage, it's a lot of those people. Are there people who like main ARDM? Uh, name AR, main main it, ARDM? Main I hope I never made him, Sumi. I really, really do. But if you're watching out there, uh, keep, keep on trucking. You're good. <laughs> you know who's the real sickos? The ones that made ability draft. What the hell? Yeah, Large I'm... gamer people. <laughs> My God. All right. I like ability. I like ability draft. That's Sorry. great. All right. All so. right. He's stepping away. That's fine. <laughs> <sighs> 
Sumi. Yes. What hero do you think would be the scariest hero to see late game in an all random death match? And this is a trick question, so really think about it. The scariest hero? Hmm. What do you mean scary? You mean scary as in, oh no, I have to play this hero? Or scary as in, oh no, they have that hero? I'm saying thick boy waddling out of the jungle, level 30 with random items. Which one do you not want to see rolling out? Well, honestly, tiny. Tiny. A strong hero, potentially. But you have to have the right build. Shadow that Blade, is true. We haven't talked that much about Shadow Blade's a fine one. In Viz, in Vince, as we in the Dota community say. So uh, Who says that? Huh? Who says that? Somebody. If you say <laughs> that, please type yippee in the chat. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Items that make you invis, items that make your movement change. Uh, don't get things like Ghost Scepter, that's pathetic and hilarious, unless you're planning on building E-Blade, which is also pathetic and hilarious, but at least you can pretend like you're participating. Either way, itemization is extremely important. It's literally one of the only things that you can control in a chaotic mode, like all random deathmatch. Do neutral items get dropped in all random deathmatch slacks? What, is this a quid show? I don't know. I mean, I I've never played this in my life. I don't know. Probably. Uh, I don't know, Sumi. Uh, those, uh, uh... I can't even... Shut up, Sumi. You don't know. <laughs> uh, yes, they do. Okay, great. I just said that very confidently so that he doesn't know if I actually know or not. The answer is yes. They work together. Okay, well, no worries. Our teams are about to get into it, Sumi. Yep. I want your final, final, final guess. Who will be taking it here for the Grand Champions of the All-Star Game? All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and pick Team Thunderhide because they are experienced and also because that means you have to pick the other team. Yeah, yeah, Golem will definitely win. Yep. <laughs> yep. Here it comes, guys. Uh, full All right. faith, uh, let's throw it in. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to play the old match. <laughs> let's play some Dota! Wait, why is my minimap on the wait, right? Wait. Oh my god, I have Aiden Yo, set up. Roll, roll for carry. <laughs> Dude, no, no, I have Aiden set up. Oh my god, wait, how do I... Oh, thank you, sir. You're a savior. <laughs> I need... Guys, Dude, I, I have... Need... We, we gotta try hard. I need to win this to get a new stream title. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, okay, go, go, Rush, go, Rush. I'm, I have... I have uh, yo, they're already there. Hurry up. Yeah, yeah, get in there, get in there, get in there. Get in. Wait. Wait, we're not fighting yet. We're not fighting yet. No, 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 no. We're getting in there. We're getting in there. Go, 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 go. Gentlemen's agreement. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go, go, go. Get him. Dude, why are they not hitting Roche? Dude, they're not helping us. Help us. What the fuck are they doing there, dude? Yo, hit. Sheep, don't tag too much. No, no, no. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah, don't let them use you like that. We need to... Dude, they need to trade aggro. Yeah. Why are they doing this? Why? No, no, this is great. <laughs> Dude, they have the melee hero. They are supposed to tank it. Oh, why is he on the back line? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Uh, Be careful with the stun. Let's oh, not BBM. I'm going back in. All right. All right, it's half. It's almost time. It's almost okay, half okay. Pickford. Let's go for... I'm going to I'm gonna astral the SF, okay? I should have right. gone stun. I fucked up. Oh, no. Just, just build up bashes and then chill. Right. I, I'm power shotting when it's dying. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, right. I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing. All right. Three, two, go! Oh, go, 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 go! Fuck, that's so much faster! Kill them! Kill them, kill them! Stick, stick, stick! Stick, stick, stick! Stick, stick, stick! Stick, stick, stick! Stick, stick! Yeah, get wrestled. I, I have one more bash. Bam! He has Aegis? Uh, oh, yeah. kill them, kill them again! Kill them again, kill them again! Body block him if you need. I have the bash. I'm TPing bottom. I saw him. I saw him. Get in front. Get in front. All right, I'm oh. body blocking. I'm body blocking. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I don't have any more. I'm bash. hitting. I don't have no, any more. It's, bash. Fine. it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a power shot? Power shot? I'm, I'm yep. giving vision. Oh, that was pathetic. That was pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was gonna juke. He just kept running. That wasn't even a juke. He just walked in a straight Yeah, that's line. what I mean. Dude, he didn't on. juke. He didn't juke. <laughs> that's the juke. These players are washed. Do not think they're gonna juke. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Dude, I have all of Aiden's hotkeys. Yo, help me. I'm going top. You and me, Merlini. All right, is, is... Oh, what the hell? Are you farming? He just didn't come to yeah, the Yeah, I'll farm. Okay. 
I'm so on Sell out. <laughs> What are you talking about? This is my favorite caster voice line by far. Yo, help me, help me, help it me. Actually I'm trying, I'm trying, man. Run, 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 Keep fighting him, keep fighting him, keep fighting okay, him. Okay, okay. Keep fighting him, keep fighting him. I have no regen, I spent it all on Sal. That's because you're selfless. <laughs> yeah. You have to be a bigger piece of shit. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh. Yo, help me, help me, help me. Oh, you're dead, you're dead. Well, you're why dead. would you say help me? Like, that was a, I just actually just got baited in by you. Nah, nah, nah. We needed a new hero, anyways. What the? <laughs> just reroll. I'm CK. That's kind of lit. I, uh, my hockey's all wrong. I... Oh my god. Aiden sabotaged me with his. Is he going to again? <laughs> oh, watch out. Damn. I stole it. Do you have sap? Oh, I can sap it. There I fucked mine up. It's fine, I got one. I thought he has. Yo, wait. Yo, there's that fucking Wizard. What the fuck's going on? Did you not have TP sheep? I kind of want to reroll my hero. I used it. I came back to lane after Rush. Oh my god, I griefed you. You griefed my game. I'll take that. That's okay, all these range here. Yo, leave. Yo, leave. Oh, three years mid. Oh my god. TP's, TP's, TP's mid. <laughs> uh, I don't have one. I'm, 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 I'm TPing, I'm TPing, I'm TPing. Are you okay? I don't know. I have, I have some heals. I'm stuck. Stay nice. Fire. Turn, turn, turn. Not sure about turning, but. Steve! I'm <laughs> Steve! I'm dying, dude. It's okay. Oh, I got Arc Warden. They're all stunned. They're all stunned. That's You're stunned. Arc? Arc early? Yo, I have stunned. I have stunned. I have stunned. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Ravage. Where's my team? I'm really enjoying hitting creeps right now. I don't know. Where's my team? <laughs> I'm Ogre. I'm keeping our side basically. Dude. I'm gonna clean up this dude. Steve, if you just want to nerd it and just AFK farm, I'm 100% okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> our player is actually really strong again. I got this, guys. Like, this is a strong hero. Nice. Come on. Getting your grandmaster. How did you get your grandmaster and your master tier hero first and second? Did you talk to them? Nice guys. I'm coming mid. I'm coming mid. I got the Ember, dude. I got the Ember. I'm doing recovery laning. Uh, I'll rotate soon. I'm coming, Steve. Yeah, yeah. You getting bottom? No, I'm not. I can't afford it. Don't wait. Do you want to sell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't have one, so. I'll buy you one. <laughs> I actually bought myself. It's all good. Oh, I have to pull for myself because my core is so useful. Yo, Steve, help me! Oh shit. Steve, help I, me. I'm, I'm, juking, hard, I'm juking, I'm juking. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, dude. I'm baiting, I'm baiting. Stun in one. Turn! Yeah, yeah, we got him, we got him. No, get the jug, no spin, no spin, no spin. There's no roach to kill him. That's true, that's true. It's oh, part of the strat. I'm being the 20 seconds? By a viper. I, I'm going for a sniper. Finish him up, finish him up. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Go for Mark, go for Mark. I, I have a uh, Ignite, one second. Okay, okay. Dive, 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 dive. I'll place the ward. I can cold brace I'll place the ward to tank. Kill him, Ben, please. I actually want to keep my hero. You didn't want Ogre anyway. Diggle, what? Diggle, my hero is really good. I, Yo, I, I have I AM. Keep my hero. Dude, he has Arcane already? How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do you have? I have AM. I have well, AM. That's, that's useless that to me. Useless that to is so no, bad. No, AM is actually good on oh, lane. Dude. dude, seriously, walk that, walk down mid. No, no, AM is actually good on lane. No, no, AM is actually good on lane. If, 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 if you play the hero properly, it's actually really good. There's a Viper. You want to go laning at that? Come, come, come bot. Like, we smoke, we go with anti mage, we kill Viper. Okay, I, I, go, I do go, not want them to have this hero. I'm buying Orb of Venom. I'm buying Orb of Venom. Okay, okay, nice. Let's go. Alright, I'm eating. Ben, you ready to slap? Yeah, let's go. Alright, go, 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 go. I have two null talismans, I finished farming. I feel like the correct move is to kill me, I guys. Stun, I stun first. Yo, get him, get him, get him! Yo! He's free, he's free, he's free, he's free. He has no, yeah, no. Just Yo, kill tight after. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get him. Last hit okay. from my carry. Uh, what hero? Why is, what hero are you? Why is Scalbert? Nice kill steal? Yo, dive him, dive him, dive him, dive him. I'm mid. Yep. What hero are you? Yeah, I'm being chased. No, I'm gonna die here. I'm just swapping here. I'm hero. diving? Dive him, hands off keyboard. Okay, I'm Hands off keyboard. I'm dive him, dive him, dive him, dive him. <laughs> 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 Oh, got Drow. Him? Drow with null talismans. Here we go. Go, go, go. Find the multi shot. Yo, 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 yo. No way, no he's way. Duking no us. way. He's, he's not that good. Us. He's not that good. He's not that good. Wonderful. Okay. Anti mage is low. I have the perfect ganking here. I'm coming bottom soon. <laughs> yo, let me farm. Is my turn to farm? Uh, okay. I have. How many CS check? Uh. 
Yo, guys, yeah, come mid, come mid. Right here. Can you kill him? TP's mid. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm TP's bottom. Mid. I'm bottom. Hey, guys. I have no TP's. Is there a rune bottom still? I'm actually really close to six. Actually, yeah, yeah there is. There is. Oh, actually. shit, he's getting. Okay. Once I get. This once is I get. Wonderful south, coordination. If you guys come here, we can kill. I'm, I'm going to be six. I'm going to die. <laughs> Don't oh, die. I am going to die. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no, he's six. No, 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 our star's just been farming this entire time. <laughs> All right, I'm ready whenever. I need to get the south first. Okay. I, I'm ready as soon as I get the south. Okay. Yo, it's it's night time, and Daniel? I have night. Nice or not? This is pretty good. I have orb. Okay, do, do jump on them. Do jump on them. Okay, okay. Just. Wait. I think it's easy. I think it's easy. No way, dude. We didn't buy wards. Why would they buy wards? L look at the way he's moving, dude. No, no, dude. He's just smart. He's just smart. Yeah, he's just a. What player is that? Is that Dendi? It's Dendi. It's true. Oh, yo, help me, help me, help me, help me. I'm coming, I'm coming. On the on the right? Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. You can't kill him. We can't return kill this. Yo, you're going to Doom? To Doom? Kill Doom too. Okay. Oh, he has such a big one. Buy raindrops? Oh shit! I already have some. I, I don't have my keys bound for like bringing my courier. I'm playing like Sir Axis right now. I've got to manually select oh my courier. No. <laughs> Steve, don't worry. We'll tank the blame for you. Guys, <laughs> try hard in this game. Stack camps. Stack camps. Stack camps. We're stack actually camps. Stack, camps. Camps. stack camps. Stack camps are Steve. <laughs> stack camps are Steve. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Pile all onto Steve. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I need help, number. help team! Yo, yo, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm here. Run oh, to me, I'm running, I'm run running, to me! I can't really run, dude. <laughs> run to me? <laughs> I'm Ench? Oh, that, that can work. Yo, this is the hero. Sadly, you have died and I have to inherit your farm. Yeah. Can we kill Bono? I can TP mid. Yeah. Like, TP like bottom. Look at their play. Look at, look at their, what, what they're doing. Can I kill her? Can I play hero? I'll be there <laughs> in a little bit soon. Ish. I've been trapped. I've been trapped. I'm, I'm coming. Dead. I'm dead. Yeah, get rid of I'm dying. Get him. What is this? Yo, oh, here, dog. I'm cosplaying as Aiden. Let me get the last hit. No, we got it. <laughs> Wait, Radiant? What? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. It's what what do you mean, Radiant? Oh, shared it's just, it's <laughs> All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's, yeah. Yo, I'm it's pulling an Aiden. Let me here. farm small camp. Dude, look at this guy. He's actually just trying to form a blink dagger. He's a, he actually counters my hero, so we're gonna have to gank him. Okay. Soon. What hero are you? I'm, I'm PL. Okay. I have level right. four impetus. I just want to fight. Let's go then. Let's go then. I got fairy shrink it. Uh -huh. Who's taking tome? Um. Uh, I would like it. I think we should gank him. Can we kill the sniper mid? Yeah. Yeah. Fight them. No! Fight them. Fight them. Fight them. Fight them. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, yeah, Dieter. Don't worry, I'm coming guys. to. I'm coming to. I'm coming I think to. they have wards, guys. Yeah, they I'm pretty sure they, they definitely have wards. They have wards. What? Can we kill a Tinker here? Can I'm we kill Tinker? Uh, I'm so far. I'm so far. I'm orbing him. Right. Last hit. No, oh, so close. Uh, Sheep, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. I've been doomed, dude. No. You're fine. You're fine. Just run to me. I'm just gonna, you know, get you. We need some fighters mid. Oh my god, he's got one hit. I don't know. I'm gonna get him, I'm gonna get him. Maybe. I got him, I got him. Oh shit, I typed and I died! <laughs> I'm fighting top. I'm coming for the doom. I'll just chase this guy. Okay, I can I'm him. not backing, he's gonna die. Let's go. I'm getting dark here. Or I will die. I'm TPing. I don't know how to play dark below though, but with me. Oh. He ran. I'm up in five. I have Spear Breaker. I can charge him. I can charge him. Just keep going. Alright, that's a kill steal. I put in so much effort for that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yo, you guys want to dive mid? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, go kill him. Go I misclicked. I misclicked. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Top, guys? I got him. I got him. No, no, no. no. Can I cancel him? No, no. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him. We got him. We got him. Oh, oh nice. Nice, nice, nice. Got him. Any clock? Yeah, maybe clock. Dude, I'm going oh, for my that's dude. Breaker? Yo, kill the four. I'm running top. I I see nothing but clock. Go, go, go. That's a level eight clock. Do we kill him? Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No pussy. I'm ulting. I'll hold him. Nice. 
Uh, he's hungry. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Yeah. yeah. Should die. Yep. Okay, he's alive. Oh, he killed the... No, 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 no. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. No, he doesn't okay, have so the, the hunger. It's gone. Oh. The thing. oh my god, oh, I could dunk him. God. I could dunk him from there. You're so bad. I don't have a crawling blade. Yeah, I'm, dude, I'm not saying you're getting kicked off this game, but I think you're getting kicked off this game. Oh my god. I made you. I trained you at the training camp. You know you gotta kick me. <laughs> Wag is training camp? No, I was never there. <laughs> Do not associate uh -huh. me with your friends. All of your success is my success now. Yo, these guys are farming. They're farming ancient. <laughs> we have a stacked ancient camp too. Did okay, okay. For Steve. Did our, did our Steve farm it? Oh, yeah. That's Steve. Soon. All in on being our Oh, I know. Oh, so oh dead. my yeah. god. We lost. We lost. Yeah, we lost. Okay. <laughs> Love him, Midas, dude. <laughs> All of our net worth just went down there. Yeah, what hero did you get? Oh, I got Dark Seer. He's a Dark Seer carry. <laughs> I'm TPing mid. Oh no. Seems good. Oh, no. Are we doing better than the English town? Oh, yo, they're going on us. Do you have any stuff? You don't. Oh shit. You only have a crapper. Uh, I'll TP top. I'll TP top. Yeah, I, have, I, have I have spells. I have spells. I have spells. This can work. Maybe. I'm keeping top, I'm keeping top. I am dead. I'm just slept forever. We didn't kill them all here. Shit. You missed me. Ooh, what about you? Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna back, I'm gonna sh show you. Kill Rezo! Okay, yeah. Why oh, is there a clock here? Him. Can you micro your illusion? Stop his point. Oh sorry. I'm coming to you guys? Yo, they're dying here, guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. No! What's this? I'm TPing? I don't want to sleep. No, I'm not, I'm not TPing. Oh, no, there's TP. Oh, I, I almost have called. We can fight, we can fight, yeah, we go, can fight, go we can this, fight. Go for this, go for this. Oh my god, Waka, no! Waka, oh my god! Dude, I'm dead now, I'm dead now. <laughs> oh, Waka's gone. <laughs> Disaster. I kind of want to suicide with you. Sure. What are you? Shen. Dude, just die. I'm on my way, man. I, I do want to help you. I'm coming top, kid. Are you alive, Sheep? Uh, maybe. I'm dead for eight more. Does it have ult? She's fine. Is that bad? Yeah, she's gonna kill I'm them all. I'm healing so much. She's gonna kill them all. It's free. It's free. Easy clap. Nice one. Nice one. I got another point in the. Oh, free eight. kill, free kill. Right here, right here, right here, right here, uh, right here, too. The tip man, back. The tip back. That man hated Bane. That man hated Bane. Not toxic, by the way. I got the him. I got him. I got him. <laughs> Dude, they're challenging us. Go, go, Roche, go, yeah. go, 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 go. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Right. I don't have any salt. I'm making my way. I gotta, I gotta get some resources, guys. Wait, wait, we're wait, gonna, wait for we're two. Wait for two. Okay. Uh... Wait for all. I need to get some resources. Okay. Okay. Sheep, do you need to heal? I give uh, you mana. I, I don't think Dude, you. we're gonna get Echo in the pit. No, 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 no. We killed Shaker. We killed Shaker. Oh, we killed it. You take a just but not Excalibur. <laughs> Okay, okay. Are they all up? All right, go, 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 go. Hey, Why is this? Go, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> Yo, you guys want to be scumbags and just kill them? Steve, I know you got walls. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good. All right, all right. When, when it's at like, when it's at like five percent, okay, Steve? I don't know about that. I mean, I have my honor, you know. I mean, I, I'm about to kill them after. Uh, you know? We're gonna go, go for it. the roach. Guys, I have to honor the roach. I have to fulfill contractual obligations when this roach ends, so I will pause the game. Will, you're gonna die immediately. Dude, I'm not gonna die. But dude, I'm dying to the battery. Oh my god, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I silenced them all. What's going on? We're going, what, 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> They're all silenced. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. This is an outbreak. <laughs> god damn, you sold out hard, cheap. <laughs> yeah, but me so much. <laughs> Alright, right, go, go, go. I'm dropping everything. Fight them, fight them, fight them, fight them. See, I'm behind you guys. I don't have a body silence, I don't have a body silence. <laughs> nice, guys. They're all dying, they're all dying. Kill the truckers, kill the truckers. Oh my god, 50 health. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get it. Oh, he's so low. This guy's also so low. Okay, guys. Okay, I have nothing. <laughs> More tactics? <laughs> oh, 
care to elaborate? I have a warlock. What, what hero do I get? I'm a witch doctor. I got Pagna. That's not that, not that. Oh, then you're getting all the bad heroes. I know. Pagna, Pagna's not bad. Oh, who? Whoops. I. Okay, guys. I, uh. You know, let's, we... let's fight Man Smoke. Guys, we, I we only have 12 lives, so we need to start killing them. This okay, game okay. is Defense of the Ancients, by here. the way, and they've taken one Dendy power and we've taken none. None. Towers, does Tower, matter. towers don't matter. Can we push some There's towers? I've been helping by here. They're all five stop. Okay, fight around me. I'm actually super strong. I, I actually got a really good hero. No, me, and, me and Blizzard are going to push this tower. Who's yellow? Tiny sleeping bottom? Okay. I, I'm coming bottom. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I have, yeah, I have they're, they're, they're all running them. through our triangle, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight them, fight them. Go fight them. Fight them. Please don't worry, fuck them up. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We can kill them here. Wait, kill. I have all, yeah, don't I go can, tiny. Go here. Go here. Oh, why? I want to kill tiny. Okay, uh, they have the broken sure. hero. You want to let this guy get They're money? going behind us, you know? <laughs> no, fuck it. Fuck it. All right. All right. Sure, sure, sure. All right. I'm stampeding. Get him. Oh, is he dead? I don't know. No, so. not yet. I'm trying my best. Oh my god, he's alive. Is here somewhere? Uh, you know what? Yo, behind us. Yo, yo, fight together. Fight together. Fight together. They're sandwiched here. Finish off that battle. Then he's got Aegis. Then he's got Aegis. Oh, yeah, Aegis. Oh, yeah, don't, don't kill him. Don't kill him. We're getting tiny. I'm gonna hide and use my slow. Stun? I'm channeling. I'm channeling. Okay. I'm gonna stay here and do this until I. <laughs> oh, no. I've stunned him too. How do we not kill? <laughs> not a single person. Dude, we killed. No, we killed the tiny. Oh, we, no, we didn't. Yeah, oh, no. we, we got him now. Nine, 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 we got him now. No, I have heal. I got you. I got, I got you're you. Good, you're good. You're good. Oh, I'm healing. Heal. Don't I'm up in 10. I'm up in 10. <laughs> Guys, I have, I have my best hero. I have my offlane face with wood. And my meteor hammer, I have enough money. Nice, get in there, Ben. I see you have all support items. <laughs> yo, 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 I have I have him, I have him, I have him. This has to be the <laughs> least intimidating terror blade ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love this build on terror build. It's nice. It's sick. The urn of shadows. I mean, you get free damage, so. Who needs items? Oh, shit. oh my god, Solo got my I, hero. I hate to be the one to say this, but your Midas might not have time to pay off Excalibur. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was hard going on my body. No, that was the idea. I'm coming, I'm coming mid, I have Chrono, and I have a uh, Mir I'm hammer. around mid. Okay, okay, okay. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. We can fuck them up. Okay. Uh, he zipped out. I can, I can, can, can I, I'm smoking, I'm, can smoking, I'm smoking. Can, yo, we need to place a word before we fight. We need, we need to play around the, the word. What kind of 5k game do you think this is? What kind of words? <laughs> <laughs> Five K. <laughs> that fucking words, dude. Right. Okay, I need you guys to give me vision, but oh, with your body. Can we have a war? Put our butt. Wait, 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 just wait mid. Just wait mid. We never took their mid tower. We okay, can't make this move. Don't, don't oh call this rift. Kill every ET. Yeah, kill the ET. Kill the ET. Fuck it. Yo, yo, kill the ET. Yeah, wrestle. Kill wrestle. Kill wrestle. Good shit. Good shit. Did he just ult a bird? I think so. Kill him, kill him, kill him. What a combo! Woo! Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Yo, get the Wraith King too after? Yeah, yeah. Yo, 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 for sure, for sure. Kill him too, kill him too. Alright, we got him. Oh, shit. Oh. Okay. Yo, he's going BKB again. What the fuck? They lost. <laughs> Disqualified. Ah, it's messed up. I'm lying. Minus 500 MMR. Bruno told me. Yeah. Will I have to hold Bruno to that? Okay, I'm getting blink guys, and we're gonna win. Wait, how does it work now if we run off our last two lives? It's just over? Yes. Okay, when, okay. when it's zero and then you die, it's permanent. Yeah, if someone dies, yeah. Okay, guys. We get one full respawn. Dude, we, I just got Osha. We farmed zero neutrals or what? <laughs> All I'm saying is the other team lost it to like 30 minutes, guys. It's not looking good right now. It's 19 no, minutes. No, 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 no. Guys, guys. Guys, we're gonna win this game. Calm down. Play around our wards, we're gonna win the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Calm down. Listen to the sound of my voice. I'm about Get to have my dig down. on. I think they want to die mid. What the fuck? He silenced my birds and killed them. Oh my god, he destroyed them. That was rude. I'm dying. I'm actually just dying. I'm dying. I need to heal. Oh my god. No! I'm 
coming, guys. Don't be I don't have a chrono, guys. Don't fight for I'm 74 coming. seconds. I'm coming, guys. I'm, I'm, coming. Coming. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. They're disrespecting us. They, they can't do this. Does he have... Does he have ult? Oh, no, 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 he does not. Yo, this guy, this guy. Yo, kill, kill a fucking silencer. Yo, yo, give me vision. Can we chase? Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. Chasing. I have a bird. The bird is coming. Sick, 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 yeah. sick. I'll stop. There's a storm nice, here. Nice, nice. See him, yeah, see him, yeah, see him. Yeah, 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 see him. Yo, yo, yo help me, help me. I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, dude. I'm with you. I bash, I bash. They're both, they're both stunned. They're both stunned. It's free. It's yeah, free. I don't ever stun. I don't ever stun yet. He's out of mana. He's out of mana on. Kill Medusa then. Go, go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Find storm. Nice. Keep finding. Mid tower. Okay, guys. No one can die anymore. Okay. <laughs> no one can die anymore. <laughs> this is when we win. Wait, I thought we get five more. No, heroes. no, you get five we more deaths. You get five more lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five so more lives. Everyone so is all of us can die once. One death. Yeah, yeah. If anyone dies more than one death, they will uh, unfortunately not make it out of this booth alive. I'm not dying a single time. How did you die more than me, Sheep? Don't, don't, look, keep at my, don't me. look at my score. What? What is this? <laughs> You're Guys, good. I'm gonna just assume that I'm lying and I won't die again, and I will buy items accordingly. Uh, I have yeah, a sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, do you want essence ring? I have. Yeah, yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me. Guys, 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 I have Chronosphere. We can fight. If I don't die, guys, we can't lose a fight. There's no yeah. way. Uh, All in on this hell, bird. Mm -hmm. Protect Steve. The birds are your bodyguards. I think they're smoke, <laughs> guys. I think they're smoke. Okay, back up, back, back, yeah, back yeah. to tower, back to tower. I have, I have, I have blink. I have blink and Chrono. Okay. This is free. I will just sit back. Just send our Ricky first. I need, I need people in front of me in the fight. Oh, oh, no, they, they put a they ward. They put a ward. They have a ward here. They have a ward here. Let me put a ward. I can put a They have a ward here for sure. <laughs> Yo, someone buy a sentry. Where's my supports? Yo, there's a Rasta, shaman Rasta, here. Rasta. Can we kill him? It's fake. It's fake. <laughs> they're, they're loose. They're loose. Back up. Back up. Reset. It's all good. It's all good. I can't do my taunt. This game sucks. Okay. Next Pagna ward, we fight them and kill them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm I mean, we can already fight, there's no slurk. They're, they're, they're here. Uh, okay. They're this one's fake. Oh, it's real. What the it's fuck? Real. Kill Let's him. Let's get him. Storm's right here. Go, no, go bait, go bait. I get five man chrono, we win game, okay? Help me with it. Help yeah. me with this guy. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Kill him, kill him, kill him. I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Meter, meter, meter. meter. It's get done. Him. We won the game. I'll tank it, 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 get him, get him. Yo, help, help Steve. I need help, I need help Steve. It's all good, guys, it's all good. Game of patience, game of patience. That's my TI Kronos here. Well done, well done, that was good stuff. I knew this pipe would pay off, man. Dude, these guys actually warded. Oh, no. yeah. And, and they sentried. <laughs> well, I can't use the line, so I'm just gonna have to copy paste into chat. Are you whipping me? Let's go. Can we sit on the high ground? I didn't know you were into Steve? that wagon. You wanna come? Uh, hey, yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, coming. What heroes do they have? They sell shaman. They have a slark. Uh, what items does the slark have? Does he have anything? It's like a blink. Yeah, I don't know what type of slark it is, man. <laughs> guys, let's run our strats. I think that's a ward. you see? Disruptor's on the right. Disruptor's on the right. We have a haste line, guys. I'm kind of low, though. Um, they got TA? Can we oh, up here? No. Guys? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think it's the right item for TA. Go, 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 go. Get ready, get ready. I'm yeah, yeah. There's a punch. Watch out. Oh, oh, shit. No. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Punish him, punish him. I'm using the meteor hammer. I avenge you. Wonderful. I, I got you. Oh, I, landed I got you. It. I got you. It. Go fight this. They're, they're so weak. Yeah. They're so TA, weak. TA, TA. They're so shit. I need help. Help me, guys. I, I have a boy coming to you. Yeah, yeah. Another boy? Let's yeah, yeah, go, let's go. Oh, boy. Chase, chase the sword, please. Can we, can we cash? Can we cash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's slow, yeah, he's, slow. Yeah, yeah. he's slow, he's slow. It's free, it's free. It's I'm, free. Yeah. I'm bashing. I did not bash. Did you just try it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a comeback. We're doing good. Guys, this is the best con weird content shit day that I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I actually need to get mana, guys. I'm out of mana. Why does Visage have to be a hero that I'm doing well with? <laughs> it's fucking hero. Okay, so if I die with BM, Visage is glorious in team fights. <laughs> He's good, but <laughs> I'm Visage, dude. <laughs> All right, guys, four to four. They have wards everywhere. What the hell? Yeah, Slargus is that strong. He only has dagger. Uh -huh. yes. Guys, I'm Beastmaster with the dagger. Like, let's oh, go. That's fight. so fucking good, dude. I'm buying a lads. Let's go. Oh, I don't think we can kill that. It doesn't even yeah. matter if we kill the Slark, honestly. He's, he's useless. He's got a useless hero. 
Uh, I, I just assumed you were gonna no, land. They have Enigma, they have Enigma, guys. Does he have Blink? That guy? I don't know. I, I, who is it? It's Solo? Solo? I don't know. He has BKB, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have Roar. Oh, he's switching to Lincoln's on TA. I have Roar, guys. Don't worry. Respectable, respectable. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> what, was, it, was it TA that did, was <laughs> buying BKB? <laughs> That's a nice build right there. <laughs> We got a, we got a, Marlene, we got a change. Wait, guys, I need, I need you guys to debate for the spell. black hole. For I have sure. Roar, guys, don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I also have Chrono, actually. Okay, let's, let's just go then. I mean, I need Hero to tank him. I know yeah. Get in there. I I'm watching Enigma. I'm yeah. watching Enigma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baiting I'm going for baiting the TA, going for TA. Oh, he's <laughs> got him. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Yo, here, 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 here. Yeah, I'm chasing him. Wait, they're done? Wait, no. did they lose already? Yeah, that's all their... Yo, yo, walk in circles around him. Walk in circles yeah, around yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, walk him. in circles, don't walk him. in circles. Yeah, let him, let him get his team respawn. Don't, don't walk kill him. Walk in circles, walk in circles. It's not auto... It's not over yet, right? Yeah, no, it's not, it's not. Yeah, let him live. Don't kill him. Let him live. Walk in circles around Roman. <laughs> Lead him back. Yeah, he's fucking blink. Dude. Yeah, one more team fight. Yeah. <laughs> walk in circles, just walk in circles. <laughs> All right, push bottom. This is where we fight, on the bottom lane. Okay, I have Roar in 28. Oh, we have new. Put a ward. Can I put a ward here? Put a ward here. Okay. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. All that matters. I want Dendi to die in this next fight. We have to get him. Win okay, or lose. All in Dendi. Yeah. We oh, killed him last Dendi on the mag. All in Dendi. Yeah. I need you guys to be in front of me, guys. It has to be him. We I'm, can't kill anyone else. I can't be in front of you, man. Any other kill is illegal. I'm a war. Let's just smoke over here. Do you want to wait for Chrono or no? Uh, I mean, I don't care. No, nah, guys, run at them, run at them, run I mean, at them. Don't be, Go don't fight be them on this war. Go fight them on this yeah. war. It's solo, look. Yeah, oh, we're going mid? I'm debating them. Mid? Yeah, let's go mid them. The mid, we go there. All right, guys, if we see Dendi, all in. Yeah. Ignore no, everybody no, else. You, you can't kill anyone else. <laughs> the others are vulnerable. Okay. Dendi Mia? Oh, oh, I think here, they dusted. They dusted. Oh, they're teeping out. Ignore it. Oh, they're, they're dodging. Ignore, they're dodging. Ignore, ignore. Just yeah. find them. Uh, maybe, maybe over here then. Yeah, You'll yeah, be yeah. farming on Ancients? Where, where's Dendi? 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 Here, Dendi, Dendi, Dendi. <laughs> I'm sending my, my little birds. You want Didi? Didi room? Dude, they're hiding in base. Yeah, they're hiding somewhere for sure. They're hiding. They're hiding. They're hiding. Are they sneaky? I think they. I think they smoked up and placing ward now. Maybe they're roaching. Yeah, we have a smoke. Let's, let's smoke again. Yeah, when when rosh up? When rosh up? Uh, I don't know. I think. Did we they, kill the second? We one? killed it pretty early. Give them another life. Oh, it's up. up. Yeah, come come rush. Come rush. Come rush. Come This time it has a refresh. Oh, no, don't give my bird. Yo, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be mad at guys. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have blink Sophia. on B? No, they don't, Ben. Relax. <laughs> don't worry about it. Relax. <laughs> all right, all right. Just don't stand in the pit. We, do, we only need five heroes in the pit. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Yo, oh, they oh, 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 Kill Dendi. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. the wing condition. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Guys. Guys. I got the big thigh, mom. <laughs> She's uh, here. Are we oh. out now? Dawnbreaker? I have Dawnbreaker, Oh baby. my god. Hammer mommy is here. Hammer mommy. <laughs> Who's... Is that detection? <laughs> detection. Is... <laughs> <laughs> is that not detection? Oh my god. They're doing it. They're... He's finishing Roche? Oh, he's dead. He's dead. He's I can, I can hold in 15 <laughs> seconds. Oh no. Oh. No, stop winning! I don't. I want to be done. Stop winning! I want to be done, Brady. That's it, sheep. Our time on the no. main stage is over. Please live. Let me on. Let me on. Let me on. I want last. Oh, season. there we go. Oh no! You didn't even get the. Present. Shout out to God. Wait, it is. I can't yeah. believe they broke the pact, dude. <laughs> what was that?
cheer. It was a great match. It was very back and forth. Team, it looked kind of like Team Thunder had had it at first, but then Team Golem just came back with a with a lot of really good ulties absolutely. and uh, basically took the match. And Jake, you always believed in them. I absolutely did, Sumi. You, you, you poor fool, you sweet summer child, to ever doubt the power of Team Golem. Gods was in the back, coaching them the entire time, hunched over. You couldn't see it was like a little, a little demon in the back, whispering sweet nothings. I never thought Team Golem would lose. I trust them, I'm friends with them, I love them, some would say. And now I think we're going to bring both teams out for a quick interview. So while they come out, Jake, tell me, what did they win today? They won the cheese. We've, we've been over this like 15 times. They got cheese. They get the cheese. It's, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's delicious. It's nutritious. Everybody loves it. It's cheese. And they even provided the utensils to it's cheese. Them. They get cheese, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your winners! Blitz, my goodness gracious, the first big victory that you've ever been a part of since you began your Dota career here on the main stage. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. We disbanded Na'Vi once again at a TI, so I definitely am a part of Dota history again. Oh, that is really great to hear. Excalibur, my friend, are you lactose intolerant? I actually don't know, but I think I can We're about to find out, ladies and gentlemen! Hell yeah! Ben Merlini Wu, how does it feel to still be the top talent of Dota despite leaving for literally three years? That was only good ten years ago. Come on, let's be real. Well, you just won again. Congratulations. See Sheepo, the Peepo, the Meepo. <laughs> I don't have a question, I just wanted to say that. How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. I can't wait to eat cheese. Great. Uh, Exciting. I have something for you. What do you have? <laughs> I have this. I drew it while wow. we were winning. I had so much time because it was so easy. If my child draws something like that, I'm putting him up for adoption. <laughs> and my boy, Waga Magaga, drop your items. Drop it like it's hot in that match. Things were looking a little scary halfway through. It's like my wife used to say to me, yeah, it was over very quick and disappointing. Yet you managed to pull it back. How did you do it? It was the Windrunner, actually, that we got. Shut the <laughs> fuck up! Ladies and gentlemen, we're almost gonna let you have your cheese, but first, the loser's inter- I mean, excuse me. Excuse me, we don't call the it that, The exit Jake. interview, LMAO. <laughs> All right, so now we have Team Thunderhide, who did take the first match of the All-Star Tournament, but then, unfortunately, fell to Team Golem. Gentlemen, Sheepstick said that she had so much time during this match that she drew this picture. Flex? Is, do you have any comments about this picture? Is this Lex? <laughs> Wait, I have a question. I have a question. Is this a picture of him? That's him? Yeah, it is a yeah, picture of him. It's you. It's great. You. Yeah, you. you look good. Would you like to keep this picture? Yeah. Yeah? For All sure. right. They took, they may not have taken home the cheese, but they have taken home perhaps an even better prize. Now tell me, during that match, I believe it was you that said the other team was more difficult. Do you think that now? Yeah. <laughs> we will come back stronger. They will come back stronger. Also, Team Dragon was apparently stronger than you, even though you won. All right. What are your thoughts about playing all random deathmatch on the TI-10 stage? I think it's uh, the best show match uh, in this... Uh, in this universe. In, in, this, in, in, this, in this patch. The best show match. The best show match in this patch. Very good. All right, next. Tell me, if you had anything to say to Team Golem, what would you like to say? Well played. Well played, team. Can I have one more? MMR is just a number. MMR is just a number. Thank you very much. All right, final question. You were sitting in the VIP suite, yeah. and you were talking with Effie about the game, and Effie said that you were going to win it all. 
Do you have anything to say to all of your fans and friends who believed in you? <laughs> Sorry guys, we let uh, our guard down during the game and they took advantage of it and we tried really hard our best, like, but it just wasn't enough this time. But we'll come back stronger next year and you know, we'll be much better. Next year, everybody, they're coming back next year. Final thing, can we get one more team borscht from the team? No. Team borscht, team borscht, <laughs> team borscht. <laughs> Is it reddish? No, it's cheese. <laughs> you know how, because you know how in TI they win the ages, but they have won the cheese. Jesus, are you still talking? Get off the stage, you lost. Nobody cares. All right, let's go. So winners, please grab the cheese and then make six feet away from each other in a very safe manner. Six feet, spread it out. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready go, for go. the ingestion. It's what you're all here for in this sick Ritual, maintain safe distance, remove thine masks, and eat thine cheese! Eat it! Yes! The dark ritual is complete yet again! All right, thank you so much, everybody, for watching the all-star match. Team Golem has won, and now we will see who will win the Aegis as we throw it back to you. Oh, congratulations to Team Gollum indeed. They get the cheese, but all that we really care about here on this grand final stage is who takes that thing right there? Who takes the ages? Who takes the International 10 World Championship? We're here to crown a champion. Only one series ahead of us. But before we look ahead to that grand finals, I want to look back because this is TI 10, the 10th International, and I am joined on the panel by a lot of people that have a lot of good memories from TI, and I want to start on the very end. Fog, what's your best memory of a TI? Ooh, that is tough. That's actually really hard. There's too many good memories, because from 90 minute games to 100 minute games where people are casting neutrals, killing each other, because we've had like, that was what, like TI2 or TI3 actually, with AC and Draskal casting that, to just epic moments of comeback, to kind of boring ones with TI4 where everybody <laughs> didn't really watch the finals, yeah. to OG doing Cinderella story runs, so I can't choose an exact moment. Do you have a moment, Gods? I mean, I have a few. I mean, you mentioned some of like the some of the different TIs. Like, I remember like Sing Sing playing Meepo at TI4. That <laughs> I mean, TI4 did have some good games. Um, I also remember OG's run at TI8, but mm -hmm. coming from open qualifiers to closed qualifiers to winning TI itself. That was insane. So, there's just been so many like amazing stories at TI. What was your reaction to seeing TI1? TI1 was like a wow moment because I'd been playing Dota 1, I imagine same for you guys, like for many, many years. And to see like suddenly Valve pick up Dota and run a million dollar tournament, it was unheard of at the time. Did you believe it? I, you know, not at first. <laughs> Definitely when I first, I was like, surely a million dollars? Like esports tournaments had like 50k prize. Yeah. And like that was like unheard of. And then when you see this tournament happen, you see like Dota 2. In, like, well, not in person, I was watching online, but you're saying like, wow, this, this is legit, this is for real, and this is like, you know, going to be the future for a lot of us. Yeah, and I know that you started watching at uh, TI3 in 2013. What was your first reaction to watching Dota on the stage? I actually never witnessed it from the stage. This is my first TI, but TI3 is the one where I started watching Dota in general, and the uh, dream was instantly ignited. The fire was ignited. I started loving this beautiful game. Yeah, and there's a lot of people with you right now. Obviously, we love everybody that started witnessing it from the start, and we love everybody that started witnessing it maybe today. Welcome. Love to have you aboard. Uh, we're going to show you a video of a decade of TI. Yes, a decade, 10 years of TI. And we're going to start by hearing from people that have been to one to five TIs. My name is Daniel. My nickname is GPK. I'm 20 years old. Hi, my name is Thompson. I'm playing for OG. I'm 23 years old. Hello, everyone. I'm Ori. I'm AME. Hi, I'm Abed. Hello, I'm from Elephant Euros. Hey, guys. I'm Matumba Man. I play for Team Secret, and I'm 26 years old. So, the first international is a test of our team, but for me, it's like, Кажется, так очередной турнир в Доте, который, ну, турниры в Доте будут еще. This is my second TI. 
。今年是我第三次参加 TI。呃，第四次。呃、uh, ，I attended five TIs in total as an analyst, player, or coach. 我觉得 TI 主要给我人生带来就是。打比赛那种激情吧，就是我感觉打 TI 就是会让人是一件让人热血沸腾的事情。最直接的物质上的有有一些改变吧，高额的奖金。TI definitely brought me money. Um, that's the one thing. Um, it also gave me a sense of purpose to what I'm doing with my life. It's something to reach out for, to achieve this big thing for your life. And winning TI definitely was one of them. And Winning second is my current goal, so it definitely gives some purpose to your life. I mean, the most memorable moments are probably just, you know, lifting the ages, the finals, and of course the the craziest comeback games from TI8 that we had. Some crazy games against LGD and EG. So those are the most memorable games, like the ones we were about to lose, but then we bring it back. 应该是我们 TI 九被小狗一打五吧。Probably my first TI, it was TI six, the first time I saw all the players I looked up to. 应该是 TI 七吧，当时第一次打 TI， 然后又轮游了，然后又当时记忆比较深刻吧。For me, it was TI seven lower bracket game against Virtus Pro. Um, that was kind of the turning point for our team to win the whole tournament. Uh, TI8, when I went as an analyst, I was just uh, watching OG playing, and they weren't really the strong houses, powerhouses going into the TI, but the stories they uh, made and the, the quality of the games they brought uh, was really fun. Uh, I think I would tell myself to not get so, like, uh, Knocked down on when we got eliminated. I was really feeling down. It was, um, it felt really bad. I would tell myself, "It's okay. It's like life continues. It's not end of the world." And probably would uh, try to teach me uh, some, I don't know, humility. Maybe <laughs> I was young back then, so. 最好还是不要穿越回去。也许穿越回去说了一句话，就改变了时间时间线，改变了世界线吧。No, I don't really have any plans how many TIs I'm gonna play. Maybe I'll take a break after this one. Who knows? 看状态吧。如果觉得自己状态好，就会一直打。然后变菜了就不打了。Well, for now, I I try to take it one TI at a time. But obviously, I wanna keep playing and I wanna keep coming here as much as I can until I win. That's for sure. A TI win is indeed the goal for all players that gathered here in Bucharest uh, this year as well. And I think uh, that uh, something needs to be said. We saw Thompson in that video. Thompson is the most recent Royal Roader. And that is if you go to the international, your first international, and you win it. That doesn't happen that often, although it happened more often. Than you think you want to have a short quiz? How many Royal Roaders have we got, including TI1? So I give you five already. Off the boot, Fog. Do you want to give a little guess? I will also tell you there are. We have Leno Hing. You know, calculate in the meantime. There are 45 TI champions, of course. Although actually, you can remove five of that because we have five returning champions with OG winning twice. So that leaves 40 players with TI winning records. Have We're I all sitting here enough? doing math. And I know. <laughs> I know. I gave you this us. time intentionally. I see Fog still calculating. I have no. I don't know. It's kind of just like a random guess. I feel. Like. Yeah. I feel like it's probably round, at least half, maybe or around half. A it's lot of them. A, it's probably. eighteen. You okay. are you're correct. It's eighteen nice. Royal Roaders, and uh, this year, guaranteed, we get at least one, as well. So there will be uh, at least one added to the to the numbers. And I say at least one, maybe four. Yes. That's, uh, that's, that's crazy. Uh, there's only been uh, two times that a full team of Royal Roaders has uh, been there. Of course, TI1 was them, one of them. And Wings was, uh, was at TI6 mm -hmm. as well. But all these stories for, from TIs, I mean, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, Lizard, from having played TIs. Do you think players can use those lessons once they come on stage? Because we saw Matu just there saying like, he should take it a little, you know, life goes on a little serious. But we've also seen the pictures. He just got eliminated. He's heartbroken. 
Oh, 100%. Every TI teaches you a lot because you're working under such immense pressure. The, emotion, the emotions are getting to you and you have to learn not only a lot about the game, but about yourself as you are playing and going through the main stage. Yeah, it is, uh, it is quite incredible, the, the achievement to win TI. And it's mentioned in the video as well, there's money on the line. Yes, the money plays a part because it adds to the pressure and it adds to the, the relief of winning because you heard the player say it, God, it's life changing. It is. It's millions of dollars. It's, you know, the biggest tournament of the year for a reason. Uh, the money plays a big part for some players, even the ones that care less about the money. The pressure is enormous because for so many Dota players, it's about legacy. It's about proving you're the best. Uh, but that money is always on the back of anyone's mind. And it's just it's the competitiveness, right? I think that's something that always drives all Dota players. It's sure you want that win, but it's it's just your competitive nature. Because even a lot of us, you know, they're, they're playing show matches, but you can see, hear some of the players like insane. It's like, guys, Shut up and listen to me. Like, <laughs> even though it's a joke match, like a lot of these players, it's innately built into you that competitive spirit. Yeah. Uh, so we just heard from players that have been to one to five internationals. Let's hear from some of the players that have been through a lot more six to ten internationals. I'm Shumil, 22 years old, playing for OG. Maybe. Hello, I'm uh, S4. Hi, I'm Hin. My nickname is Puppy, and I play for Team Secret. My name is Johan Sunstein. I'm 27, soon 28, and I play Dota for OG. I played in uh, six. This is the sixth. Five, six, seven, eight. This is the sixth TI. It's uh, seven TIs now. Yeah. So I played uh, every TI since TI three. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That will be my eighth. I think the biggest change was when I became owner of Team Secret. I think it obviously puts a lot more pressure on you uh, when you play the game in comparison to when you're just like a kid that just wants to play Dota without any other problems. So I think that was like the biggest leap for me at least.梦想的那个舞台吧，但是就是我们这些能打TI的选手，就是能站在那个舞台，有机会去完成自己的梦想。对对我来说，最深刻的TI就是TI二，因为我们是在V色的办公室打的，然后那一年我们把V色的办公室
打第一年 TI 时就觉得打了十年就应该会停止了，结果现在已经是第十一年了。虽然虽然去年没有 TI 嘛，可是还我还是继续的在打这多了，所以看吧。如果我儿子需要个需要他爸爸在的时候，我可能就会退役去花多点时间来陪他了。No, it's probably like two. <laughs> yeah, it's two TIs. Um, yeah, you're trolling me. <laughs> no, no, I'm not lying. It's obviously a troll. I've played ten TIs. There is one thing that you can count on when you see these guys talk about Dota. They, they don't think about giving up because that competitive spirit, even if people say, guys, I'm a retire. They'll be back, Fog. <laughs> it's not a thing. People just, I mean, it draws you in. Yeah, I, I really liked hearing like how there's just a difference between a lot, of, a lot of the players were saying like, I would go back, but I'd change this. And some of the other ones would be like, I wouldn't want to change anything because mistakes build your future or, you know, you don't want to change something that would have yeah. caused you to change the whole entire spiral of the future. So it's just, it's cool to see the differences, how they all think about it. Yeah, it is definitely, uh, definitely very cool. I mean, I say that people sometimes retire and they come back. When we focus on the grand finals ahead of us, there's one name that is very clear there, because Zhao Wei, TI champion of TI4, did really good. After TI6, he's like, you know what? That's it for me. It's been a good run. Uh, absolute veteran in the scene, of course. I'm going to call it quits. So he skipped TI7. He skipped TI8. He skipped TI9. Guess what? He's back, gods. You can't take this man away. You he cannot. He is the, you know, the equivalent of Puppy when it comes to the Eastern, the Chinese Dota scene. He's an absolute legend, not mm -hmm. just for the fact he won TI, but he's just always been regarded as the, you know, best drafter and captain of the region. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's see how the how the teams are doing. Let's see how PSG, LGD, and Team Spirit got to this moment in time, got to this grand finals here for the International Ten. The road to this place is unyielding. Paved in sacrifice and littered with fallen foes. Where a gathering of global titans once battled. And two contenders now remain. They have struggled. Sitting on an off and century and after some mail. Wait, more toss again! They got two mail. They don't have chrono afterwards, but they might not need it. Scepter now inside the foundation. I don't know if he bought that or not, but figure it down. Usually when OG is in the found, it's good, not this time. As they pull him back down again. No skill time. Easy game. I don't think that was a voice line. And endured. The Elder Titanus will be difficult to defend, even with... Oh, the tether! All right. oh, and they're stuck oh. through with the bash! Carl takes a tumble! And LGD absolutely crushing their way to a Game 3 victory here. Conquering all challenges that faced them to earn admission to this final fight. They reach now for the province of legends to answer a call to greatness that echoes across time. Break on the Tide Hunter, absolutely beautiful and now from the grip. DM, and now the grip on the Ame. They want to kill him in time. Do they have enough? No. Ame with the turn. Ame, are you kidding me? What in the hell was that? All this damage being applied to Monkey Kid, but Matu, they think it's taken out. That's a dieback from Matu. Double kill from GQ. LGD are doing it, Cinderin. Gigi's just called, just like that. One team will forge their own legacies. With the eyes of the world upon them. And the Aegis of Champions on the line. What comes next can never be rewritten. But tales of ultimate glory never grow old. Oh, 
Goosebumps, Grand Finals time. Lizard, we got PSG LGD and Team Spirit in these finals. Did you expect that? Did anyone expect Team Spirit? Maybe there were a couple of odd ones out predicting Team Spirit in their brackets as the grand finalist, but after dropping early on into the lower bracket and PSG LGD just being on top, these are two completely opposite roads that led them here. Yeah, it's the team everybody expected in the finals against the team that nobody expected in the finals. Yeah, and uh, this should be such a fun one because I think Spirit has absolutely proven themselves time and time again throughout this tournament, not just to have any type of flukes or anything that people say. This is just pure talent on this team, so it's going to be a you, crazy match. You could, you could write a book about the flair that Team Spirit is bringing yep. to the table from picking 12 different, 13 different carries to having the most rampages on one, mm -hmm. on one single guy to improving tremendously through the lower brackets. Now, there was one thing that Toronto Tokyo actually said in an interview on the Chinese broadcast yesterday. I was, um, yeah, I don't know why everybody didn't think that we were going to go this far because we've been doing really well, but maybe that was because it's only in scrims. So I went asking around and Team Spirit has been crushing it. If you ask any other player that they have scrimmed, then yes, they would have said, yeah, Team Spirit, they, they got what it takes. I even uh, got from Seb, he said, they think... The team spirit will give a better chance, have a better chance against PSG LGD in these grand finals, gods. Yeah, and I, I think the fact they've been able to make that deep lower bracket run, there's something to be said for momentum. Uh, a lot of people on paper would have pegged, you know, Team Secret to be the favorite in that lower bracket match earlier today. But that momentum, when you're going through that lower bracket, it just builds up, builds up. Playing with confidence in Dota is something that's just so important. And for Team Spirit, it's not just the confidence, they've got the skills to back it up as well. They do indeed, Fogged. They do indeed. Yeah, I, the the confidence is definitely a big thing when you ha go on the main stage and you have the balls to say, GG, easy, <laughs> after some games, let's be honest, right? And then also, like, just the confidence as well in the interview for Toronto Tokyo to say things like that. Oh, people didn't really expect us to make it to this point, but we did. These are young bloods. They have to have that confidence. So I feel like that's always really good to have going, even when you're playing against legendary players. Yeah, when uh, when Collapse was asked before the tournament, would you rather play upper bracket or lower bracket? He was the only one of his team that said lower bracket. There was no hesitation. <laughs> yep. It was, uh, you had to say it like within a second. It was upper bracket, lower bracket, lower bracket. No hesitation. I don't he just blame him that. because they're looking so amazing under pressure. This team seems unfazed by emotions completely in the boot. They're, they're seemingly having a lot of fun and just crushing it. They, they actually played versus PSG LGD in the last grand finals, the last tournament before TI. Mm -hmm. They took a game off of them, but they improved since then quite a lot. It's going to be explosive TI grand finals. I think so too. We talk a lot about Team Spirit, of course, because PSG LGD, they have already locked in their slot, had already locked in their slot for the grand finals yesterday. So they have had plenty of time to prepare for their grand finals opponents. They were able to study and watch Team Spirit make it all the way through their fellow countrymen IG yesterday. And of course, uh, this morning, we saw Team Spirit take out Team Secret there. So they've been watching, they've been studying, they're ready. I think Team Spirit is ready too though. So it is about time to get these teams on the stage. <laughs> Since 2013, we have an Eastern European team taking their place here in the grand finals of the international team spirit. Have wreaked absolute havoc in that lower bracket and they are ready for their final boss in PSG LGD. Of course, team spirit, they got Yatoro, they got Toronto, Tokyo, Collapse, Mira and Miposhka, led by coach Silent. Yatoro being the youngest player at this international as well. You can see him here, it looks a little different than his picture as he has donated his hair to the Dota Gods. Let's see if it helps against PSG LTD. Was there any, ever any doubt that this team 
who take their seats here in these grand finals. These, te these five players and their coach have been favorites for the last few months. Everybody saw this one coming, but the way that they've done it, the flair that they've done it with, that is something on parallel for sure. We got Ame, nothing to say. Faith Beyond, Jing Q, Y, and Chao Eight. And they will take their place in the booth as they get ready for their best of five grand finals. We want to quickly highlight Ame, the carry player of PSG LTD. They came, he came second at TI8. He came third at TI9. He came fourth at TI7. I think it's about time. He has a good shot at making it a first place here. All 10 players and their coaches headed into their pods, headed into their booths. I think at this point, all focus, Fog, is going to be on that game. Absolutely. I mean, this, this is going to be a really cool battle of minds as well, too. As we've mentioned multiple times, of course, when you get to go through the upper, upper bracket, you get a lot of more information coming into these grand finals. So for L PSG LGD, Xiao Wei probably did a ton of homework. He's probably got a lot to say to his team. And then for I mean, Team Spirit, this is, you, you know, you weren't expecting to just face PSG LGD. You had to make it all the way here. So now it's like kind of maybe last minute scrambling for some of these notes. So it's going to be interesting to see how the, the mind of Miposhkin silent work versus PSG LGD when they have all that info. And the same, what Papi was saying, right? There's a couple of strategies that everyone is using at this tournament, so you can adapt to them and just think of it like that. Because PSG LGD, they have been under the microscope for the last couple of months, right? Because of that, maybe for Team Spirit, it's going to be a little bit easier. And it's not just anyone that they're facing in the grand finals, <laughs> but still not a lot of time since the last match that they had. Absolutely. Also on the side of PSG LGD, there's four a player, four players and a coach uh, that have been in these pods on the grand finals before. Three of them uh, ended up being victorious, which by the way, for Faith Beyond and Y, they are those Royal Roaders that I talked about. This is actually their second TI. They've got a 100% TI win rate. So I think having that under your belt, gods, the pressure on the side of PSG LGD shouldn't be there. At least a lot less, I less. think, because they've okay. been there. Um, I think there is still that little bit of pressure that they've never actually, you know, had their back against the wall. I think that's where, you know, Spirit, yeah, they've made this lower bracket run and there's all this extra info that PSG LGD have to look at, but when PSG LGD, you know, they've had, they've had an easy run to now. So if they, you know, drop a game or see, you know, f find themselves being challenged, that's where things will get interesting. But the fact they've been there before, that experience, that goes a long way. It really, it really does. I think it's also uh, about time that we get these two teams on even playing field because, of course, Team Spirit, the, the name, like, I know that there's a lot of people tuning in and they have seen PSG LGD. They've been to nine internationals, 10 if you also count LFY in that, of course, and they've had top finishes. You know, they do well. For Team Spirit, the organization, Fog, this is their first international, so there are going to be a lot of people like, who are these guys? But these guys, at the moment, they are, we can consider them on the same level as PSG LZD coming into this Grand Finals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've proven themselves so many times throughout the year. They've grown so much. I mean, I, was, I even like, mentioned it, I, mean, I posted on like Twitter earlier. These guys almost got relegated to lower division in DPC Season 1. Somehow they've crawled their way, they've learned so much, and yeah, it's... It's just really spectacular to see that these young bloods have been able to make it all the way here to Grand Finals after such a tough road. Yeah, Lizard, how is it possible for Yatoro to have three rampages I don't on know. the main stage? <laughs> it's <Edit>. crazy. <laughs> it's, it's insane. Not only does he have three rampages, how many heroes did this man play? It's just ridiculous to think about it. Usually when you become a pro and you're young, it's because you have a couple of heroes that you really maxed out. Yes. Yeah. Like you played 500 games of some Jug, Sven, and two more extra heroes. This guy seemingly plays anything. Yep. And he's not just young, he is the youngest. Yes. The youngest player in the internationals made to the grand finals with such a hero pool is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at these uh, two teams and compare them head to head to see who, uh, who comes out on top of, of this one? Combined TIs, six versus 11. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's a big difference there. Most of the difference is, of course, going to be in the coaches. For Zhao Wei, this is his uh, seventh TI. His first as a coach, by the way, interesting to note. Uh, for Silent, this is his fifth vote. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's really cool when you get to hear the differences like that. But I, I still have to, like, I know it's. Everyone keeps talking about like Collapse and Yotaro, and they even talk about Silent a lot with the, the brain and the coaching, but I have to give Miposhka so much credit on this team. I think he's the big one that I'm looking at where, you know, Zhao Wei, he's like 9.8 KMR, 10 KMR, played it several TIs, been here forever, but Miposhka's a guy who's been digging and digging and digging through 
te like tier two teams for years and years. Yellow Submarines, Comanches, yep. all these Empires, tier two, yeah, tier yeah. two Eastern European teams, and now he's here in the grand finals. It's a beautiful story. It, it really is. Uh, I think a lot of people might remember the miracle run that Empire had at TI7, where, but they had to play with the stand-in because their carry was not there. That was Mapushka's yep. squad right there. And they still came top eight, which is absolute credit to being able to lead a team that has a fresh stand-in to be able to, to take it that far. And here he is. He oh. seems also having the mindset of, you know what? I don't care about this all the all the shebang about this grand finals. <laughs> I'm just gonna focus on the Dota. But yeah, he's just he's just full focus on the games. He he comes across whenever there's an interview. You know, very calm. He's got a very good head on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I think something that we we've kind of commented on when we see Spirit win these matches or come back, they don't show a lot of emotion. They're kind of like for them, it's like the job isn't done until they win TI yep. itself. So there really is this kind of team effort that is always focused on the next game that they have to play. Yeah, we heard it yesterday in a, in a winner's interview as well. Is the, the focus is, yeah, we just play a Dota game with friends and we just focus on the game. And once we're in it, yep. money doesn't matter. A, a counter argument for all the pressure that's on Team Spirit. I would say even that they reached grand finals. Yes. Four of them haven't been on a TI before. Yeah. Like, how much pressure can you... Obviously, it's a lot. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you're living the dream. You're enjoying yourself. And the momentum that they've got because of that, I think is going to be a huge tailwind for them. Meanwhile, PSG, LGD, they have a couple of accomplished stars. And I think the pressure is actually on them. Yeah, there uh, can definitely be said uh, a lot of things said for the pressure on PSG LGD. Nothing to say is here playing his first international, by the way, also potential for that Royal Road, Royal Roader. And um, this team has got all the pressure of an entire region. Can they bring it home for their country is the question. We're finding out. The draft is right around the corner. Spirit versus PSG LGD Grand Finals Game One. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the draft panel of the Grand Finals of TI10. I have here with me Seb and No Tail. And I just want to start us off with a question. I mean, Team Spirit, they've had this amazing run, they have a lot of momentum, but LGD, they've had They've seen more of Team Spirit's gains. Which ones would you guys prefer going into the finals? What do you mean going like the, into the momentum or having more information? Because Team Spirit had to play more games. I would have to say, looking at both teams also for what they are, LGD should be very comfortable. Learning more, knowing more, having nothing to be afraid of. But if anyone could shake their boots, it should probably be Spirit, because you see the momentum, you see the... Yeah, you see your Toro and you see how they're feeling themselves as well, which I think is the only type of Dota or the closest type of Dota to also go into such an organized uh, and experienced drafting team. It's going to be very hard to surprise them and it's going to be very hard to throw them on the back foot, but I would say Team Spirit's the one who could do it. And it's already starting. I mean, the, the, the draft here, the information is that LGD chose first pick and Team Spirit went Radiant. Mm -hmm. It is their bread and butter, the Radiant on Team Spirit. Yep. I mean, it has been, you know, dominating the tournament so far. And Team Spirit is one of the teams that abuses the, 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 the most, the Radiant side. LGD, they are doing the same that they did against Secret yesterday. First pick domination, they had it both games and they made it work twice. They get it again, but this time around, they did not get the Tiny from Team Spirit, which was a big theme. And it's also a big message, right? Because Team Spirit just beat Tiny Lycan against Secret, but now they play against uh, potentially the LGD's Tiny and they don't want to deal with it. Does it have anything to do with the bands that LGD went for or are they, you know, switching gear? We'll see. With first pick and... What yeah. I, yeah, now they get the normal ET versus the IO, which a lot of people would prefer. And the way you might maybe want to deal with this is now try and get a hero that protects versus the ET coming to your lane. It could have been the monkey, it could have even been the Tiny, and here you go, and Ursa instead. This is just to protect the IO and make it stronger, uh, actually give it purpose on the lane. Because if not this, uh, ET and Tide could, there, there's so many lanes that you could go into. If they pick this casual gyrocopter, I think the lane could be atrocious for them. I think there's a little bit of a tournament meta thing, right? Because teams, when they pick the IO, they've been banning out the Ursa against them in the second phase. I think Ursa wanted to feel agility carries that can match up against other Titan, you know? Yeah. You have the Starts ultimate to get lane. through. Exactly. Yeah. He can't mind play on the lane. Even he can't. Uh, his aura is great versus aura. Exactly, you can't get close to him. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of counter. And one thing to mention here is how both teams covered really well the Magnus angle. Think about it. Like they opened the wisp, 
Then they go into E.T. Tide. Tide is considered a very good hero into Magnus just because of how the team fight happens, right? The Ravage covers the skewer back because the Ravage is such a big AoE spell that you're gonna fight wherever you want with Tide. The, obviously the Kraken Shell against the Magnus RP and stuns, it's really hard for Magnus to fight into Tide because you either RP his teammates and he's gonna counter initiate with Ravage or you RP the Tide and he's gonna get the Ravage off anyway. So you're kind of setting up the Tide for a great Ravage as Magnus, right? So LGD, uh, Team Spirit, sorry, they go for this Tide kind of making the Magnus second pick, like eighth pick, instead of the Ursa really hard for LGD to go for. And this is one of the first games on the main stage, I think, where Magnus has been completely ignored yeah. by both teams. And these, these two teams have crushed games with yeah. Magnus. They decide to still ban it now, which of course is, is still going to be good, and especially going to be good with the Ursa. I wonder if they're going to look at the, There's a Yatoro hero, I don't know if we've seen. Has he played TA safe lane yet? No, but uh, maybe he had, actually, like in maybe in the group stage, but he, he does yeah. play it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And this is why I think now LGD is thinking really hard about it. It's like, what are they gonna, what are they gonna pick that's gonna mess with our strategy and a potentially our win condition? I think they want this Ursa to stay as a win condition, but there's also heroes in Dota that can make it really annoying. Team fight is also something of it. Like Tide can be good versus Ursa later on in the game. Like this whole scaling and how you want to fight, it, it, Tide can be overwhelming quite often. It's why it's also one of the, the top heroes of this tournament. But yeah, I'm looking for the Yotoro TA this game. So far, I, I want to see it. So what I've seen from the start of the draft, we have pretty strong lanes coming up from IO Ursa, and there's a lot of team fight coming up from Team Spirit. Is it something that you guys think about, like how you want to match the team fight? Is that something important for LGD right now? I think for both these teams, it is important. These teams excel at team fighting. I think they think about it a lot drafting wise. They have proven every game. You know, these are the Mag Wyvern teams, the ET Magnus. Like these are heroes that are ex really excel at the five on five. They abuse positioning. They abuse vision. These teams are, you know, the the, the finest teams at doing so. So of course they both do think about it. A lot of other things um, can, you know, can happen in the Dota game. It's such a complex game. So there's the team fight part, there's the scaling part, there's also the laning phase, so Ursa, the timings. For example, you will yeah. need these timings in this game to actually be able to enter these fights because if this is an Ursa who's behind and you're playing against ET Tide, all of a sudden it looks super overwhelming. It looks like your heroes are really trash. But if you actually get Ursa to the point where he needs to get, he can, he can destroy the enemy, he can go in first, he can do so much for his team, be a front line, like do all these things, Roche up in a 10. He will play with Aegis into Tide, and now it's a very different way yeah. to play the fight, right? Ursa is just going on Tide, he has Aegis, Tide doesn't want to click Ravage. The whole team fight changes completely. This is why if they can get the Ursa to his timings, he can break a Tide. If they can't, and these things are going to be decided with the second phase that is coming up, they're also going to be deciding, decided with the laning setup. Mm -hmm. And I do also want to mention how these two teams, in my opinion, are probably the two best laning teams of the tournament also. They will punish each other for every opening that they're gonna, you know, every angle they're gonna expose, they will punish each other. So the Ursa timing, is that something you'd like to see, like LGD, should they commit the rest of their draft towards making that timing stronger? I think we were talking on the panel yesterday about Secret, they sort of went with some, I don't know, some Wyvern Magnus, but they didn't commit to making that strategy work. So I think Secret's early Roche and early timing strategies were some of the fastest and strongest and well executed of the tournament. Ursa was a big part of it. Enchantress with TA was also another way to see it. Tidehunter would like the game to be a little bit slower. Like if Dota starts happening in minute 15 to 18, you got your one, two items, you're very happy. Ursa doesn't allow that to happen. You, he might be going Roche in minute nine. He might be going Roche in minute 12. These things speed up the game and force them to maybe address that in the draft. If they can't address it really hard in the lane to slow down this, this Roche happening. I want to mention how you see LGD's approach on the second phase, right? As Johan mentioned, like they ban the troll, they ban the PA, they ban the TB. They're banning what they, they want think. To scale. Yeah, they're banning what they think is gonna scale into the Ursa. Mm -hmm. I do want to mention the Lion Pick, which I think is really, really strong, really powerful. First of all, it does not expose their draft. And yesterday we talked a lot about first pick versus second pick, which is now like second pick, meaning Team Spirit. They are past the, the danger zone because now they get to react twice. With picking this lion, first of all, it gives actually Tide a better lane against Ursa. It's going to negate the pressure, the mm -hmm. aggression from Ursa on the lane. And Lion Hex actually is one of the best tools against Ursa. Ursa mm -hmm. can buy the shard, he can buy Aghanims to you know, get away from stuns, but Hex is a mute, kind of. He's not going to be able to get out of Hex. So LGD now have a very clear fight condition, which is they get the fight on the Ursa, they Hex him, they burst him. Can, uh, uh, sorry, Team Spirit, that's Team Spirit's fight condition. And LGD don't really have the tools to stop that. Ooh. Ooh! Wow. Okay, that's new and that's great. I mean, Ame, he played this in the finals versus an Animator versus EG, and mm -hmm, his knock mm -hmm. looked pretty solid there. 
I mean, I play a lot of Naga Sands, so I think this is a great Naga game so far. I think the lane is good versus Lycan. I think the matchup, you guys were talking about scale. I don't think Ursa scales at all against Naga Siren. Very, very true. Yeah, yes and no, I would say. There are a lot of fights where Naga can feel very underwhelming. I don't think the strength of Naga is ever going to be team fights. You see it in this patch where illusions don't ever get to do a lot in fights. Peel illusions are kind of different. They stick on you, they hurt more, and they keep coming. Naga illusions, they can get wiped quite fast, quite easily. They don't have the best tools right now. There's one thing that I see, though, with this Naga pick is so now it's a it's another bike strategy, right? They're exactly. Gonna you see Ursa. how there's a guy who's gonna fight. But you can sleep, already imagine it. Sleep might be very good. What about you trade bite for sleep, disengage, and take the fight after that? Maybe that's what they're thinking. They're gonna make it as hard as possible because LGD heroes they don't push out lanes very well, right? Ursa doesn't want to show and clear waves. That's not what Ursa does. Neither does West. Lycan can do it to a certain extent. So the way this game should develop in the mid game is Naga is gonna push out all the lanes already making it really hard for LGD to find the fight that they're looking for. And if they ever find it and they bite the Ursa and they're ready for the fight, yeah. sleep is going to happen. They're going to disengage and take a better fight or on their ground. You also see what they can re-engage with here. Yeah. Like the, team fight is, the team fight from LGD is quite simple. If Ursa is out of control and he has a Satanic and a Scotty and a Basher and he's bitten, he's a big problem in the fight. But still, if you sleep that and his four other heroes, if they don't have BKB, they're just going to die to the Sleep Ravage. And can Ursa fight alone even if he's bitten? I don't think so. And they're going to have the Hex, they're going to have the Net eventually, they're going to have an Anchor Smash to slow them down a bit. Like, LGD's teamfight is very obvious and is very committing right now. They can, there's a few things, I think, that Team Spirit, they're also Radiant right now. Naga wants to live in the Dire Jungle and she wants to cut these two waves around the Roche area and push them away. If they feel like going bottom, they don't get the Roche with an Ursa Strat. This is another way to also break, break their lineup. I think Spirit right now, they, they could be quite comfortable with how they can talk and approach these fights because if LGD doesn't have this bite going, doesn't have this, it's very underwhelming what their lineup does. Disruptor like an IO is not going to kill many heroes on the map. You know, I actually thought it was LGD playing Naga. I just realized it was Team Spirit because I'm blind and I can't read. But for you guys, <laughs> uh, which draft, like from your personal perspective, which one would you prefer to play? I mean, we don't have the last picks yet, but... I mean, I feel like LGD, they have a way to snowball the game. That's how I see it. You know, the Ursa IO timings with the Lycan, I like it. I do feel like this is one of the first times where I would I don't give LGD a strong upper hand on the draft. If anything, I'd maybe even give the upper hand on Team Spirit. Let's see if there's a Tinker coming now. There's a lot of picks. I don't think Tinker got removed. Tinker versus Naga. Tinker yeah. scaling team fight. Tinker is a huge hero. That sounds good, because I'll help their team fight scale into late game. They have a huge Nova damage fights, issue. They have a massive, massive damage issue. Okay, Pango so, is also a hero that comes with a lot of potential scaling team fight damage. If it's you get card and sleep, also play. Like yeah, they cannot disengage anymore. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yes. It's unreliable now. The sleep. It's also a hero versus Tidehunter. Force bad ravages. Kill him. Also good hero versus ET. Very good last pick. A bit, a bit scary in the sense that it's a mid hero that can get very punished one on one. Yeah. Very weak laner against a lot of matchups. Yeah. But you know that's a lot of confidence uh, from nothing, nothing to say. One of the best mid laners, if not the best mid laner in the tournament. And I'm sure. Their support are going to help, you know, with the mid lane and stuff. Very, very good pick. Uh, very good last pick. I, if I still had to choose a lineup that I would want to play, I actually have more faith in this Naga lineup. Uh, if they play well around the Illusion wave push, again, I don't think Naga is, is the one you look for to crush the team fight. She needs to do her part. She needs to do the sleep, maybe get some Illusions on some supports. But this game, in my opinion, should be looking like Tide, Lion, ET are messing with them and getting some pickoffs through the lanes. Forcing TPs, eventually they get very far ahead, like economy-wise, and this is going to lead to more openings. Naga can maybe join the fight, get an early Scotty, like join, like take kind of take over the fights with with a gold gold advantage, or just keep playing the map. I like how you're talking about how Naga splits up the map also, because when you have Naga Siren, what I found is you want your other heroes to be able to pick off the enemy heroes, right? right. They already have that with Lion. Yep. They have some additional damage with ET. Mm -hmm. So if they're playing the actual Naga game, I agree with you. I can see it being very successful. One more, one more to kill on the burst, side lane. Clap them when they, when they split up. Yeah, they split up. They try to deal with Illus. Boom, the burst is going to happen. Lion, ET, Void Spirit, any hero will die 100 to 0. And Naga will force LGD to split up. They will force them to... They're going to cheat the map. They're going to create unfair situations, and it's going to be hard for the LGD to fix that unless they have full control of the game. This is why the laning phase is going to be incredibly important, yeah. you know, for LGD to kind of slow down what Team Spirit is putting. I would say it's even more important for LGD to actually have good lanes for the yep. sake of their own timings. If they don't get this Ursa threatening the Roche around minute 10 plus, this means the whole game is going to slow down, and Naga is going to get into the jungle, going to get these waves, Lion's going to get closer to, Dagon, uh, to Dagger, sorry, and if, if, you, if you create that, I think Team Spirit's lineup is going to be really fun to play and it's going to be a very hard game for LGD. 
Very interesting draft. I would also say that the lanes are a bit scary. I think this ET on the side lanes yep. is completely untouched. They don't have a yep. single stun for him. He's going to get the spirit and he's going to smash gonna lane. Bottom yep. lane is going to be a lot of fun for this yep. ET. Very strong lanes. Mipushka from Team also spirit feeling also. himself this tournament. Yep. Mipushka ET. Mm. Scary stuff. Yeah, Toronto getting his void spirit again. Full comfort zone for both teams, honestly. I think at this point it's really going to come down to yeah, who has a better idea going into this draft? And that's the beauty of Dota, it's a best of five. It's meant to develop so much, but they're kind of getting to know each other. You know, yeah. this is what I can bring to the table, this is what you can bring. And, you know, they're going to get to learn, like, what counters what. Uh, full, the meta is going to evolve a lot yeah. between the series. And I would also like to point out that Team Spirit has been the most amazing learning team so far in this tournament. Like, how they are adapting and how they're learning and how they're actually changing up their own playstyle into something new every game. Uh, but I would say every team fight, when there's a bite happening or a pangolier roll, this is when LGD need to get something done. Because if not that, they lose. This is like their main team fighting tools. And now we're about to start the game, and we're going to have an interview with the coach of Team Spirit Silent along with Sumi. Thank you very much, AUI. I'm here with Team Spirit's coach Silent. Silent, we are in the grand finals. This is where everything comes out, right? All the strats will come out. Did you prepare anything specifically for PSG LGD, or are you going for comfort? Um, honestly, we didn't prepare, prepare anything because uh, we, were, we wasn't uh, have enough time. We was preparing for Team Secret, uh, so we're just gonna play and having fun. All right, so you're just, you're just aiming to play the game. Did you have anything specific in mind with this draft? Uh, not really. I was looking into where heroes and was trying to counter pick them. All right. Well, we will see how the drafts tend to play out throughout this series. We'll take it to OD Pixel and Insania in the meantime. Thank you very much, Sumi. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand finals of the International 10. Team Spirit up against PSG LGD Insania. It's a pleasure to have you by my side once again. How excited are you to see these two teams go head-to-head -head in this best of five? I mean, I'm extremely excited. This is bringing back memories of TI6, where you had DC make the miracle run in the lower bracket and going up against Wings at the time, and you have some of the Wings players on LGD's side, so... I'm feeling TI6 vibes, and I think this game one draft actually looks really, really good for Spirit. Okay, what, uh, what is it in particular you like about what they've done here in this first game? I mean, I feel like, the, as Notel and Seb touched on, the, the way that the lanes are set up, I feel like they're going to have a really nice start to the game. And I feel like LGD is like really, really timing dependent. And they need to make sure that when they pop roll and they use the wolf fight on Ursa, they get a lot in the fights. And when I look at Spirit's draft, I see answers. They have the sleep, they have like 10 different stuns that they can throw out. And even if they burn the Ravage, I feel like the four man of their draft can still fight. So if they can get the Naga fat enough, if the Naga can ever join the fights and actually have a presence, I think their draft looks really, really nice to play. And it's, you know, you've got to be excited to see it, right? Another game, Yatora just continuing to show off his versatility of carry heroes. This is crazy here. Here in the grand finals, Naga Siren coming out. I mean, when you see now the man can play on all the list of heroes that he's pulled out so far, there's no reason to doubt that he can't pull out a top tier performance on any of the carries available in the game. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, he's shown that he can play pretty much every single hero in the game. I, I've, I've been so impressed by it. And... The crazy thing is how flexible he is too and playing like he can play a hard carry one game and then the next game he's playing tempo and this has led to I think Spirit having like the versatility in their draft and the ability to adapt the way they have throughout the tournament is in my opinion a large part because he's so versatile in his playstyle. Yeah, I mean as sort of a drafter, you know, when you come into a series or uh, against Team Spirit, what do you do about the fact that they have sort of this special power in Yatoro's sort of hero pool? Like, do you just sort of ignore the carry? Do you still bother banning them out or do you look elsewhere? Like, what, what is the best way to tackle this team? I mean, if I knew the answer, I <laughs> you know, would have probably known what, uh, how to beat them by now. But I, I feel like the thing is, they just seem to... You deal with collapse, then Yatoro goes out of control. You aim for Yatoro and then you have collapse and... Toronto Tokyo going out of control. And I feel like a lot of this is heavily due to the fact that they play so well around Vision. Uh, when I looked at the teams throughout the tournament, I feel like what Spirit has done that no other team does nearly as well as them, and I would even bring LGD into that category, is they control Vision. They're really good about playing around wards. They understand when they can fight into wards, and they understand when they have to avoid it. So I think for Team Spirit, this game is going to be a lot about can they deward LGD, remove LGD's information, and have more information to play with. Sure. And for PSG LGD, of course, they've managed to charge their way straight to the finals through the upper bracket. When you look at what they've got here in this first game, what is it about this lineup that's worked sort of with the play style that they've been able to just destroy teams in their run up to the grand finals? 
I mean, this looks very similar to their tiny sort of draft fight. You're going to have this one core that's going to be unbeatable. They have this mid laner that's going to provide control and lockdown for them so that he's going to be able to output damage. You have the glimpse to bring people back to the Ursa. So the concept for LGD is very much like we're going to hit our timing, and once we do, you cannot touch us. And I think for Spirit, the problem will be if LGD is allowed to freely just get to their timings, get that Aegis on the Ursa, where they can start ignoring the Tide Ravage or even fighting without the Wolf Bite from the Lycan, that's when they're going to be at their strongest. So I'm expecting all hell to break loose after the laning phase. Absolutely, and I can't wait to see it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, finally getting into the action of Game 1 beginning between Team Spirit and PSG LGD. Let's see if that chaos starts coming quick and fast. We know that both teams are very much able to bring it with some of the fantastic performances they've given us so far on the main stage. Yeah, and straight away, Yatoro's coming out with a really smart play. He sends his illusions within the tower range, but he puts them in an area where the tower doesn't have vision. And by doing that, he will scout out the ward immediately from LGD. And this is what I mean, right? Spirit are so on top of all of the small things that will give them any sort of information advantage, where they will have more vision than their opponents. Let's see if they're able to maintain it throughout the early stages of the game, where it's very likely for those movements to be coming from lane to lane. See both teams. Avoid one another here for the bounty runes. Bit of a poke onto Maposhka as Yatura will still be able to grab that bounty rune. In fact, as you can see, three bounty runes to start things off here for Spirit. So a bit of a cash bonus to begin the lanes with. Yeah, and that was nicely scattered out by the ET. They find the information of where, where and how many heroes has LGD brought to which runes. And then they can split up their heroes accordingly and make sure that they get the advantage on the runes. Let's look at some of these matchups. The mid lane, Pango versus Void Spirit. Toronto, Tokyo versus nothing to say. What are we going to have going on here in the early few waves? I think most likely it's going to be a pretty farm heavy lane. I don't think really either of the two heroes are going to aim to kill each other. Probably going to be a lot of trying to push out the waves, control the runes, and then around six minutes when the real rune spawns, that's when you'll see both the supports collapse on a mid lane. Because I think both Pango and Void Spirit really rely on that rune control. And looking at both sort of the side lanes, the two carries, Arme and Yatoro, who's going to have the easier time? I think if you take a look at top lane, you see Ursa against Tidehunter is generally a pretty good lane matchup because you think of how the Fury Swipe stack up on him. And they have the sustain to tank the harassment that's coming out from Team Spirit. So I think as they level up on the top lane, I imagine the Wisp Ursa will do fairly well up top. But with that said, I think Collapse is still going to have a decent game. I mean, Collapse has definitely been that solid rock of a player for Spirit time after time. He's been the one that they have. You know, be very happy to give that prioritization, get his game into a good shape so that he can be the one to lead the charge into the team fights and start the action off for Spirit in those mid-game. Yeah, absolutely. And bottom lane, Yatoro's kind of playing this type of laning where you're not going to be pressured at all. Team LGD's uh, priority here is just trying to get their Lycan farmed and make sure that they're like playing for their own farm. So Yatoro's going to have a great start and he has the ability to farm up the jungle because he has the illusions that can both push out the wave and from the jungle camp. So I expect Yatoro to be leading the net worth charts as soon as we get into around the five minute mark of the game. Yeah. One of the reasons why Yasuro has been as scared as he can, even if the lane was a tough one, he always seems to be able to recover. So the fact that he's going to have a decent time to start off things, you know that he will be on track to hit some pretty insane CS. It really is going to be completely down to how much PSG LGD can find in terms of getting their Ursa involved in the kills early on. Yeah, absolutely. And there's just some trade-offs going on, but you can tell already from the net worth graphs that Team Spirit has set up their lanes to have very good farm on all three of their cores. Certainly showing so far here on the early CS. Both side lane cores for PSG LGD just struggling a, a slightly bit more. It was yep. very early days though. But a lot of levels coming in LGD's way. Like this Lycan is doing surprisingly fine. He's not really getting pressured that much by the Naga and the ET because he's managed to get the lane control. Yeah, Taurus shoved out the wave, but Miposhka yet hasn't been able to get a pull to get the lane control back. So the Lycan's getting a lot of farm, while Y is able to just rotate around, moves to the mid lane, opens up the small camp. And like we talked about, right, the middle lane is going to be contested in terms of, like, who can push out the wave the most and then go farm to small camp. And Y on top of it runs over, unblocks his mid laner small camp to make sure that he can stay even with the Void Spirit. And when you look at sort of the tools they have available both sides with their supports, do you imagine once the six is there for the mids, we're going to have sort of a collapse on the mid lane to try and get the early objective? Or do you think it's going to be all about reacting to the side lane fights here for the Pango and the, the Void Spirit? I think it's going to be important to get the rune. Like, whoever gets the first power rune of the game is going to kind of get to decide what happens. For, you get your bottle refilled, but you also have the ability to make a rotation as Mira. But being a bit of trouble here, we'll try and hold back the bear with the hex. He's got the stick charges, but he's getting run down here by Arme. One more hit will do it. Can he close the gap? He can't. 
oh, stun misses. That's going to cost him his life. Not the start there that Mira was hoping to have here in the grand finals. A whiffed ability. And that will give up first blood to PSG LGD. Yeah, and Collapse isn't out of the woods quite yet. Armour's hungry. And a bit of an awkward position now, Collapse. Stuck behind the tree line. We'll see how he gets his way out of it. He does have a TP a little short in the manner. He'll have it back up now. Should be able to walk his way back ground, but a great bit of aggression there from PSG LGD, just opening up some space for, for Ame to return to farming. Yeah, absolutely. And you notice that LGD are keeping the lane control up top, so this puts Tide under constant pressure, and you never know when they might make some sort of move and try to kill him. And that forces Mira to stay in the top lane. While you, if you look at Y, you notice that he's just rotating around constantly. He has the freedom to move wherever he wants on the map, because the lane is so pushed out by the way that the Naga plays, and the Riftide shoving out the creeps, so the Lycan can freely farm under his tower and the Disruptor has the freedom to decide what he wants to do. Let's see what that, is. that call is going to be. We'll come in mid here. Trying to Tokyo taking a bit of harassment on the Thunderstrike. Nothing to say. Stepping right up to him. There's a remnant of the ready though, Toronto to Tokyo. Two seconds. And he's got the protection here of the Resonant Pulse. And great usage there of that armor. He uses the health damage of Resonant Pulse to bottle up to make sure that he's not within the kill range of the Swashbuckle from Hangul. Some good early pressure though from PSG LGD. Forcing Toronto Tokyo to be very cautious in that mid lane as early as it is just five minutes in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you think about Elder Titan, you kind of think of him as a lane dominant hero. And both No Tail and Sad touched on it, right? You want to abuse the fact that LGD have no stuns. But because of how this bottom lane is played out with the Naga lane constantly being shoved into the Lycan's tower, the Elder Titan hasn't really been able to abuse his laning oh, phase presence. Look at this now. There we have it. Nice bit of micro from Faith. Yeah, and that will grab himself a free courier. As the Wolves chase down poor old baby Faceless Rex. Up top, Collapse is also taking pressure now. So again, the freedom of why he's just allowed to rotate to mid, set up some pressure on the Void Spirit. Now he's up top, making sure he's just in their face and forcing them to react to his movement. Yeah, he is all over the place, Why? Yep. Spirit, they've definitely got to try and do something in return. Yeah, they themselves bring the two supports up to top. Sort of figuring out what to do about this roaming disruptor here in the early minutes of the match. Yep, here we go. First fight for the runes. Where is it going to spawn, top or bottom? Let's have a look. It is going to be down bottom, and it is a DD. It's going to go straight into the bottle of Toronto Tokyo. So, a very nice room for it to fight with, but already up top. Spirit, they'll lose Mira. Yeah, it's a DD Toronto Tokyo, though. Let's see how he can respond back with it. Because now you have a Pangol here with low mana, and he's going to be aware of it. So. He knows that he can make his move here, and the Pangolier won't really be able to respond. Yeah, this is an excellent move for Toronto Tokyo to find it. He's already, he's going to use it straight away. Goes aggressive, is going to miss the Dissimilate though. A couple of hits will do it. Can he quite close the gap? No, he's not going to be able to get the second hit in. Nothing to say, steps away. I mean, that's, that would have been such a big kill for him to find. He got the dream room for it, but he couldn't quite get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. It's unfortunate, but you know, that's the order. Disruptor though, he's gonna TP into the middle lane here. I'd be scared to do this. Let's see if Toronto Tokyo has the uh, will to chase him down. Oh, yeah, he's still got this DD going for a few seconds. Why? Living on the edge a little bit. Yep. Toronto Tokyo feels that he can get in with the astral step. But why knows? He's keeping his distance. Yeah, and if you take a look at the net worth, you see Yatoro. He's just gonna start accelerating his farm even more. But I'm impressed by how well the has been able to keep up. And this is largely due to the fact that they had lane control for so long up in the top lane, and they were able to just keep their heroes, so the enemy heroes, so close to the tower, so Tide could never really feel oh, free to Arme. fight. He's going to try and step over for Mira, but again, Team Spirit, they've kept their two supports up here, both Mira and Maposhka, making sure that there's never the opportunity for Arme to get any kills up here right now. As you say, Arme doesn't care too much, complete free farm, level with that of Yatoro's Naga Siren. He's having no struggles whatsoever, but Spirit just trying their best to limit anything else going into the hands of the Ursa this early. Yeah, and you notice the Naga in the bottom lane now. She's just going to put her illusions on the lane, push out the waves, while she farms the jungle camps close by, and try to get ahead of the Ursa by doing this constantly. And LGD are going to try to match by using the Wisp Overcharge to allow the Ursa to farm. And we notice both these teams are so good at stacking, and here we go again. Runes are spawning. And Toronto Tokyo is going to be the focus. Quick jump away from the Rolling Thunder. Yeah, it's an Arcane Rune secured though, so... If they can manage to survive these 70 seconds and nothing too bad happens, this is a huge rune for them to have. All about these power runes early on, especially in a game, you know, eight minutes in, only the two kills so far. 
Yeah, I mean, it's the tension, right? No, neither team really yeah. has anything to do yet, and they're both drafting for slightly later timings in the game. The Tide Hunters now finally hit level 6, so if there's an opening, look for some sort of rotation. I think it's hard to go for the Ursa, so there might be even be the possibility of the Tide Hunter rotating out of this lane sure. and making some sort of move with Ron to Tokyo. When you just look at the the heroes that PSGLG have at their disposal and you feel that Spirit, they're just not going to want to try and push into that Tier 1 quite yet. I think for Spirit, your expectation was to do slightly better in the lanes, but they haven't really been able to do so. See you, Toro. Right. Getting going on here by the two of them, but the Rolling Thunder not quite ready again. Not quite yet. They'll get the glimpse back, but no further damage to come into on, onto the Naga Siren, so Toro will be fine. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication there, it seems. The shield crash wasn't used on the hero. The glimpse came in a little bit later. Well, they've got yeah. their eyes on Arme. As they know, that play was made by a couple of PSG LGD inside their own jungle, but Arme. He's out of reach of the Remnant, he's away, space is there, down bottom, Faith Beyond continues to push, the tier 1 to fall already here on Spirit's side of the map. Yeah, I think this is the most shocking part of this early game, because I expected the Lycan to kind of get zoned out by the Naga, and the Naga Illusions to defend them, but... Let's see if they can get Army. They've got four heroes working on him There's right now. Ravage. He has the ult up, he's on the retreat up to the high ground, but they'll be able to get in front of him, close off his escape. Spirit will finally be able to claim their first kill here in the first 10 minutes, getting themselves on the board. Yeah, and this is a huge kill because it allows for Team Spirit to now start firing back and taking over this top lane area. They need this tower to fall. Uh, and meanwhile, this is the response you see from PLG LGD. They both hit their heroes mid to try to force Spirit away from the top tower and force them to come defend their mid tower as the more valuable tower for the later Roshan. Yeah, they're hitting these timings, PLG LGD, no doubt about it. And Spirit just having to let them do so. Yeah, I mean, th this Lycan really has becoming the big X Factor. I don't think Spirit expected him to be this strong out of the laning phase. And now Am is going to comfortably move into his triangle and start farming up. I think once he hits that Defusal Blade, look to see Spirit trying to, I mean, sorry, LGD trying to make some move. But I think if LGD gets to farm up right now, they feel like they've hit their enough, they have enough map space to where they're comfortable playing around their cooldowns and just waiting for the Disruptor Ultimate to come online, wait for the Lycan to get, finish up his items, and then just play around his forms together with the power runes that the Pangolier securing. I mean, in this sort of game where, you know, both teams playing as carefully as they are, just one to two, coming up to 11 minutes, do you look at the Naga Siren and feel that for Spirit, if they can keep this game in pretty calm waters and, and not allow the, the early aggression from PSG LGD to get to them too much, this Naga Siren will be able to carry out in the later stages or do PSG LGD always have the means to deal with her? I think to some extent you are happy, but I feel like you wanted the laning phase to go better so that LGD's timings come later into the game. So knowing that your lanes haven't quite gone the way you wanted them to, they must be. Uh, they must feel like, okay, at some point now, once LGD gets items, they're going to come running at us. Look at this, Tom, nothing to say. He's going to get the lead in onto Collapse. Uh, he'll drop the Static Som as well, putting no chance of Collapse being able to return fire quite yet with a potential Ravage. Doesn't matter though, he's able to walk out to the side, they'll go for the glimpse back on him. He'll simply look for the TP out, and there's nothing Beautiful. to put a stop to it. Collapse, realizing his strength here with the Hood of Defiance, he's got enough tank ability to just TP out of it all. That's the Rolling Thunder and the Static Storm put to waste there by PSG LGD. Yeah, great jukes. He just dodged out the Pangolier spells, and once the Rolling Thunder missed, he knew that he was safe. Glimpse is used, TP out. Just great presence of mind there from uh, Collapse, knowing exactly how to play his situation out and get out safely. I love what LGD are doing, though. If you take a look at the top lane, this is one of the things I loved about how OG ran the Wisp in the position 3. They recognize that Wisp's item timings are really important for you to keep these heroes alive. Because if you think about how healing works in Dota, heroes keep growing their hero pool, like health pools. But the healing items are static amounts of heals. So 250 health on a hero that has 1000 HP is like a lot more than it is on a hero that has 3000 HP. So if you hit these heal item timings early into the game, that really enables you. And they've given Zinq the top lane to sit here and farm comfortably. See down bottom. Why? Quite a dangerous position here. Inside the jungle of Team Spirit in Toronto, Tokyo will be quick to put a stop to it. Naga Siren also closing in on the Manta. And by the looks of it, she's going to get that item before Ursa even completes his Defusal Blade. So, Yator is probably very happy in this game, feeling comfortable with how it's going right now. And when you look at sort of what they have against him, do you feel that a lot of the map is pretty safe for this Naga Siren to, to farm in? As long as the song and the TP is up, will he get away most of the time? I mean, most likely. I think the tricky thing here, if you're LGD, is how do we deal with the illusions? How do we deal with the Naga putting illusions in our jungle that will scout out our movement and force us to play away from Roshan? Because as Dire here, no Tail and Seb also very touched on this a lot. The Ursa wants Aegis. This is his 
most key item, especially when you're going up against big cooldowns like Ravage, like Finger, uh, or Splitter, you know these long cooldowns, they don't, people don't want to use them on your Aegis. So it's going to be important for him to get it. And the Naga, as long as he's able to play top and put illusions in the top tier jungle, it's really hard. Like, what are you going to do? Because their heroes don't have ways to effectively kill the illusions. And you feel that Spirit, their lineup, it's geared up pretty well to deal with the fact that PSGLGD will look for the Roshan. They won't be afraid of turning up and trying to put a stop to it. I mean, I think that's where the information game is going to be important. Can Spirit actually use the vision that they're getting to fight off LGD's timing? Because I think that is like the big question mark. Is the Ursa going to be too strong for you to kill? Or is it enough to just sleep away half the wolf fight duration and then try to fight them afterwards? I think we're definitely going to see Yatoro start to increase the lead against our mate. Bottom lane white. He'll drop the Static Storm trying to save himself, but collapse him. Maposhka will run him down, take him out. Faith Bian, he's looking to get involved in this with the back of a nothing today, being brought over by Jin Q. They will get Maposhka. Can the three of them get collapsed? They try to commit their best onto him. They will leave the two cores behind as Jin Q trying to let nothing to say and Faith Bian finish the job, but they just can't. The damage isn't there. Toronto Tokyo is also starting to sweep over, so PSGLG they have to back up and just accept the trade as it is, the support for support. Yeah, and Collapse now knowing that, you know what, they can't actually kill me without the Ursa. It's only the Ursa that can threaten my life. Just comfortably sits bottom alone, pushes out the waves, gaining as much farm as he can. And in the meanwhile, Yatoro just pushes out top lane, farming out all these top jungle camps. If you take yes. a look at the dire jungle, there are no camps alive. I mean, Yatoro's farm, he is creeping further and further ahead of Arme's Ursa. You know, if there's not going to be any blood being spilled and it is just the creeps dying, this Naga Siren is just going to charge ahead. In, in regards to farm, Yatora is going to be huge. Yeah, and he's going for a very interesting build. He's buying the Aghanim Scepter, and the Aghanim Scepter allows him to use his Ensnare on heroes that are either slept by his ulti or spell immune. So this will give them a way to deal with BKBs. And traditionally, the way you deal with, for example, a Tide Hunter Ravage is by buying a BKB. Or in this case, you have the Pangolier with Rolling Thunder. So he's actually going to be able to lock down the Pangolier during his Rolling Thunder with his net. It's a very, very smart item decision here yeah. from the Naga. A very long lockdown and reduce cooldown and increase cast range, he's going to have no trouble finding the target that he wishes every single team fight. Yep. LGD also heavily reliant on the Pangolier for the lockdown, so I, I wouldn't be too surprised to see him use it, specifically just to make sure the Pango can't roll over his teammates. And I guess sort of the, the smart approach that w with this item is the fact that this sort of deals with this timing where PSG LGD is going to be more ready to fight than he is, right? He right. can just sort of be the, the anti-fight. He just stops it, gets out of there, can keep playing his game, and certainly one of the crucial parts of PSG LGD's initiation, it shut down completely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for, for Spirit, that's the name of the game, right? Can we drag this game on? And literally slowing him down during his role, forcing his timing to be unable to be used, is just exactly what LG, Spirit are looking for in this game. But yeah, we're starting to see items gear up on LGD's side. If you take a look at the Lycan, his uh, timing is really going to be the big thing. But I think Spirit have won the early game in that there's no Roshan killed yet. And that means the second Roshan is going to spawn slower, and that's no Aghanim shard for Ursa for the first half hour of the game. I mean, if you're PSG LGD right now, what sort of calls are you making? Are, are you looking at an item that's round the corner and then saying we've got to go? Do they need to go right now? Yeah, how urgent do they need to be? I think they're, they looks like they're gearing up to look for an opportunity, right? You finished up the Helm of the Overlord. The Ursa now has his Diffusal Blade. Your Wisp is closing in on Mech. You already have the Holy Locket. So there's a lot of nice tools for LGD to take a straight up team fight if Team Spirit presented to them. See Arme. It's going to start with a bit of a tickle onto Toronto Tokyo. The Remnant holds back the bear. Quick jump out with the steps. Nothing to say. He's trying to close in. Does he want to keep diving underneath the tier two? Maybe trying to get some vision for a setup from the Disruptor, but now Team Spirit, they're far enough away. Nothing to say. We're going to hit with the swipe bug of the pro Prox of the Maelstrom. Nearly bringing him down, but Toronto Tokyo gets away on as low HP as he is. Collapse also able to TP out as there's nothing else to stop his escape. Team Spirit, they're able to avoid the move completely by PSG LGD once again. Yeah, and they didn't even have to involve the Naga. So you, during all of this time, Yator is still just Look at his gaining farm. farm. He's 2,000 gold ahead of the Ursa already. Oh my, it, it's, this is going to be a problem. He's getting out of control. He's only, I believe he just finished his Aghanim Scepter too. So he has Manta and Aghanim Scepter at 17 minutes into the game. He's crazy farm. This is, I mean, Yator, it really has been eyes on him throughout the whole tournament and performance of spirit top lane setups there with an net that's the mid gone nothing to say going down yatoro instant song tp as he knows the response will be there from psg lgd gets out they cannot catch him yatoro will continue to farm
Yeah, this is a really important kill, but with by forcing the Naga Siren to TP out, LGD now have the option of potentially taking back control of their jungle. So this is going to be their objective for the next minute here. As you see, they're going to try to contest this tide hunter. They know the Naga Siren is not present. Let's see what they can do about Collapse. Jump already in onto the Disruptor, they're looking to burst. Collapse is holding on to the Ravage for now. Static Storm's down, Collapse gets himself out of the side of the Ravage. Onto the two of them, they blow up on it. It's three dead at the moment on PSG LGD. I am also caught out, GQ to fall. That's absolutely massive. My he goodness. Team Spirit's so aware of everything. They know that this is what LGD wants to do. The Naga TP'd out, they're going to come contest us. They position their heroes perfectly. You see the kinetic field come out, but there's no static storm to fall up because you have the lion in position to interrupt that. It's just Sp Spirit are playing so well right now. They're I just mean, recognizing where LGD's timings are. It just seems like already, just in the first 18 minutes of this game, one of the grand finals, Team Spirit, they're just completely in the heads of PSG LGD. The way that PSG LGD wanted to play, it's just not happening. They're crumbling, they're falling apart. And Yatora, he's just going to continue the glory. Mid lane, the setup's there under the pain gun. Nothing to say goes down. Another kill for this Naga Siren. I do not know or see how on earth PSG LGD is going to stop this man this game. Uh, he's getting out of control. And if you look at the Lycan, you can see he decided to not go for the Aghanims. He's going for drums. They're gearing up for a quicker timing in this game. I think the mechanism comes out on Zin Q. They get the BKB finished up on Ame, and they're going to look for some sort of team fight. But the way that it, Team Spirit are abusing the vision, if you take a look at the map, like there are almost no dire wards anywhere. Ra Radiant are in firm control of where the vision is. And the only ward that they have, I think Mikosha literally just pinged out. There you go. Just controlling the vision. They have more information to play with. And this is what's allowing Team Spirit to constantly be reading LGD and how they're moving around the map. Dyer's top tower is under attack. On bottom. Toronto and Tokyo. They'll show his face. But not worried about any catch from PSG LGD. They just don't have the members around. Space is made. The tier two tower going down at the top lane. There won't be any defense from PSG LGD here. As Spirit just continue to hit the timings, take the objectives at a pace that PSG LGD's lineup will be incredibly jealous of. This is what they wanted to be doing. And it's happening the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. They are starting to finish up some key items though. You see the Pangolier now has a Blink Dagger, so they have an easier form of initiation rather than just trying to run at them with a the roll. So if Team Spirit heroes start getting cocky and playing alone, there is a way for LGD to respond and punish. Very close to this mechanism on the Wisp as well. It's just 100 gold away. And this really is the Wisp's big timing. You have both the Holy Locket and the mech to heal up the Ursa. And Ursa's closing in on BKB, so... I'm smelling a, a fight in the waters, Owen. Yeah, the next one, it's got to be strong from PSG LGD. Another rough fight, and this game could quickly fall out of control. Yeah, and as strong as the Naga Siren is when she's playing this kind of map game and she's able to get the pickoffs, she isn't the strongest hero to fight up against the Ursa. So if you think about how these heroes function against each other, the Naga can't really fight up against the Ursa straight up. So if LGD is able to corner Team Spirit and they can take a fight where it's just a straight up 5v5 with the BKB and the mechanism finished, that could be a, an amazing timing for them. But Spirit don't want to allow that, so they're deciding to smoke up and make the move on their own first. Let's see if they catch PSGD whilst they least expect it. BKB is out for Arme. Why? So they start things off, they'll go for Y. Take the Disruptor out of the action. And Disruptor is a really key kill because if the Disruptor isn't uh, alive in the fight, they can't really go for Collapse. Look, look at Collapse's itemization. This is so smart. He's going for the Yules to get it with the Hood and a Blink Dagger. And why is this interesting? Because if you're inside of a Static Storm and you Yule yourself and you have the Hood up and there's no physical damage to hit you, you can actually just blink straight out of it. So just really, really smart item decisions coming out of Collapse here. Well, we'll definitely have to look out for that play. Would be a rather impressive outpost, taken back into the hands of Spirit. And keeping full control around this area, this Roshan, as you say, which is just sort of a... It's a long-distant dream, it seems, for PSG LGD. They're never, they're never getting anywhere close to this pit until they're able to find the, the, the fight that they've been hunting for for the, the whole 22 minutes of this game. They'll smoke up now, ready to go. PSG LGD, they have to find success here. Yeah, absolutely. And if you take a quick look at Lycan before the fight breaks out, he's decided not to go for the wolf fight. They recognize that they won't be able to play the strat the way they intended for it to. So he's going to be building up some damage items as well. Smoke. We'll dispel here on Toronto, Tokyo. Same to be set for PSG LGD. They know that both teams are waiting here up to the side of the river on the respective edges. And now, Arme, he's going to sneak into the row, start to try and take it out of here. Yeah, for the first time in this game, they've been allowed to take back the Dire Jungle and try to apply some pressure to Roche. So I expect Team Spirit also recognize that, you know what, we've given up the Dire Jungle. What would LGD would do with that? Well, they would go to Roshan, so... Let's see Spirit check this out. Army's gonna slow it down a little bit. The Spirit's coming in. They know that they know. Stop oh, no. in. 
Watch the I.O. They're going to lead it. There's the jump straight away. They're looking to burst through the I.O. And the range is the ball. Into the hands of Ame. Ame's able to get the Roche kill. Get the Aegis. They get the static song down. The Rolling Thunder is one of control. Toronto, Tokyo. But he's out with an astral step. Toronto, Tokyo actually makes it out of there. Dissimilate as well. PSG OG may have got the Roche. They may have got the Aegis. Toronto, Tokyo will still go down as Fate Beyond was able to wrap around and find him. Yeah, really nice play there from LGD. What an unfortunate uh, event there for Zinkyu. He gets pulled into the Roche pit. You really want to stay outside with a tether, but stay tethered to Ame, but he takes one step too close, and then the Wisp comes inside the Roche pit, which gives Spirit the perfect op opportunity there to go in. But I don't think they were quite expecting the BKB. So all in all, I think they're happy with this. You know, they gave up the Aegis, but it took them 24 minutes to get there. So Roshan number two, which really is Ursa's key timing in this game to get that shard so that he can play most of the fights in Raged, is going to come much, much later than they expected. But definitely the, the beginnings of PSG GLGD getting this game back under their control. Yeah, absolutely. Now they need to abuse the fact that they have the Aegis to try to gain some map control here. You want to try to get the lanes pushed out, force LG, uh, Team Spirit to play reactive to you, and then once you have, are able to corner them in, you're going to find that team fight that you so much want. So the hard part here for them is how do we deal with the Naga Illusions and how do we stop them from just using Illusions to push the lanes back and make us play the map game? I mean, and wh yeah, which hero are you sort of putting in charge of dealing with that? I mean, they, they picked the Pangolier as an answer, right? And if you look at his itemization, he's going for the Maelstrom. He's trying to have some more damage and have some more presence to kill the Illusions. And luckily for him, Yatora hasn't really bought any items that tank the Illusions up. He's more so building his hero up so that he's able to fight into the Ursa. He's going for that Bloodthorn. It looks like he's going to follow it up with a heart. So he's also gone for some sort of hybrid build where he can actually get solo kills if he catches people out alone. And for Spirit right now, despite the Aegis falling into the hands of Arme, are you still very willing to fight? How much do you need to respect this Aegis on the bear? I think... Oh, teamfight bottom. I think he was in trouble. Shinkyu will manage to make his way around the remnant. Quick tether back over to the safety of Arme. Yeah, I mean, for Spirit, I think you want to fight, but it needs to be the right fight. You ideally want Yatora to try to force some hero around the map. And then once you know that the PSG or these heroes aren't in position to connect, then you can go for some sort of smoke. Then you can make that move. But the difficulty for them is you can't necessarily go on the Ursa. You don't have the tools to bring him down at the start of a teamfight. I've got the eyes on the two of them bottom. PSG, LGD, Arme and Jinkyu. On their own down here for now. There is a relocate available, and of course, with the Aegis Arme, a very hard target to jump. Pressure continues from Yatoro and his illusions in the mid lane. Keeping these waves shoved right up towards the base of PSG LGD. And down bottom, Team Spirit are just waiting patiently, but LGD have recognized that they TP'd bottom, right? So it's very likely that their heroes are stuck on that side of the map. So here they come sweeping up towards the Dire Jungle, understanding that Spirit cannot already have moved their pieces from all the way from bottom back to top after the TP response to the Tier 2 tower. So just smart play coming out from both sides. I think we saw this in the VP Spirit series. Team Spirit are going to be really, really smart about only fighting under their vision, or where they're fe they feel comfortable that they have the information they need to take the fight. I think in this way, LGD is like maybe sometimes a little bit more reckless and will play with like assumptions. Like if they see you bottom, they might try to aim to fight you top, which we saw earlier. And in the early game, you know, Spirit read that perfectly. So if Spirit's able to get a good read like that, you might see them pounce. You're Toro, very ready to enter the fights now with. His aggressive item with the Bloodthorn complete. They're able to get that locked down with the stuns, with the Lion and the Tide. That amp up of the damage will allow them to just destroy whichever hero they target. Yep, and something that I noticed Team Spirit do a lot when they feel like they're on the back foot is take over the enemy triangle and try to set up control here. And this is something that I'm sure LGD are aware of too, but Lycan's in trouble. Yep. They've got the setup here. You see the damage here with the Bloodthorn really amping up. It's not quite enough though, Faith Beyond. Makes it away, has the plate mail and that hyperstone done already onto the way to the AC. An additional bit of armor certainly helping out. Yeah, and this is an opening now for Spirit. The Lycan form is down. They've one of the big tools in this team fight is gone. So in the other series when we saw Spirit, I mean sorry, LGD play the tiny Lycan, the Lycan's form himself doesn't really matter. It was all about that wolf bite. But in this game, because he decided to itemize his own hero, the 60 seconds of downtime here is quite big. And you see LGD pulling back their pieces not willing to play aggressive on the top lane anymore, recognizing that they don't have all the tools necessary to win a team fight. A team spirit remaining in this whole area of the triangle, Yatora. Slowly sieging onto the tier one tower, seeing what sort of reaction they can force out of PSG LGD. 20 seconds until that Aegis has gone off Arme. Unlikely to find a fight with that still in his hands. So the game once again falling to a bit of a risky territory for PSG LGD, at least until they can hold off for that second round of Roshan.
Yeah, and Illusions just slowly chipping away at this tower. Uh, they don't really deal a lot of damage, but it's something that, you know, LGD might respond to. So they're keeping heroes close by that in case LGD just feel like, oh, it's just an Illusion hitting our tower, they're ready to pounce. And you see, nothing to say it reads that too. He understands based on the fact that there's nothing happening on any of the other lanes. Both our middle lane is pushing out, top lane's pushing out. Lycan's getting a lot of farm from all these waves right now. He recognizes all the Team Spirit heroes are bottom here. Yeah, he so has to be so careful showing his face to clear the wave. Yeah, both teams just are reading the map really, really well. And I think Spirit, this play that they've done has been so effective throughout all the tournament. But you know LGD's done their homework. I'm gonna spot Collapse around, Glimpse back with the Blinks there. Collapse breaks the combo, the setup. Instantly gonna go for the TP out, if they've got anything to put a stop to it. They do, straight away. They're able to get the setup onto Collapse, he'll look to run. But the damage is done. PSG LGD, they catch and kill off the tie. Yeah, and this is a result, right, of Team Spirit has been in the lower bracket, so they've been playing so many games. LGD has that information based on previous games of what, where does Team Spirit go when they feel like they're behind? What do they do? What is their approach? And I think LGD is one of the best teams at the tournament at just abusing the, this information that they're gaining about the teams. They understand what, are, what is Team Spirit specifically going to do? How do they approach the situation? And they find that smoke because of that. They're playing most of this game with very, very limited vision. I, I really want to point that out. Like, they, they barely have vision of what's going on on the map. Even without their tide, Spirit maintaining their aggressive posture over PSG to the top of the map and already looking for action once again around the bottom tier too. See oh. if they find the setup. They've got the hex. They're going to look to jump in. Static Storm's going to be put down from Y. Stops the backup coming in. Still though, is it the burst and off it is? The they take board. down Arme. That burn for the Bloodthorn. It's enough to send the bear back to base. That's an absolutely massive kill. And I think uh, Zinqiu felt like he could keep him alive. He, there was no relocate out. So next team fight, here's the tricky part. Do you relocate Arma out as soon as he gets hexed? Because Spirit has now proven to you that we have the abilities to burst your heroes. That's why he's also in trouble. It should be another one. It's definitely another one, yeah, Toro. Target to target and over towards the mid. The BKB having to be popped by nothing to say. See if yatoro has got the setup he has. That's the initial a... route. See if they've got any further follow up here, they relocate, they'll take him out. They've got to keep nothing to say safe. Yep. Get him away from Team Spirit as Team Spirit, they're pushing down the mid onto another tier two tower. Nice play by Faith Beyond. Tanks that hit the Remnant with one of his wolves. But Team Spirit, they're doing this so smart, right? We heard a draft panel touch on it. Fighting five versus five is not really where they're strong. They want to delay this game, keep finding these pickups, try to find these opportunities where they can get a jump, burst someone really quickly, and use the fact that we have Ravage to reset. We have Naga Sleep to reset, which is forcing LGD to be very careful about how they use their cooldowns. And this is leading to them just, they're just playing this game very well. And these small decisions that they're making, where you notice they're not really charging into the enemy. They're not giving LGD the kind of fights that they're used to getting. I mean, and, and with the heart done on your tour, you know, 26 armor, 3500 HP, how hard is it for PSG LGD to really ever get on top of him now and take him out with the focus of Arme's Ursa? I think the biggest thing is that the illusions are tankier. If you take a look at how Yator is playing the fights, he's staying very far back with his primary hero, using the Bloodthorn and using the Ensnare, and having the illusions deal the damage. And if LGD really don't have heroes that want to hit illusions, Ursa wants to sit on top of a hero, like just keep hitting him, keep hitting him, keep hitting him. You don't want to hit these illusions where you get like five to six hits in, and then you got to switch over to the next one. That's a way of making the Overpower a fairly useless ability. Of course, that timer that they'll be having in their mind. The Roshan. Potential respawn in just over a minute. And that minute feels really long, Owen. Like, let me tell oh, you, right now, if you're PSG LGD, that yep. minute is coming very, very slowly. We see Tidehunter starting to eye up a Shiva's guard. That's going to make it even harder for the Ursa to stick on top of him and deal damage. They also just bought a four staff on the Elder Titan. I think for Team Spirit, they're recognizing that, you know what? LGD is not going to be able to kill us if we're just able to kite out their BKBs. And that's why you notice, like, nothing to say also has bought a BKB. I think the idea of this is he wants to try to use it to break out of, uh, to have a longer period of time in the team fights where he's playing under Magic Community, because there's just so much lockdown coming out from Team Spirit. Go Scepter on Mira. Toronto Tokyo has Yules and Akaya Sanj also eyeing up on it. Shiva's guard, but I would be surprised if he doesn't change it up. And on the corner, he has a full BKB too. So, 
I'm really liking Spirit for this game mode. They're in a very dominant position here. They're scaling up very nicely. And with the timer, they know it's going to be around the point where PSGLG are going to be checking out that Roche pit, looking for the respawn. Spirit, they're heading over to try and do something about the presence. They're going to jump straight in on the GQ, burst with the finger. As the IO goes down, no buyback. GQ cannot get back into this fight. Nothing to say, has to roll out with the thunder. So this is huge, right? Both Lycanform was committed, as well as the Pangolier roll. So if the Roshan spawns, which it does, this is free Roshan for Team Spirit. And remember how much we talked about how badly you want this for LGD. It doesn't even matter if the Sagus comes to use for Yatoro. They just want to make sure that PSG LGD doesn't get it. And this is the only shard, uh, Aghanim's shard, that has dropped from Roshan throughout the entire game. So that's 1,400 gold that now Am is going to have to spend for himself. I mean, it just goes to show how solid of a position that Spirit are in, where just a couple of ults expired by PSG LGD and a dead IO, and suddenly the rest of the lineup, they cannot do anything about Spirit taking the Roche. Continuing their lead here, 7k up. I mean, Yatoro, he himself, 7k difference between him and Arme's farm. Well on the way to having a butterfly complete for the next bit of action as well. Yeah, and with this butterfly, he actually has the option of now act utilizing his own hero too, once the situation looks good for him, because the Ursa can't just burst him. There's, the bash is going to miss, there's a proc chance on the bash, there's a proc chance on the miss, so it's going to be hard for the Ursa to just lock him down. And just very intelligently itemized by the Naga here. For the early part of the game, when he knew it was going to be a map control game, he bought the Orchid, he bought the Ags, played for the map, looked for those pickoffs, and those key pickoffs have really led to the situation that they're in in the game now. Jambot picked up by Y. You can feel, they feel the pressure of the vision. They're not getting the vision that they're used to. They don't have the information that they're used to playing with in this game. Miposhka is just shutting them down. Oh. And Rage first out. They're just going to have to stay well away from Spirit. Four very, very scary minutes of Aegis on Toronto, Tokyo. PSG, LGD, they do not want to fight into this. But every minute that passes where they cannot look to brawl is going to be another just minute of pain here with the increasing momentum and mass of the cause of Team Spirit. Yeah, and surely right now PSG and LGD are discussing how do we take a team fight? What is it that we need to do? How do we need to use our abilities in order to catch Team Spirit off guard? And for Team Spirit, I think a lot of the communication is like, we need to make sure that we do not let LGD come out on the map. We don't want them to get out and farm. As long as we can keep them locked into the base, we can get all the items that we want, and then we get the fight that we want. And it, everything's going to happen on our terms. So you see, they rotate over to the top side here, expecting LGD to run out on the top side of the map. And here we go. It's time to look for that fight, PSG LGD. Execution has to be immaculate. Yeah, they're scouting with the wolves. They're getting the info they want. They're looking to try and start to collapse, but collapse is able to blink away from the lead in. They'll turn their attention over towards Yatoro, but with the instead, looks to hold him back. Nothing to say, is able to get out of it. As they'll get the static storm set up onto the Naga Siren, but the illusions, they're just forcing back. Why? Swashbuckle's gonna miss. I mean, Yatoro, he's barely been scratched. He's back up to full HP. PSG LGD is able to run back to base, but collapse. He's in with the ravage onto the two of them. Silence down onto Arme. Pop the BKB. Turner wants to run to Tokyo, but they cannot stay for this fight. They've got to get back to the high ground, back to the base. As PSG LGD have to charge back to the safety of their high ground as quickly as they head out. Collapse. And He's going to look for the set up here outside of the base. Another BKB force. Faith Beyond trying to head back to the safety of his teammates. The ensnare locks him down. The illusion is starting to go to work. Remnant left in the position. They drag him back with a spear into the finger. My goodness, the Lycan gets absolutely destroyed. And Toronto Tucky is not done. Diving up to the tier fours. Committing with the dissimilar. He's trying to go for GQ. Will die underneath the towers. But he's got the ages. He's ready for round two. Yeah, I mean, it's just the micro decision making from Team Spirit is so beautiful to watch. I think every time a hero pops BKB, within half a second, there's a Naga net flying at it. And in the fight, you saw Ahmed pops BKB to try to man up and fight. And then the net comes, immediately he has to pop his ultimate. He can't use the enrage the way he wants to. He's forced to use it defensively all the time just to break the net, just to be able to stick on top of the targets. Just trying to clear out these illusions now. It seems... It seems all but impossible. The reacts dying, the melee reacts will fall. They get the jump on a Yatoro, but they've already lost Y at the start of the action. BKB from Arme, he's trying to stay on target, but Yatoro is able to signal their way back to safety. 
and now he's ready to go back in. The song ends. Toronto Tokyo PKB up. Jump over with the remnant. Grabs back the answer. Arme disappears in a matter of seconds. GQ to fall as well. GG is called. And my goodness, what a buttery smooth start to the grand finals here for Team Spirit. Oh, they couldn't have played this any better, Aiden. This is how you dream of entering a grand finals at the International. Yes, absolutely. It just the, everything they're doing, they're firing on all cylinders. Their macro understanding of the game, how LGD might try to sneak out of base, they're in position to cover it. And then once that fight happens, they're immediately ready to respond in the right way. I mean, that was incredible. Yatoro turning up. Doing it again, another uh, hero, and it looks like it's, it's a performance that's on top of the world. Yeah, absolutely. I think Yatoro, I mean, we all talked about Collapse so much throughout this tournament, but we got to give Yatoro the praise he deserves. His hero pool is so wide, it's just allowing Spirit to constantly have these conditions, win conditions over their opponents. And it really is, yeah, just not the, the fact that he himself is so individually skilled on these numerous carries. It's just that the team, they seem to have a strap to play around every single one that he's willing to pull out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Team Spirit are so strong. They, they look like a fierce opponent, and I think a lot of people might have expected LGD to be the stronger team, but, you know, they've just proven you wrong. These guys can beat LGD for sure. They absolutely can. What a way to start this Grand Finals. Team Spirit just charging in with the same level of strength that they have shown us throughout their entire run so far up until this point. It's continuing here where it counts the most. Game one will go to Team Spirit. A very strong performance from Team Spirit here in that first game indeed. And I am looking forward to hearing from our five head draft panel, first of all. <laughs> Gentlemen, how did this game play out compared to what you thought was going to happen? I mean, I think it was an incredible statement from Spirit. It started with the draft. It started with the mentality in which they played this game. You know, they come here to the grand finals. And of course, everybody expects LGD to be the Titan. You know, can they move them? Not only they can, they beat them. They play fearless. They come up with a great strategy. They're be they beat probably LGD's best strategy. Their first pick, the IO Lycan, and they just break it. I think, you know, as a Dota fan, this is what I was really hoping for, is like, can they compete? And yes, they can. We're, we LGD is getting tested today, and that's going to be absolutely amazing to witness. Team Spirit seems to be playing very free, very careless, very aggressive. This Bloodthorn kill on the Ursa bottom was, uh, like you said, a huge statement. I want to say the same thing. This was like a team who saw an opening, they had an item build, they had a timing that not many teams would have pushed, played on, and pulled this off with. This Ursa dying in front of Tier 2 also breaks the game at this point, and it's like, it's, it's a very intense game. LGD, they're still, they're not broken by any means. They go for this Roshan play, they, they actually get it, and they're staying alive in, in a game where I think it's actually looking really hard, and it's really hard for them to scale, it's really hard for them to fight. I think the draft still favored Spirit. I think LGD were not so comfortable with how it ended up looking like. Um, and they're, they, they're much more comfortable if they have a condition where it's like, in 20 minutes, we're going to be stronger. In 30 minutes, we're going to be stronger, much stronger than you, and we, we, we keep scaling. But, but in this game, with the, with the ET, with the Naga Sleep, with the Ravage, you saw it. Like, fights can end like this for, for, for LGD. Yeah, and I think this was almost a bit of a wake-up call for Xiaowei and LGD, because I think they came into the supremely confident. I think we were even saying, like, maybe they might have even prepared for Team Secret. They weren't expecting Team Spirit to, like, just roll through everyone. And... I think LGD, they can make a comeback, but Spirit, they looked really good in that game. Just everything they wanted to do that during that game looked really strong. Yeah, thank you very much, gentlemen, for that insight. Love to hear more, of course, from you during the draft of game number two. And that is where we, of course, will be heading next because it's a best of five. It's all about learning and adapting. And uh, you heard Curtis say that maybe PSG LGD did not know like that they were going to face Team Spirit. I will tell you that uh, not a single person on the planet has had a correct bracket prediction. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of extra information there. Uh. So uh, there, were four, there are four people on the planet uh, that have had 20 out of 21 predictions correct. So that's very nice. And actually, this morning, there was only one person on the planet that still had a correct prediction, but they thought it was secret that it was going to move on. So... Hey, it's all up in the air from here, and Team Spirit take game one. Lizard, it's been an amazing opening game. It's been incredible, especially when you go back, back and listen to what Silent said after the draft. He's like, yeah, we're just going to play the game. We didn't prepare too much for them. We had secrets on our mind. 
it definitely didn't look that way. The way they set up the team fights, the way they moved across the map, draft aside, the way they anticipated PSG LGD and what they will do and prepared for it and countered attack them. It was incredible. Yeah, PSG LGD end the game with five kills. That is like, <laughs> yeah. and with an Ursa draft. Like yeah. that's just kind of unheard of and exactly how their draft is not meant to play out. Uh, if you're, you're playing an Ursa and 25 minutes in you have five kills, there's a big problem. Yeah, and I want to—I definitely want to piggyback on something that Nota was talking about. I think every single game that I got to either cast or every single game that I reviewed, looking over PSG LGD, even for months now, they always drafted themselves a win condition for later stages. This is one of the few games where I think, as soon as that Nog is picked, they're like, uh-oh, yeah. we actually need to find something to counter this to play fast with. I think that's why they went for this Pango. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just a genius idea, a genius draft plan from Spirit throughout the whole thing. A genius draft plan indeed. It looked uh, so strong from them. Uh, was there was there any chance for PSG LCD to defend high ground after it went so awry in the early stages, God? I felt like once things started going wrong, there wasn't a comeback. They needed to get ahead early and then snowball from there, going from Roshan kills to hero kills and just really you know, get this massive lead that just kept on growing. So once this Naga, you know, illusion started coming online and pushing out waves, the game was kind of already slipped away by that point. And even though PSG LGD, they had a beautiful plan in this Pangolier last pick that can perhaps take over the game and deal with the Naga later on. They answered it. They answered it with Yaganims on the Naga and just completely killed their only chance. It's just beautiful. Yeah, PSG LGD has, uh, you know, been the the grand, the final, the final boss, as you say it, uh, for this, uh, for this grand finals. And what is that? What is that? T tsunami? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, you're right. I mean, it's final boss. I've been, I've been crunching the numbers, and I, th I think I finally understand. This whole time, I was preparing as if secret were going to be the representatives of not just Western Europe, but Europe in whole. And I was so ready to show you the differences between Secret's playstyle and LGD's playstyle. Things went a little bit differently. I was trying to say that, oh man, LGD, they are the magnum opus of China. They have combined all the best parts of their compatriots, Vici Gaming, IG, Spirit, they're all grinders, actually. You know, Secret, they only played like 27 ticketed games. Meanwhile, you've got I-Leagues, you've got Pinnacle Cups. Both these regions are known to grind out games publicly. So that's one thing that was very similar to them. Next up, we've been talking, oh, time and time again about how LGD is the fastest average game length, and they are. But Spirit is hot on their tail, not that much further behind. This is no fluke, my friends. After that, I was like, okay, well, surely. Surely the war deficiency, and there is a little bit of a discrepancy. This was the average centuries used per D ward. LGD is still the kings of this whole thing, but you heard Insania at the beginning of this cast. You saw how the Naga illusion usage was used. Spirit understand vision extremely well, and they also understand drafts extremely well. Five more unique heroes picked throughout this entire tournament. Maybe LGD have been holding on to things. And also, it's a big credit to Yatoro, obviously, on the side of Spirit, because Ame, he's no slouch in his own self. He's, uh, he's been putting up some solid numbers. All you people who went in on Team Secret for your fantasy, I feel bad for you. Because Ame, even in a losing series, will still be doing work. Though, granted, that's only after he uh, matured a little bit, I think. Previous Ames, previous TIs for Ame, He's, uh, he's had some issues picking the right items, knowing when to use the right items, knowing when to buy the right items, but he has matured ever since. And this is, should really come as no surprise that Team Spirit has won game one, because this is a rematch from the OGA Dota Pit Invitational just from a month ago. And you know who won that game one? It was Spirit also. Yeah. After that, they lost three games. Wow, a lot of confidence uh, for Team Spirit coming out <laughs> from Tsunami there. And yes, that was indeed how those Grand Finals went. However, since then, I think it is very safe to say that Team Spirit, over the entire 2021 year, Fog, the most improved team in Dota 2 on the planet. Yeah, and just still playing like it's not TI, I guess you could say. Like, not feeling the pressure so much is what I mean. Because I watched them, I got to cast them and watch them throughout both of the seasons, and I was big fans of them. Tokyo was playing with super confidence. Some games, 
maybe a little bit too much confidence, but <laughs> being able to see players go up onto even grand finals doing this versus a team like LGD, it's amazing. And you could see there, they were still taking risks in a lot of this game. They were committing a lot of spells, like even over committing at times, and it ended up working out anyway. So Yeah, I think we've seen that multiple times when Team Spirit seemed a little down day in in a game. They they don't they don't really seem to care. I don't know if that's the right word to say it, but they'll try to make the plays anyway, even if they're not uh, ahead in the game, even if they're not 20k gold ahead. If they put 20k gold down, they'll still try. That's how they were able to get to this point, Lizard. And that's the right winning mentality. When you're 20k gold behind and you go safe and you buy yourself that BKB instead of that one extra item that could perhaps win you the team fight, you're already signing the defeat. So mm -hmm. I really like the mentality and the approach to the, to the game that uh, Team Spirit is bringing yeah. to this TI. They give us this aura where it's like, you know, we might eventually lose or get knocked out of TI, but that's okay. And turns out just playing with that kind of carefree, you know, we're just going to go out and, you know, play to win and, you know, anything can happen kind of attitude has really just worked wonders for them. I really cannot wait already. Sorry, for true sight, I was seeing like multiple conversations going on. You saw Zawe giving a little bit of a speech. We saw just Yatoro just, you know, having some comments back and forth. Ooh, I can't wait. Uh, I'm getting way too far ahead of myself with all those conversations. But I would like to hear from you guys what you think needs to be changed in game number two, because we do talk about learning and adapting Fogged and in between uh, best of five, that's when it matters. These 15 minutes that these players have had, key moments. Yeah, I think I, I I know Io is an incredibly strong hero at the moment, but I actually think Io might be one of those that you maybe step away from because TI, I think we've said it ad nauseum, it starts to come down to these big team fights, it comes down to these big these like big little plays that you can do. Sure, Io can do those little plays, but ease of execution is a thing too. So I think for PSG LGD I want to see them go back to their guns put Jin Q on his normal heroes where he's going to be able to scale, have a bigger impact than just I'm a tether, I'm an overcharge to heal. I want them to diversify and let him also become that kind of carry mode too because, yeah, he's shown how much he can do as. And when you talk about ease execution, they had, like, no stuns that game. Disruptor yes. Glimpse, they would, like, you know, try to catch this Tide and then he'd just TP out in front of four heroes mm -hmm. multiple times. So I think a lot of it is going to come back to the draft, simplify things, pick a few more stuns, and just make your game plan much easier to execute. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Just a little bit more team fight for uh, PSG LGD, and what they really have to get is that late game potential. In the yes. last game, they truly didn't have it. And when you're on a timer, that 20, 25 minute mark in which you need to break the enemy and you're under pressure, under emotions, you're bound to make mistakes. So just make play it safe, pick a hero that scales well into the late game. Yeah, I mean, if we take, uh, take a look back to the first 10 minutes of uh, the previous game we just watched, I mean, both teams were taking a very safe. It was actually a fairly slow start to the game, which, based on draft, we were not really expecting gods, because that Naga Simon just had all the freedom in the world. Yeah, I don't think PSGLG had a draft that was going to scale late game if they didn't get ahead and play aggressive. Usually it's their style to just go around Run, look, run at their opponents, look for these kills. And, you know, when you're playing this Ursa as a, your carry with a mid uh, Pengalier, you don't have that ability to scale, so they had to be a lot more aggressive there. They really, uh, really di uh, did. And we know that PSGLZD can recover in a series, so I'm very curious to see what they bring to the table in this game two. Of course, also, this will be something that Silent and Meposhka will have discussed at length because they know PSG LZD will come up with a new plan as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's one-upping each other constantly in this best of five. I want to just also quickly remind everyone that it is so phenomenal that we have nine out of the ten players on stage being they're only the, the first or the second international that they're at. We are seeing, I, I, feel, I kind of feel like the new generation of Dota players here on stage, Fog. Oh God, don't say this. Well, oh, no, it's, no, it's time. No, oh this is true. <laughs> but then the older people are going to start retiring, and then we got like no, seven no alter... coming for our jobs. So okay. no. Well, they, they are already here, <laughs> yeah, and you're still on the it's panel. Too late, too late for <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Savor the moment. It, no, it, it is truly beautiful. I love when you see these these young guns and just having this confidence. As we, keep, I think that's the biggest thing that everybody's just said is confidence, confidence, confidence. Love Spirit's it. just been oozing it. Yeah, the future I, of Dota no. is bright. When you have all these young players coming out of multiple different regions, yeah. it really means, you know, the next TIs and years to come are going to have some amazing new talent. Yeah, are you a little bit jealous, Lizard? I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super emotional. Uh, watching Team Spirit in particular, because I was in that Eastern Europe Tier 2, Tier 3 teams. This was a dream that, for some, the, 
is happening at the yep. moment. It's, mm -hmm. it's becoming I mean, reality. All I'm you also need to very do, happy. Apparently, yeah. is uh, on day two or day three of the event, you're like, Dota gods, they need to be worshipped. You shave off your head, <laughs> you donate it, and, uh, and here you are, grand finals. There you that's go. A, that's your Toro story right there, in case you're wondering why you look so different from all the pictures that you're seeing. That's the reason. He literally said in an interview, I felt like I needed to sacrifice something to the Dota gods. My hair. I like how they're doing all these like little things too, where you're saying, like, I even saw when they fit, won the last game too, Mira's like waving at somebody in the, in the yeah. crowd, right? He's just <laughs> like, hey, yeah, we won, guys, cheer for us. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, I am like, I am very sad that this is not a, a, an actual crowd, because of course yeah. we have the LGD crowds coming in from our, from our sound sweetener, but now Team Spirit doesn't have those crowds, because I, I know, like, you've probably seen in a lot of different streams that, uh, for example, the Eastern European audience right now, all-time high. Like, they are incredible. They are, of course, big fans of uh, the guy on your screen right now and his whole squad, and they are rooting for them. And if we could hear them in an arena, we would not have been able to hear anything else, gods. Mm -hmm. Every crowd loves an underdog, too. Like, you know, wherever you are in the world, this Team Spirit team would have won the hearts of the fans. Wherever you go in the world, there's always a huge amount of support for PSG LGD. You know, obviously a crowd is missed, and, you know, we hope to see it again in future years, but, you know, these two teams still producing amazing Dota with or without a crowd. Yeah, so what do we want to see in this game, too? Like, are there any heroes that we feel like Yaturo uh, still has to play? I want to see a collapse Mars. You uh, talked about okay. the IO maybe going through. Give us IO collapse Mars. All right. Well, we are going to find out if we will get a collapse Mars or what else will he play. We're finding out right now. Team Spirit versus PSG LGD. Grand Finals, Game 2. Hello again, welcome to the draft panel, the second game of the TI-10 Grand Finals. Again with Seven Noto and, I mean, Team Spirit, they took Game 1. But I actually had a question I wanted to ask you guys. So, in the first game, LGD had choice. They took first pick and Spirit responded with Radiant. In this game, Spirit had choice, but they actually took second pick and LGD responded with Radiant. Why do you think that is? I mean, there's definitely a big Radiant advantage, so no surprise that whoever gets to choose side will choose Radiant. And it does seem that uh, now we have two teams that are going to cl keep clashing at each other, and they're questioning the execution versus the theory, because apparently Team Spirit wants second pick and LGD wants first pick. And I think also the, the way the draft starts is another case of that. This is the exact same scenario of Game 1. So this is LGD stating that, hey, there's probably something we could have done better, maybe draft-wise, but our approach to these games is the right one, and we're sticking with it. Yeah. Ah, I always love to see it when you have teams that stick with their guns, and you can say that Team Spirit were maybe really happy with how the choices went down, where they might prefer second pick, or they feel like they're able to punish them really hard, or whatever it is. Uh, I think LGD always should be left with a, ah, okay, now we at least know, like, uh, this is what they want, blah, 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 and this is a best of five, so this is also them going to going to be getting to know each other better. This outcome of this game is going to be super important for how the rest will shape out. LGD, they might feel something if they're winning or if they're losing. There's always a chance that they keep going back to the same thing. But then, yeah, like this game, we're going to probably see, I'm predicting, Team Spirit going for something new again for Yatoro. I think they're feeling themselves a lot and are drafting a lot also on feeling. You also heard Heen talk about that. They're drafting on feeling. Um, and you see, also see now LGD decided to switch it up or kind of go away from what happened last game with like lack of AOE, lack of team fight, and they instantly lock in Alesh with the IO to, to, to give the IO that. I, I want to say that, so Team Spirit, right, they, they really shook LGD. Like they, they, they proved that they can beat them at their own game. And I feel like no team so far in the tournament has done that. And I was kind of sad as a Dota enthusiast. It's like, come on, like if you're going to lift the Aegis, somebody has to, you know, make you kind of work for it. And Team Spirit did that, and it's awesome. And now we're going to see, you know, can LGD show us, you know, the level two, the level three, and then it's going to bring even better Dota. What I really love about Team Spirit, that they had the same opener open to them. They could have ET tied again. Yep. And, you know, they respect LGD. They respect them so much that they expect them to be ready to punish them for the same draft. So they know, like, you know what? We're not giving you what you think we're going to do. You're going to have to think on the spot. We don't want you to come to this draft with... Uh, you know, because I wait one hour of preparation on how to do even better. 
you have to think on the spot, Bane Magnus. It's it's beautiful approach, it's mind games between the drafters and props to Miposhka and Silent for pulling this one out. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's amazing. This is like a big mental game. It always, it's always been, it always will be, but it starts here, it starts with the draft and again so many statements are being made between the, the draft, between the, the two teams. So I'm like this is what we believe in, this is what we're gonna do to you now, and we're trying to throw you off guard and, and yeah, lot being said. I do wanna say that there's something very interesting in my opinion, is like last game, LGD, when they played the Swiss, they're very much looking at connecting early with nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And connecting to a Pango Lear that doesn't have the best matchup, it's hard, you know, Pango doesn't really have a way to take over the game. Less track, Wisp, that is scary. Less track, most of the time wins his lane. He can power farm, he can, you know, like, you start accelerating a less track as a Wisp, he might take over the game. And I feel like with the Pango Lear, it's, it's not the same. There's a lot more abuse to be had with the, with the Leshrac. You can, you, can, you can get the mana, you can get the soaring, you can get like the runes, you can get certain mana abuse that also allows this hero to have a way different game. His timings are something else. Like this going back to base, this not being able to dive, Io can fix all of it for you. He will take the towers, he will kill anything, any yeah. camp. He, he, he'll take the entire game if he has to. And that's something, something very beautiful. Another thing to mention, in my opinion, is we have not seen Collapse yet out of his you know, uh, Trifecta, Magnus, Tide, oh, Mars, gosh. where he's, he's incredible on these heroes and he's getting them every game. So he got the mag now again, mm -hmm. which means in my opinion, Team Spirit is going to be in their comfort zone. You know, they have so many cool strategies, so many cool lanes. They understand how to fight around these heroes better than any team in the tournament. And I think you're spot on with the read that you guys have about Lash Rack because they're just banning to protect their mid Lash Rack, right? We see the leaning, Lina coming out, the, lash, the Invoker, and even now an Antimid. I mean, I don't know if it protects a Snowball. But when you have this hero, I think you pretty much want to play for nothing to say his time. I think that's what has found LGD a lot of success in this tournament. I got like, you know, they're not diverting so much from their West. They think this is the strongest hero for them, but they're adding on to that strategy. There's something I think very important to uh, mention is that, um, you know the second phase how it's gonna go down and like team spirit will have to pick the hero that's gonna be kind of the the pivotal hero like they're they don't want to show and then they're gonna start counter picking and it is interesting for lgd to show the less that early because no matter what first pick cannot protect the mid matchup you know team spirit can just delay the mid pick for yeah. as long as they want to uh, in this case lgd is like you know what we're committing to this with less track. We don't think it's countered, or maybe they think it's only countered by Lina and Invoker that can match the pace of what with less track can apply to a game. And now it's like they're happy. No matter what Team Spirit is holding for the 18 or the 24 pick for the mid lane, it does not matter. Does that mean you think that Team Spirit should pick their mid out of the phase just so that they don't reveal anything more about the draft? Or it, it makes could a be lot a way. of sense. Yeah. There's always arguments for both. Like if you wanna, depends on how you enjoy playing Dota. Sometimes depends on what types of players you have on your team. If you see the mid matchup, theoretically, of course, there's many arguments for revealing your mid matchup or trying to address this and, and have a stronger win condition if that's what you're going for on your carry. There's also another way where it's like, yeah, you want to, you love your mid laner so much that you're going to pick your carry hero and make sure that this Leshrac is mid and make sure there's no bamboozling happening and, and he gets the last pick win condition or timing condition or whatever it might be. It, it all depends. If you pick anti uh, anti out, but if you pick some carry hero here and you say nothing can beat it in the game, it makes a lot of sense too because you want your mid guy to stabilize the game and he needs to have a really good start. Like the better the start, the better because you're going to need him very early. Could yep. this be Shaker Morph coming? Yeah, there it is. There it is. So that's uh, one of the... So you have these combos, right, that are very hard to pick and there's only two scenarios in which you can actually pick them. It's... And probably the, that's one of the strengths of first pick is first pick has the double pick, right, oh. the Shaker Morph? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that and, and also you feel like quite often with this phase you might want to commit just because uh, yeah. it's going to be hard to counter and there's this and that. But don't you think this Willow was a protect pick against this? But potentially, maybe it was even a setup for the Morph. I think like the way I look at it is they're trying to take the win condition away from the Mac plus one. And I think mm -hmm. Shaker Morph has a way to play fights and scale into the Mac plus one, in my opinion. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. Well, I think they're, I, I don't know if they thought about it, but Willow Bramble is one of the best abilities against the Shaker Morph. Yeah. The Aghanims, you can't just roll through the fight. If there's Brambles on the ground, you instantly get pulled down. Uh, I don't know if that's what they were thinking, but I also think, like Seb said, they're maybe threatening this morphling to come up. And if they have an answer now, now they trap them. Or if they yeah. feel like they have a, an, an amazing answer to this. There's many things about why this shaker morph here makes a lot of sense. 
it's not stoppable drafting wise they're picking both heroes you know in the same phase you cannot stop it mechanically drafting wise you can't stop it the aa cannot be picked anymore because they have shown the bane and they have shown the willow meaning you know like the big corners of the shaker morph are kind of hard to pick for team spirit it's a win condition it's a very strong you know combo that scales into anything very powerful second phase from lgd and that's what i think why they are the best first pick team in the, in the tournament because they understand the weaknesses of first pick but they most importantly they abuse the strength of the drafting order of first pick they're like, you, can, you cannot stop me from getting what I want. Mm -hmm. And what I want, I think it beats anything. Yep. So from your guys' perspective, of the two drafts, like if you were in their shoes, which draft would you actually prefer to have right now? Hmm. It's a hard pick. I, I yeah. kind of want to lean towards LGD, but I don't know how you feel about it. I would say LGD in a way. Uh, but at the same time, I, I can also see where Team Spirit is going with this. Uh, a lot of people would say that Lash, Shaker, Morph are all heroes that are good against Willow. But I, I see amazing Bramble uh, value here versus the Lesh, the Io. You can break the tether. You can do a lot of stuff in team fights for the Shaker and the Morph. Um, and it's a quick lineup. The Luna, Luna is able to hit these timings where Roshan is threatened, where Towers are threatened very early. And Shaker and Morph, they need a lot of time. They usually don't come online until 20 something. So I make the case against. Uh, so Johan is vouching for team, for team Spirit. I'm going to try to vouch and for LGD for what they have going for them. I think they're one of the best teams in the world uh, understanding how to make a Lash Rack scale also through the Lash Rack Shard. Mm -hmm. They have abused that in the online tournaments prior to TI. And now the Shaker plus the Morph plus the Lash and the Shards, like the scaling, you know, the stun, yeah. AOE stuns in the team fight later, it's gonna be crazy. I think they have the Wisp uh, Lash, as we talked about. They're covering it so much. They ban the Invoker, they ban the Lina, they ban the Void Spirit, they ban the Kunkka. There's going to be very few mid laners that are going to be able to deal with the Slash running at you with the Wisp tethering to him, overcharge and whatnot. So they, they do have very powerful things going into the, into the game. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have the pick off the map, you know, Leshrak shoving the lanes, relocate, the Shaker threat bursting you out of fog on the map, Shaker morph scaling. There's a lot going on, in my opinion, for LGD. And yet again, you look at the 5v5, you look at the lineups and you can theorize all you want. No, you also have to keep track, and that's why drafting is such a complex thing. You have to keep track of how the lanes are going to play out. Because if Team Spirit, you know, they, they destroy the laning phase, none of that matters. The game might just be over in minute 10. So do you think they're thinking about the lane right now? Because in my head, I thought LGD, they are going to pick Rubik, right? You know, counter the skewer, but instead they go with a Nature's Prophet. Maybe a stronger laner into that Luna. Very strong into the Luna Willow or Luna Bane. No matter how you look at it, this Prophet lane should be heavily LGD favored. And it complements very well what's happening. The Lash Rock pressure with the Wisp, now you have Treants, meaning you do get a kill, you get a tower. Profit connects, Profit ulti. You know, I think it plays very well to their game. It's going to stabilize the game by you know, slowing down the Luna, winning the lane. It's going to connect to the Wisp and the Lash Rock, and it's going to add to the global pressure on the map. Profit is also one of the quickest heroes. You could say in Dota, you, you pick this, like you pick an Ench, you pick an Ursa. There might be, there might just be a different Dota game coming your way. You might not be allowed to play as slow or as fast as, you, as you'd hope, because this hero adds so much dimension. And yeah, I think this IO Lash Prophet, the timings that they can hit before minute 15, they can break this game. And we see Team Spirit, they're trying to respond a little bit to that pressure with some outspan from long range, but I actually, I'm not sure if they have enough. Like I look at the four heroes from LGD side and that collapse, it looks terrifying, honestly, onto mid, onto safe lane, anything. I see how both teams can fight. I will still put a lot, like if you, if you take the laning phase aside and let's say that both teams end up with some farm and items, you have this, He's known for his skewer plays right now, and then you also have the Willow Bramble and the Puck. I think both teams can fight. Yeah, and now we're going to hear from Sumi, who has an interview with Xiaowei about this draft. Thank you very much, a AUI and the panel. I'm here with Xiaoba from PSG LGD, the coach. A lot of people were expecting your team to play a different team in Grand Finals. Did you prepare it all for Team Spirit? We've already studied and analyzed both teams' stats last night. They are very, very prepared. All right. Many people have also said that Collapse's Magnus has led to many of Team Spirit's wins. How does the team feel about Magnus? Are they afraid or are they ready? We've already thought of them picking Magnus, so it's all in our plans. 
It is all in PSG LGD's plans, and we will see as we go into game two of PSG LGD versus Team Spirit. Lyrical and Trent, take it away. Thank you so much, Sumi. And yes, Trent, we are here. They're prepped and ready. A very confident sounding coach for LGD. How are you feeling right now about this matchup? I don't know. Everyone thought that every other team was going to be ready for Team Spirit the whole way through, right? You know, yeah. constantly doubting them, thinking they weren't going to make it and constantly giving collapse these big heroes that they just discussed, like the Magnus. So we'll see. Game one, they weren't ready. Maybe game two, they've got a solution. It's going to be so interesting to watch. I feel like this team has really just ridden off the back of the momentum that they've gained from the very early goings in the group stages, and they haven't looked back once. The thing that I'm really interested to watch for is if they can keep that up. Like, I feel like sometimes when you get in these huge matchups and you go up one game, Team Spirit now there, you can sense the victory coming, and I want to see if they can keep up that same carefree attitude we've seen from them so far. Just playing Dota, just having fun with each other. Yeah. Sh surely that, you know, that's got to feel like at some point you've got to be thinking like, oh, are we, we going to win, guys? <laughs> Is this actually like, going to happen? Are we doing this? It's crazy. But we'll see if it ends up happening here as Mira spots out a couple of those treants that are trying to get a little bit of vision. So interesting things to watch for in this as far as a laning matchup is concerned. We'll see where that Nature's Prophet ends up at and how much pressure they can put on. Very annoying hero to deal with in the early goings. Yeah, very much a uh, discussion of timings really throughout all the games today. I feel like we're, we're finding that one team seems to have a very clear, we want to do this at 20 minutes. And the right. other team's like, we just want to hang out and kind of scale. Oh, Zinku going to have to back out there on the Shaker. And three bounty runes again for Team Spirit, just like last game. I will say, uh, I believe this game that... Uh, LGD had a very good idea uh, of what was going on. I think they completely saw that puck pick coming. I think they banned around the fact that, like, yeah, that's going to be left in. We're okay with that. It's a mm. go-to hero versus the Morphling. I wouldn't say they're really surprised. Uh, Charlotte Tokyo, obviously an amazing player, but, you know, the puck not exactly one of the ones that's been, you know, popping off the rampages here for Team Spirit. True enough. <laughs> Those spirits tend to scale just, like, a little bit more, uh, and you, you kind of lack that a bit on the puck. It'll be something to watch for, though, if he can make those good rotations, uh, as obviously the Nature's Prophet on Faith Beyond can also move into multiple different lanes. So we'll keep our eyes on it. And like you said, I think both drafts have like a very clear identity behind them, right? You got this Magnus that's going to start off the fights occasionally after the puck comes in. You've got the Morph Shaker as a potential danger later on. But it is, of course, going to be played on that Support Shaker this time. So we'll see if he can get into the items at the same timing we've seen for the cores. Yeah, it certainly seemed like PSG LGD were very much ready for that, right? The Dark Willow came out, and then right away they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that earlier. We, we know. You want the Morph and the Willow. We're taking the Morph and the Shaker. It's pretty good, too. But, yeah, the uh, the support Shaker hasn't worked as well. So, ooh, well, yeah, a little bit close there, but Ame's all right. Oh, yeah, he's going to be able to dodge away from that one. You can see here also a nice little interrupt on the pull through that came through. And Faith Beyond steps over to the side. This, of course, sets up some free farm for the Luna. Mm-hmm. Normal laning shenanigans and the power that you have as Bane in these early goings. Yeah, it's uh, it's frustrating for the Bane too, because like you're so used to to being able to dominate a lot of situations as Bane. Well, Maposka now actually trapped in by a Fisher with the Trance on top of him. A lot of damage out there onto this poor old Bane. Can they run him down? A couple more hits is all they need. Not quite able to get that last right click. And Maposka with the brain sap and the runaways. Inq still might be able to run him down. That boots oh, advantage, he's not careful. but all right, no. good, good choice, Inq. Good choice. Keeps it safe that time but uh yeah i mean bane obviously you're used to trading trading favorably and uh, having answers to like someone trying to pull your wave uh but with the nightmare and the treants being there they actually have some counterplay here to like trying to set up for plays as well in the lane so it's a good pick for the prophet allows him to play that much more freely but you can see that luna already off to a hot start 11 and 2 right there in the top lane is down bottom why Gonna take one little punch there from the Dark Willow and a Fissure block off on the other side, but not within that tower range. So we'll be able to get away with some extra damage. Tango, as well as the Calling Blade through, and he's fine. That's a nice Fissure, though. Yeah. It's a pretty good chunk of damage on him there, just the harass. Only has a single Tango left. No salves currently on Maposhka. So you know that Courier, mm. you know, makes the call, brings him up, and it's gonna be running with a salve in that top lane now. So if there's any chance here for uh, LG to score a kill, it might be sooner rather than later. Too true. Got to look for that opening. Down bottom. Really trying to pressure, too. They keep pump faking this Fisher off top. Yeah. I mean, if you catch him on the wrong side of it, it's going to be a ton of damage out with those Treants. But even without it, right, just the one Fisher and a couple punches from Faith Beyond, he hits really hard. They will be bringing over that Courier now. Maposhka needs to make sure this one does not get sniped by Zing Q. Hopefully you're not losing it to a shaker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True enough. 
But uh, this bottom lane, lots of harass being spammed out here from uh, Mirror and Collapse as well. But uh, it's a Morphling, it's an IO. Morphling in itself a very frustrating hero to lane versus due to the regen mechanics and the ability to morph strength and agi, but comboed up with an IO. Uh, it's pretty rough trying to get a kill, but you know, more players, they tend to go for some of these overextensions, so maybe he'll get a bit greedy there. Right, and even, you know, just the pressuring and forcing him to switch over attribute shift, it, it makes it a little bit harder for the morph to last hit. So it's not all bad, as Zing-Q is going to make that big move over underneath the ward and yeah. going to steal away the small camp. How many does he get? Not a ton, but nothing to say. Able to sneak a few as well. All right, interesting stuff there. It, it does sacrifice the uh, the top water room potential there. Well, I say that, actually, Aposhka moves in. Toronto, Tokyo, going to be able to pick up this water room and maybe get some extra pressure onto Zing Q. Jumps forward, and there's the first blood. Toronto, Tokyo draws it. Oh, well done by Maposha. Like, not even just, he basically baited out that rune, right? Let yeah. Zing Q coming a little bit too close, get the first blood for Team Spirit, and they're off to a hot start in game two after already surprising pretty much everyone by going up one game. I mean, I agree. I thought their draft was better last game, but, it, you know, we just keep wondering, like, how long will the magic last at this team? It does seem like just an unbelievably improbable run to think that this team came all the way through in the qualifiers. We're down 2-1 in that series against Empire, and now up one game against the, you know, Odds on favorites. Oh, by this collapse, by skewer, hard. pull back. They do some good damage there on Ame. But he will not be under too much pressure of losing his life. <laughs> He's going to get the deny. <laughs> a little cheeky there. I like to see it from see, the that, morph. That's a morph player. That's, yes. that's what that is right there. And, uh, you know, uh, nothing to say. Maybe not a pango player. I mm. have some theories, guys. I mean, mm. that was his, as far as I could find, mind you, I looked pretty quickly. That was his second professional pango match. Yeah. Now, they played a lot of pango when he wasn't available uh, to play for PSG LGD. And, uh, of course, Coach uh, Xiao Eid or Xiao Ba uh, stepping in, playing a, a masterful pango. You know, he right. did really well. And we've had this discussion of, like, how he sort of controls the, the macro game to help these players so they can think more about their own heroes and their own item builds. And they have a clear identity of, like, what I'm supposed to do in this game. But if you're not experienced on the hero, that formula doesn't work so well. True enough. But he's got a last track now. Much better hero for nothing to say. Very comfortable. Comfy time for nothing to say. And so far, he's doing fairly well. The early uh, first blood onto Toronto Tokyo, giving that puck the advantage, is another stack up on those camps. And now, trying to scout for these runes. Oposhka just within vision there. And Nightmare It's going to use a lot of mana there. And Toronto Tokyo gets the haste down bottom. So a little bit of luck and a little bit of good rotations. Helping out Team Spirit. Yeah, even threatening to, to have the TP in there. Mposh will be all right. And actually just starts going right back on the aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> we'll only catch a sentry, though. No obs taken away there. So uh, we, we heard a lot of discussion actually last game from Insania talking about like the power runes and, and the, the strength you're going to have from that right here. And it, especially for a Puck, a hero that's really capable of trying to abuse that. Because you want to be making these early rotations Ooh. with the Dream Coil. And it looks like not going to secure another kill there. Yeah, it's, I think it's an important point to make is that you've got to watch so carefully on any of these other side lanes. If LGD overstep, they get a little bit close to a tower, Puck could easily make that rotation and kill off a couple. Ooh, Maposhka gets spotted on the way out here. So did Sentry on the pillar, was kind of checking around, finding some wards, and then putting obs down by the Ancients. And there is a Sentry here on Zen Q, so this could be pretty painful. Oh, I, just... I, he's got it, right? All right, they just... see us. I was right on the yeah, edge. That's a huge D ward. That was a lot of time spent from Maposhka. And at the same time, LGD going to move in and head up top. Why and nothing to say together. Are they going to try and make a kill here onto the Luna a little bit far out? And we'll see if they can connect with this one. But this, this is a tower kill gank. Yeah. They're, they're ganking that tower. It's not moving. Yeah. They don't have to worry about it. Luna, she's kind of fast. You know, she's got some night vision. Maxed out Lunar Blessing. But the tower, it doesn't move. True enough. They're going to move next, in and next take hero, this one down. Mercy. Can she just throw the tower somewhere? <laughs> it's a possibility. Valve? Ideas. Dare to dream. Okay, that went down really fast. Yeah, this is a problem potentially. The the early group up right there, and the fact that you can't really contest it at all. Yadro heads back into the jungle to farm up this medium camp. <laughs> Look at Maposhka. <laughs> he actually got spotted there. He did step in vision for a moment, and uh, a correctly drawn line here from Y, I believe, is to his current path. Mm -hmm. But they did get down that ward. We'll see if that one gets taken away by LGD. As down bottom. Able to go for the RP now, connecting on to Ame, but I don't know if this is going to translate into a kill. No, they, they don't think so, at least. They're not. Skewer. Oh, there we go. Yeah, they bring in the IO as well, and that's going to be more than enough. Ame backs away perfectly fine. 
My post goes just like, can I get something done here? You know, my wards. Getting a little de-ward in here, just roaming around. You know, it's actually uh, Y, who's, who's well known for being such a roamer, but on this Io having to play a little bit closer to his ally. Yeah, there's a little bit of a change-up in styles there. We saw a bunch of that rotation going on in the last game from him as Maposhka on his Bane <laughs> finds another courier kill. Yeah, for uh, for Y, despite being a five player, he actually gets often categorized by like some of the information scrapers in Dota as a roaming hero. We've been mm. told by some of our stats people just because he, he spends so much time going between the lanes. It's Ame, Claps, facing off with each other. And just the focus right now on the farm, stacking up the camps. Ame again moves up to come and contest this and collapse. I don't know if they're really going to be able to do all that much to stop him. Very interesting, but <laughs> Fisher up top. Now the follow-up, looking for it. Faith Beyond there as well, and this is going to be a kill. That's a pretty stark difference to the three heroes yes. stalking the Radiant carry. You know, they got to get this kill, right? They got to get something here, that's for sure. Maposhka's waiting off to the side. Nightmare down, a couple punches, but they bring in the IO, trade off that Nightmare. And that's going to be more than enough for the moment. But why? Also dropping low, not low enough. Instead, they turn, find Collapse. One more touch is not enough. But with Faith Beyond oh. TPing in, they might be able to find him here. That was the trusty shovel keeping him alive. Yeah, heading down to the south. TP is available, but Collapse in some trouble. Does the Spirit connect? Ugh, not quite going to be on the mark. He gets out. Trusty shovel indeed. Up top, nothing to say. Uh, zoning back, Toronto Tokyo. As it kind of came into advantage on the Ancients, but the pressure will stay in the bottom lane. And we already saw how quickly that top tower went down. No point slowing down here for PSG LGD. It's interesting though, right? Because you can see that this is a dynamic that we've seen multiple times throughout this tournament. You have Team Spirit with a little bit of a lead, even though it's LGD that are taking down more of the towers. Just that stacking mm -hmm. up farming mentality we're seeing from Spirit right oh, here. And look at the treants put out here. They're, they're watching for Toronto Tokyo, right? Yeah. Because they know that everything's on this Dream Coil. That's by far the easiest way for them to initiate. So you just fan out your units like that from Faith Beyond. And unless they're going to smoke in, you're going to catch that puck. And instead, oh, they're going to find the Dream Coil towards the mid lane, trying to take down this Lush. Do they have enough? Yes. Toronto Tokyo picks up that kill. And with that, a mm. 3,000 gold lead this early on for Team Spirit. Bit of a theme, I feel like, from these two games from PSG LGD. Ame did a similar thing last game on the Ursa, where he kind of stayed in an area which which seems like, surely, you know, like you're in trouble, you know? Right. He ended up dying on the Ursa in the top lane. Uh, and this time, you know, at least they got a favorable trade. They took a tower after that, which I think was part of the plan for PSG LGD, but they were able to zone back on that bottom tower, shove the wave back out, and now even Collapse running in behind the tower, checking for a courier and everything down here. Uh, they're not willing to just, like, you know, give you the, like, take the kill and then just give you the tower. They're able to defend after as well. Right. Oh, okay, but now that pressure is coming mid. Era. They're going to have to get onto the Brambles. Thought about that RP, but calls it off afterwards. And again, nothing to say in the mid lane, starting to push down this tier one tower with Zinq, you and Toe, and Y. Mm -hmm. They'll get it. So, it's so interesting to me, right? Because you think about traditionally what people think of these styles of play and Team Spirit definitely going the more farming route in this one. You saw there for a second the last hits that Yotoro has. Mm -hmm. 135 compared to the 69 of Ame. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, they're actually spotted out here, but they're not going to have anything in time to catch. But uh, that also comes back to just the idea of punishing that Dream Quilt, right? It was yeah. used. You killed me. All right, congratulations. But I'm a Leshrac. I don't have any cooldowns. When I respawn, I'm coming right back. I'm taking that tower. Uh, but as you said, to the timings, like, uh, PSG LGD, Y has said before, like, we love picking for scale. We like to be very balanced. We're, we're comfortable going late because we think we make better decisions at that point in the game. And even though this is a pretty fast lineup from PSG LGD, it does have some late game tools, right? The Morph Shaker, of course, if right. you get to that, can really <laughs> go against anything at this point. It is a little bit terrifying. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, actually queuing up the Dragonlance right now on Ame. So obviously you could maybe disassemble that later and we build see it that, into the axe if he wants. Yeah, we see that a lot versus the Luna. Because it makes like a really nice little matchup, right? Where she's kind of got this like zone that you're trying to play out of and, and right. kiter just a little bit. Gives you that tank ability versus all this magic damage there too. Really balanced item to start out with. So Team Spirit nursing that 2k gold lead. As on the other side, LGD trying to keep the pressure onto these buildings. Up top, nothing to say is there. The four points in Edict forces out the Glyph. Wow, that was a pretty easy glyph to get, not gonna lie. Yeah. Didn't have to commit that hard at all. I mean, Collapse had already TP'd up there too, so I can imagine they'd like to go for another one soon. And as we approach, you know, sort of past the laning stage, we start thinking, you know, how, how's the Roche look in this game? They, they could take it relatively early, right? You, you get an early DD with this lineup with Nature's Prophet and Morphling, they might opt for it. 
And look at this, movement in before the blink dagger on Shaker. Oh, Nightmare by Maposhka to dodge the stun, but Yano is still in some trouble as they run him down. It was good, but it wasn't good enough. Toronto Tokyo is coming, but they, they are too tanky. I mean, you see these stacked up heroes, maybe you're you know, sort of thinking about going in for the, the Dream Coil, but it's a bit too much. They're just so tanky right now. And instead, they try and find a pick off here. Nothing to say. The rest of his friends a little ways away. ZinQ making the move over. They're going to get the Terrorize. That's going to get the Tether Snap. And afterwards, the ulti coming from Willow, but nothing is taking the regen from Y. Keeping his core player alive. With the wand, with the Io, this early hood into the uh, Eternal Shroud as well. They're going to have some issues bringing down this Lesh Rack without the Luna being there. Yeah, I mean, you just get blown up like that. I mean, obviously a great nightmare dodge of the stun that came in, but in the end, you need to get that BKB online as we've seen time and again, and Yaro trying to get towards it now. As LGD starting to cut a little bit into this lead here. And also getting a little bit of free time right now. Drame to farm up. Yeah, I think Toronto Tokyo is starting to just think about like his role in this game, what he can do. You know, Puck obviously pretty versatile in terms of the builds. Thinking about an early Aeon disc here. <laughs> we'll have to get out of this one. Even go for the uh, a TP in there. Very nice play to even preempt that by blinking somewhere else for the TP. Could have set something up there. They also have the uh, the Orchid ready on this push here. So with the, uh, the relocate in five seconds, everyone can be top lane right now for PSG LGD. For Team Spirit, they don't see very much. I mean, they're rotating a lot of heroes to that bottom lane. I, I think they just have to go over the counter push. Yeah, there's no other play, really. And they have a glyph still on LGD yeah. as well. They need this Blink Dagger on Collapse before they can defend. It's going to be too much too quickly otherwise. And you can see getting very close Collapse, just going to farm up the rest of these camps here. While well, bottom, Team Spirit oh, trying to pressure okay. that in. Toronto Tokyo, he's got the Veil. Kay. He's got the Blink. He's how, how bold is he? This guy's crazy. We've seen it time and again, and Faith Beyond he shows wants, up. He just wants the creeps. That's all he's oh, going for here. Oh, Faith Beyond spots him. The silence is there. That's the oh. Orchid reveal, and he is mega dead. Yeah, he's really greedy. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> well, you know, you got a full creep wave. That's quite a bit of gold, too. True. But uh, almost a, a certainty oh. when you go over that play. This does stop the backdoor protection, though. So this is going to stay alive a little bit longer, forcing LGD in this area for a bit. But eventually, it will fall. And already, if it's beyond back to that bottom lane to just push that back out, too. So, very well orchestrated there from PSG LGD. But uh, the courier, it holds the key. Mm. Ice Frog, little courier, delivering a blink dagger to collapse. So, you know, he's got a few more things queued up that you guys might have seen already in this tournament. The shard, the four staff. He's made a couple plays. Perhaps some highlight real ones. He's been absolutely spectacular. I think he needs a couple more this game. True enough. Not if LGD have anything to say about it. They've also had a few highlights at times. And playing on that Earthshaker with the Morphling, you just know that there's pain mm. coming if they're left to free farm in this one. That's really the worst part of just staying in the upper bracket. Less highlights, you know, mm. less games to play. <laughs> True enough, yeah. Especially when you crush your opponent so hard and finally being challenged now by Team Spirit. They're up one game again. Cinderella story that hasn't died yet. And... Seeing if it can continue on here in this game number two. The BKB is done. Taking a look at a few of these other items around the map. Collapse has that blink done. ZinQ getting closer to his has it completed as well now. So all of the big fighting items online. That's a bit frightening. It feels so good because, like, obviously, as in the offlaner, you, know, you got to get these, like, earlier items. Got a Bracer, got a Mech, and then you get your blink tag. When you're playing as a support, you, you just got that one thing you're striving for. And it's kind of unfortunate when they match up like that because, like, now it feels like your, your offlaner can actually play, but... ZinQ, like, this is an excellent counter initiation to have right now. With the way that their, their lineup's kind of set up, like, he can just lurk for so long. He yeah. can just wait on the side, and, and what kind of vision is going to catch him, right? Maybe an orb. Maybe you can take a fight at night like this and have the advantageous vision. Oh, but the steward back immediately on another nice to save, but he's going to live through that. Nice jump out there. ZinQ saving the day even under that ward. I mean, they have relocate. They have Fisher. Yeah, they were super ready. That is a tough one, but at least the relocate gets burnt, right? Yeah. So that is something for them, but immediately into the Roche. Oh, and LGD going to make a bit of a sneaky play here. Did Team Spirit know that this is going on? Wait, where's your DD, guys? Uh, they're going to have to push. I mean, this is down to about half HP now. 
Team Spirit, it's really well covered by the vision of LGD as well, but they're going to smoke up now. Can they get there in time? Aegis, it, it's super low now. They pull back onto ZinQ. Going to try and take him down first. And they will get that kill, but it comes at the cost of the Aegis on Ame. Not leaving it in the pit this time for any other teams. No, no. <laughs> for IG, everybody knows. Uh, at the very least, you do get yourselves a kill from that, but uh, surely still happy, you know, thank you. That, that's basically an exchange. Sometimes you trade a Roche for a tower. Sometimes someone on your team just needs to go and kind of feed to block out the smoke. And in oh, this yeah. case, uh, that was just a small feed to help things out here. So uh, another game where, like, the kills have also stayed pretty low. True. Uh, from game one and game two. Feels like teams are being very picky about their engagements. So much on the line. It's uh, incredibly tense for these teams. And I, I'm, again, you start to wonder how much the pressure is going to be affecting these plays. We'll have to keep our eyes out for it for sure. But Ame with the Aegis, another four minutes with this. And I believe this is going to be the Manta coming out pretty soon for him as well. He can start to play with a little bit more freedom here, potentially. And currently, they already have amazing vision in the top lane. You can see this ward just been staying on the high ground here. About a quarter of its duration left. Nothing to say. Feels confident enough to be up there. They already control the outpost since they, they took that tier two so early. Team Spirit, again, just forced to try and hold on and try and build everything up into Yodoro this game. Does, of course, have this uh, buffed up carry mentality that we've been mm. working towards in this main bracket event for pretty much every team. You're going to have the empowered Luna. But, uh, you know, it's not the wolf fight. It's not the tiny. So Yodoro got to do some heavy skills. lifting here. Potentially, they have a nightmare. And then the walk away. They actually relocate into this one. There's relocate. There's yeah. nature's problem. You know, it's very scary. If you don't have that really quick burst, you don't really want to take it right now for Team Spirit. But they forced out some rotations at the very least. They got to try and hold this tower, I think, or else this oh. really wasn't worth it. No IO save this time, though. That's the danger of the relocate. Nothing to say outside of vision. They don't see him. Now they do. The pullback going to be able to get that skewer. The vision not quick enough. And nothing to say goes down. Now looking for more. Ame has to be careful. Zinq there as well. Oh, Ooh, but Ame nice. with the waveform through it. Brilliant play. They on this afterwards. Now the chase looking for more. Can they control? Do they have enough for the kill? The terrorize comes out, but he got the strength form off. Faith Beyond jumps away. The steward back on to two. And the RP. Oh, collapsed it into him again. And look, they're just surrounding him. There's no chance to help. They have oh. the IO, they have the shaker, but. There is nothing else left in the tank there for Ame, although trying to TP out, but the stun comes through right at the end. And LGD, another triple kill for Yatoro. And Y will manage to escape from that one, but a huge win for Spirit here in game number two. That is massive. Oh, what an amazing defense. And Class does it twice in the fight with the skewers, catching nothing to say. Like, you know, you talk about this idea with like the Aegis and like, what are you supposed to do with this Aegis? Are we supposed to push towers? Is that the goal right now? So, you know, should it be on the Morphling? You know, right. doesn't he kind of feel like the, the harder target to get in the first place? And instead you're sort of hanging nothing to say out to dry. Like he gets one skewer and there was no chance to save him. Yeah, I mean, again, Part of that is also the decision to stick around after that relocate was used, because that's yeah. probably part of their idea behind it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's your, your easiest long-range save, right? Unreal. Five to six. And Team Spirit <laughs> playing just absolutely great Dota. Yeah, I'm, I'm sensing a smoke up Echo Slam here soon. You know, this, yes, this is what yes. you do. You lost your Aegis, and you're like, okay, guys, this is fine. This is fine. Group out. We're going to smoke. We've got our other tools back. Let's go dunk on some people. Thank you. So often has been the answer and the playmaker for this LGD lineup. Whether it's the Snapfire or this Earthshaker, whatever it is that he's playing, he's making the big moves. So 21 minutes in now, and Aro continues to farm. I mean, this is the thing that's really scary, right? Like, how many times have we seen these Lunas just get completely out of control and then just walk high ground with an Aegis? And now it also feels like they have some of those tools with the Blinks online to actually win those Aegis fights as well. Yeah, sometimes they don't leave that high ground. It, it just takes <laughs> one sort of mounting up there, and it's over. Part of the reason why they can be a little bit patient here for Team Spirit, but patience, you know, that's not something they're very well known Ooh, for. Ooh, scary. Invis, and then the smoke up afterwards. Team Spirit looking on the hunt. But LGD sensing danger coming their way will retreat out. Just is he, he going to horn toss mind. him again, Lyrical? Don't don't tell me he's going to horn oh toss him again. Oh my God! He got him again, Trent. They did it to him as they find the pickoff. Collapse. You're too good. What oh. a smell! <laughs> Unreal. Oh, they're so good at just finding that one kill and like waiting for this timing too of just this. Oh, oh. they got him on the, the zip. They pull him back in afterwards. Why? 
In some trouble, Skewer, a little bit off the mark, but the Brambles are there for <laughs> round two of it. Team Spirit, they came to play on finals day. Taking down Secret, now looking to go up 2-0 in the series against LGD. <laughs> Meanwhile, Faith the Honor, you know, getting, getting something back, right? Yeah, oh, go grab that outpost, get it, but man. Losing the Roche into just like taking over the map right now for Team Spirit. They're just having fun. That's what they say, right? Do they look like they're having fun? They do. Well, Vosh looks like he's having fun. For someone who's playing Bane, that, that's as much fun as your face gets, I think. <laughs> you know? They're on top of it. Killing it. And we'll see now if LGD can pull this back. I mean, again, we've talked so much about the effect that pressure has in this lineup. In a lot of ways, built to try and just win the Aegis. Not a whole lot else is going to be acceptable for them and the sort of standards that they set for themselves. Five to eight. I love how you, you see the sentry they put outside the base too, because I had the same thought. I'm just like, where was that wart? Like, how right. did this Magnus do that? You know, and just just nothing. They're just Collapse is just too good. He just he just feels it. He just goes. Uh, at the very least, yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of sentries. They're all over the place. And, and, you know, that's because they also have the gem, I believe, still, yeah, on Toronto, Tokyo. So uh, they know that they're in trouble when it comes to the vision game. And so you get into this place where you're just kind of spamming them everywhere. And... I know, you know, you, you heard uh, our, our lovely draft panel as, as well as Insania talking about like the sustain and everything. And um, Insania pointed out just like how much more valuable that healing is on the earlier end, right? You know, yes. about, uh, trying to get as many of these like these mechs and these holy lockets as early as you can in the game. And when you have to spend on sentries, that can be a bit tough. But at the same time, you have a shaker on your team. So you're making a sacrifice in terms of the goal to ensure that that blink dagger is going to be there. Unfortunately, they haven't really gotten much out of the shaker. A couple mm -hmm. nice saves, but Zinke is still waiting for his big moment. And it's tough, right? Because you have to sort of go in and make that chaos happen first with the rest of the heroes on LGD and specifically nothing to say. And he's built all these items to try and stay alive. The Eternal Shroud going for the Halberd. Now into the Plate Mail. And it has just not been able to be enough to keep him alive against the big plays from Collapse. MVP and then, in this game too. And now? It's nighttime once again. So what do we do? We smoke. You got night vision, right? You have the advantage there. This They're going to have to rely on the trance from Faith Beyond. They want to get some of these plays out. That is the vision that they have at night. But the edge certainly belongs to Team Spirit. Absolutely. As they move up onto the high ground, ZinQ feels like he's safe, but they drop down the ward right away. ZinQ manages to get out of there, has that shard to create that separation. But again, a ward dewarded and taken away vision from LGD. They're just going to do the sweeping motion here, right? <laughs> they actually scanned ahead to see if he could blink in there. He's checking the high ground. Yeah, yeah. Klaus wants this so bad. He's ready. He feels the moment, <laughs> he's, dude. He's, he is he so on top this. of it. Waiting for the vision. Yeah. Nothing to say he's going so far back. He's like, yeah. no. He knows. <laughs> Fool me. Oh, my God. He was close. Fissure afterwards. They're sensing it. They oh, back out of their time. He is time. feeling it today. Came close there. I mean, that's what's so cool about the spell, though, is that you can just fish. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you're not going to catch anything. Sometimes you get yourselves a, the big old whale. You know what's also so interesting about this? Like, those two outposts are still held by LGD. They're, 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 they're keeping so much pressure on the map by LGD. And Team Spirit, it doesn't look like they're that interested in trying to take about. They're just looking for those kills now. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, it's going to be a very long Roche spawn. Because that's kind of what they're playing for right now for Team Spirit, right? It's just like, yeah. we don't want to rush anything. We just need one more. One more good fight. We're going to clear up this entire base with our Luna. And we want the Roche for that. So they're going to be trying to control around the pit. Someone's going to sit in there. They're going to wait. They're going to be very disappointed for mm. two minutes and 20 seconds. There you go. And that's just time for PSG LGD. So what can we stall for here is the question. A Shiva's coming up relatively soon for nothing to say, but the Agonims. Mm. That's what we're stalling for. So whenever you get in trouble as a Morphling, you look to say, how good is the next game, is it? And it's like, oh, yeah, right. We, we picked Morph Shaker. So we do have that going. That's going to be the big window that they're looking for. Only two points in Enchant Totem right now for that Shaker. Mm -hmm. But can still be devastating with all the lockdown that you get. Now, interesting things that we're going to have to watch during that, though, will be the fact that it's the Aeon Disc on the Puck, right? So they're going to be looking to catch and chain and even just try and, like, go through that stats resistance while it's actually active on Toronto Tokyo and just try and, like, keep chaining him down because he's not going to have the BKB. And then after that, we also know that Collapse, he really likes these kind of cheeky items, right? Mm. He doesn't like BKB. You see the plays Ooh. this guy's making? There's the Aeon Disc out. Toronto Tokyo, not concerned, just blinks away after the Aeon Disc is propped. And also getting that D-Ward again. 
So the question will be, when they come high ground, you know, will you find this big morph, morph shaker play? Are you going to catch right. these heroes without the immunity that they need to survive what is obviously a pretty terrifying duo of heroes? Faith Beyond shows for a second, collapse, looks for an opening, sees him there. There's an opening, the horn toss, the pullback with Skewer, and immediately gets the kill. Nothing is free, not even pushing out a wave. That's the kind of punish that you need. I mean, they felt pretty free on this map, right? Because they, they are moving around as a single unit for Team Spirit, right? And that's why we're spotting some of these heroes just like Faith Beyond's rambling to spot, pushing out a wave, nothing to say. That's why they were able to control the O-Posts for so much longer than you might expect, considering the situation that uh, Team Spirit was in. But uh, the punishes are free, and so they will go back once more for a disappointing look inside the Roche Pit, and then mm. wait another 30 seconds, and then they'll go back and do it again. But look at this. They have that Aghanim Scepter done on the Morphling now. Puck also just finishing an Aghanim Scepter and has an Arcane Rune bottled. <laughs> They're like sending in wide first. <laughs> just these slow movements in. Ready to tether back off sentry. It's going to catch both. They have vision they, right they away. They're there. Collapse. Oh, he doesn't go for it. They, We've seen Lord. them go into these trees so many times. Collapse. I would not be surprised. He's thinking about it. Zing Q is back there. Oh, they're just baiting out. Yeah, they're waiting on it. And Faith Beyond, in the meantime, farming on the other side. And the Radiant. They scanned that pit there to no success. They're going to send in the Treants, though. So, PSG LGD. They're in the know. They've got the Morphling. Way the Aghanims. With the Shaker and a team that really wants the Roche. They have a plan. This could be LGD's comeback here. Can they make it happen though? And how long can you sort of like control and force the focus of Team Spirit to be here? And what are you gaining on the rest of the map? I mean, again, they're fanning out a bit here. And you have the global yeah. teleportation up in 10 seconds for Faith Beyond. Yeah, you have Ame just farming the Dire Ancients right now. So are they going to give up there, this there Roche? Go the I mean, they know they're in there right now. I, I highly doubt they just give this up for free. Adoros is still inside here. They're moving over now. Faith Beyond getting some Treants out, starting to move into position. They're going to lay down these Brambles. They're actually doing this so slow that maybe PSGLG are just kind of fine with this. Are they really going to give up Roche for this, though? I think oh, they just can't get into the man. position, right? I mean, they, they don't have the best vision around yeah. the area. They actually see absolutely nothing right now. So, it, I mean, they know they're in there. They've sent in the Treants. But again, how do you get that initiation when, you know, you're so reliant on You'd rather just fight on the high ground at this point. All right, well, LGD give that one up. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them later as Mira is going to push out this lane up top. Faith Beyond very close. And they're going to have to deal with their lanes because this is one thing that's definitely beneficial for LGD is their split push potential. Mm -hmm. Faith Beyond, BKB with that Orchid. Zin Q shows up. Dotoro up on the high ground. Nothing to say there as well. They have great vision on Team Spirit, and now showing Why? in the lane. Why? They're thinking Why? about going, they pull him back in, and he is done. Can they go for any more now? They have full control onto the Luna, but Luna just walks away. Living yet again. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's thinking about, like, is there a buyback play there? Because that's a pretty right. bold sentry to place down. On just like that, Team Spirit with Aegis in hand. Faith Beyond could maybe go for a play there, but Toronto Tokyo not showing himself. Has the boots of travel to they, join they with the rest the of the vision, team? Right? They had the ward near the base. They actually saw that Ame was moving over here. Oh, man. This would be such a huge pickup if they can get him. The spider legs. Walking in. They get him with the horn toss. Chasing down for more. Ame's done. Team Spirit. Everywhere they go, people die. It's the ward game. You know, just, just spot some heading over there. That, that ward near the base. Oh, Let's them know fire. they chase it down. And now they go up. Will they leave is the real question. There is a glyph available for the Radiant. True enough. They walk up high ground and Kaudoro going to start beating away. Laying claim to this area. In the meantime, Faith Beyond's going to try and push up that top side, but they catch him right away with the glyph. Collapse, pulls him back in, breaks the coil. Team Spirit, they're just playing too clean today. LGD need more. They don't have buyback on this Morphling. Uh, they can't get two racks at the very least on the side of Spirit, but I mean, do you need two racks? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Well, maybe Faith Beyond is actually starting to take this one down. Now the jump in. There's the BKB. Faith Beyond still has that Orchid available, but the turn off to the side. Oh, oh, great Orchid to interrupt, and that will be enough to get him out. That was really well done with the BKB TV. It's like there's one answer, right? Yeah. Finds in there with the Orchid. So well done indeed. Uh, he will at least take a tier three, so that's something. But of course, uh, there's, there's still lots of time. You know, two and a half minutes for a Luna to just run back wow. to your base. She's pretty fast. 
you're not wrong about that one. And can start pressuring down these other towers. There's no more Glyph either. Does Team Spirit want to make another run at this with the Aegis? They're just so far ahead already. 10k gold. It does not look particularly close. Yeah, the Boots of Traveler there from Toronto, Tokyo. So he's just able to push out this bottom lane. He can be there in a flash too, trying to match some of this global capability that's there from PSG LGD. But they're still waiting for their shining moment of Morph Shaker. They are in this game, believe it or not. Just haven't had an opening. Satanic now done too for the Luna. <laughs> Couriers just flying in everywhere, dropping off all these new items, the team spirit. I mean, Yaro's almost 10k gold up on the next hero on the enemy team. LGD just don't have an answer for this Luna, particularly with the Aegis. And I, it looks so free for him. This is the path to victory for Spirit to go up 2-0 over LGD. They got to guard this wave that's with them, though. Faithbeon has caught the next one. They're, they're scanning that he's actually still there, so he's going back Toronto Tokyo. He's going to try and hunt oh, down Faith Beyond. Oh, and off to the side. They get the vision. Tries to chase him down there. There's the silence. The coil afterwards still hits pretty hard on Faith Beyond, but with collapse in the area, they're going to break the coil and kill off the Prophet. How fast does he need to buy back is the question. Oh, man. Can they actually, like, force it here? I mean, it's going to be a while for the lanes, right? That's kind of why you're able to sacrifice your life sometimes on Nature's Prophet. I don't think they can punish this simply by the speed at which creeps walk. So there'll be a little bit more time now for LGD. But, but what are you gaining in this time? You know, there's going to be true. a Scotty done. So that is pretty huge, actually. Scotty and the Morphling versus this Luna. And versus again, the Satanic. I mean, it, it's looked so one-sided partially because LGD haven't taken that fight yet, right? Like, and there's still going to be that window when they have the, you know, Ag Shaker and can go in all at once together. It's just they're waiting for that perfect fight. Still have to be careful of that one on Team Spirit. And with this Aegis, you would have to imagine it would come soon. Oh, Collapse, you know, I, I think he wants his perfect game here. He's the only one who hasn't died so far on Team Spirit. Absolutely carrying out of that offlane. No kills, too. So giving, you know? Such a <laughs> charitable offlaner. That's the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely. Ooh, also, that Aether Lens for the extra range. So much range on absolutely everything in this game for him. But they're going to get set up again. Morphling sending in the Courier. This one might get scouted here, and... Oh, it's on the way out. Oh, oh, nice. With the Lucid Beam. Yeah, using the Lucid Beam and well the Shard. Played. That was... Was that the Scotty? Oh, yeah, God, it was. killing that yeah. Scotty. Almost three, three minutes. minutes of no Scotty, but, you know, it's okay. You know, LGD, they don't actually see enemy heroes. They just see enemy creep waves. Right? That, that's the goal right now. <laughs> okay. The creeps are the true enemy. So that's yeah. why Faith Beyond, you know, he's not up top where the heroes are. He's down bottom where mm -hmm. the creeps are. Just keep pushing them out. Keep them away from your base. Try and extend this as long as possible and then force Team Spirit into a bad position. And, you know, in the last couple of minutes, they <laughs> Dude, caught up in terms of that work. Up. You know, you look yeah. at this warp. He just keeps climbing. Will it be enough, though? They can make the most of this, dodge fights, and then possibly get a another fight around that next Aegis. That might be their window with the BKB on Ame. I think what's very impressive from Team Spirit is how, how long they have just kept this single, like, ball rolling around together, and they're not panicking. Because a lot of right. teams, it gets to this point where, like, it feels like you've been roaming around for so long, and, like, now the Aegis is gone, so people said, like, they fan out a bit and they farm, right? Yeah. Morph Shaker will punish that with, with Relocate, you know, mm. with a Nature's Prophet. They will find you. They will kill you if you try and go out on your own. But with all the lanes pushed out now, Team Spirit... Without that Aegis, still going to walk up and hit this a couple of times. You have 3,200 HP on Yaro as well as the Butterfly and done. It, and they have this ward on the high ground that LGD don't know about. Collapse. They have, they have collapse. So often, he's been the one to make those big plays. They're continuing to push in the bottom lane. LGD hoping for an overreaction from Team Spirit. Mm -hmm. As they walk up, start to hit these racks. But likewise, bottom yeah. lane oh, is being pushed they've in. They've morphed in as well, actually. He, like, he's fully committed to the Shaker. Terrorize afterwards, caught with the fear and the horn toss to pull back. They got nothing to say. He's so far away. They don't have a way to get to him. He, he is going to die here as they get the Fiend's Grip off and the eventual right click down to death. Oh, Toronto Tokyo in the back. Chase he caught one on the way gets in. Gets one on to ZQ. He's in trouble now as well. They find themselves another pickoff potentially here. ZQ, nothing else left in the tank, falls down. That's a nice play. 
Very heads up there from Toronto Tokyo, just not letting him just get away with offering up the sacrifice of the Leshrac, you know, not just the goat. We're gonna take what 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 is Shaker? Cow? There you go. <laughs> we'll take that That's too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They're keeping these lanes pushed out. And this is the only thing. We've, we've seen a couple of teams, you think back to that Quincy Crew game, they were able to keep the lanes shoved in constantly and eventually win with an all-in push. And that might be have to be what we see from LG as well. Maybe a relocate play with Morphling or something oh, like no, that. No, right no, now, no, no. Don't, do not say that. <laughs> it's, I won't allow it. You won't not allow it. Not here. <laughs> not some DD relocate Morphling. There's a chance. There's potentially a way. You got to be careful of your team spirit. With this global potential that they have on LGD, anything could happen. The last outer tower. Now gone. PSG LGD. It's beyond AC done. And Team Spirit starting to sense Roche going to be back up. 10 seconds. And with that, it could be the window to close this game out for Team Spirit. All right, refresher or eggs? What are we getting? Oh, I'm down for either. <laughs> As it will respawn Ooh, right now. Get the eggs. Interesting. Smoke up, though. LGD. Is this finally the fight that they feel comfortable with? They have been sitting on this ag shaker for so long. Or ags morphling, rather, with the shaker. BKB now done to boot. Yeah, that's a good point, though. Maybe they get Zinq and eggs here. Yeah, that would be kind of nice. You can see Team Spirit not comfortable just hitting away in the Roche pit. Nothing to say walks in. Yadaro up front and center. Jeez. Nothing to say. They jump in. There's the control. The damage out. Mapochka's dead. Buys back immediately. Yadaro turns to fight. Destroys. Nothing to say. They've got him. Caught to the side. Ame in some trouble. Hitting from the low ground. How many misses are there? It doesn't matter as they chase him down and kill him off. A great win for Team Spirit as they will find more and more. Unbelievable. Oh, the chase continues. Yaro just chases him down. And Echo afterwards trying to buy a little bit of space. Nothing to say, but can the kill collapse? Trying to take him down, but no, it won't happen. On the side, Toronto Tokyo will fall with a big stun afterwards. Yaro moving in. He's big, he's bad, he's Luna trying to kill him off. The fear, the pullback, collapse, he's got him. ZQ looking dead as well as they turn and hit. Another one bites the dust, but they buy back now on ZQ. Faith Beyond getting absolutely shredded. Yaro is too big. As they catch him in again, the pushback, they got him caught and gonna maybe find the kill. Nothing to say, down low, dead. Another huge win, Team Spirit. They won't be denied. The horn toss catches onto ZQ oh, and Yaro just slaughter. The way they play these fights, they're so in sync with one another. GG oh. is called. They call it a Cinderella story. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. They Unreal. Look good. And we got a crowd up there. Talent, very excited for this young team's present. They have been absolutely dominant in this one. 2-0. It's not just the fact that they won two games, it's the way they won these games. The patience exhibited here is not something of a, a young team of like, oh, we crushed the lanes and we're totally owning this game. They, they were patient. Yes. They knew their timing. They watched for the only way for PSG LGD to get back in this game, and they, they just blocked it out. Unbelievable showing here from this team. <laughs> the patience, the calm, cool collectedness. And now one game away from being able to raise that Aegis. Unreal, very socially distanced crowd. You love to see it from them as well. So we get ready to go into this game number three, but the man behind it all, Maposhka right there, captain and keeping everybody with a cool head. Yeah, well, the man behind PSG LGD. What, what are the options now? I don't know. You know, you, you came in, you were the favorites. <laughs> Everyone expected you to be the ones up 2-0 at this point, you know, for Team Spirit to be digging deep. He's got to come up with these plans. He's been challenged now twice. He's lost said challenge. What is up for game three? We'll have to see as we head back to the panel. Thank you very much, Trent and Lyrical. Yeah, this uh, this game started with us talking to Zhao Wei, who said regarding the Magnus pick on the side of Team Spirit, it is all in our plans. And gentlemen, the plan didn't work, Tico. <laughs> uh, I mean, so first of all, PSG, they're very aggressive early on. They're taking top tower, taking mid tower, trying to go for bot. And then you see how Spirit, they kind of shift away from that aggression. They get up some aggressive wards. Again, Maposhka, MVP in all of these games just because of his vision. My glasses are foggy. They're now gone. Um, but then you have the ability for Spirit to bide their time. And at 20 minutes, they then just turn it up, right? They get this shard of Magnus, and they're just going fishing. As soon as they see someone, whoop, 
Come on over. We've got a Puck Coil. We've got a Bramble Maze on the uh, Willow to go for. We've got an Eclipse. We've got an Overfarm Luna. Uh, yeah, again. I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to nerf uh, Toffs after this. <laughs> like, it's insane. Well, how are you going to nerf Collapse? I think that is a little bit more short term because that is something, Cinderin, that I think uh, PSDLCD is going to look to. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Honestly, the most important way that uh, that Spirit are winning the games right now is on Vision. Uh, so a really big part, it, it looks amazing when you hit all these horn tosses, but the reason Collapse is finding them is that they find themselves in good position where they have better vision. And I think a really key part of that strategy is the Luna pick for the night vision. So, uh, you know, if I think what PSGLGD were thinking when they said they, they had a plan for this, you look at their draft, right? They have the relocate away from horn toss. They have a hero like Morphling who's really hard to kill in it. They have a really long range stun from the Shaker. So they have potential ideas that could work against this. The problem is you can't be ready all the time. Like you have an idea of where the enemy might be seeing you, but every time you're caught off guard, you get that snap pick and they just keep building and building and building. So my suggestion going into game number three is you, I think you have to ban Magnus. And then aside from that, I think, you know, options are open or you need to set up the draft like you did in game one where Magnus was actually ignored in the first phase because of the way the picks went down in that order. Yeah, let's talk about the, the start of this game, Tsunami, because it felt a little bit like a repeat of the start of game one. Especially because it was another IO draft. Granted, it was a much more different approach to IO, mm -hmm. but the dynamic was still quite similar. And I think the the cheap initiation, both literally and figuratively, has been very, very popular over the past six months. We saw like Beastmaster's Aghanim Scepter being like, I don't need to commit to a fight. I can just toss axes from miles away. Ember Spirit has emerged to be the most popular of the spirits as of the past few months, just because if I get a slight chains, great. Otherwise, I don't really need to go in. And now we're seeing the prevalence of Horn Toss, where it's like, I'll fish for a skewer. If I don't get it, I'm already going back to my base anyway. So I think, uh, they're, like Sin said, if you don't think that you can get vision superiority, you're not going to beat Spirit. No, and they 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 did they didn't beat Spirit in this game too, Tigov. Uh, I want to talk about the Shaker Morph combo because that was something that we saw PSGLZD go for, and we thought, okay, you know what? They got a set draft. This is what it's supposed to do, but it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Yeah, again, it's something that you need time with, right? Like Morphling needs to get to a couple items plus the Axe to then really join into the game. The Shaker needs to get to his levels to enable the Morphling. Like you need to have your own map to play. And I think PSG early on, they were really breaking down that map. They were taking these early towers, they were utilizing that Fury, and like they picked off the puck at this tier two siege top. Like it looked pretty good, but it's the fact that Spirit able to kind of shift away that kind of map movement and they're over farming on their heroes. Like a very small thing and probably wasn't no really noticeable, but Yotaro, like after fights, there was like double waves coming into him. He wasn't even farming the lane. He'd go to the jungle, allow other heroes to take that farm. And it's because you have even distribution of farm to some degree, you're able to continue taking fights every single item timing. You're not waiting an extra two, three minutes for the willers to get a vessel or, you know, the whoever, the bane to get, you know, a four stuff, whatever. It's, it's the idea that you are being ready at all times. So it doesn't matter if you're playing against Morph Shaker because you're going to have that one, two item advantage the entire game. And the key thing for, the, the key component for Morph Shaker is similarly, it's vision. It's yep. about seeing the enemy team first so you can get that Fissure combination. If you, in all of these like OS Frog moments we've had in the past, you're like, man, this shit is so broken, you know? It's like out of the fog comes one Fissure, then the other Fissure, it's like X marks the spot and they yep. both jump in and kill someone. The problem is, I think we saw that like literally one fight in this game after they got it. Because yep. every time it was Team Spirit that got the initiation. So, it, I mean, hats off to them. I'm honestly just super impressed. I was one of the non-believers, I'll admit it, going into this finals. I thought, okay, this LGD have looked so dominant even though Team Spirit are catching steam here and the R's are looking really good, I still think they're going to falter. And at this point, LGD need to pull an IG from, which major was that? Against EG, the reverse Singapore. sweep Singapore mm -hmm. major. They need a question mark. Yeah, they need a question they need, mark. Yeah. They need something. They need something. Uh, I like that you said, uh, you know, honestly, I'm really impressed. I know uh -huh. that, uh, you know, you got the Purge voice line going. And speaking of Purge, we're going to him right now because he has more on Team Spirit. Thanks guys, you heard from Tsunami before about uh, LGD's strengths right now, but let's take a look at what Spirit's doing. One of their big advantages right now is how versatile uh, Yutoro is playing as a carry. And if you can pull out these really effective tools in the right games, it gives you a big advantage in the mid and late game. In this first match of the series so far, Naga Siren with the fast Ags after the Manta gave them great tools against these highly mobile heroes on the PSG side. Very useful against Pango to limit his rolling boulder. Uh, you can use it against Ursa to break uh, Enrage. You can send your illusions 
hands on Ursif to force him just to retreat, not to engage. And these are some of the tricks that Spirits used so far throughout the entire tournament, actually, to just break matches. In the previous match that they played against IG, they also had a, a big advantage too. It wasn't necessarily from, well, it was actually for some weird hero picks here. They grabbed a PA to give them a we break against the tide. So in this match, they also used kind of a cool combo that nobody really expected to just punish the enemy lineup. But what was still really obvious and has been the case for every single spirit lineup is that they play so well together as a team. They cover each other's weaknesses. They follow up on each other perfectly. It's like their mind melded together. And that is the reason that they're currently two up in the grand finals here of TI-10. Yeah, it is honestly incredibly impressive. They're on the side of Team Spirit. They're one game away from taking this championship. There's four first-timers in their squad, one second-timer in Mapushka in their squad. And of, of course, Silence has got a lot of experience. This is his fifth international, but his first as a coach. So uh, there's that as well. And, and this team is just on the verge of winning. And I want to talk about that because Mind games, a big thing in the TI finals. And we talk about the mind games regarding the money. I think the amount of pressure that PSG LZD is under, last TI that is won by a Chinese squad was TI6. And before that, it was all like one TI for the side of China, one TI, not China, etc., etc., etc. But until TI6, and since then, there's not been a Chinese team winning it. And there is so much pressure coming on, on these players, on their backs, because they are, they, they were supposed to be the champions, Tsunami. A consistent theme of all of the exit interviews that we've seen from the Chinese teams is a great deal of national pride. Yes. They don't feel like they themselves are like, oh, you know, we lost, you know, we'll come back stronger next time. They're like, I have failed to represent our region in terms of Dota superiority. Because even if they don't make it to grand finals, they have let another region beat them and they have somehow created more competition now for LGD. Whereas Team Spirit, on the other hand, every single interview I've seen from them, they're just like, yo, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what, what game we're playing. I just want to, well, I just play a game of Dota that we happen to be on the States center in, that we happen to be playing for extra $13 million by the way, mm. they don't care, or they don't seem to care. Yeah, it's do, not I getting do, in their head. I do think it's a pretty key point as well, because as much praise as we're giving uh, Spirit here, and they deserve all of it, I also don't think LGD have fully showed up today. I think they're, some of their moves, there's a little bit, they're a little bit hesitant, they're a little less hungry. It seems like there are some nerves, and it's kind of unbelievable when you think about it, because the rest of the tournament, they have looked unstoppable. They've had mm -hmm. games where they were super far down, they make the right moves, they win. And perhaps, like, it's always easier to look weak against a team that's playing out of their minds, but it's like, th there's always a little bit of both, right? So I think for, for me going into the next game for LGD, Xiaowei actually plays the most important role in the next game, even though he's not even playing, uh, because the team needs to get into the right mind space, they need to get the belief that they can win, and then I think the adjustment they need is that draft. I like the IO suggestion, try something else, right? It bombed out two games now, you, you're playing against a team that clearly knows what to do about it, so... You can still come back. But what you are your first phase bans, though? Are you still going to do Magmars? Because um, I think those. Are, I think you have to target Collapse. Again, the key thing here is the fact that I believe PSG had the choice of going for first or second pick, right? Mm -hmm. And they themselves put them in the position of allowing Spirit to ban out the Tiny and the Monkey, forcing themselves to either ban the IO themselves or pick it, right? So in this position, it does feel like you'd like to see something different from PSG. The IO hasn't really worked out. Just add some more stuns, add that ability to you know break down the map a little bit better, and then they should be in a good stead. And you know, going back to the point of PSG and the expectation, you think about Spirit and how they got here, they just played the lower bracket game, right? They're one game down, they win game two, they win game three. Like that momentum, that is so hard to obtain, or hard to attain, sorry, in, in any competition, right? So that is very much why they're feeling confident. And of course, you do have the head kissing versus the belly rubs, and therefore, head kissing is two up right now. All right, gentlemen, here they come. It is time very soon. We'll see game three of this grand finals. And this third game could potentially be the last. Right now, Team Spirit is up 2-0, and oh, and it has only happened once before that a team was able to 3-0 their opponent in a grand finals. PSG LGD, we know they have it in them to force out that game four, but we need them to believe in themselves and in their draft as well. We know also that they can do it. Faith Beyond and Y both have already got a TI win under their belts. They won TI6 with wings. We have seen Ame being in a grand finals 
TI8. Of course, that was one of the closest grand finals we have had. And unfortunately, Ami wasn't able to take it, but it came very close. And we knew that the pressure there might have been uh, a little bit too much. But we know that he can do better than what he is showing right now, Tigov. Yeah, it's they, they, it's just so difficult, right? Like when you're two zero down, this is really where you need to kind of just come together. And even if, like you say, one person hasn't been standing up or the team hasn't been performing to their best potential, they just need to rally around what they've been doing well to get to this point, right? Like they're in the grand finals, they've clearly been doing something right. So this is where you just need to kind of break that off, reset, go again, treat it like it's the first game in the series. That is so hard to do. It sounds oh, it is. so easy when we say it. Hey, just don't think about that you're two games down. Just, <laughs> just play a game of Dota, Tsunami. How yeah. hard is it? That's but the problem spirit. is yeah. they've they've just now lost as many games in this Grand Finals as they have throughout the entire tournament. True. I don't know if they're used to losing. They have so like having to repair is a challenge, and Spirit has had to repair on their journey here. And being having that lower bracket run coming into the past two days playing two series means that in their second series, they're already warmed up. LGD was sitting here waiting for the secret series to finish. They have not had to be on the back foot and be like, oh my gosh, okay, we gotta, we gotta change our dynamic. I have no doubts that Xiaoba Xiao8 would be able to deal with that, but it needs to come now or you're gonna lose. It's, isn't it kind of crazy to think about that no matter what the score is in this grand finals, LGD has a better win rate at this tournament than Spirit. Yeah, like, that's yeah. true. By far, like it's not even close. <laughs> no, like, yeah, it's not. If, I, even if they 3-0, their win rate is still way worse. So that's what that's what finals are about. Like it's, it's the final game. Have you got it when it matters the most so far? Spirit definitely do. Um, yeah, for me, I'm just super excited to see the draft because I think this third game is very telling about the mentality. When you're kind of broken like this when you're down 0-2, there's like two approaches to take. There's the crazy approach where you just throw everything out the window, you do something completely different, and there's the one where you're like stubborn to the, like almost to the limit, right? Where you're like, <laughs> no, we can still win with this damn IO. We're going to try the third time in a row, and we're going to adjust some of the bands. So I'm really curious. Um, and I honestly, depending on your perspective on it, I think I can see both approaches as a sign of strength and a sign of weakness. True. So it, it's kind of hard to just say out of the first two, but I really, really, really want to see what they're thinking right now. But do you want to be the team that potentially loses 3-0 in the grand finals to the underdog, just going IO every single time, not really changing it up? I like, think that's something you, you kind of have to nod in your head, right? Yeah. You, you're going to have to shut that out. <laughs> you, like, I mean, as, as repetitive as it sounds, you got to treat this game as a fresh game, a yes. standalone game, not having the pressure of 13 extra million dollars on your head, not having the pressure of an entire region on your head, and not having the pressure of uh, Coach Zawait on your head, and everything that comes with winning the international, and you just gotta, gotta play a game of Dota, play a pub, and you know what, nothing to say, he's been playing so many pubs, he is the world ranked one player. I feel like we haven't really seen him step up that much yet, Tsunami. Is that because of his heroes that he's been playing today? I think partly the heroes that he's playing, but also the heroes that his team is playing. Mm. I think that he hasn't been given the correct draft to let him pop off on a thing like Ember Spirit that we were talking about. Give him some cheap initiation that he can get in and out. Give Spirit a taste of their own medicine, because so far, every time you're running an IO strat, it's more on the shoulders of Ame to finish the game off, and that has not been happening for the first two games. So to beat Team Spirit, you gotta pick a Spirit, Tigo. Maybe, maybe so. Uh, I actually hate Spirits, don't, don't forget that. But, but you no, like, like to break a Spirit, though. I do like to break a Spirit, <laughs> eh? But yeah, uh, Team Spirit, you know, their second pick, right? So in both the previous two games. So in the draft order, that simply means that they get to pick the core after seeing four heroes and the mid after seeing all five of PSG two times in a row. So we mentioned the idea of the impact of Army, the impact of nothing to say. It is a product of the Lesh was a sacrificial type pick in the draft. You know, this Pangolier was kind of thrown out there, you know, not a comfort from nothing to say. So I would really love to see either they shift around their first pick drafting style to enable the players a bit more, or take that second pick one, one time and just give it a go where they actually get to go, okay, this is our best core in the game. This is our best read on the game and give it a go. Because right now Spirit is utilizing that 18 and 24 very well. Yeah, let's see what's going to happen. It is time for game three of this Grand Finals. Team Spirit versus PSG LGD. Grand Finals, game three.
Welcome again to the draft panel of the Grand Finals for Game 3 between Team Spirit and Team LGD. And honestly, no questions this time, because I really want to see exactly how they've adapted their bands to Team Spirit's lineup. We actually saw that LGD, they were choosing first pick before, but they've made an adjustment here and they took second pick. Yeah, it means that now this is all about Team Spirit. Team Spirit is in the driving seat more than, than ever. They are forcing LGD to, they're making them second guess themselves. They're making the, the 15 and 1 group stage team, the upper bracket dominant team, they're making them completely question everything that brought them so far. And that is, that is crazy. So now Team Spirit is leading the charge. LGD is switching things up, maybe trying to put the players back in their comfort zone. We were sitting there watching their body language with Johan, like in this pre stage kind of area. You know, child eight, arms crossed, them looking at their feet, looking, not looking at each other, not sharing, you know, energy. This is what you need when you're back against the wall. You need to be there for each other. You need, you need this, you need to bring the momentum back. You have to create it somehow, because obviously the daughter is not bringing it. And on the other side, you have Silent talking to them and they're all looking at it, kind of drinking whatever word he's giving them. And they're uniting, you know, feeling, you know, bringing the, the uprising energy. It's, it's two completely different teams right now from what we could see body language wise. I wonder if this change up will make them feel slightly better because now it's a new page, new book. Shaoye is going to go back to a second pick. Maybe that will give them some type of confidence boost or belief in now what they're going to do. I do think that they need to play harder, play better. Team Spirit is showing up today and LGD, they need to bring their A game every game. And we see like, even though they lost last game, even though they're down 2-0, I think this might actually be a good sign for OG. Yes. They're so confident, even against what Clap showed on the Magnus. I think this is the first time I've really seen people pick the right counters against yes, Magnus. Finally. You need to deal with the skewer, right? It is finally coming up. And I also want to mention, like, this is the beauty of Dota. Magnus has dominated many patches. It has dominated many years for different reasons. It has been about Empower at times. It has been about RP at times. This Magnus is about skewer. It's about repositioning, re repositioning a hero in a way where the fight is so unfair for one team. Yep. But this keyword play is stoppable. It's stoppable by, by Rubik Lift, probably one of the best tools in the game. Yule Scepter, you know, Lion Hack, like you, you, Four Staff. There, there are ways to stop this cure from happening. This Magnus doesn't buy BKB early in the game. He's playing with Four Staff, either lands, like, and you have to stop it. And I love the, the confidence from LGD in a way. You know, maybe Xiao8, maybe somebody in that, in that booth is telling them, hey, I know this Magnus looks, it looks strong, it looks unbeatable, it is beatable. Stop this cure play. Now you end up with a Magnus stuck in the fight, cooldown skewer, he's just gonna die. No RP, no, the whole team fight goes away. And then the fight is absolutely terrible. Great way from LGD to counter it. It is abusable and they're going for it. I love it, that is confidence. Yeah, I think LGD, whatever it is, is gonna take for them to really find themselves and play like LGD. They need to find it now. They don't have any more chances. You don't have another game to lose. Uh, this is going to be a good route, but I am still very worried for them and worried for what's going to go through their heads if they get into this game and it starts going south at any point. You want to, be the great, you want to win TI, you have to be the, the best. You have to be the greatest team of the season or, yep. you know, at that point. And the greatest team has to be able to play Dota to their fullest, even down 0-2. And yep. if they can't do that, then, you know, then it was Spirit's win. So, now is the cornerstone. It, this is definitely where the final is going to be decided one way or another. Or either it's going to be decided now or we're going to get another round of great Dota, which I'm hoping for. Me like, too. I want to see five games, you know. But definitely, if LGD is going to break, it's going to be now. Yeah, I mean, what a run, though. I've got to give Spirit a lot of credit and Collapse a lot of credit for what we've seen so far. It's been insane, the stuff that they're doing, the stuff that they're pulling out. If you were to go replay analysis, Spirit before today, you could pick up something, but this is still a different team than yesterday. They are better, they are more confident, they're more free, and they are picking whatever they feel like picking and doing whatever they feel like doing. They're blossoming. It's, it's beautiful to see. It's I beautiful think we've to seen see. that. The entire lower bracket run, I mean, they're a team like, oh, maybe you can beat this team. I mean, unfortunately, they eliminated you guys, but throughout every series, I think, just as you said, like, they're bringing out better and better Dota, and all this momentum, like, it's come crashing into LGD. Like, they were by far, I think, the favorites of this tournament, but now they're down 0-2. I want to mention this Undying pick. So in my head, like, Magnus, he repositions the fight, so maybe Undying, he has troubles with that, but is it just, like, because of the Rubik lift, they're so confident in stopping that, you can, like, anchor a fight with a Tombstone, or, like, what do you yeah. guys think about the pick? It is possible. It's also a very good hero against Magnus on the lane. There's that, too, and you also have to Keep in mind, they're playing second pick, so they have to kind of show cards. You 
probably better show in a dying card than another card. It's like strong laner, probably gonna allow Ame to pick uh, out of a very wide pool of hero because he knows that his lane is secure no matter what. They also run out a lot on Faith Beyond. Yeah. So that could be a possibility. True. It could be a possibility. Like the way I look at it and I think strategy wise, what could be very interesting from Team Spirit is like, okay, they get it. They're gonna try to stop this cure. But Mag Magnus has been dominant for other reasons, as I mentioned. Maybe you can play an Empower strategy where you know you can play like a, you can build up on top of this Magnus, you know, get a hero to, you know, the Mag Jogger, for instance. It's not as much about this cure than other things. You get this Jogger to a very strong moment. The Magnus can play without blinks. We've seen Magnus win games without blink dagger. You just build on top of, you know, he goes Mac into blink, he can decide to go Mac into Greaves this game. Mac into Greaves into Crest and put that on this one hero that's just gonna, and then this cure is never gonna happen. And now you're stuck with the Rubik that's just looking at the, it's like, it's sure happening, guys, because that's my job in this game and it's not happening. I'm just fade bolting. Uh, Which is also yeah. where the Undying pick, I think, comes into maybe secure that th these are fights that are going to happen. So now if you're playing on RP or playing on Empower, you're sure. at least fighting into the Tombstone. Yeah. I get, I get the pick and also what you said. I think he suffers a lot from, from the score play and the fight being repositioned. Already now, LGD are probably thinking about objectives together. They, they want, that's how you're going to enable this Tombstone. That's how you're going to enable your, your two heroes to kind of punish this Magnus. Um, Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but we'll see. I still, I'm, I'm, sl I'm still worried for LGD. Every, now I'm seeing things, and I'm, I'm seeing this morphling ban. I think it would also be a good pick for them. They're also, also worried about like a, a willow morph combo. But it, it's good against Mag. It would be good with Undying. It's what they're looking for for forcing objectives and things like this. I wonder if they're going to have a solid plan going into this. If they're drafting free, or if Shao Eight is also dealing with all this pressure that that they might be feeling, being the favorites, having not lost many games before, and now losing games for like the first time. Ooh, again. This is, I think, it's dealing with the Magnus Blink again. They're worried about that skewer. I really like what you said, Seb, about maybe making a pivot on the Magnus style. I think the other thing that this hides is whether Undying is actually a core or not. Because mm -hmm. I think that's really what they're thinking about here. That, that's one thing. I think there's two ways here. If Spirit can play Mag Mid, I think it's very interesting, this game. The Mag doesn't have to go into the Undying lane. Mag Mid is Echo Saber Mag. He's just going to blink RP kill. He doesn't cure back, you know? And he, 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 he is not going to care as much about what's being built, and they get also to counterpick the Spectre greatly on the lane. It's a possibility, yeah. but they could also decide to double down. They go for the Mag PA. I mean, yeah. I think they're thinking about the... This dude's playing everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> and the PA shard versus Spectre, yeah. crazy. You don't yeah. scale into this. He will pop him in a second with Empower and with the shard. And I'm sure, you know, your Toro PA, for those that don't know your Toro well enough, like he is one of the greatest PA players ever. If you encounter him in a pub playing PA or watched him, he is, this is his bread and butter. He's I mean, super comfortable. He played it here, I, I forget who he's playing against, but he got a rampage in that game with okay, PA already yeah. at TI. So yeah, that, I mean, yeah, he, is, he is playing everything. He's literally playing every hero he can. And I want to mention how LGD, I am scared for them. I want them to bounce back. I want to see more LGD Dota. I want to see game four, I want to see game five. But they have played so far Tiny on crack, you know, Tiny Ogre, Tiny Mag. They have played ET, you know, enabled ET that is also crushing the games. They have played Lycan. They have played these really powerful strategies. And so far, I don't see, I don't see the multipliers here. I see the one Spectre. I see the one Undying. I see the one Bloodseeker. But I don't see the multipliers that LG are so good at. They're, they're creating these strategies and they're buffing them so much that it, it just breaks the game. I may be missing it, but so far, I don't see the game being broken from LGD side. So to yeah. me, they have... Steam Spirit has successfully pushed LGD out of their kind of their trademark this tournament. Yeah. I, I think Steam Spirit's lineup also looks like it has a lot more potential. When you look at these fights and when you look at what's going on for for LGD, tell me about what their gameplay is going to look like this game. How are they forcing a tower? How are they forcing a Roche? How are they forcing a fight this game? It's I, I don't like what's going on in the draft right now, where I already see that they're just addressing. Oh, they pick PA. Oh, we feel bad. Oh, we need a rupture to try and deal with it. It makes not a lot of sense with the Spectre. It makes not a lot of sense with this Undying and Rubik. Maybe with the Rubik for the lane, but still, there are picks in the game that could maybe make this come more together, find a way to scale into them, win the fights, get the Roche, play some, play some team fights to actually make it happen for your team. So is that what you think they're lacking on the LGD side? They just need Big some, time. like, so damage for objectives and maybe some more team fight. Some way to force the fight. It okay. can happen through objectives. It can happen through Roche. It can happen through catching them with a, with a good spirit hero. As for the last game, I'm going to try to make a case for LGD, for the LGD fans or the, the, the ones that are hopeful to see a game four. They have very strong lanes. I mean, Bloodseeker versus PA, you know, I speak from experience. Like, as an offlaner, I can tell you this is a free lane. Yep. He's going to have the lane of his life, especially with Rubik on this lane. 
you know, they did see the Magnus and they decided to go with the Undying and the Spectre, so I can only assume that they're happy with this lane too. So now these are two side lanes, they're gonna get the last pick for nothing to say. He has proven that he can, you know, uh, truly dumpster a lane if he's given the tools for and it. And Tinker's still in the pool this game. Yeah, and that's I, I, I very think, interesting. I think he plays an insane Tinker. They also have a way to force these fights. I mean, at the end of the day, they do have Rupture plus Tombstone, and that is a way to fix the fight somewhere, you know, and, and force them to fight into the Tombstone, give the Rubik freedom to position himself around the fight how he wants and get his spells off. And, you know, and we all know what Xenku can do when he's enabled in these fights. There are ways for LGD to make that happen. I see the Tinker. Then the Tinker would actually, you know, Tombstone, Night Vision, Bloodseeker Blood amplifying. Yeah, that's you know, crazy. I would about. just be worried about how, how are they forcing a fight with this Tinker? How are they actually catching a hero? It has to be the Rupture, it has to be the Lift. I don't yeah. think it's the best and easiest ways to force fights. Early on, Rupture, Atos, they have to build on the it. Atos would be, a really good, yeah, it would be a really good timing for them. They I have to it. build on top of that. And I see how the Tinker makes all of it. Nothing, nothing to say, one of the best Tinker players in the world. Incredible Tinker, actually. So good on the hero. You get the Spectre with the Ags, you get the Dagger Vision, meaning you get the enemy hero's vision. So Tinker's gonna see everything. He's gonna be amplified by Blood Rage and the uh, nighttime Tombstone vision. Everybody's thanking the Tinker spells. Very beautiful pick, in my opinion, that can, once again, it might enable their entire lineup if they are willing to look at it. What's well, left for Toronto here? So there's a lot of heroes that are banned. You have. Do you feel like he needs like a preemptive Tinker counter though? Because when, when you guys to. are talking about Tinker, I he feel might, like it, he might. it seems so free. I mean, you guys it's are very up, free so right now. He it's has a very to call free it a Tinker, tinker angle. He yep. has to. But no Puck, no Swarm, no Void Spirit, no Ember Spirit. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like most of the heroes that he would want to pick are kind of gone. Okay, that's that's a Toronto hero, but it's not a it's not an inherent Tinker counter. No. You can catch him, but you don't stay on top of him. And nothing to say, he was a Tinker spammer. When he was like a C pub star, he was one of those guys. Yes, give us yeah. the NTS C Tinker. We want to see it. Don't go out without it. He is, you know, he is the king on this hero. Come on, make it happen. Here it is. <laughs> okay, perfect. But does this make you four. just favor OGDs? Because I think this is the <clears> first game I've seen, like, their draft, it looks cohesive with this last spell. I'm a huge Tinker believer. I believe that if you play this hero to the limit and you find ways to push his timings this game, I think he's going to shine. I think he's, you're going to see this hero popping off. And he's going to he's going to be making Team Spirit run away. They're going to be dying from rockets. It's going to be it could be a massacre. It, it always has the potential. This hero is so strong this patch, and yeah, one of the best Tinker players. I hope to see fireworks. Yeah, regardless of what I want to see when TI, I want the game four at this point. So for this game, I'm all in LGD. I want them to take it. I want to see more Spirit. I want to see more LGD. I want to see more Dota, man. That's all I care about. I want to see more Dota too, but I would be very happy to see Team Spirit win. I think these guys have shown the world some incredible games and the beauty of the game and the beauty of these heroes and what you can actually make happen. So either way, I'll be, I'll be happy for Team Spirit, but boy, I want to see more games too. Mm. The I wait. Uh, and that talk. You see it. And we're, the draft is finished, and we're going to head out straight over to the casters with Insania and OD Pixel. Thank you very much, Yaoi. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to game three now of the grand finals. PSG LGD against Team Spirit. Team Spirit up at the moment, two to zero. One game away from potentially taking that championship spot. Insania, we heard from the panel uh, there during the draft, they were very, they predicted it perfectly, this Tinker pick, and they were excited to see it. Could this be what allows PSG LGD to maybe turn the tides and get the momentum back under their grasp in this series? I mean, I absolutely think so. Out of all the drafts that we've seen from them, this feels the most LGD. I felt like in the last game, they didn't really have a way to fight. I feel like LGD's like proven, we are one of the best teams at fighting you. And I feel like in the last few games, they just didn't have a chance to do it. So I really like this draft from them, and I think they have a way to, you know, battle out against Spirit. But at the same time, I, I see a way for Spirit to deal with a Tinker. I don't think it's an uncountered Tinker. I just think of the way Yatoro plays. I could easily see him, you know, get on top of the Tinker and pick him off in a fight, come in from the sides with Meld, and, you know, read the movement correctly. So one of the themes for me about Team Spirit victories has been Vision. And Vision is the best way to deal with Tinker. This hero abuses Vision better than most heroes. So I think the Vision War that's going to happen between Spirit and LGD is going to be really interesting. Already going to see both teams head to head it. And he's sort of catch from either than White. And try and hide in the pit. Only the rocket's starting to come out from nothing to say. As Team Spirit, they will back up in either side, able to get the grab that they wanted to, to potentially get that first blood. But let's see, as you say, definite potential here for PSG LGD and their lineup. But as we've seen so far, two games in which Team Spirit have looked to be completely in their comfort zone 
and it does seem the pressure, it's certainly more so there for PSG LGD in this series. Yeah, I absolutely think so. And I agree with something Notel said, where like, if this game starts looking bad, if the early game doesn't really go their way, I could easily see some potential crumbling uh, coming out from LGD. But I feel like they have the makings of a good draft. You know, when I look at it objectively, if this was like a first game of the series, I haven't seen either of these two teams play, I would have favored LGD's draft. I like what they're coming into this game with. They're set setting up strong lanes, and they have Tinker to like kind of uh, provide the damage for later team fights. One thing, though, to me that sort of stands out looking at the lineup of PSG LGD, whilst they've, they've definitely got a lot of heroes to create that vision, set up for the Tinker to go crazy in the team fight, sort of similar to, I believe, the game one draft, there's not a lot of stuns. Yeah, you're right about that. And I think the idea here for them is that you're not really going to be committing into fights. You're not jumping a hero and then just trying to stun him and lock him down and chase him down. You're rather trying to burst somebody really quick and then resetting out. So the idea of using Rupture and then dropping Tombstone is going to be their key way of team fighting. And then you're going to use Rubik primarily for counter initiation. So when somebody comes into your backline or when somebody chases down the Bloodseeker, that's when you'll see the Rubik coming with lift. That's when he's going to come in with a clutch tornado or something along those lines. Let's see how these lanes end up panning out here in the early game. Yatoro on his PA, as we said, this time a hero that he has already pulled out on the main stage. I love this from Yatoro. If we take a look at the bottom lane, he's so good at doing this. As soon as you see Zinkyu run for this block on the small camp, he doesn't care if he misses a creep or two. So immediately runs over, make sure they get that pressure. Zinkyu's immediately forced to TP out. So that's mana. That's a fade bolt that he's not going to be able to use on them. Plus, he doesn't have a TP. So. Just really nice gameplay from Yatoro, helping out his position 5 player win these trades. Right, even stepping up there, trying to get connection onto Jin Q, but smartly keeping his distance. And we'll have to watch out when the level 2s are hit. I mean, this, this lane in general, when you see the Bloodseeker Rubik, do you feel that that is a lane that the PA can struggle against, or is it not too bad? I think it's the kind of lane where they can kill the Rubik. Oh, and here we go. This might be first blood. They're going to try. They get in the Thunderstrikes there, Maposhka. First blood for him down in this lane. The trades favoring them here between the supports. Yeah, so if you think about how the lane is structured, Bloodseeker Rubik, they want to slowly like harass you out of the lane. And if you think about Disruptor PA, it's a similar story. But Disruptor PA have kill threat on Rubik because the silence from Bloodseeker is so slow that he can't really save his Rubik if they go on him. My goodness, look at this aggression in mid. In Toronto, Tokyo. Really building back. Nothing to say. Yeah. He does have his bottle, though, and the water runes are up, so he should be easily be able to run to the top one and pick it up for himself. Yeah, up top, Collapse is taking a lot of pressure here from the Spectre Undying. I think the Spectre Undying is an interesting lane, because you won't really see the Spectre connecting as much as the PA is to his carry and helping him, but he'll provide the vision from the dagger. There will always be that slow that enables Undying to get more hits in. Sure, and you feel it's unlikely for the Mag and the Willow to ever really get on top of the Spectre in the lane? I think, so the idea for the top lane is that the Undying's going to tank a lot of damage. He's going to be in your face. You're going to have to be hitting the Undying and dealing with his mana for the first portion of the game. until, And that will lead the Spectre to get a lot of farm for free. However, the Undying has an issue because he runs out of mana at some point and he runs out of healing. And usually when he does that, he's forced to reset back. And then Spectre can take some pressure. But so far, it seems like Y is doing a good job. He's just blocking up these camps, providing vision. But you see this mirrors immediately on top of the Warding the Ward. He reads it perfectly. Yeah. Knew exactly where he was heading. Right, we'll go for the quick trip back to base here. I see mid Toronto Tokyo is going to have to take the walk back. So a bit of space given to nothing to say as he is starting to get ahead in this matchup, getting a good few denies in against the Invoker. Yep, and the Invoker is going to lose a full creepy over experience here, plus the bottle refill from White. This is great gameplay from LGD, and I think this this is looks characteristic of LGD, right? You expect to see them do these things where they're optimizing all the everything that's happening. Y runs in, drops a ward. Denies himself the tower, blocks the Ancients, TP's mid, refills the bottle for nothing to say. This doesn't look like a phase team to me, you know? We were a little bit worried that maybe they're going to be maybe feeling a little bit of tilt or pressure, but the way they're playing right now, looks like their head's in the game. A solid start on the lane so far. Toronto Tokyo, he wants to try and play for the four minute rune, but won't manage to do so. Extra backup was on its way over for PSG LGD to keep control of that. Yeah. So you notice both fours are rotating for the runes, right? 
And in this situation, the Bloodseeker's pretty fine bottom. He can't really be harassed out of the lane because of how the Thirst functions, and he just keeps regaining uh, HP for every last set that he gets. Meanwhile, the Mag up top, who's laning against the Undying, runs into this impossible block where he can't really rock up to the lane and get gold. And I think as long as these they play this rune game where they force the position for in Mira to rotate towards the middle lane, LGD's going to come out with a little bit of an edge out of the laning phase. Oh, the core's definitely looking comfortable so far. Yeah. You see Miposhka rotating over mid, setting up vision. There's so much vision around this middle lane for the dire side. They don't want the sinker to go down. Yeah, almost impossible to, to close in on nothing to say with this sort of setup from the team. It's going to ensure that he does get this good start. Yep, absolutely. And if you take a look at the CS, you notice the Invoker is really falling behind. The Tinker almost has as many denies as the Invoker has last set. So, like No Tail and Seb mentioned, right, this is one of the best Tinker players in the entire world. And he's living up to that uh, praise that he received on the panel. But would you imagine that even though it did get through as the last pick, do you think it was something that Team Spirit would have had in mind? They knew that this was going to be, you know, there was potential of this coming up as the last pick for PSG LGD. If I'm being honest, I don't feel like they really addressed the Tinker in their draft. I think this Invoker was more like a, this is what we're going to go with, as Imposhka is in trouble. They're going to try and chase him down. He does get the Kinetic Field off. Yutora tries to turn towards Vapion, but the backup's there from White. He's trying to commit Yutora, but can he get the oh. kill in time? The stick charges. Yutora is going to try Miss. and run him down, but Vapion is out to the side. Toro has not got the further vision. He is oh. going to be able to jump out of the blood right though. Over to the creep wave. The zombie gives vision. See if they can chase him under the tower. They can't. Oh, they oh. can! Will they get him? The they zombie are, vision. They still manage to see him there as Jinq reaches in with a hard hit and fade ball. Actually, I do believe that was a thirst vision. And I'm a Poshka. I mean, this is going to be potentially another one. Can they get him as well? There's under no man the tower. on the Rubik, but he has boots. I mean, Jinkyu, he wants to dive in for this. He is taking quite a bit of few tower hits here. Toronto, Tokyo will TP over. Jinkyu, he'll get punished for this dive. See if Toronto, Tokyo can find anything more here. Why still under the tower? No TP, no mana. So they do dive in to get an extra kill on the Disruptor Poshka, but they lose two heroes for it. Toronto, Tokyo, pretty nice kills for him as well, considering the slower start he was having in comparison to nothing to say in the mid. So being able to make that move and pick up two kills on the Invoker, that's going to get his early game back on track. Yeah, absolutely. But we touched on this in the VP versus Team Spirit draft, how it's very important that you get earn charges on the Invoker, right? This is what enables the Invoker to play his game and be faster on the map. Unfortunately, he has not yet bought his earn. So despite getting these two kills, he doesn't fulfill the objective of getting to earn charges in the early game. So while it is good for them, it also has its drawbacks. And this is in large part due to how well Nothing to Say played his lane out. It's been a lot less focus now around top has collapsed. Happily farming here in the lane against Arme, getting just as much as the Spectre. And that's got to be, a, you know, after Game 2's performance, probably something to fear if your PSG LGD collapse. I believe ending 2-0 and 20 in Game 2 on his Mac. Yeah, absolutely. Middle lane, nothing to say is getting pressured. But you see here what uh, Seb and no -Tail talked about. They don't really have the damage to punish him. They don't have the tools to really kill him. The Invoker is good at catching him, but he's not a hero that can stay on top of him and keep out putting damage. Because as soon as you've used your spells, that's kind of all you have in the tank. And then the bottom lane, you notice here how Yatoro doesn't feel as safe sitting on the lane. When the wave is pushed out, he's forced to move away from there because the Rupture is up now and they have the ability to go on him. So they're, you can look at Team Spirit's position. They're expecting something to happen down here. They certainly are. It's all right. Just trying to farm with the dagger from the blur. Invoker's resetting back on the lane as well in the middle lane to set up for a potential TP. Let's see if Xingqiu and Fake Bian feel that they can strike. They're being careful. They know that a reaction will come out if they decide to try and dive in on Yatoro, so yep. they won't fall for it. But yeah, so far you notice as soon as the wave goes out of his tower, he's forced off. And Spectre's just comfortably sitting top. He knows that he can lane against the mag at this point and doesn't really feel the pressure. However, uh, you know, despite all of this, Spirit does have a slight gold lead all around. Incredibly close, though. PSG LGD, they're bringing extra numbers down. Bonham White, he's ready to join. They want to dive here for Yatoro. They commit with the, the rupture hit. Horn over as well. They're in onto the PA. Yatoro will fall. So they can get Maposhka as well with the four of them and the tombstone down. They certainly can. The pressure and mounting from PSG LGD down on this bottom lane. They know that they can get in and get away with this, especially with the global backup of armor. Yeah, absolutely. And this is one of the strengths of Undying in the early game because once you place that tombstone, 
the enemy team doesn't really want to TP in. They couldn't really respond with their heroes the way they wanted to. Mira started his TP, but immediately cancelled it, recognizing that, you know what? I can't TP into the Tombstone. It's not going to be a good fight for me. It's a collapse. Trying to play around with Jin Q. They do have further members coming up. Team Spirit off the back of those deaths down bottom. You know, Yutora, he'll move himself up to the top half of the map to farm up here. Tier 1 tower will be lost. PSG LGD with an early objective. Yep. They're just evening out the map, swapping sides here. You see even a scan going out on the trees, making sure that nothing's here setting up. And one of the best ways to deal with Tinker is that you want to try to get these early towers. Because Tinker abuses the towers on the map in order to fight. It provides him with safety, a place that he can TP to, come in and out, use all of his mana, go back to base, do it again. So it's important for Team Spirit to try to get the towers early, because once Tinker comes online, it's going to be very difficult for them to do it. Let's see what they look to head over next. Spirit. Staying together, I'll take some of the jungle away from PSG LGD. Yep, so Tinker just finished up the blink. This is going to be their first timing to fight. You have Rupture up. Look for that Rupture into Tombstone combination once more with a Tinker TPing in and dropping lasers and rockets. We'll have to be done without the Haunt. That's still out for about 80 seconds. That looks like they're playing it patient. They don't feel rushed to make this move yet. And this is another of the nice parts about Undying. Unlike most Fives, he has the ability to farm uh, jungle camps quite easily because he just drops a Tombstone, and the Tombstone deals damage over time and spawns all these zombies that allow him to farm these camps and get some extra gold. So he's closing in on a 6. And it's all right. The space is here. Clearing up the stacks. Keeping his farm on par with that of Armek. Having an equally good time, of course, building straight into the stats right now. Falcon Blade into the SMY, he has the buff up of the Empower. Yep. As soon as that Empower runs out, look at Collapse. He immediately runs over. And this goes back to what Seb talked about, right? This game is more about the Empower. They're not playing around the Skira in the same way that they were in the previous games. As a smoke coming down bottom. See so if the three members of Spirit can find some action. They do have six on the supports. Static Storm and the Fear ready to play with. PSG LGD, they're doing a great job of avoiding this. Ame is down here on his own. Yeah, it looks like they're waiting for the haunt, but Ame is about to get caught. Spirit have sniffed him out. Let's see if the three have the damage. Try and set up with the root, but not going to get the connection. The glimpse back is there into the static storm. TPs are coming over. Ame, is he tanking up to live through the static storm? He's still alive, and in fact, he's able to turn the tornado. Does catch him, but is it enough damage? Ame will live. And it will be Spirit that lose the two heroes off the back of that attempt. Yep. And in the meanwhile, you see, as always, Team Spirit really smart about their map movement. Yatora moves into the enemy jungle, starts farming here. Tinker's forced to come top and defend the tower. And despite losing their two supports, they're applying the pressure. And to, whenever Tombstone's used, you're going to see LGD kind of wait up. So this is 40 seconds that they know Yatora is most likely going to be allowed to farm pretty freely. And that's why he's up here in the top lane playing so aggressively. Collapse is the next target. Trying to chase Faith Beyond. Looking to get in, ray, in range for the rupture. Collapse into the trees, hard to find. They won't get the setup. Kind of halfway towards his blink dagger collapse. Yep, much better vision game this time around for LGD. Their, their wards are not getting dewarded the same way they were in the previous games. They actually have quite a lot of vision here to play with, and a lot more information than we've seen them have in the previous series, two games of the series. There's a calm start here once again, but very close. 13 minutes in, less than 1k in it. PSG LGD, despite the two rough games they've had so far against Spirit, seemingly regaining their control that's managed to drive them straight through the upper bracket into this grand finals. Let's see if they can keep it up. Bottom, Spirit. Start for a bit of a poke on to White. And just the two of them is not enough to deal with the Undying. Not going to look to commit anything else here, Spirit. They know there's potentially backup behind the Undying. Yeah, and the Tinker's deciding to go for the Aghanim Scepter. The way this uh, works is whenever he lasers someone, they lose a chunk of their maximum HP. So versus uh, these type of heroes that Team Spirit has, he's going to be very, very quick at killing them all. Look at this quick move. Yatoro, he's in under Faith Beyond. They're looking to try and burst the blood sink, but the counterplay comes in. Arme with the horn, looks to collapse, jumps over towards Yatoro. Yatoro driving the TPI, he's away. But collapse, there'll be no escape for him. Yeah, just great, great presence here from LGD. Now they're the ones that are allowed to respond, and it seems like they understand now how Spirit's playing the pace of the map, and they understand what Spirit wants to do. They're going to make assumptions based on your movement, and 
it feels like LGD are getting a better and better read of it. And yeah, I think that's largely due to the fact that they've, they're able to establish more vision on the map this time around. It's all right. Back to the farm. He wants to at least get his S and Y done before turning up to the fights. Or even with just that, the, the BKB may be something that he wants to hold back until he has as well. Tinker Laser will never be fun to play against as a PA when he's trying to focus targets. It's bottom lane. See another attempt with a static storm. This time round, do they have enough damage? They've got the catch on to Arme. He's trying to get away, but he will fall. This time round, Spirit, they'll get the big kill. But it has cost them both supports lives. We'll see Toronto Tokyo trying to escape, but they've got any way to find him here. There's one more sentry. He's and into the trees. He's out of the trees. There is a lift and a glimpse. Ooh. Not quite able to get round the trees to get that set up. As Toronto Tokyo makes it out of there. They lose two supports. They get the Spectre. Are you happy with that if you're Spirit? I think Spirit's okay with it. I think this is like, LGD recognized that our Tinker is so strong right now. There's no real counterplay. Even if the PA gets on top of him right now, the PA doesn't deal enough damage to burst him. So I think for LGD, you want to try to abuse this timing where your Tinker's very strong and he's outputting damage. And Ahmed dying once or twice here or there while he doesn't have Haunt isn't the worst for them as long as they get some sort of response in return. Okay, back to the farming and 800 or so. The Axe to be done on Ahmed. They are on track to hit a very good timing. And we've seen already the responses from PSG LGD each and every time Spirit try and make a move have been top tier. But now the move that Spirit can make, it's going to be much more deadly. Collapse, the Blink Dagger on its way over to be in his hands. We saw what he was achieving last game when he was jumping all over the place. Let's see if he can pull it off again and start to literally tear PSG LGD apart with his abilities to to just grab them and throw them around the battlefield. Yeah, absolutely. But this game is much more challenging than the previous ones. There's going to be rockets flying at you. There's going to be tombstone zombies. You have many things that are going to get in your face, as well as the Bloodseeker Bloodright. So he's going to have to both navigate these spells and make sure that he doesn't get caught before that. Plus, on top of that, there's a haunt, right, to provide all this vision for LGD. So I feel like the way the game is shaping up, it's falling a lot into Yatoro's hands. And he's proven that he can do it. Yes. But his farm and the way he plays his team fight out is going to be very key in order for them to be able to stand a chance against LGD. No, absolutely. As I say, this BKB, if he can get this quickly, that's going to be a huge nuisance. Not too much they can do through it. The rupture being the main one. But if the setup's there and collapse, Maposhka. Mira, they're able to hold the heroes in position. This PA is not going to have to step around the fight too much. As, yep. long as, as long as they're able to stand in position and get the hits in, they can have the heroes brought to them. Absolutely. Ahmed um, finished up his Agonims, and once they get this uh, timing go coming, you see LGD immediately smoke up. They're checking for wards. They drop a sentry to block the Ancients. They know the PA is playing in this area. Unfortunately, they just made the wrong guess. So you either here are going to assume that he's at the two camps up in where they are right now, or that he's playing at the Ancients. But look at Yatoro. He sniffs yep. it out. It's... It's so hard to catch this man. He's just always a step ahead. I mean, the way they're reading the map is just very intelligent. I think they realize when the Spectre runs back to base that, hey, something's probably happening, right? He, he's not just running back to base because he wants to. They know that the item is very likely coming. And then when all the heroes then disappear, that is like another sign for Yathor to be like, okay, I can't show. Let us see the attempt onto Toronto Tokyo down bottom. Azame, he'll jump over, sentry still down. Toronto Tokyo will try and hide himself in the trees, but. They'll stay on top. Same time over towards the mid. They will lose Faith Beyond. The counterplay was made by Spirit. See the TP out as well. Mira gets back to safety. So one for one across the Wise and map it. Two seconds for the skewer. Glimpse. Skewer back. They've got the dagger slow to set it up. He's able to dodge the decay nicely so that he didn't get hit. Could still get the blink off. But now Arme, he's ready to come back in. Your is off to the side. The rocket's not enough, but nothing to say. Jumps in to finish him off. The fear, the counterplay here from Spirit. Nothing to say, is caught underneath the tower. Have they got enough damage here from the Willow and the Magnus to start onto the two of them underneath the tower? Nothing to say, surely gonna go down, he will collapse. Skewer over into the trees, collapse. He's still alive here. Can they quite find him? Wise coming back over, steps in to collapse. Finally, they burst him with a fame ball. But this battle underneath the tower, it's costing PSG LGD lives as well. The route down, catching the two, pushing them back into it with a deafening blast. Are they? He's gonna turn back over towards Toronto Tokyo, he's gonna jump in, close the gap, onto the Invoker Mirror Maposhi, can they help him out? They cannot, are they? Able to finish off Toronto Tokyo as well. That was beautiful. I love the way Nothing to Say played that team fight. He recognized that if this PA is dead, there's no damage coming out of the Spirit Draft. So 
trading his life for PA is really what enabled this entire fight to happen. You'll see a lot of Tinker players just, you know, they're like, oh, I'm not going to go in, I might die. But he recognized that my death is worth it if I can take the PA with me. Just beautifully executed there from LGD. Ame also, small thing in the fight, TP's back to base, heals up, uses his Aghanim Scepter to jump back into the team fight yep. and get those last couple of kills. And Ame is crazy. We're seeing you know, the power of that Shadow Step. He's in and out consistently. That 30 second cooldown, easily able to do it a couple of times in a team fight. Yep, Mira, nice play. Knows there's no stuns that can catch him here, so there's no skewer on the Rubik. He's not going to get caught during that. We have another big interesting item coming up. There's going to be the Holy Locket for the Undying. And once he has Soul Rip maxed out, okay, he already has Soul Rip maxed out. Together with the Holy Locket, this healing is ridiculous. So basically the way it works is the more units there are, the more you're going to heal. And with Tombstone and the way it functions, you just spawn a bunch of extra units. So you're almost always going to get that maxed out heal. So any sort of healing tool together with Spectre's Dispersion just deals incredible amounts of damage in the team fights. I feel like uh, LGD's draft is really coming together now. Yeah, absolutely. So in a way that we just haven't seen from them so far in this series, mid lane, they're looking to be jumping onto Toronto, Tokyo. We'll be able to turn with a quick tornado. The attention from PSGOT will turn over towards Mira. Into the Shadow Realm, though. They still want to dive this, dropping down the Tombstone, just full aggression for BSG LGD, diving past the Tier 1 Tower. The Rockets, they're coming in on Toronto, Tokyo. He's got to get out, but he can't, Arme! He's in straight on top of him! That's just beautiful. They're abusing these vision tools so nicely. You have the Tombstone, you have the Bloodseeker. There's so many ways to get vision in these team fights. I mean, this, this Arme Spectre's looking pretty spooky. He's picking up the kills, the involvement here. PSG LGD just fighting in a way that we haven't seen from them so far in this series. We'll see the jump forward onto Faith Pian. Underneath the tower, we call for the hill comes out. He is trapped in the static zone, trying to run, but the Thunderstrike finishes him off. TP's coming in for Spirit. Why? Trying to dive in onto Yatura. Another Soul Rip, healing Y up. He's going to stay on top of the PA, but the Nothing hits come out. Yatura takes him down. He's able to get away. Oh, that was close. Let's see if they can pick up Mira as well. They can. Nothing to say. In with the laser. And out he goes as well, picking up the action. 2k lead now for PSG LGD. They're starting to break down Spirit. Yep, they absolutely are. But a very, very important item is about to come into the game. And that is the PA BKB. He's 100 gold off of it, and he's going to have it in the next team fight. And the way this changes the game is the Tinker can no longer just laser the PA and force him to reset out. Yet Toro's going to have nine seconds where he decides what he wants to do. And if those nine, se nine seconds get him the right kills, that's going to be everything they need in order to win the fight. And during that time, you know, Yatoro, where is he looking first? Is it, is it sort of this tinker? Does he have to just commit onto nothing to say to eliminate the threat from the, for the rest of his team? I mean, the ideal scenario, right, is that you kill the tinker with the PA BKB because the only thing really covering you against the tinker is that BKB. Once that BKB runs out, you're going to see the tinker lasering you, rocketing you, refreshing, laser rocket again. So the ideal scenario for him is he's allowed to meld and kind of hang around the fight as it breaks out. And then once the tinker commits in, that's when he jumps. We've got a smoke coming in from PSG LGD. They are very ready to fight. Especially with Arme. He's heading back to oh, the base. Reset. Them. He's ready to shadow step in if he's needed. Tombstone on the high ground. It collapses just seeping out. Excellent kinetic field from Eposhka. Stops them from being able to chase in. Put a stop to, to the escape here from Spirit. Looks like Spirit might want to chase into this though. But they should recognize that Tombstone's been dropped on the high ground. And it might be a hard fight for them. I mean, Yatoro, he's going to commit with the BKB. Just goes to work straight away onto Y. He should be able to get this. Yeah, Y's dead for sure. The crit comes in. Y will fall. Oh, did you're hanging around, though. They recognize the importance of this BKB. Yeah, they've got a bit of a window now to maybe punish your spirit. Stick around, but they won't. Back behind the tier two tower, spirit will hold back. Yeah, it's a tense game. This BKB really is going to be important. So using the first nine second charge for the Undying, it's OK, but it needs to lead to something, you know? This opens up some time, this gives them some time to farm. Hopefully they can deward some of the vision that LGD are playing with. And if they manage to do these things, and they can reset the map to a position where they can farm up and they can get to the PA shard, they can get these items that the PA needs in order to punish the LGD draft, then it's all good. But if those BKB charges get wasted for support kills that don't lead to more, then it's problematic for them. PSG LGD, they're trying to sneak the Roshan. Won't be the quickest though, and already actually deciding that they don't want to spend any further moments committing. A spirit potentially around the area, and they are. Spirit more than happy to fight. Blink RP at the ready. 
A big old Sarah for PSG OGD though as well. Horn, good to go again for Arme. Fjundra gold away from the Manta style as well. Yeah, why leading the charge? All he needs to do is get that tombstone down before the fight starts, and he's going to do it as soon as the smoke pops. He's going to pop it down immediately to see what he can find. We'll just be Mira. A Shadow Realm and a TP out. We'll get him away from this, and so now no tombstone for the fight. Yeah, but he does have that level 10 talent. This was recently added. The minus 15 seconds tombstone cooldown makes it less of a committal when you use it. Well, Toronto Tokyo. Uh, he's going to end up walking into the Bloodseek commit. Fate Beyond just turns straight away upon him. Toronto Tokyo was not prepared for that at all. Just standing there in the mid, and Faith Beyond finds a very tasty surprise. And now, if the Undying would have had that Tombstone ready, he would have had that ulti ready, you could have seen LGD potentially poking at the Roche. But they, what they ideally want is for... Uh, okay, they actually already do have the Mantle on Spectre, so never mind. But that is a big Roche tool. Once you get Mantle on Spectre, you have the Desolate to deal true damage to the Roche, and then it goes down very quickly. But they're happy with the pace of the game right now. They're happy with how it's playing out. You see Shard finished on PA. He's coming across this tree line. He knows that nothing to say is playing here behind the tower. He's going to try for the catch. Won't get it. Goes for the attempt, but nothing to say. Out of range. And power stolen by Rubik as well, by the way. So the Spectre is now matching the PA's farm speed. Yeah, about okay. 2k in it at the moment between Arme and Yatora. But definitely having that ability on their side as well. Will help him close the gap. Online for the Scardi next after the Manta. Yeah, intense game. Both teams just holding their high grounds, understanding where they're strong. Neither of them willing to fight into the other team's vision. If you look at how Y is positioned, he's standing right outside of that ward until he's ready to run in. Do they want to fight this spirit? They're on the low ground, Tombstone dropped. As soon as it's out, Team Spirit, they'll retreat. Yeah, I think this is a very intelligent thing that LJD have recognized in this game. They've been dominated in vision for two games straight, and they feel like, you know what, maybe they're better warding than me. How do I solve it? Or well, collapse. Pick yours like a vision. He's going to look to get the ground on the Faith Beyond. The BKB is popped. He's going to look down the RP. Catches the two. Got Sunstrike comes in. They kill off Faith Beyond. The Static Storm is on to Arme. The Yatori is going to look to bail out. Collapse as well. Go for the TP away. Gets out. They all get out on Spirit. Oh, Zink, you just barely missing the RP on the PA there. That would have been a massive kill. But you see this from Spirit, right? As soon as that BKB is ticking low, he has to TP out of the fight. Yeah, they know exactly when to sort of just get out of there. They, yeah. they, they get their kill, they get their trade. They know not to push it for anything more. Team Spirit knowing the exact moment to call it quits and reset. Yeah, absolutely. Yatora yeah, is playing this game excellently. But I, I do worry, once this PKB starts sticking out, the Tinker's closing in on a Hex, right? So He's even the threat of potentially jumping on him is going to be hard. You see Yatora is also buying that Desolator. It's not a basher. It's not a tool item that will allow him to necessarily kill the Tinker if he has that Hex. They're going to go for the Roche now. They know there's no RP. Yep. So if they have the damage to take this out and see if Spirit still want to try and make a jump into them. Yeah, so between the laser, the Mantle Spectre, the Undying Damage I'm going to get the Fear quite nicely timed. Roshan is very low. Is there any potential for a steal? Yeah, Yatora? absolutely. Yatora might go. He's not able to get in. He's not able to get in. Arme gets the kill. The Aegis on the Spectre now. Spirit, they've got to be cautious. Yatora pops the BKB, but he's already been burst so low. Throw out the daggers, but they surrounded by PSG LGD. Maposhka as well, caught in the river. They couldn't make the jump in time, and Yatoro just getting burst so heavily before he could actually get the BKB off there. Yep, excellent team gameplay from LGD right now. They're banging on all cylinders. They are. We did not see anything close to this in the first two games. PSG LGD finding their confidence, their fire, as they're hitting back hard here in this third game. Yeah, absolutely. I just feel like the way that they've approached Vision this game is just so smart. I think this is what they were missing in the first two games. These tools that provide them with Vision and the adaptation to recognize that is amazing. And just Arme jumping around the map. Collapse. Collapse this time around. The damage too overbearing from Arme and his illusions. All right. So for, for the side of Spirit here, I think it, it's getting increasingly difficult. You're starting to feel the pressure of the Tinker. You recognize that, you know what? There's that Hex. There's that Aghanims, and once my BKB is out, I, I'm not really sure how to fight into these heroes. And we haven't really seen Toronto Tokyo in this game. He hasn't really had a game, so this Tinker pick from PSG LGD, it's played out beautifully. Uh, it's definitely turning into a game where when you look at the farm on the course, a lot is on Yatoro's shoulders, whereas on the side of PSG LGD, the wealth very evenly split between nothing to say and Arme. Both of these cores, and 
it just in combination with one another. Spectre, Tinker, nobody wants to play against an incredibly fun one of those. In mid lane is watching Q. He's in using the RP to catch Shatoro completely off guard. He wasn't ready for that at all. Not well, now at see all. them try and turn towards Faith PR, but the Sora of Hill comes out. The Meteor crashing down on the Bloodseeker. They find him in return. Mirror. Rusted in position here, Wyatt trying to look towards him, but the field holds back the Undying. Mirror gets away, but a quick move there from Xin Qiu. Yeah, there's still the Haunt ready though, if he wants to look for more. See, jump over towards Toronto Tokyo, he's out of mana, he's out of luck! Arme, oh, continuing to be an absolute beast this game. Ah, the team fights are just so hard for Spirit, and especially if Yatoro isn't there to play the fights for them. They really need him. What a beautiful initiation from the Rubik there with the RP. You know, with the one earlier up top, but gets the more important one here mid. I mean, they're down 8k at the moment. How on earth do they just approach any sort of team fights now at this stage with the Spectre just jumping into their faces? And as you say, the vision, the counter abilities from PSG to just disrupt any sort of move or, 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 or jump that Spirit are trying to make themselves. It seems that this time round, Spirit, they're the ones in the impossible position. Yeah, I think they're off balance, right? They've probably played this entire tournament playing off of vision advantage, having information advantage. And in this game, they don't. They have one Tinker Ward in an area where they can't really punish Tinker. That's far up top. They're not really going to bring their heroes to that side of the map. And then in the bottom area, the only ward that they have to fight around is also an area that you won't really see LGD approaching. We'll see this move mid. Atos into the rupture. Toronto Tokyo in trouble. They'll put the BKB. We'll see Arme. Heading on top of him, we'll get Glimpse back. And we'll give the space for Toronto Tokyo to stand his ground, the rupture to wear off. Looking for set up on the side, they get the catch on to Y, Yatoro, he'll commit, jumps in, does get caught up on Hank Stone, he's thrown, jumps in, BKB off in time though, Yatoro, he'll survive. Over towards Faith Bian, he goes, he won't chase further, the Sunstrike just off the mark. Faith Bian will live, but so will Yatoro, that time getting so close once again to being burst. The life still coming in big, did just grab that Paladin Sword before that last play. Almost certainly saving his life there with a the big burst heal through the crits. Yeah, absolutely. I was like, where did that healing come from? I did not see that coming. So yeah, that, that, that makes, does make a lot of sense. And dude, he gets that second Hex off. That's a one yeah, team that's fight. Yeah, that scary. It's really coming down to, you know, those micro decisions that you make in these team fights. He thought he could get the burst damage out in time. Seemed like the wrong choice this time around. I mean, 32 minutes in, PSG LGD still an incredibly comfortable position. Look at the map control as well. They've only lost one tower so far in this 32 minutes. Very impressive control and just sort of forcing Spirit to, to almost play a different game than they would have wanted to. It was, it was clear that Spirit came into this wanting to deal with PSG LGD the same way they had done in the first two of this series. It's not worked this time. Spirit, we're going to have to see something different from them. But something that we have seen before in previous series but not something they've necessarily brought out today. Yeah, and if you click on Yatoro, you're going to notice that he's feeling the pressure of the Tinker. That is a refresher queued up. All right. And if you think about how PA works, that's really mainly for the BKB. He feels like he needs that extra duration of Black King Bar in order to be survivable in these fights and win the game. It's a really, if it works out, this will be a genius item. I'm really interested to see how it plays. Focus around the mid lane here for Spirit. Try oh, what a play by Y. He put his courier on the hill to scout out the ward. Ah, collapse. He's going to still get the jump on him, and immediately the telekinesis comes out for Jin Q. Catching collapse in the combo. Collapse will go over the TP out, but the Yules is there. Yatura trying to get in with the BKB. He'll turn over towards Arme, but Arme just jumping all over the place. Yatura has to go for the BKB TP out. Collapse goes down. Yatura will be able to save himself. PSG OGD, they're looking to see if they can chase for more. Faith Bian trying to run down Toronto Tokyo. But the Invoker, just as speedy as himself, will manage to break away. What an unbelievable play by Y though. He just put his courier on this hill, waiting for that ward to come out, recognizing that if they smoke, middle lane's where they're gonna go. I know they're going for more. They're ready to try and get the jump in onto Yatoro, but Yatoro blinking straight over to the safety of Mira on the high ground. Means they won't get a further catch in. PSG LGD there now that to back off. Still 30 seconds without collapse. Yep, the pressure is on. We see nothing to say buying that Aeon Disc. He was queuing up the BKB, recognizing though, the problem for me is not really the magic damage. It's potentially getting locked down by the PA and getting bursted. So Aeon Disc will solve that problem for him. And their items are just gearing them up to not die. You see also, same thing for Ame. 
He knows that PA doesn't really want to buy an MKB. It's not an item you traditionally see on the PA. It forces PA to deviate from his standard item build. So buying that butterfly here is going to force the PA to play his game. And now the PA is suddenly reacting to the Spectre's item yeah, instead of the other way around. Because what, what do you do in this situation now, Yatsura? What is the call with his next item? That's a hard decision, right? Yeah. And this is what LGD are doing so well. They're forcing you into a position where you might make a mistake. Maybe he buys the wrong item. Maybe he now decides to go for the MKB, but then his BKB is too short to fight. Or you're just making this problematic for Team Spirit. You want to make it as hard as possible for Yator to do what's right. And he's even thinking about the Ags as well. A lot of options here for Yatoro. Yeah, a difficult choice. I don't know what the right one is. And we'll see if he does either. A very tough place to play from. Yeah. Down 13k. Both nothing to say, and Arme's power just continuing to grow. And we've talked about this a lot, but you know, Roshan's about to spawn. Heroes start moving over to the top side, secure that area. Y already has the ward down. Notices there are no heroes there. That means we know where Spirit are, an immediate smoke over. Collapse. Ooh. He's out with a blink. Same can't be said from Miposka, though. The disruptor will die. Mira oh. and Yatora, this is a bit of a spooky place to be. Yeah, they'll have a, a poke and then immediate TP out. They're not messing around. They know how quick PSG LGD is going to be with these responses. It's collapsed. He's on a cliff. Ah, nothing to say. He's quite happy to join him. Not really quite sure what was going on there. Maybe he was attempting to D ward while he saw the hero's bottom and saw the TPs on the tier 1 bot tower. But uh, Roshan has spawned. Click on Y. He has everything ready. Tombstone ready. Ulti ready. This Roche is going to go down extremely quickly as soon as Ame connects over. I mean, in 50 seconds without Collapse, it's unlikely they're going to be able to do anything without him alive. Is there any world that they buy back to contest this, or do you just let this go? I feel like based on the way they're positioned, it might be hard to get there in time. Yeah. So the buyback option probably is not there. It seems like Yatoro now has seen this Tinker buying the Aeon Disc. So what does he do? He buys the appropriate item to response. He's going to go for the Nullifier. All right. So many choices, and Yatoro, he's got to make the right one. I think P Team Spirit have recognized that as long as this Tinker's alive, there's no way that we're going to win the long fight. And we're going to constantly be forced to TP out as soon as Yatora's BKB ends. And for our Team Spirit, I think the way that you need to fight here is you need to set it up in a way where you initiate, force the Tinker to show himself, and then have Yatora go in. And at the same time, flip side for Team Spirit, I mean, for PSG LGD, you know that your four man is stronger. If both Yatoro and the Tinker stay out of the fight, you have the advantage. So just don't show nothing to say too early in a team fight. Allow your team to play the game 4v4, and then come in and beat the PA as soon as he commits. Again, falling back into a bit of a peaceful era here for Team Spirit, at least, where they don't have any interest in Meeting PSG LGD head to head whilst there is the Aegis on our mate. And for the first time in this game, Spirit has finally been able to establish some sort of vision in the bottom area of the map. We notice them doing this time after time. When they fall behind, they like to take over the enemy triangle. They feel like it's a comfortable place for them to fight in. And even in this game, you notice it. Here we go again. Up into this radiant triangle or dire triangle. Wait for the Tinker to show up. If the Tinker comes to that wave, they're going to be right on top of him. But it seems like nothing to say has played plenty of Tinker games. He recognizes that yeah. this is the only way I might get caught. Yeah, he's got a lot under his belt here, nothing to say. As Arme, a quick jump over to the bottom lane, adding another kill to his scoreboard. 9, 1, and 15. Yeah, and interestingly enough, he's gone for the Haunt Illusion damage on 25. And we'll see here. An attempt of a play, Yatoro is going to get caught out by the Bash. And he's got to get out of it, Yatoro, he'll go for the BKB TP out. The Disarmament is there under the Spectre, so no chance of a Bash. As Yatoro will get out the same, not to be said for Toronto. Tokyo, though, has nothing to say, how's his number? I mean, nothing to say has really turned it up this game. I, I mean, I'm really impressed with his Tinker decision making. It's just very, very intelligent, has not gotten caught a single time farming lanes, I think. And the way he teamfights is just beautiful. He knows what to wait for, he knows who to look for. Uh, this is a completely different PSG LGD it really is. compared to the first two games. It really, really is. It's looking fantastic. This is the power that we've seen from PSG LGD in the series before in this run in the upper bracket. And it's coming out just where it's needed the most. They were knocked down hard in the first two games. And I think a lot of people were, were, were definitely going to be interested to see if they could somehow regain that control. 
It's not an easy place to be in, as you said. For them, the pressure incredibly high on this. They will not accept anything less than first place. Yeah, absolutely. We have another fight brewing. This is the only side of the map that Spirit has wards on. So Spirit are not willing to take this team fight into LGD. I'm really curious what fight they're going to look for. This is the one, I think. Can't go on Ame, though. The Aegis protects him. Two minutes still with that safety on the Spectre. But yeah, if we think about the mentality of LGD coming into this game, right, it, the, the pressure was definitely on them. I mean, Johan and Seb talked about what they saw backstage, what they saw in their expressions. I'm sure this kind of momentum for them is huge. And it's a, something that you need in order to win TI, right? You need to have that attitude of champions. Look at this jump. Look at the dust out. BKB, you still see the jump from Ame. He's in with the bash onto Toronto, Tokyo. Let's push back with the deafening glass, but they're in with the grab. Nothing to say, he's in with the nukes. He's playing with so much confidence on this Tinker. I was talking about how he needs to wait out for the PA, but T recognizes, you know what? There's no way to PA his bottom here and just full commits into their base. He's level 26 on this Tinker right now. He is incredibly farmed. He's going to finish a Bloodstone too, or an Octarine Core, sorry. I mean, without a doubt, we saw saw how much Collapse could do last game when he was just in the lead ahead, just playing around with his food. He's got to make some big moves here from the defensive position as he is losing teammates around him to the consistent dives from PSG. He'll try and get the grab hit onto Arme. It's not going to happen. Forced back to the fountain as PSG LGD. They've got all the space in the world to push in onto the tier three. Can T Spirit get them out of here? There's no buyback on Toronto. Tokyo is still down for 30 seconds. And without Mira as well, they'll have to, by the looks of it, at least let one set of racks go down here. There's no defense to be had quite yet for Spirit. That's so hard to fight into this tombstone. You saw Yator kind of thinking about it. He was looking for that potential wraparound, but recognizing that, you know what, my team won't be able to support me. Even if I can catch the Tinker in the back lines, I don't have the power to kill him on my own. Look how much money he's got. 6k gold in the bank here. Nothing to say, he can really start picking up whatever he wants now. Just filling up those inventory slots. Yeah, absolutely. Finishes up that Octarine core. Just wants that mana pool. Ooh. We'll have a momentary pause here. 15 to 30. 24,000 net worth lead for PSG LGD. The number's looking very good for them right now. I have a hard time. I'm trying to think of scenarios for Spirit. It, it feels difficult to find a way to do it. It's but I really like this choice from Yatoro. I think this refresher could be genius. It could just be the thing that they need. I mean, the problem is, even if they get these kills right on the defensive team Spirit, it's, it's a Spectre and a Tinker. You kill these heroes, they're buying back. Their boots are traveling over. They're haunting in. They're shadow stepping back into the action. Killing them once is not going to be enough. PSG LGD will use the opportunity to get in and destroy you, even yeah, if absolutely. they lose a core at the start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're totally right about that, Owen. And that is why they are so far ahead, right? They have all these options. They have all of these tools. But if anything could potentially catch them off guard, I mean, PA Refresher, when have you seen that? I think once that BKB runs out, expect nothing to say to blink in to be ready to hex. And if he gets a Refresher off, if nothing to say didn't click on a PA, that could mean his death. I mean, it, w it, it would be quite something if this, this build does have the impact possible. But will it be enough? It seems like a, a pretty pretty big ask here when they're as down as much as they are in this game three. Let me tell you, as a player in this position, these kind of pauses, it's the worst thing that could possibly happen. <laughs> it throws you off your momentum. Well, for you know, who? The team that's ahead or behind? I, I mean, I'd say for both. Yeah. I think it, it's really sad for both sides. I wouldn't say it's like, oh, Spirit's getting an advantage. But when you are playing like the pressure, you're playing with the way LGD are, your mind is so zoned in into thinking, what are they doing now? Where are they moving next? How far could they have potentially gotten in the time that it's gone from me last seeing them on the map? And all of these small micro senses that you have were like, let's say Yatoro shows on the top lane and then 15 seconds passes. You know where Yator approximately could be because you know how fast the hero moves. Everything like that, it's thrown off by this kind of pause. And that's why usually if you think about it, after pauses in pro games, you see somebody getting picked off or somebody making the wrong judgment call. And it's because this like micro senses that you're used to playing off of gets thrown off. Especially in a game such, with such high stakes here as the grand finals. 
the international 10. Spirit, as you can see, up 2-0 right now in this best of five. But as this game three goes, looks like PSG LGD will be able to stop the potential of a 3-0 clean sweep here for Spirit. I just really hope there's no initiation in the next 30 seconds after this pause, because that, that would really suck for both sides. Here we go. We're ready to get the action back on its way, ladies and gentlemen. I can feel my heart pounding with that on-pause there. <laughs> you know how the players are feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, looks like hopefully there's no initiation here, so no, everyone's we pretty, survived the pause. Pretty far away from one another. Yatoro, yeah. just a recipe away from the refresher, so you certainly want to get that done. Ideally, maybe hit the 25 if he can before the next fight is forced. I wish that oh, talent do you take, though. The coup de grace is great. You get more damage. But the tripling stifling dagger might just catch out a support and one shot yeah, it while you're not paying attention. I don't. I feel like the the coup de grace might be it because you just you, you got to kill some. I mean, one of your items is a refresher. You're not maxed out on the damage. Yep, you're making sure right. that the, the crits are hitting hitting harder. Could absolutely. be pretty essential here for your turret. But then again, this, the triple is nice if you know like mega creeps are going to be coming in. If you feel like you're losing some lanes of barracks, you need to push back out. So. I'm also thinking for the team fight, right? How we know that Yatora has to wait out. He can't fully commit straight at the start That's because true. then he'll be forced to waste his BKB. And, maybe they, and they do have, of course, the Empower. You know, yeah. the triple stifling daggers with the Empower on them. That's that's Ooh. pretty nasty. Quick fingers from Toronto Tokyo, but he's caught. Yeah, they're going to catch it. BKB and he'll try and walk away. See if he's able to make it out. He's been ruptured. He's going for the TP out, but the BKB comes to an end. And so does his escape. He'll try and hold them back with a tornado, but there's nothing more to hold them back with. Yatoro, he's going to be the new focus. Static Storm from Eposka down into the trees to try and stop the chase. Vapian coming in with the BKB, but Yatoro will manage to make it out. Meposka as well in the trees, hidden out as he TPs. Yeah, beautiful reset there from Team Spirit. I actually thought they were going to have way more casualties, but quick fingers from Yatoro, blinking on top of Meposka. Great team play there with a the Static Storm to cancel. Tinker potentially chasing for more kills. There we go. So yeah, he has taken the chance here, amping up the damage. The gold for that refresher orb, just a couple of, well, a few hundred away. I'm so excited for this refresher just orb. If I'm some sort honest, of big brain play, play comes yeah, exactly. out. I want to know yep. how it plays out. And now he has it. He does. Immediate smoke up. They would have seen a building, of course, where the Perseverance is, but it's just a question of whether nothing to say in particular is ready for it to be complete for the next fight. As you mentioned, if he's out of position, he comes in with a second round of BKB and Nullifier. It could be deadly for nothing to say. You know, a man on his Tinker who's had a pretty free game so far, jumping all over the place and bursting down the lineup of Team Spirit. Yep. BKB finished on Y. The Sun Dying is not easy to bring down. And look at his positioning as well, just stopping any chance of Spirit being able to make a move from their triangle. Yeah. I mean, the problem really for Spirit, like, who? how do you kill the other heroes? If not PA, if PA can't commit on them, how does anything die? Of course, PSG LGD there. Going to be feeling very comfortable. Nothing to say in army. More than happy to farm up sort of their sixth item. Looking for the, the Orchid into the Bloodthorn here for army. Nothing to say. It's getting close to having the comfort of the overwhelming blink, maybe even holding on for his oh. buyback as well. Yatoro? Oh. He's caught. He has been caught here. He needs help and he needs it now. The BKB comes out. He has been ruptured though. Not much that he can do. And Arme, he's in with the illusion, surrounds him. No way for Yatoro to get out. And of course, he did spend up on that refresher. So 100 seconds, no buyback on the PA. Yep, LGD firing back strong. What a catch from Faith Beyond. And man, I feel like it just all ties back to the vision. This game, PSG LGD had vision. They were playing on even terms for most of the game. And Ooh. Oh, Collapse, he tries to make the move. But the counter's there. Zing Q with an instant lift. Holds him in his tracks. As it's oh. another core out of the game. Collapse and Yatoro, no way of returning for this defense. Skewer back on Mira. They get the grab. Mira also to be blown up outside of the base. Three dead on Spirit. PSG LGD, they're up to the racks. That's got to be so satisfying for Zing Q. Oh, yeah. The last of the mag just constantly skewering them back. 
and now finally he gets to do it himself. Yeah, collapse, giving Jin Q the respect as well there. With the words of Purge in the tip. I mean, this is what the PSG LGD fans expected to see from them in this grand finals. They just took a bit of time to turn up today. Needed a bit of warm up. The first two games, that was that. But this game three, at full power here. Even just into the base, Arme just killing off poor old Maposhka. Yeah, LG Gear playing with such confidence. That's but at the same time, patience. Whenever they need to slow down, you know they're doing it. Oh, the immediate roast spawn. Nice. They're very happy about this, I'm sure. And nothing to be done about this from Spirit whatsoever. So full straight into the hands of PSG LGD. As we'll see, poor old Maposhka has tried his best to defend against the, the creeps. And then suddenly, an army appears on top and disappears as quickly as he appears. But the job is done, Maposhka taken out. No place is safe right now from this Spectre. Yep, and the Rubik gets the Aghanim's Shard, or Scepter. This is probably one of my favorite Aghanims in the game. It's always a great feeling when you have it as Rubik, so... One of the cool things about this that I don't think we've ever talked about is... When you spell steal, and most teams aren't aware that you have an Ags, they kind of think, all right, Rubik used it. You hear the bling sound, and then you're, okay, I can use my spells however I want. But with the Ags, that throws it off. That just makes it easier for you to get those big steals that you want to get. So, highly doubt Team Spirit to be ready for this, but to be fair, they've had a lot of time to sit in the base. Usually what you do during this time is you're start starting to discuss everything. What is it that LGD can do? How do they approach this fight? What are they going to be looking for? What are we looking for? What are our objectives here? Which heroes do we need to go on? What spells do we need to save? All these things should be discussed for Spirit, and they should have a structured fight in mind here, because you can predict what's going to happen. I mean, 40,000 gold down right now, Spirit. PSG LGD. It looks like a pretty, pretty smooth sailing here to the victory. Is there really anything the Spirit can pull off whilst this far behind? I mean, it, it's a matter of finding the Tinker. I, I really think so. Of course, you can always win. In Dota, I feel like you always have the option of winning. And especially in late game. Yeah, there's 40,000 net worth differentiating you, but there's no amount of net worth that will make up for a bad positioning or, you know, the clutch play. So formations is really important here for LGD. And if Yatora can find some sort of backline kill, that could open the fight up entirely. Approaching the final set of barracks here, the jump in underneath the tier fours, they're in on him at Boschka. He's gone, the collapse will try and jump in with the skewer back onto Arme. Yatora is committed onto the front lines with the BKB, but he's picked the up, gets the Phantom Knives off. Now turns over towards White, but look how much HP White's got Yatora. Refresher, doesn't want to commit for another round, nothing to say there with the Hanks, they've locked down Yatora. Yatora to fall, buyback at the ready. Instant smoke up from Spirit. Mira. Set things up with the curse kind of get the glimpse back. He's looking for the Ooh. skewer, but he's actually able to get out here with a Manta. Arme won't be grabbed back yet. Steps back to the safety of his team. PSG LGD still respecting the buybacks here from Spirit. They weren't instantly pushing onto the melee racks. But the rocket spam begins from nothing to say. Yatoro, he's gonna look to try and jump outside of the base! He's able to jump it onto GQ, he's gonna go for nothing to say, but nothing to say gets the blink off in time! Back onto the high ground he knows, but Arme's trying to get in! They get the skewer! Arme! He's in the fountain! That's the OP! They've got Arme! They've got him! He's in the fountain! Can he get out? He cannot! Yeah, They've done it the once! Can they do it again? It's just the three of the meatballs coming down! Arme! He needs help! He's in the fountain and it is in his own! Oh. The skewer's attempted, but the Yules is there to stop the play! Arme! He'll be getting out of the fountain alive! GG is called! And PSG LGD will take this game three. I love Dota so much, Owen. That was so beautiful. Everything happened. You got the skewer into the fountain. Oh the my goodness! Out of the fountain. They counter blink the skewer in again. But no, the Yules, and then the stolen skewer, and you pull out a hero of your own. They did. The GG. Wow. I mean, they fought right up until the end here in this game three spirit, but they were too far behind. PSG LGD. I mean, this, this is them looking phenomenal and completely in the comfort zone. Something that, after seeing the first two games, it, would un it was understandable to sort of doubt if we were actually going to see them get to this place. But they have. They've hit back so hard here in Game 3 PSG LGD. They'll get a game now. Spirit, they're still up 2-1. to one. But, Insania, could this be the beginning of a PSG LGD reverse sweep? 
I mean, I absolutely think so. I think they identified a couple of really crucial things for themselves. This was not like a fluke win. This was not like, oh, we just did something right. I think they strategically understood. We're getting outwarded. We, we don't have vision. We don't have information. And they addressed it in this game. I think they they picked heroes that allow them to have vision in team fights, and that and they were had the ability to fight back. Wow. Well, there we have it. Eh? We've had two scary games from Spirit, and now one very scary one from PSG LGD. We'll see if Spirit's able to turn back up big time in the fourth game, or if PSG LGD have maybe figured them out here at the all-important point in the grand finals. As PSG LGD, they'll take game three. Thank you very much, Odie, Pixel, and Insania. And indeed, we are going to a game four. It will not be a clean sweep for Team Spirit. And you heard it from our commentary team. They think maybe PSG LGD has figured something out. Well, I know they figured one thing out. Let's have nothing to say. Play on his Tinker. He used to be a hero spammer on that hero, and he absolutely crushed it, Tsunami. All these people saying, oh, you're playing against Team Spirit. You don't ban Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not Xiao 8. You're not Xiao Ba. Things have changed, and they have now their own specialty being revealed. They had shown it two times during the group stage. In fact, it was against Team Secret. Whenever they had lost the first game against Secret, they whipped out a last pick, nothing to say Tinker, and they won that game. Oh. It was with a completely different lineup outside of that, but this time the problem they were trying to answer was the Magnus. We were getting vision from the Bloodseeker. We were getting instant cancels with the Rubik and the Yules. Every single box was ticked for that draft. They literally did everything they could to make Magnus look bad when played that way, right? So you pick Rubik for the lift, you have all of the vision from Haunt, Tombstone, and Bloodrite, and you couple that up with a Tinker. And I think, honestly, on the draft panel, I think Seb had a really, really good point that Collapse didn't do in this game. Maybe you should have played the Magnus completely differently. Like, yeah. maybe you don't play on the Skewer setup if, if it's this hard. You could have taken a different approach, maybe picked a different carry that was more geared toward uh, solving the Spectre. They picked the PA for the break and for the high burst damage. Perhaps a pushing type of carry could have worked better here, like, say, a Juggernaut or you know something to that effect, where then you play on the Empower, you had a really strong mid-game timing, take Roche and try to end the game. Uh, but obviously, you know, you've played this way on Magnus, like with 10 wins in a row, whatever, has <laughs> collapsed, right? And it works every time, so you just want to keep rolling, right? But LGD, they had a really good plan this time. And also with that plan, right, I think we've really seen how Spectre and Tinker in the patch kind of, of course, the tail end to how why they are so good together, right? You have, you know, Spectre with the Ags, that 30 second cooldown, Astral Step. Before, you're always playing on Haunt, you're a big cooldown, guys, gotta wait it off. But no, now it's just every time you see a hero, you're instantly jumping. If a support shows underneath a ward, if a like an Undying is walking around and find someone, bam, Spectre's there. And of course, Tinker as well, equally can match that. And he's tanky enough to also get into the middle of these fights. So yeah, PSG, they... They now have the confidence that we needed to see them have to be able to bounce back in this series. And you see like both the cores, right? On the screen here, you have uh, nothing to say. 14, 1, 13, or oh, 15, sorry, I can't read, on his, uh, on his Tinker. And then you have Spectre as well. You know, I think he ended the game like 15, 1, 23 as well. Like mm -hmm. both cores really came out into this game and just said, no, we can come back into this series. We can show off on these, you know, signature heroes. To me, what's interesting about this draft as well, we're talking a lot about the Tinker because he popped off and had a really great game. I actually don't think this pick was necessary for them to win the game. I think it was the best pick for them in the given situation. But if that would have been banned, I wouldn't have been like, oh, oh what are PSG LGD going to do? Because I still think the integral parts of the strategy is getting that vision. Tinker obviously plays amazing around it, so it's an awesome pick. But if that isn't there in the pool, maybe you can get another mid hero that takes advantage of it, like any of the spirits, like Storm Ember. I think a lot of them were banned, they though. Were, yeah. uh, but there would have been there's always something left, right, that can play with some sort of tempo there. So uh, obviously it was an insane game for him on that Tinker. Love to see it. Um, you know, a lot of people don't like playing against that hero in pubs for reasons that might have been <laughs> highlighted in this game. Uh, but to me, that's important, right? Because if you're going into this game, you're like, OK, they won because of this Tinker pick, then next time it's going to be banned, right? What are you going to do? And I, what was the last ban of Spirit that game? I'm trying the to remember. The last ban of Spirit that game was a Void Spirit. Void Spirit, right. Yep. So they were looking the Spirit direction. I think uh, PSGLGD themselves banned both Storm and Ember yep. as their last two. Uh, so that kind of forced the hand there for Team Spirit to get rid of the last one. Also, what was encouraging to me is that this also didn't seem like an anti-Magnus draft. It seemed that the first two picks, I got the Rubik, I got the Undying. I think we can start to play it by ear now. And then depending on what Spirit started selecting after that, mm -hmm. then they're like, oh, okay, maybe, you know, we'll put a Spectre on top of this. So I wouldn't even be surprised if they let Magnus go again, or if they maybe even first phase pick it this time on LGD. 
Well, that's the thing, right? It's now Spirit have lost with the Magnus after crushing the first game, or the second game set technically with the Magnus, and everyone now going, whoa, Collapse is amazing. Now, the second game he plays it, he'll probably say to the guys, right, if they draft like this and itemize like this, I can't play the game that we've been, you know, coming into this TI with. So potentially Spirit might even be questioning themselves on Magnus. And this is the beauty of TI and like the mini meta of best of fives, right? It's because we spoke about Io being the reason why PSG was unable to really capitalize in the first two games. Magnus, why they won game two on, uh, on Spirit. And now suddenly game three, we might even question if they want to even go near it because PSG feels like they've discovered it, understood it throughout this, you know, three game series so far. And I feel like it's also, you know, something you could be concerned about with PSG LGD after those first two games is like the, the whole, like, you know, the confidence, the mentality. They third pick their carry, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not like, okay, we need, oh, these guys are good. We need to go late game, play slow, get Ami the perfect game. You know, they're willing to open up and do some different things. They identify, this is the hero we want for this game. We have a strategy and it worked great. So uh, has me pretty hopeful for them going into the next game. And for Spirit, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be too faced by a, by a one game loss. They've been here plenty of times already this oh, yeah. tournament, so they're going to have something else up their sleeves for yeah. sure. Yeah, the Mars was even uncontested mm -hmm. previous games, so we know the Collapse has got some backups there as well. I want to highlight the mental game you just mentioned because I know that there's a lot of people online like, oh, Ame and nothing to say. It feels like maybe they're, they're, they're crumbling a little bit under the pressure, and I think this third game proves everybody that said that 100% wrong because they were both on fire. And this mental game, we highlighted so much Tsunami because it is so important in a best of five grand finals with $13 million on the line. Yeah, on both sides, we can see maybe the nerves of, oh my gosh, it's all these Royal Rotors on this side of Spirit. It's all mm -hmm. mostly a bunch of first timers, but then they are joined in union with that lack of tension or extremely high tension, depending on how they've been reacting to it. Meanwhile, on LGD, you have nothing to say in Shin Q, who may feel out of their element whenever they're paired up with Faith Beyond and Y and Ame and Shao 8. But both of them have different approaches to the mental game. And so far, Spirit's lower bracket run inspires confidence that I don't think they're going to be shaken by a one loss here and there. Same. Uh, and you mentioned Zinq there, of course. This is his second international, but definitely his most successful one uh, to date. We've highlighted Zinq a lot throughout this entire tournament because he was mentioned as the best position for right now in Dota 2. Tigov, how do you feel he's doing uh, this t this series so far? Of course, he played a fantastic Rubik just now. Yeah, I mean, that was the main thing, right? That's Rubik just there. We saw a beautiful little skewer as well on the Rubik, and I think he was just always in position, right? I think Collapse, again, the Magnus, we've said it so many times now, I think when you have this Rubik in your arsenal within the game, it's all so nice. You have the instant lift, you have the steal, like it puts this pressure. And I think Jin Q, if he can find that confidence and he plays that level of Rubik game, suddenly he's going to be going into that next game with that next kind of pull. And maybe we see another Rubik game. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we see the same type of draft pattern happen. Maybe Spirit still have the confidence in that Magnus. And then we get to see another Rubik game because, you know, we love to see Rubik at TI. It's a really, you know, a showy offy hero. I Rubik think they'll only shaker. pick Rubik if there's a Magnus in the enemy team. Yes. I actually think that's the only thing that's going to prompt them to do it. A specific targeted counter pick. I don't think they see enough value in it in the first phase because they've barely played it all tournament. Uh, it's just a solution they went to in a, in a time of need here, uh, which is interesting because it might mean that the bans could also be turned around here a little bit so Team Spirit can try to take advantage of it with perhaps a Rubik ban could force out a Magnus ban, then you could get the Mars opener if you want to go that route. That um, also depends on if LGD want to opt for second pick again also. Yes, depends on pick order, absolutely. So but, that response was specifically crafted to if they pick Mag, then we're going to get our Rubik undying. Yeah. Yeah. And all this kind of theory crafting we're doing, this is basically where Spirit, they need to kind of overcome the issues that they've had throughout the season against PSG because for our, I think it was like ESL 4, they lost to PSG. I think it was then OGA, they lost to PSG. And this was also with Xiaowei as a stand-in. At any major, I believe they drew 1-1. Like they've never been able to actually beat and overcome PSG. In these series, they've been able to take that first game, that first kind of momentum swing, but it's been the experience of PSG that has come through and shined through that series where they've been able to the kind of best spirit throughout the year. So even though spirit is up 2-0, or sorry, 2-1 now, it's kind of like the same as the past, right? So this is where Spirit, in this specific game, I feel like if they want to kind of get rid of that, they need to come in with that confidence. They can't let this one game hit them because history, throughout the 2021 season, PSG has always bested them, even if PSG was down. That is true. PSG LCD has bested most teams uh, throughout <laughs> 2021. Uh, they've done incredibly true. well, of course. Uh, you could also say that, yeah, they've done well and they are the end boss, but that also means that in terms of improvement, they didn't have as much need to improve compared to Team Spirit, who is 
seen tremendous growth throughout the entire season tsunami. That was even mentioned in Slack's interview with Maposhka previously. He was just like, well, you guys got pretty rocked on day number one of group stage. And he was just like, yeah, but we were playing some hard opponents. And progressively, the thing is that most of the time, whenever I see development from a team, it comes from the draft. Here, it just seems like pure gameplay oriented. They're still playing things that are very comfortable for them, namely collapse in specifics. But in general, this team gives me a lot of encouragement for the Eastern European region. And it is an interesting point about the group stage. This is something we've been discussing throughout the years. What is a, a, what is the good way to start off a group stage? Do you, would you rather play the really tough opponents first or last? And if you play them first, maybe you can learn a lot about a lot from those games and then improve throughout the group against easier opponents. Whereas if you have them last, maybe you've dropped the game here or there learning against weaker opponents. Right. And then when you're against the Giants, you just get rocked, right? So for Team Spirit, it might have actually worked out really well for them that they played some of the Giants to begin with. Yeah, and here they go, both now Giants in their own Right, taking their spaces here in the pods. It's game four of the grand finals, best of five. Of course, Team Spirit is on match point, but PSG LGD might just have found their momentum, found their swing that they need to reverse sweep these grand finals against Team Spirit. Will they be able to do it? We know they have the mental fortitude too. The question is, uh, I think, it's all going to come back very simply, very clearly on the draft team. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. You know, I think it's been second pick has won every game so far, mm -hmm. I b believe. So maybe whoever gets second pick this game, they're going to win it. So maybe a coin toss dictates the winner of TI. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds kind of unlikely. <laughs> I think it's maybe a little bit more depth than that. But Listen, everything's a 50-50 if you look at it. You know, it can happen or it yep. doesn't. Oh, mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, speaking of odds, uh, you guys reminded me of something. Mm. Uh, of course, we mentioned earlier today that at the start of the day, there was still one person on the planet that had their prediction bracket intact, which was ruined by the lower bracket finals going the way of Team Spirit. Um, there were only four people in total that only had uh, that, that had 20 predictions out of the 21 predictions correct. I also have here? an extra stat. There has been a total of 1.5 million people that have uh, filled in their brackets in the compendium. Mm -hmm. Of those 1.5 million people, 1.4% said that Team Spirit would be the champion. Wow. That's more than I would expect. Yeah, that's more? higher. Yeah, that's more than I would have thought. Because oh. you had to place that before the main event even began, yes. right? But you yep. could do it after the groups. Uh, Team Spirit, I would have said, it, what were they? they were fourth in their group, and they looked definitely yeah. a, a, a step below some of the other yeah. teams. But you know, sometimes you got to believe in that, in that miracle run, right? And we're we're here, and obviously, I think it's also a little bit of you know, like the, the human. Like, there's just the emotion, you yeah. know, you want to, if I'm right, it'll be so cool, you know? <laughs> yeah. so some those, people just go for those it. Those 1.4% people it's, love a good it's story. Heart. It's exactly. the heart. It's not the, it's not the brain speaking, I would say, in a lot of these guesses, but, you know, maybe they, maybe they identified something in the groups. They were like, you know what? I, I think, I genuinely believe that Spirit can do it. And those people could very well end up being right now. Yeah, or maybe they heard from a lot of uh, players out there how the scrims were going, because apparently Team Spirit Quite good in those, quite good in those, and definitely managed to hold their own against the majority of the team's team. Yeah, but that's like the beauty of Team Spirit, right? I feel like when you look at their roster and actually really dive deep, other than Maposhka, it's like 2019, 2020. That's when these professional careers actually started, right? I think three of the four players was on Yellow Submarine, right. which was kind of like the hidden uh, like trial team for Team Spirit, where like the, man the current manager, I think his name's Corbin, he was the guy that was like kind of sifting through the ranks, like trying to find, I think they had like 80 players in the end trial for this team. They finally kind of crafted this down into this roster and they eventually brought in Miroslaw later. But it's the fact that they went through this kind of trial period, brought in all fresh faces, then brought in Poshka to captain it, and it's got to this position. Like that alone is an insane story. And I think that is inspirational. The fact that you don't have to be a 10 year veteran to be able to compete at the highest level. You could, you know, you can like in a year's time or two years time, of course they put so much time to play the game, but you get the idea, right? Like mm -hmm. it's the fact that they can, if they put their minds to it, you know, you can achieve anything and Team Spirit being in the grand final in itself is an inspirational story. Absolutely. Also, just uh, the organization itself, of course, has been in Dota since uh, only 2015. So, I mean, I mean, that's still six years, but oh compared my. to PSG LGD, it's relatively new, of course. But this team, this is the first time this organization has had a horse in the race at TI Tsunami. Yeah, and I, it's always encouraging that even during the COVID times of 2020, many organizations were no longer able to support because they were like, we, uh, we don't yeah. really have the infrastructure in this era of online Dota, but Team Spirit stuck through it. 
and it was a difficult region to do it also. Eastern Europe was dropping organizations left and right. And not and building off of T's topic also of having so many tryouts, having so many players, it's also very encouraging to see how much of a unit and how friendly all these players are, because con in contrast to VP, VP was a group of five players who had wanted to play together with each other for a very long time. They were friends before the game started, before the team started. This one seems like quite the opposite, and it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. Yeah, it's a, it's a unity story for sure. It's, a, it's an example for, I think, a lot of people watching from home right now. It's like, wait a second, these guys have only been playing for two years. That means that they, in two years' time, have a chance of being on that main stage. Uh, but for now, it is all Team Spirit and PSG LGD, and they're ready for Game 4. Team Spirit versus PSG LGD. Grand Finals, Game 4. Hello everyone, welcome back to the draft panel of the TI-10 Grand Finals, again with Seb and Noto and myself. And I want to ask you guys, how, do you, how important do you think that victory was for LGD? Like, how is it going to affect their mental game? It's massive for them, of course. They have, they have no more room to fail, whereas Team Spirit, they might, get, they might get a super challenge coming their way if they don't close it out now. They're going to have to go into a Game 5, same position. You have no more, no more losses to take. So for LGD, this, they need to get as much confidence and as much uh, freedom so that they can beat themselves again, or like their full potential. Uh, mega important victory, of course, <laughs> if, you, if you lose, you're out. But mentally, they need to take something from this. I think we saw a little bit of a better body language, if I want to go that far, and, and say that they, they do, they do look, look like they feel better. Now we see the switch up, and we were talking about it before the draft started, right? Yep. LGD broke Team Spirit Magnus, and I think they broke it in a very convincing way. And now the question was, so the second pick won all three games, and both teams kind of realized second pick works better. So far, you know, this can still change. Team Spirit got the choice, which is a very big deal. It's probably not going to decide the outcome of the game, but it gives them definitely a bit, like an upper hand. And now with this first pick, LGD, they had to choose, do we want a mag? Or do we want to give them mag and play against it? And then if you do that, mainly the Rubik was the big con, right? And Team Spirit, they actually decide to not go for the Rubik versus the mag. They end up going for the Wyvern, which so far has been one of the best answers to Tiny. Nevertheless, though, in this opener, Tiny is banned, and they go for the Wyvern anyway. So, yeah, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see how they cope with this Magnus, because I don't think the Wyvern quite does it. It's, is there a reason you think they banned Dark Willow over the Wyvern? Because in the previous two games, I think LGD had been banning Wyvern. I mean, Seb, you even mentioned me, you thought maybe the Wyvern ban was a mistake. Yeah. But in my head, if you're going for Magnus first pick, Wyvern seems like a better ban than Willow. I think so. At the same time, I, I, I think both bans, to be honest, I, I want to say I'm not a fan of the Willow ban, but then I'm just going to go with I don't quite understand it. I, must, I think I'm just missing something here. I think the Willow Band would also help them do the Shaker Morph second phase if they want. I mean, it's a hero that they're also very familiar with. I think the Bramble value is still there. I don't know if it's worth a ban either. I think there are some very powerful game-changing bands that shouldn't be overlooked. But Vibrant might be a very high-rated hero, or should be higher rated than, than some teams maybe give it credit for. Statistically speaking, it's won a lot of games here. And it is a classic mag counter to at least a classic mag gameplay. But still, the score play is very strong. And we saw it addressed last game where the Ruby got a lot of good lifts on, and also the shard lift eventually makes carries feel really safe against this. Um, so yeah, let's see. And now the Lion is in already from the first phase. Also quite unconventional to open Byron Lion. Yeah, and there's a lot to say about the Bane pick also, in my opinion. I mean, Team Spirit, the Lion, they didn't get it the, the, the last games, and it mm -hmm. has been a hero that worked really well for them. Uh, the way they play, you know, they play so well around Vision, they always set up this Lion for a great kind of Hex's fight. He starts the fight with Hex, and it's hard to to stop it. I'm really surprised that the Tide didn't come for Team Spirit. I mean, it's one of Collapse's best heroes. Mars is out, Tide is, Mag is out by being first picked by LGD, and then the third Collapse hero, which is much more than just a Collapse hero, like Team Spirit, they play around it, they build around it so well, is Tide. Tide is a counter to Magnus, and yet they don't go for it. Meaning, LGD might have, a, might, might have had an, a second pick, like a second first pick. pick. Here? I think they have to. They but will, right? If, if they don't, maybe it means they have a great answer to it, and Team Spirit knows it. I think they're, ban they're going to be banning out a lot of team fight. They start with the yeah. Doom probably now, and I think that's also, you're not going to pick Mag or Tide yourself next phase. You're most likely going to ban it. You have a Bane and a Mag, right? Yeah. Let's see. 
they, they, they don't ban it yet. So the Doom ban versus Mag is a very simple concept. It's like you play a Mag lineup, you want to empower a guy, and you want that guy to just go ham. And of course, if he gets doomed, then the whole the whole lineup doesn't make so much sense anymore. You kind of break the way that you want to take the fights. I want to talk quickly just about the Bane versus Wyvern and Feeble. It counters Wyvern heal completely. Also, you know, like uh, it's really good at catching Bane, catching heroes. I think it's just a very interesting hero versus Wyvern in terms of how he's going to beat him on the lane and also has great things to do in the game against him. They do ban the Ember. Uh, obviously, Ember Mag has been, Ember itself already has been a great combo, great hero at, you know, messing with the backline. Lion and Wyvern, they don't want to be messed with. If the supports are allowed to cast their spells, especially in the hands of such talented players as Mi Miposhka and Mira, like, they will win the fight for them. Yeah, so. I was expecting to see three sort of backline jump bans coming out from Team Spirit. I mean, I feel like Lion Wyvern, it's a bit vulnerable. So you have to like protect your supports with bans. I've always felt when I'm drafting that I don't like picking two supports like this. Because then you're banning, spending bans and picking supports. But do you think there's like, like to your knowledge, is there any reason to pick two supports like this instead of picking a quarter? I think it's only if you're afraid that you're not going to get them and you value them as so much that you need them. But in my opinion, it's very abusable. And I think LGD will take the bet, like we'll get the most out of that. Interesting to note is ET has not been removed, right? Yeah. I think the lion was also a potential answer sure. to a mag ET, yes, yes, yes. and they're also rushing it because it's most likely going to get banned next phase. That's I'm still was. very surprised that the tide has not been banned. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Collapse is going to ask for this hero this game. They uh, must have like a, they must have an answer, LGD, right? I think if they don't ban it, they for sure know it's coming, or yeah. it could be coming. They yeah. must be ready for it. That's how I view it. Maybe they're planning on picking the Juggernaut yeah, already the or the Sparks. Or but they're not in full control either, as Team Spirit do have a ban. They do have like kind of a, a way to dictate. They ban the Ursa. But if uh, you think about it, it doesn't sound so Team Spiritish to pick the mid or the carry here. Most likely they will pick Collapse. So maybe LGD is like, we don't have to worry about a closing second phase pick. You're right. Yeah. And, and that anyway, they're going to show it to that's, us here. That's thinking far ahead, which I'm sure they are. Like yeah. this, uh, this double support opener is vulnerable, very vulnerable in that sense, is that you're now, oh, you still have to reveal, and they're able to, to get two really strong picks. Never mind, they actually go for it, and okay. that also is a statement from Team Spirit, in which they maybe thought that the Spectre was the bigger problem uh, last game versus uh, the Rubik. You know, these were the answers. And this is exactly what I think should be done. This yeah. is oh, this, precisely this is what should be done in a mag versus Spectre game and in the Mag versus Ruby game. This Magnus does not want to RP anybody. He doesn't care about getting his Blink cancelled. He doesn't care about getting Blink at all. He does not want to secure anybody. This Magnus is going to empower Luna. He's going to build aura items. They're going to plant the tombstone. Luna's going to hit the buildings. And that is going to be the fight. And heroes like Spectre actually are probably the worst out of all the carry pool to deal with that. You have to fight into this massive ball that is coming and Spectre hates that. The only good thing that they have right now is a Winter's Curse. The line is disabled, most of Iron spells are disabled. Like this playstyle versus playstyle heavily for now favors LGD heroes. Like this, these heroes on the bottom, they will not enjoy a strong ball coming to hit their tower. So to make it very simple, basically what has happened in Game 3 and Game 4 draft is, you know, Spirit got their Magnus, LGD broke it. Spirit had to find another way to abuse the Magnus hero. And LGD now are showing how do you turn they beat Magnus with Spectre, and they also showed them you can beat Spectre with Magnus if you understand what's happening. And I, I think this draft is, is what's happening in a nutshell. Do you think that Axe does anything to stop that plan? Because to me, Axe is very single target, you know, a bit lane yeah. focused almost. I don't think he helps at no. all. I think this is, this is a hero that does not jump into the ball unless uh, something good is happening already from your teammates. Like, they're running away from some Tinker, they're running away from a Phoenix Egg. They have none of that. Lion and Axe are both going to be waiting for LGD to be afraid or overwhelmed by some sort of damage ability or teamfight ability, but it's not it's not coming so far. Like I think Team Spirit need to they need to find a really good pick right now. They need to find a really really strong pick or something that allows them to then force LGD into their playstyle. I'm always scared when I have the last pick though. Like if if I have the last pick here that has to solve conditions and be good in lane and do so many things, like it's so hard to find that perfect pick, right? It is and hard. Dearly is 24 and not 23 especially then. Yeah. <laughs> and he also is going to have to deal with the one-on-one -on -one matchup that's going to come his way. And so I want to... Do you have the final? Yeah. Dearly. And the Kunkat. You, you see this ball. Perfect. Like, how do you fight into this? Honestly, it is so hard for yeah. heroes to fight into this. And they have literally zero damage. The Spectre Axe is very low damage. This uh, 
This axe is very low damage. They yeah, have the no way. only on one finger. That's yeah. all the damage they have. It's going to be very difficult. And I want to also mention the Undying versus Spectre. What he does is you plant the Tombstone, Sorry, and now there's a zombie on every Illu, so yeah. there's no Desolate damage, meaning Spectre damage drops dramatically. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, I'm very happy to be proven wrong, and there's a reason why these teams are playing the finals and whatnot, but I still see this as being a strategical misread from Spirits. Okay, that changes okay. Dota. So they're going for the lane snowball here, right? You want to get the TA timing, snowball off that. You have single target, Spectre, you can take control of the map, you get a lot of pickoffs. I can see that as a possible answer, but it's looking scary for me. They, they, need, need, to to play, they yeah. need to play the TA game right now. The yeah. TA is a very fast hero. He can go into Roche early, he can snowball and get openings on the map with Desol Blink. I don't know if he's going to go Aghanims this game so that they can actually do more on the map, but they cannot run into this ball and just click their spells. This is not going to work for Team Spirit. Yeah, this is not a Spectre versus Magnus game anymore. Like, this is a TA game. They have to win on the back of it. And if they don't, then most likely the game is going to look quite grim for them. Or they go really late. The Spectre manages to create a lot of chaos. Or the TA manages to create a lot of chaos. And Spectre will get bigger and become kind of like a team fight impact. And then maybe you're going to see Axe and Spectre and all these heroes actually come out and shine. But a lot, a lot of weight on TA's shoulders. Yeah, LGD has really done a great job with this draft, in my opinion. I think the momentum right now is, has completely shifted. But yet again, Team Spirit, incredibly talented players, great laning team, great vision, great executing at, like great execution in team fights. They can pull this off. Yeah, they keep, definitely can. Keep an eye on those traps. And we're getting into game four now, but before that, we'll have an interview with Sumi and LGD's coach, Shawei. Hello, everybody. And I am here with PSG LGD's coach, Xiaoba. It seems that you and the team have managed to put a stop to the momentum of Team Spirit. How did you manage to keep the team calm and reset for this game? Uh, uh, I told them, don't be afraid. If we lose, we tank it together. And I've also told them that if we lose, we still have next year. Don't be afraid. I love that confidence and that team, just that team synergy. The analysts think that you have managed to figure out Team Spirit's strategy. Do you think you have them figured out? Uh, 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 I think for the first two games, what we prepared doesn't really work against their style. But after the first two games, we've adjusted. And as long as we play our own game, I think we'll win the champion. They will play their own game and also download complete. Thank you very much, Xiaoba. Let's take it to Lyrical and Trent. And already right on into this one, Sumi Mira is going to get caught and going to get killed. How's that for a start, Trent? All right. Such a good coach. He just gets us there right in time. Well done <laughs> as his team will take first blood. Very, very good start. Play their own game. That's what we're hearing right now from the coach. Xiao Wei so often has been the one to be able to lead his team to success and Aegis himself, but we'll see if they can do it here again. As nothing to say why, they're all invading. Dude, LGD coming out with some confidence saying, this is our high ground, we're coming to take it. And this is what you get when you, uh, you keep coming back with this undying, right? You're very willing to brawl right now. So they are going to stick around for a moment. Ame spotting out the rest of Team Spirit moving in that area, getting that extra vision. Yeah. With the passive, and will we see another round of Bounty Rune stolen away? Collapse walks on in. Why there? Gets the click off win. So LGD, they're going to claim three. <laughs> Turns back for more. What's the brain sap? But <laughs> can't quite find it here. So yeah, another focus on the lanes for sure here from LGD. But uh, the lanes also seeming to be the win condition right now for Team Spirit. I, I have to say, you know, it's, it's difficult to disagree when there's a combined five, you know, Aegis is won by that uh, drafting panel. True that, enough. That's a bit rough. So uh, I think they might be onto something with this whole concept of like needing to snowball things pretty hard here, needing to play around their Templar Assassin. And there's always a chance going late, of course, uh, especially with like the way the Templar Assassin now functions because of her Aghanims, where you can actually get like a little bit of a split push out of this hero, which you, you didn't used to get in the past. But uh, you'd much rather be leading things uh, ahead of the game right now for Team Spirit. And if they don't get that, like they can easily do that with these heroes on the side of PSG LGD. 
totally. The the snowball can definitely occur. And I, I really liked what we sort of heard about the mentality that was going on as well, as we see nothing to say get a D ward there on the Observer Ward. Like, you think about the way that Team Spirit has played throughout this. They're playing, you know, just for fun, they say. They're playing without any fear. But for, for some of these players, that's not an option. Ame, he's been so close before to winning the Aegis and then snatched away at the last second. This is a story for him for redemption. Yeah, we often hear the, the pressure of, of the Chinese community uh, on this team just because, you know, they've obviously looked so good and they've been so close before. And particularly Ame, he, he's shielded. You know, he's taken some of that blame before in the past, particularly at TI, particularly in a game four. Yeah. You know, the pressure has been there and uh, it's been a bit much at times. But I have to say, after last game, I, I think he's probably feeling pretty comfortable here with his Luna. He's looked amazing in that Spectre game. So we'll see how they deal. As Zinku was able to get that pull through and only get the half pull, on these creeps connecting it as Maposhka wants to keep that pressure on Zinkyu. Needs to be careful here. Obviously only level one, so doesn't have that splinter blast yet on the Wyvern. But they will throw out one more dagger on his way back home. Just to send him all the way back here. And now, uh, yeah, Collapse. So we talked a lot about Collapse and his hero pool. And uh, of course, you, you've heard a lot, I'm sure, about the Mars heard a lot about uh, this Magnus. This looked pretty good. But the other hero that he has played a ton of games on professionally is the Axe. Not a hero that's been very big at this TI, though. No, but can often make those huge plays if you can get the opening. The panel did talk a lot about how maybe there's going to be some overlapping mm. things going on with Mira and the Axe, both trying to find that wait, big wait, jump. Wait. That Seb guy? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. that, that's that guy. Yeah, that's oh, the with one. The axe. Wow. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. But we'll see how it goes here in this one. As you can see already, the chase down Faith Beyond taking a little bit of a beating here on this Magnus. Zinkyu moves into position, though. And at least for the moment, you can see that Spectre taking a little bit of heat early. Not able to get all those last hits yet. Collapse also trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ame in the bottom lane on that Luna. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason that statistically Undying has almost always been one of the absolute best heroes versus the Spectre uh, whenever you're just talking about like, just raw data in terms of games played. And uh, that's because like you get some pressure in lane sometimes if you get this sort of a matchup. That's always nice, right? Spectre likes to be left alone. Uh, but more importantly, when you get into the mid game with the Tombstone drop down, you actually get all these zombies popping up. Right? And it really ruins the team fight for the Spectre, especially when you're trying to deal some damage there with the Desolate. Uh, you can see a bit of a rundown again as... Toro playing as far forward as he can, but has to be very wary of those skewer backs that we've seen time and again is why we'll get a little bit of a chase onto Mira. The Lucid Ooh. Beam and dead. I just takes him down. <laughs> Collapse just can't do anything. Just like, no. I'm sorry, you know, I'm just going for some creeps here. Does have 20 last hits I compared mean, to the nine of Ame. So, you know, I mean, that's a sacrifice that you're willing to make. He's hitting pretty hard. Already the Ring of Health done. Obviously came there with that Quelling Blade and a lot of armor. Claps having a good one on the Axe in the laning stage. This is what they need. Well, that is actually a really interesting one too, right? Actually going for this uh, this Vanguard. Because, you know, a lot of heroes, they're going for the Helm. They're, they're building into something else based right. off of the Helm, the Iron Will. But Claps able to go for this cheaper Vanguard. But for Axe, that's an item that can actually accelerate your farm quite a bit with the Ancients. Why? Get chased a little bit there, but we'll back out afterwards. And you can see at least now the very slight lead that we're seeing into the favor of LGD. Nothing really to write home about. Both the mids doing fine. We haven't really seen either uh, that many stacks on the Ancients. None done up yet as some good damage there out on the bank. Going to chase down. Lucid Beam, will it be enough? I don't think so. Why? Oh, maybe it will. All right, the rotation comes in. And they will be able to keep their, uh, their Bane alive. Yeah, he was buying out there. He wasn't sure he was going to live, yeah. so he's going to run all the way home. But there are the stacks that you were just mentioning. A double done there by Maposhka in the dire jungle. So something for this Templar Assassin to fall back to. They want to stack her up nice and early. When you're trying to play around this Templar Assassin, you can stack your Ancients. You can stack all of your neutrals across the map. And she can cleave through them very, very quickly. Just trying to get online these earlier items like the Blink or the Deso. Maybe a Falcon Blade in these, in these times right now. So uh, they need to enable her to get this game online. Yeah, and of course, then if you're LGD, you're going to look to try and go in there and invade those stacks and get some damage dealt. But already, a torrent combo comes out. Why makes that move towards the mid lane that he always does. 
and just trying to burn through his refraction instances and make Toronto Tokyo a little bit less comfortable. Yeah, not a matchup we see all too often, honestly, with the, uh, the Kunk and the Templar, but you do have that interaction, as you mentioned, where you can get multiple instances of damage from the Torrent, so burning through that, and, uh, well, Toronto Tokyo, I'm going to come take a look here and say, oh, yeah, nicely done. I think I'll stack this up one more time. Mm, and Mira also stacks all across the map. And what I really like, too, is this uh, defensive ward that they have right next to that stack they're doing, because y you often see this ward used, like, late game, when you're talking about, like, Roche and everything, you're trying to cover that, but a lot of teams are coming in contesting neutral stacks right now. It's one of the, the themes of this tournament is up top. Well, eh, that's oh. another good theme. Toro, is he going to live, though? With the cold embrace, they don't feel confident going for him. On the level six rotation from the Kunkka, very disappointing to not get the kill, and they can't even really follow up the tower pressure, but on the other side of the map... Collapse? Going to take some damage there. Creeps run off of him. And with a couple quick hits, will they have mm. another Lucent Beam for the finish? Vanguard <laughs> keeping him very tight. He actually goes away for the spin. Has to be careful on why. There's the Fairy Fire living, but the Brain Sap. Enough to finish him. I can tell you, this guy must not have got very many Crimson Witnesses. Because he is <laughs> not lucky. No. Not enough spins there for the Axe. And a good usage of the Nightmare to take those Creeps off to stop the potential counterplay. Well, they get their kill in the bottom lane, but the missed gank on the Spectre gave so much free time to Toronto Tokyo. As again, another yeah. stack. And well, if you don't go for that kill, the other option for the Kunkka is moving through that jungle, doing that rotation, checking out the stack, seeing what's there, maybe stealing a couple, of course. And uh, yeah, well, surely make uh, his way over there. And why? I'm just going to say, hmm, I think we'd like to maybe get an eye on these ones at the very least. Uh, we'll block for future stacks, but can they even come and contest this? I mean, there's already a lot of gold built into that. That that That's going to be such a big injection. And the thing about the TA is you just take it so quickly, and yeah. maybe if they pair together with Collapse, already having that Vanguard done. Yeah, it's a tough call too, right? Like, because if you want to move in there, let's say, SP is GLGD. Oh, good, we have time to think about it at the very least. Uh, you, you have the Night Vision bonus. Right. That's there, right? Of course, that's going to be expiring soon. you got two and a half minutes to work with. You're not going to have uh, any Eclipse early, though, because, you know, you're obviously stacking into Lunar Blessing. You're getting yourselves your Glaives. But you also have Undying, you have Kunkka. I would say it's very tempting for them to come and contest this and at least like try and mess with them to try and get some of the XP. Well, they're going to drop the boat already. Mira a little bit off the mark with the stun, but will eventually, well, go down? Yes. ZinQ finds the kill, but this is again buying that space for yeah. Toronto Tokyo, and this is Envision. Soul Rip too secure here, and ZinQ is like, I'm getting over there. You know, I, I want to steal some of this. Going to find a stacked up neutral camp there too. This is just all they're focused on. And ZQ, Here's Tombstone in three seconds. Why? Are they really going to go for the city? I mean, a lot of them are really low. This is pretty... I say do it. Yeah. Thank you. He goes for it. Getting Let's a go. couple already. And the fairy stringer for the team. The two supports. There's an axe and a Templar assassin. Oh, my God. They're just going to get him. <laughs> There's another the lanes. I mean, this is huge. You, you're, you're also already up oh. 3,000 net worth right now on LGD, yeah. but they see this taken, and... All right, he got a lot of them, though. Now, can you get out? That's the question. I mean, at least one of these heroes is going to die. ZinQ chased on. Surely at least one of them goes down. But maybe not. Yutoro pops out that haunt. The chase down. No, Mira's there as Mira? well. Cold Embrace. The back away. They used haunt for this. And I, I don't know if they're getting Dude, anybody. Is there anything more classic than LGD and their undogs and their phase boots, though? Oh, like, it all gets them out. And they clean out that hard camp also. LGD are all over this. They take down the Undying, but lose out on a bunch of other net worth. And they, they force so many heroes to respond. Look at the top lane. The yeah. Helm and the Dominator, Faith Beyond, he's taking the tower. This is clean stuff. LGD, they, they found their mojo. This is what they needed. That is a large lead. 4K right now at nine minutes. Like, oh, yeah, and look where it is. I mean, it's just all stacked on the cores right now for PSG LGD. Poshka scouting out. Why off to the side? Toro there he's as well. Hunting. He's hunting. He's looking for it. They move over. Faith Beyond's here as well. And with this Helm of the Dominator creep, it should be enough. And also coming in to contest this, nothing to say. Well, it's Taking just, away the jungle. It's so cheap, right? It's just a nightmare into a torrent. They're, they're threatening the whole time. We've got RP. We've got boat. You don't want to come contest this. They're going to have Fiend's grip pretty soon here as well for Y. As he goes for a real deep ward. That, that was pinged, though. All right, yeah, they, they, they have know, an idea that that's there. That, that ward is going to scout it out. Yeah, good, good thing that was there. So uh, those very deep wards on the earlier end will be instantly tp to by Mokoshka and just give them that. I don't think so. Yeah, see, this is the LGD we expected to see. Up 5,000 net worth right now at 10 minutes in. What a turnaround that they've been able to have. As this series was looking dire straits for them after the first two games, but now coming into this, game number four, 
everything's going their way. All right, well, in the past, what has turned these games around for Team Spirit? It's been collapse. You know, showing up, making the plays, but he's got some time. Wants to get that Blink Dagger done on the Axe first. In the meantime, there are a lot of heroes coming to his mid tower. Oh my god, they're bringing numbers. Everybody's here. Poshka, level 5 on that Wyvern, going to try and throw out these Splinter Blasts and slow things down as much as possible, but that Tier 1 tower is already dead. Yeah, they're just holding the Tombstone. Again, such a great job of just, like, not expending anything, right? They're just threatening. They're just holding all oh, this strength. Oh, and Collapse. They caught him again. The Nightmare's there. Do they have enough for the kill, though? Oh, yeah. They are going to chase him down. Wait for it. Fiend's Grip afterwards. Easy as pie. They take him down. This, le this is a stomping we got right here. Toro is going to need to play his heart out right now. He is so far behind on me. It's insane. He, he's almost getting doubled up on right now. Like, the Undying is almost caught up to him in terms of net worth with that Tombstone drop and then the Ancient Steel. Such an impressive performance for them and Team Spirit. They just really don't have an answer right now. It, it felt like they got lost halfway through the draft and they still haven't found their way. Well, and you think about that draft, right? They, they burned through so much of that reserve time early yeah. on. And in the end, we're left trying to find a perfect hero. And so far, the TA hasn't been able to do it for him. Part of that is just that it's such a one-dimensional plan that not only can you like prepare during the draft as what to do, but in the actual game, like they were so quick to come in and ward up these ancients. Sure, yeah. they missed out on some of the plays in the top of some of those neutrals, but uh, the contest in there, the space made for Faith Beyond to get absolutely massive. No one is even contesting Ame at all, just free form throughout the jungle. And this has to be like the biggest Axe Blink reveal and Deso reveal on a TA <laughs> of all time. Yes. They've got to get a ton here on Team Spirit. And of course, that also means that LGD need to be the ones that run into them to allow for that fight to happen. Not an easy ask, but again, you've got some big combos here, right? You've got that Winner's Curse into a big call afterwards, Lion Stun. The combo is there if they can find it. The fights are so hard though. Looking for it right at the start. The boat's going to come out. And now the slowdown. Mira in some trouble. Collapse back behind the tower. Also getting ran down by nothing to say. He needs to TP out of here. He, he bought his blink. Yeah, he's, Just, he's, no one else died. As long as they're able to get away, that should be good enough for them. So they get the kill. Fapion finds it. But also, on the other side, Y kills off Mira. 8-1 and one to start this game. Yeah, throws down a ward to secure the kill. Yeah, Mira, of course, instantly noticing that, but uh, I think Y is going to call it worth just to make the tower easy to take. But Postcard was thinking about leaving himself in behind there and maybe finding a Winner's Curse if they want to actually contest to the tower, but I think the call has been made but from the rest of Team Spirit that they're just not ready for that yet. Yeah, they need those items. Need to hit that timing. Whew. Seven kill lead, 7,000 gold lead. And Ame. and Ame still hitting creeps. I mean, he's just doing what he needs to in this one. Taking a look already at that win probability, they're heavily into oh, the no. favor oh, of don't LGD. Put that away. <laughs> oh, come on. We got a game going here. My goodness gracious. The Nightmare is down. Poshka going to trade it over onto him. They have this blink. Want to reveal, but the only people down here are supports, and that's not big enough. Ward also covering it all. But maybe now Team Spirit can at least try and pressure and get this tower and get some momentum going for themselves, because if they don't get something going soon, this game is going to go completely off the rails. I mean, you can already see them struggling here, though, right? Like, they're bringing everyone down here. They're looking for that fight. Yeah. Everything that they need it has to be perfectly layered. The call, the curse, trying to find the sight lines for the Templar Assassin. Oh, and Toro caught. Fiend's Grip is there, and no help nearby <laughs> at all. They're going to kill off that Spectre. I love seeing Q doing that, just dropping the Tombstone. It's just such an important kill for them that they're willing to throw at everything that they have right there. And immediately afterwards, they're thinking about going to Roche. I mean, why not at I this know. point? They, they could Roche. They could start pressing that Tier 2 top. But the Tier 2 top is, is a lot riskier, right? You, you're going to have yeah. this, uh, this attempted call from the Axe. I will say, they actually don't have great vision right now onto that high ground. So theoretically, if there was something there from Team Spirit, maybe they'd have a chance. But uh, perhaps they just have the really good read that uh, they are all in the bottom lane right now, waiting for them to come to that bottom tower. And it's taken so fast. So Roche going to be claimed. And again, Team Spirit needing to find an answer as LGD want to try and close this one out. Put themselves in a dominant position. And already Y is going to head up here, try and get down a deep ward. We'll see if that one bears any fruit as LGD will retreat back at their next set of items and then be ready to go. 
Very reminiscent of, uh, of game two. Now, mind you, it happened a lot later in the game, but essentially we got to the point where Team Spirit were the ones just running around with this Luna and, and yeah. looking like, you know, what are you going to do as LGD? You have to wait for this perfect moment to find your fight. Uh, Team Spirit now find themselves in that situation. And one thing that they obviously recognized when they played that Luna Strat was just stay together. Don't let the pickoffs happen. Can they find a pickoff right here? No. Look how safe. Nothing to say is playing there with the X. ZinQ might be the one that gets found. The jump forward call. It's off the mark. And instead, he just heads off to the he, side. There's the him. root. Collapse has to back out of here. I mean, there's more people coming nearby. Toronto, Tokyo gets Stewart back. He's caught alone. Can they kill him off? RP, but the winner's curse is trying to turn this. Boat afterwards finishes off that TA, but it's not enough. It's not nearly enough. And if they're not careful, they might lose more. The chase forward hex, Mira X oh, the marks X the spot too. as they'll pull the lion back and find another kill. LGD, no mercy. Well, it's looking well, well, rough. <laughs> it is looking rough for Team Spirit. Is that, uh, is that a Spirit Breaker in that draft? Yeah, I don't what know. what this is? Because something happened. They turned up on PSG LGD. They were not going to go out like that. Well, it's looking like a completely different series at this point. I mean, Team Spirit, you know, the, the fun leveling. We're just having a good time. Good times might have come to an end right now, at least in this game. And, and you know, it gets to the point where as the game continues, you just wonder, like, how much is this impacting the, uh, the looking like potential game five? Potentially. I mean, again, you, you never count this out. We, we've seen teams come back for more than this against LGD yeah, to win a try. True. But can they do it again here? Spectre, so often that late game answer. And they just need to find a good fight on Team Spirit to pull this one back. It, question is, will LGD give it to them? Underneath the ward, this could be the way it starts. They've played so ridiculously clean this game, though. They're really not have. offering up anything over to Team Spirit. Now, they do have some good vision down in that bottom jungle. If there was ever a chance to go for something, it's probably towards that part of the map right now. <laughs> but Faith Beyond not acting like it, you know? Sitting directly on a trap, and they still can't go. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so hard to, to really fight into this. Oh, Toronto, Tokyo, skewer, oh! Pulls him back in. They'll find the TA. Wants to get out of here. Blink away. Oh, just like that. Toronto, Tokyo able to get a little bit of separation, but they still have that night vision and faith beyond. Oh. With the chase down, they got him there to the side. Nobody coming to help the TA. Toronto, Tokyo falls again. 12 kills, 12K gold lead. LGD, keep up that momentum. Team Spirit are waiting for the Aghanims on the specter that, that is going to be their their go play they might and have Mira. the blade mill there too he just gets caught again uh, until then it's just throwing out heroes you know T take me try and slow down this tower push how close are we now to that aghanim scepter it's what 50 gold away for this specter again I mean, it's been a fantastic item but uh, as you heard seb and no tail say the damage is lacking oh, man. and they needed that early lead to actually provide some damage they needed the items on team spirit they don't have the items right well, and it's such a good answer here, right? With that Undyne being able to sit right up front there with the Tombstone, and then Luna can hit the tower because the way that Team Spirit win the fight is like when chaos happens and you get yep. a giant curse or something, and they're just not being presented that opportunity. Although, if there is one hero that's very good at breaking formations, it is Spectre, yes. right? The haunt comes out, there's question marks everywhere, you're not sure where the real one is, and then it's providing vision to the rest of Team Spirit, and then you find the jump. An axe, a hero that uh, with the blade mail okay. can turn some of your advantage into a disadvantage. Looking for something here. It's just a shadow step to start. Now the call. Afterwards, they have Hunt starting to bring Ame down a little bit low. Aegis, 30 seconds left. And now they're leaving him alone for the moment. Turning on to the other supports. Collapse is going to TP oh, out, but no. it's not going to happen. Collapse will go down. Toronto, and that Tokyo. fight doesn't work. Toronto, Tokyo pulled back in. Refraction gone. And now the chase down happens yet again. Mira hoping to salvage this, but it's not going to happen one by one. All of spirit go by the wayside. And that was going into a fight with 30 seconds left on the Aegis, too. Oh, so just like even if you get some of those kills, the reset potential there from LGD. But Team Spirit, you know, they, they felt the situation that they had to find some sort of a fight maybe outside their base. Oh. It's not a good one, though. And they used the winner's curse in that last fight. Yeah. That is really painful. Maybe if there was an opportunity right here, but oh. jump in! The Tumbler's Toy, are you kidding me? Faith Beyond able to make the play happen. And now focusing down the barracks at 20 minutes, 17 to 1. I mean, Collapse is smoked up here, but I don't even know if there's a play. Obviously, you have to wait till the Templar oh, Assassin's man. back. 
They're hoping for something, anything at this it, point. They just got mana for Shadow Step. There's a chance, there's a hope, but will it actually come to fruition? I am not sure. Team Spirit okay. just do not have an answer at all. They pop drums, jump them, collapse. Oh my goodness. They, they just have to give it up. There's no other answer. There's still a tier one down bottom at the very least, but I mean, at this point, LGD could turn on the tier fours maybe. I love how this team plays Undying. The five, the four. Like, not a lot of teams really bring this hero out, but uh, you, know, you get this movement speed, so you can get the ulti off the Flesh Golem, you're just getting the debuff down, having the drums that like, benefit this early sieging ability that they have, as well as the Solar Crest too. So, you know, so many teams looking for these saving heroes and empowering heroes on like the one big carry, and Undying just looking like a perfect answer when you also have the Spectre in the game. And I just think again, like what a redemption arc this has been for Ame to be able to pull this back on that Spectre in game three and now in game four on the Luna playing incredibly clean Dota. Constantly four, zero and seven. Yep. Does not want to repeat history here. Oh God, did I cast a curse them? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Surely. <laughs> Surely it's it will 21K happen. lead at 21 minutes. <laughs> I don't think you have that much power. Yeah, I don't think anybody does. We'll see though. Hold on, let me check Kyle's Twitter. Just, yeah. <laughs> Just make sure. Mira gets the hex off, but they call collapse. Mira's going to try and TP out of here. Does manage to escape, but the axe is down. Toronto, Tokyo. Oh, cancels TP? Okay. I mean, where, where, where are you going to go? I mean, I, yeah, I guess that, yeah. There's, you know, they got some towers go through. You're not going to do anything. Might as well try and catch the next wave. That's true. Fair enough. now where do you go is a bit of a question. I I'll mean, give you, you that. you be dead if you're not careful. Oh, Tokyo, got to be careful Stand there. perfect. Oh, I know this one from my pubs. Mm. Yeah. Got to keep the GPM up, you know? Mean lane. They got him. Toro forced to jump away from this one, but nothing to say. Still got him in the sights. Able to throw out that Earth Spike, but they're hunting for more. Maybe the odds coming. Oh, good blink away by Mira. And Toro able to get the TP out. But Mira, the one that's going to pay for the sins, will end up falling there to Zin Q. And now they're heading up again. Faith Beyond has had this troll for so long. I feel like he wants to end the game with it, you know, like reward it for its servitude. Well, this might just be the time. I mean, Get Ame the is up there. Out. Send them in. Roche is capable of respawning, but they're looking to just try and end this right now. No Magnus to pull him back into the fountain. There's the jump to start it. All right, this has to be the jump, right? Poshka behind. He's got Winner's Curse waiting for an opportunity, but can they well, get an opening? There's no TA for 10 seconds. So that might be oh, an issue. Oh, it's dangerous. Yeah, they don't quite have enough. And TA without a quick way to get in there. They'll have to let it go for the moment, but Maposhka, they've still got a ward here. And now they don't. <laughs> Collapse has been smoked for so long. They just can't find an opening. LGD, just this impenetrable wall that doesn't break formation. Yeah, they just keep popping them, but they can't find their fight. They might even be running low at this point. 19 to one. So now with Roche respawned, LGD. Dotting their I's and crossing their T's and looking to close this one out with the shard in tow. This is an emphatic victory at this point. You know, I mean, this, yeah. this is not the way you want to go into a game five from Team Spirit. It's one thing to just like have a loss and, and sort of be like, okay, well, you know, we couldn't close it out in three, but that, that's cool. We can, we can do it in four, whatever. You remember those two games, guys? Right. Remember they how seem much a long time ago. And they seem like a very long time ago at this point. Faith Beyond pulls back there. Yule Scepter afterwards, but nobody's close enough to turn that into a fight. Another Shadow Step used just to slow down Faith Beyond from going in for another round of this. Toronto Tokyo is just drawing on the map down there. Throwing every trap impossible to hold on that one tier two, right? Force them to go for the throne. And they're going to do it. Box right on in. Happy to oblige. Ame, he's ready. He wants to not relive the ghost to the past. He wants to close this game four out here in style. And so far, he's doing it. Turns now onto the Ancient Haunt out afterwards. Where's the fight? I'm not seeing it. Going deathless so far. They turn now onto Y. Just grip to the side. Oh, oh the my. catch on to collapse. Y's not dying. Nobody's dying. They all fall again as GG Ooh. is called. 23 to 3. A statement from LGD. D did he get a blink call? It didn't happen. Like it was just the too good. whole game. That was crazy. Uh, they just, they never came online, quite quite frankly. Like, this this lineup was not allowed to operate in any facet whatsoever for Team Spirit. And it may be even in game score. It's 2-2, two to two, but uh, it, it's not feeling like there's much of a chance right now. I mean... You gotta regroup. 
You know, no tail and Seb, they were talking about body language coming into that. How about this body language right here? That's confidence right there. Ame's doing the Arthur hand. He's ready. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to go. Little skip in the step there. Yeah, yeah. They're ready for I think a, they're feeling a lot better. A TI repeat. But hey, hey there you go. All right. They're okay, though. We'll see if they can pull it back again. But what an unbelievable experience. I, again, for yep, LGD yep. to be able to pull this back from that 2-0 start. Just incredibly impressive stuff. All right, it's okay, though. You, you just say, like, it was draft, guys. <laughs> I, I think we can all agree the draft looked rough. Thus, the game looked rough. So you go forward, you shift things up, and Team Spirit will hopefully give us more of a challenge uh, for LGD in Game 5. Optimistic, as always. We'll see if it yeah. ends up playing out. But for now, let's head back to the panel. The series is tied 2-2. Two two. We will go into a Game 5 here in these Grand Finals at the International 10. I'm joined by BSJ, Effie, and Jenkins. And we're going to break down that Game 4. Um, Jenkins, I want to start with... Uh, well, let's start with, with Team Spirit doubling their skill score there in the final second. I, I don't know if there's any breaking down these games. Like, I legit don't. This shit is scripted. It's scripted. Like, to... <laughs> How does every TI end like this? No, it At doesn't, some though. point, it's got to stop. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like the amount of people that came up to me today. It's like, okay, so Secret was supposed to win. Everybody thought Secret was going to win, right? And then we get into the grand finals, and it's like, oh, LGD is going to shellac them. And then after game one, it's like, oh, my God. Dude, LGD's lost it. They're done. And then that happens. Literally, whatever you think will happen won't happen. So what do we do? How can I break that down? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just can't believe it. Year after year, TI, it just delivers. It is just delivering, Effie. It's, it's a great series it so is, far. It, well, there's so much to say, but I just want to comment on the mental fortitude that PSG LGD just showed because a lot of us in the green room, we were sitting and watching the game, right? And after those two stomps, quite frankly, by Spirit, we were just thinking, did they do it? Did they mentally break down PSG LGD? But no, they walked off, they regrouped. Everyone thought they were so stubborn with that Magnus, but they beat them. Nobody expected that. <laughs> Everybody was like, oh my God, they let Magnus through again. They're so stubborn. What are they doing? Literally everybody was wrong. I can tell you, I was sitting in that stadium. I was sitting in that stadium. Every single person was saying, what is wrong with them? I was reading Twitter. What is wrong with them? They let the Magnus through. <laughs> but that's why they're on Twitter. But that's why they're in the stadium. And that's why they're not playing. Brian. Experts. Uh, experts. <laughs> okay. Experts. So we talk about the fact that they lost the draft in game four. But we have to think about the mind games coming through this yes. entire four-game series so far. And they got Mag, lost with it, to a Spectre. And then they're like, oh, we'll give LGD Mag this time. We'll pick Spectre. But it was the undying with the Spectre that was really causing the issues. And it's just not, an, it, they, they lost to the way that they lost, which has to be some sort of mental defeat. I, and I, I hope whatever I said made more sense than what Jenga just been talking about. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. We're pretending <laughs> this is a facade. Nobody knows what's going on right now. Probably not even LGD or Spirit. I think they have a little bit of an idea what's going on, right? So they let the Magnus through twice. They lost to it. I think they just didn't expect Spirit to be so strong. Like, they were coming off of their win against Secret, and they were feeling themselves, quite they frankly. Yeah. They were playing so well. They were just they kept up the tempo. They cast all their spells correctly. They played with confidence. But that Mag loss, that first one, broke them. And then to take it the next game and beat them with it convincingly, I'm worried about Spirit's mental state right now, actually, because this is where the difference in experience comes in between these two teams. Spirit are very young, and they probably didn't expect to make it this far. Well, LGD, they've been training for this for two years. So. Yeah. I mean, they have... Uh, so, so far, there's been uh, three T uh, two TIs before this. This is the third TI that there's a Game 5 in a Grand Finals. And PSG LGD <laughs> has already experienced this. They were already in a Game 5, Brian. With Ame, actually, as well. It's a little bit different this time because in the previous one, they were up 2-1 going into game four. They were up by 15K, I believe, in mm -hmm. game four, and OG made this crazy comeback. And instead, they've got all the momentum going in. I, I feel like they feel strategically superior. They're like, oh, those first two games, like whatever happened, you know, shake it off. We, th they had only lost two games throughout the entirety of a TI okay. prior to that series. So this... I, I think LGD is in a way better spot going into Game 5. Dude, they Definitely. looked 
broken. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I saw the cameras on them, and I was thinking, oh, God, they're done. They looked so broken. They looked sad. Their eyes were watery. Like, And then that happens. I, I think the Tinker game was like a huge turning point. I think that draft was just a lot easier to execute. It gave them it gave them the taste for blood again. And then in, in the next game, it's just like, they're just back to, to like prime LGD. You know, it's it's what they said in an interview. Like they learn from the losses and they're grateful to the enemy teams for giving them the opportunity to learn. And that's what I felt after the after the the Tinker game. Mm. Yeah. We uh, we heard from Zao 8 right after the draft, uh, and he was saying that the some of the things that he told the team in between games before game four was uh don't be afraid. If we lose together, we lose together. And otherwise, we always have next year, Effie. Yeah, I mean, that's just how you want your coach to be. But I think that right now, LGD are just in a position to take it all. And as amazing as Spirit's run has been, they've got the momentum now on LGD. And just hopefully, regardless of the outcome, both teams should be proud of themselves for what they've done today. Yeah, we've uh, we've highlighted Team Spirit a lot because obviously they were on match point uh, for uh, two games now, uh, we are going to highlight PSGLZD a little bit more because now they are also on match point and one of these two teams will take home $18 million and the World Championship and the Aegis. Uh, a lot on the line for this one game of Dota 2. So far, we only have five players in the world that have uh, a two-time TI Championship to their names. If PSGLZD were to win this game five, We'll have seven in total because Faith Beyond and Y were on the winning roster of Wings in TI6. And they will also have a 100% win rate at TI because they have only played that TI6, Brian. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, they, they're doing the OG, but instead of taking like six months off, they take four <laughs> years off and just come back and win another TI. But, you know, we talk about the money. I'm a little bit of a math nerd myself. We're okay. looking at $13 million between the two teams, between first and second. Yes. If it's like an average 40-minute game, that's about 300 k a minute that they're playing the game of Dota. If you average 10 CS a minute, that seems pretty reasonable. That means every time you hit a creep, that's $30,000 if you win this game. <laughs> That's such a carry. <laughs> that is such a carry way of breaking it down. <laughs> okay, Just let me imagine tell you that. Thirty k. Thirty k. For every death, it's three hundred thousand dollars. For every death you feed, there's the offlane perspective. It's more like a million. You're not gonna. Okay, do uh, actually, for you, you'd probably die that many times. Never. Mind. <laughs> He's right. No, He's there is a, there is a lot of pressure indeed with the money on the line, with the prestige on the line as well, and. On the, uh, on the flip side of perhaps having a two-time champ, uh, nothing to say, has not been at a single TI yet. This is his first one, and he is, uh, has a potential to become the next Royal Rotor. The last Royal Rotor we had was Thompson at TI-8. Before that, it was GH at TI-7. And before that, it was the full Wings lineup. <laughs> it is pretty crazy because all those names we hear time and time again, we talk about Thompson, GH. They're some of the best players in their role, still are. And it just it just gives me a lot of uh, a lot of giddiness for the season and the seasons to come, Effie. Mm -hmm. And just speaking of nothing to say, he rose to prominence and kind of made himself known through Tinker. He was just a pub star who spammed Tinker, much to everyone's annoyance. And the hero that kept them in the TI Grand Finals was Tinker. Turning so point. Yep. It's just everything goes back full circle. Every TI has some kind of magical story and. It's just incredible that we can see this level of Dota come out consistently from new players every year, it feels like. It's very reminiscent of Topson, like Pugna. I got a thought. Breaking it out in the last series. All right. Oh, no. I believe <laughs> that if you can turn around a best of five like this, if mm -hmm. you do this when every CS is worth 30,000 goddamn dollars, <laughs> then you should receive an honorary... PhD in psychology from like <laughs> Harvard or, or wherever. I don't know if it works what? that way, but I will tell you that in TI Grand Finals history, it's never happened that someone did a reverse sweep. <laughs> this year alone, we did see the reverse sweep uh, with EG versus IG in the Grand Finals of the Singapore Major. Of course, it all started with that question mark. They should get master's degrees. This is PhD. I mean, it is being able to recover from that level of, of pressure and, and, and stress that is on that final game. But I also think mm -hmm. that it is with a game five, Effie, it's very simple for Team Spirit to also probably reset because they have also been in this situation before. Mm -hmm. 
I think every team is able to reset in a way, but we don't actually know what goes on behind the scenes in their, I don't know, in their little powwow, I guess, mm -hmm. after the game goes on. But what we know right now is PSG, LGD, beat them when they were playing their hero and then took their hero and beat them with it. And now they've got the two game win momentum and they also have first choice, right, for the next game. So it's looking a lot harder for Spirit than it is for PSG LGD this game. It is, it is looking uh, pretty rough for Team Spirit as well, but they also know they've got a full region behind them. They are the first Eastern European team to be standing on these grand finals since 2013, it's been a long time coming. That being said, PSG LGD, of course, also having a lot of pressure because it has been quite a while since a Chinese team lifted that ages and they know what it would mean to not just their organization and their team, but to the entire country if they were to indeed lift that ages. We'll see who gets to do it though. We'll see who will take home. That ages is gonna be either Team Spirit or PSG LGD. It is one game. One game of Dota 2. And I think it's going to be very important for both these teams to strip away these grand finals, to just relax. We see a lot of players, by the way, always take off their shoes. You know, they got to recreate how they feel when they play at home. In the past, we have had Ice 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 taking off his pants because he, pre he preferred to play in his boxers. And that's allowed because you just got to make yourself comfortable. It is, uh, it is very important. Also, Interesting fun fact for you all at home. I know you see sometimes pe players play with these heat packs. They've got these little heat packs to make their fingers warm. It is not actually cold in these booths. It's not cold. Uh, the reason they use these heat packs is because adrenaline makes your blood vessels tighter because, you know, you got to pump that blood real fast. But your extremities, your fingers, you need those to play the game. It's a sport for your hands. So you got to have those heat packs to make your blood vessels why it again? Did you know that, Jenkins? No, I had absolutely, <laughs> I have very bad knowledge of anything medical, uh, which is why I was saying they should receive a PhD <laughs> in medicine. Like, that's like even medical. One. PhDs are not medical. <laughs> well, whatever. I think they should get a PhD in whatever the hell they want if they're going to reverse sweep a TI. But also, I feel like Team Spirit had all the odds stacked against them just a few games ago. And yeah. they're in the same position. So what the hell do we know? They've been in several game threes, and we've watched them improve throughout the entire season. You've had the one team that's just consistently at the top, and the other one that's been mm -hmm. rising from fourth place in season one of DPC, where they didn't even qualify for the major. It's and a it's qualifier all team, bro. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought that up, PSJ, because even if you look at their DPC performance, they have just been slowly getting better. They've just been this team lurking in the shadows. They're at the Animator, they impressed, they beat Liquid in their tiebreakers, right? Mm -hmm. They did so well in groups, better than anyone else expected. And in the DPC season two, they almost beat VP. It was such a close game. And when we come here, everyone's whispering about how Spirit have been so strong in scrims, but people kind of just let this team grow into something big without us even knowing. It's just been awesome to watch. An right? actual dark horse, not just a team where you don't want to feel bad by being like, they're going to get eliminated. They're an actual <laughs> dark horse we team. We can call them a dark dragon because they do have the dragon logo that is like black and white, so they're actually like a dark dragon, right? They've earned it at this point. They, they, they really did. Uh, also, want to remind people of the words that Collapse had said right before their tournament. He was prompted with the... Uh, question upper bracket, lower bracket, and he, without hesitation, said lower bracket. Mm -hmm. So he likes to be with the back against the wall, Brian. It, will, it makes him perform better. Uh, just give him a new hero. <laughs> you know? uh, give, give a new hero to Yatoro. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, give Collapse the mag, the tide. I don't care what's happened up until this point. Pull out your TI-8 OG. Pick exactly what your, heroes, your players want to play. I don't think strategy is going to matter nearly as much as we maybe give it credit for when this much is on the line. Agreed, pick your best heroes, and that's how they beat Secret today. They just pulled up, the draft was looking grim until they pulled up the last pick storm for Toronto, Tokyo, and they absolutely destroyed with it. So just go for comfort, play like you're at home, and see what happens. So you want Silent and Xiaowei to just go in those booths and have guys, game five of this TI-10 Grand Finals, everything's on the line, what do you want to play? <laughs> Is it that simple? Maybe. It could be that simple. We are going to find out what is going to happen in this fifth and deciding and final game of TI-10. Let's go. T-Spirit versus PSG LGD.
Grand Finals, Game 5. Hello everyone, welcome to the final draft panel of TI-10 because this is game five. One game to decide the entire tournament between these two teams. This is literally the best game Dota has to offer. It is. This yeah. is the best moment of the tournament. What, what do you guys hope to see from both teams coming in? You wanna go? I mean, first Sorry. and foremost, <laughs> the best game of Dota possible, I think. That's, that, that is what I want to see. I want to see both teams getting their comfort zone. I want to see both, both teams getting solid drafts and being able to fight full force and you know, show the world and show themselves and us, like everybody, what they have to offer. That's what I want to see. I mean, this is one of life's true magical miracle moments. This is people working their lives, years and hours they, and they so much. They didn't ban much. Tiny, sorry. They did not ban Tiny. Yeah, oh wow, oh wow. They actually decided, okay, but Mag is also in. So this is something that we know that LGD, they chose first pick. Yeah. And most likely they were trying to force this mag for nothing trade or they believed that these guys were not going to counter the mag correctly but now team spirit is changing it up one more time uh, which is really going to be awesome but yeah back to what i was going to say because this is back against the wall for both teams this is like a the most pressure these people have probably ever been under in their whole lives or for ahmed like he's he's been so close twice now i i hope to see both teams just fully let go of all everything that holds them back, become a team, become the best humans you can, become like the best teammates that you can become and play the best you can. This is your, this is your day, this is your moment. This is for you to show the world what you can do in Dota. And it's amazing to witness. And, and I think we're gonna get it because these, already this opener from both teams, it shows us a lot of confidence. So I feel like the teams, they found their momentum again, they, they found their form and they found their confidence. And that's what matters at this point. And there's a lot to say actually about what's going on. So LGD had the choice. And they ended up, so second pick has won, like game one, two, and three, they were about second pick. LGD was forced back against the wall into a first pick scenario in the game four that we just witnessed. Mm -hmm. They took the mag and they showed how they can make it work and they can also counter it, which would show us game three. Team Spirit in game four, they showed that, in my opinion, they showed LGD they did not have the best mm -hmm. understanding and they're going for it, yeah, here. <sighs> and I want to say how like in this game, LGD, they, get their best strategy. Tiny is their best strategy. As we said before, you know, they brought this Tiny to the meta. They were the team making it happen. They were the team abusing the Tiny with the Lycan. They know this better than anybody else. They have played the Tiny Lycan versus Secret the other day and against the Secret Mag and they made it work. Today, the Team Spirit, they played versus the Secret Tiny with the Mag and they won. Yeah. But, you know, is LGD better at executing it than Secret? Maybe they are. You know, you can only assume. This game will tell. I, we have, we learned firsthand about the LGD like and Tiny uh, very early on before we got to TI. And this strategy, when you see it for the first time, you're like, oh boy, this is, this reminds you of some of the other broken strats that you see come up around TI. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice, it's, it's amazing that we get this in the game five and that somebody is manning up to LGD saying, we're giving you your best strat. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna beat you. And this is the team that Theory crafted it, you know, they yep. are the inventors of Tiny and Tiny Lycan. It's scary to go up against it and I like the team's spirit confidence. They're getting the Collapse Magnus. One thing that has to be said is Rubik is getting banned. Like, this is gonna be Collapse Magnus at its prime. Or it should be, right? Because so far LGD, they have countered it with the Rubik. They understand how to break this cure action. Are they gonna get the, the tools that they need in order to break this cure? We're yet to see. I think that's one of the kind of storyline of this draft. Miposhka Bane has been incredibly good. We saw also Bane dominate the game four for, for LGD. Bane versus Tiny, extremely interesting matchup. Why is that? Because Enfeeble actually reduces attack damage for, for 60%. It's really big. Tiny plays on this base damage. Actually, a Tiny that goes on somebody while being Enfeeble does ridiculously low damage, actually. It, it does counter him. It's a, it's a hero that's very undervalued, in my opinion, against Tiny. Of course, Bane into Lycan, it can be a little bit scary, but yet again, this is all about this strategy, this tiny strategy, is all about getting this tiny to kind of a critical mass that nothing can deal with. I do think that you'll eventually get some plays, or if we're going to see it, and we're going to see it executed really well, you're also going to see the Lycan vision being used, and Lycan versus Bane, Lycan versus Mag, it's a lot about the vision. Ideally, LGD, they get to start the fight, either through the tiny Shadow Blade or Bling, or something else, you know? Tinker fits well in these kind of drafts, because you have the Lycan to enable you, and if you have a good lane, you can also had a stable game and now your scaling is unreal. Um, this is something that I think 
Team Spirit should keep in mind, they should keep in mind these Tinkers, they should keep in mind their best heroes, and also, for them, what are we going to do against this Tiny now? Are we trying to push him out of his comfort zone, play on early timings before he gets bitten and 20 minutes shard and all those things? Or are we actually going to try to pick this Nakes, Ursa, I saw Ursa ban. Are they going to pick a hero like Faces Void with the mag to try and take these fights later on against this monster? Which style do you think is a better counter to the Tiny Lightning? Because this, this combo has run rampant to ATI. I'm in the Tiny Boat. I yeah. am very you much just in the Tiny it's, Boat. It's, it's too much. No, this you, is an Angel Arena hero. Yeah. This is not a Dota hero. <laughs> you, you have to beat it before it hits its timings. Nothing beats it. Like, at least that's our read. It's like, yeah. you will not scale into this. It, it's not going to happen. If, if L, especially against LGD, they understand the timings, they're going to push it at the perfect time. They will not lose. They are gone. They're not going to waste a single second in this game. As soon as they have the upper hand, they will push it, they will end the game. You have to beat it before, and you can. This Tiny doesn't, like, he actually, me he mechanically cannot play quicker than the 20 minutes. It's just a Dota mechanic. He cannot buy the shard before I minute would, 20. I would argue there's a Shadow Blade timing that changes a little bit, because he actually can defend this tower, surprise you, get solo kills. But other than that, like, you still want to abuse him. Because with this naked Shadow Blade, or with something else like that, like one slow, one spell, you're, you're at risk of dying and getting dragged into a bad fight. They okay. actually pick the cool They're color just that. going for it. They're picking all three of the cores in a row. I'm not so sure it's a core. I mean, it might be. It might very well oh, be. You, you think it's a support Kunkka, maybe? I'm not sure. I think it's very scary to pick the Kunkka like that. Uh, they maybe have a read where... I, I, I think mean, it's a stabilizing thing for them. I think they're actually so confident that this hero is not losing mid and is going to stabilize the mid game and the early game through his boat fights. That, that would be my read on it. I mean, I see it. It, it is, indeed probably the best hero to stabilize the game for the Tiny Lycan, because the holes of Tiny Lycan is, it's the first pick Tiny, it's the first phase Lycan. Like, these heroes are gonna be, they should be punished on lanes, they should be punished in the game, you're just, you're just announcing, hey, this is a Tiny Lycan game, you know? So, of course, the Team Spirit is gonna try to abuse that. So, these heroes are gonna have to, somebody's gonna have to make space for them. You know, you wanna consider that they're not gonna have the perfect Tiny Lycan game, or the opposing team kinda messed up the draft. So Kunkka is here to help them stabilize. You know, Kunkka is a great laner. He, the bolt is good in every game in the early fights and whatnot. So this could explain why they feel like we need to get our hands on this Kunkka, especially because the hero that they might pick later is going to get counterpicked anyway. Didn't they only pick a Tauros hero in the last two games that they lost early? Now they're again going back to picking his very late. Yep. Yeah, and it makes sense with what a hero pill he's displayed on the main stage. I'm just wondering what he's going to be playing now with all these bans that are coming out for him. Like, the heroes that I think, if they ban the vo Faces Void now, I wonder what he's going to look at with his mag versus his tiny. So with these eight heroes picked, which side do you favor going to these final picks? I'm on the tiny boat. Yeah. Just the tiny boat? To tiny me, Lycan boat. If you want to break this tiny, you have to abuse the fact that he comes online late. I mean, yeah. everything is relative, but he comes online post minute 20. Yeah. Same for the Lycan. He should have a bad lane. He's buying yeah. eggs, so all the gold that he, you know, builds towards these eggs is useless. Lycan with 3k gold or just with the blade and the staff of with it, like, it does nothing. When the axe comes and the shark comes, this is when the power spike is crazy. But before that, these are two heroes that are actually really bad at fighting. They're really bad at, you know, at, 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 at stunning, at catching. They don't do much. So, and I think you mm. have to use that opening. But so far, I think the spirit heroes, I don't know if they truly do that. And if you think about it from that perspective, I feel like Kunkabo and Skyrath, you're trying to run at them, hit that strong timing, but yeah. they have the potential to burst anyone. Yeah. And you have some Bane saves, some Winterweaver saves, but it might not be enough for Skyrath. And yeah. I also think the Skyrath was a preemptive pick for Toronto to Tokyo. Like, or if he wasn't going to play Invoker, uh, which was not banned, then this, the Skyrath silence is always good against the spirits. And I think they picked this knowing what's coming, knowing what this Dota game is already kind of shaping out to be. So I think it was also a good pick to, now you see this Ember, you see this Viren, and you actually see the Skyrod value that's going to happen in these early fights. Could happen. To me, I feel like there's a hole though in LGD's draft in the sense that you pick Lycan into Mag Wyvern, and you pick Tiny into Mag Wyvern, and Mag Wyvern, they have really good plays against that. And when they played against Secrets, they, do, they did play the same lineup. They played Tiny Lycan into Mag Wyvern, and they had a Puck and a Phoenix which are heroes that excel at messing with the backline. Mm -hmm. They stop the Bane and the Wyvern and the Mag from pressing the spell how they want to. I see a hole in, in, in the sense that Kunkka and Skyras, they don't do that. This Wyvern is going to have free fights. Same for the Mag, same for the Bane. And that worries me a lot. You, you know, for LGD, I think the fights are going to be much harder. And we saw Secret today, and I think the hole in their draft, they had a Shadow Demon and the Lina with the Mag, with the Tiny and the, and the Lycan. And, and these heroes don't really complement you know, they don't counter what counters a Tiny Lycan. Yeah. Something I want to mention, actually, is that they picked Meg and they banned Rubicon to protect it. I think this Kunkka pick actually came because X has a similar function. 
Like if Magnus gets a skewer and you X and redirect him, or you X your ally, you can stop that skewer play from coming in. That's quite interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can actually X the tiny. Yep. We also see Enchantress coming in. I think this hero, you know, they have this slow lineup, but something you can do is you can play really aggressive early with Enchantress. There's double range supports and a Magnus. This hero can actually snowball this game. Yeah, it definitely can. I like these types of Dota drafts. I really like this these uh, drafts that are a bit lackluster too. Like I'm a big fan of and Skyrath, especially back in the day. But there's a big hole, which is your AoE, your team fight, your ability to fight into them. Oh, TB, the draft, okay. But, but still, they're banking everything on this Christmas tree wolf that's gonna happen at some point, and it breaks the whole game, you know? And this is also the edge, it's just here to help that happen, to make that happen. It really seems like LGD doubled down on the, we are gonna secure the strongest 20 minute timing. Yes. And Team Spirit, I, think, I actually think that LGD is on a timer. If they cannot enforce this 20 minute timing and snowball the game, this is when the Wyvern, and the TB, the Magnuses, they will scale greatly. So it's going to be down to can LGD execute their best strategy. Yeah. That's an exciting matchup for game five of the finals because LGD, like you look at them throughout the tournament, they've always been hitting their times. You look at Spirit, they've been breaking teams at what they do best. And now we have the game five where they're matching up here. I want to see Yules, I want to see a way to stop this cure. Collapse has proven you cannot play against his Magnus if you don't have ways to deal with this cure. LGD, they don't really have that. I feel like both teams got very powerful tools. Let's it's it's going to be scary. Mark. You think you're going to see the X mark? I can see it. it it's harder Let's than see. the Rubik one. Like I it's a half time, harder, but I, I think it might happen. Even if you have to go high ground, you X the tiny, you hit the tower. But then you have to create the situation where the tiny is you do have getting to hit the something done. You know? you in the mid the game first. and stuff, it, yeah. it's not the same. It, it's exciting. Both teams have great tools to take it home. Last time Miposhka played Viren, he owned the game. Yeah. It, it's going to be crazy. I mean, that's what we wish for. It's like, can. Can both teams get a solid draft? Can they get their comfort? They did. We're in for a treat. So who do you guys think the most important hero on LGD is for them to hit their timing? Like, whose early game matters the most? Obviously the Kunkka, and I would also say the supports will have a huge part to play. The Lycan, the Tiny, they still have roles to play in the early game. Every, everybody does. And if you can help negate pressure, if you can get that random support kill, if they're doing something illegal in your jungle, or kill the wave with your hero, then sure. But if Kunkka is owning, and if Skyra is having a good game, they can make so much happen together. And for the Teen Spirit side, do you think there's anyone who can sort of stop that onslaught early? They're going to look at the Ember. Ember. Yeah. Ember, everybody's looking at Ember for this match. Yeah, It has okay. to be the Ember. And now we're going into the final game of TI-10. But before we go into the game, we'll be coming to Sumi with Teen Spirit's coach, Silent. Thank you very much, AUI. Silent, this is the final game of the tournament. There is nothing more after this. Grand Finals, the score is 2-2. No need to hide strategies now. What is your team's strategy to win? Uh, luck. Our best strate strategy is just luck. Your strategy is just luck. Yes. Our, best strategy. our best strategy. Their best strategy is luck, and luck is how they are going to win. Do you have any final comments before this game starts? He does not have any comments. All right, let's throw it over to Insania and Odie Pixel. Thank you very much, Sumi. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the deciding game five here at the TI-10 Grand Finals. Team Spirit against PSG LGD. I'm Odie Pixel, joined, of course, once again by the fabulous Insania. What have we got in front of us here? What have we got in store for us this game, Aiden? Man, what a crazy game. I think the last game was very, very much in LGD's favor straight from the draft. I think this is really even, and it's, I completely agree with what Seb had to say, where I think both teams have different things going for themselves. I think do, if this game does scale up, if it goes very slowly, if the 20-minute timing from the Tiny isn't abused, then LGD's, or sorry, LGD's draft is going to just lack in power as the game scales up. I'm a little bit worried about how much the impact the Sky, Kunkka, Enchantress combo can have together around the map, and how well Team Spirit will be able to shut it down. I think runes, just like Silent said, luck, you know? And I don't think he was joking. Luck really does matter. If they get those power runes, it's going to be huge for them. I mean, we saw as well from Spirit the, the sort of the very carefree attitude. It worked out at the start of this series. I mean, asked before the first game, you know, how the preparation was. Silent said, well, we didn't get to do much at all. We're just turning up to play and have a bit of fun. That fun certainly looked uh, to be effective in Game 1 and Game 2, but Game 3 and Game 4, as we've just seen, PSG LGD, they have stepped it up. They've hit back hard, and now is the time to see if they can continue on the road to reverse sweep, or if Team Spirit can find that magic that was getting them through the first two games of the series. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is going to be a battle of the mid laners come after the laning phase. I think the laning phase is probably going to be fairly even. Both heroes will farm fairly well, but 
that six minute rune, Owen. I think whoever gets that six minute rune actually has a massive edge in this game because they're going get to get to decide what happens and the other team has to respond. Absolutely. We've seen the importance of those timings, those power runes already many times in the series, many times in the tournament itself. Both teams will fully be aware of this and we'll see a lot of focus around that first spawn. Looking at the side lanes here, getting into the action. Who's having the rough time here in the early game? I actually think most lanes are just going to be fairly farmy. The top side of the map, I think, is probably where you're going to see the most kind of action. There is a little bit of threat from the tiny edge to potentially make some sort of kill move. But I really think it's right now, you know, you want to get as much farm as you can out of the lanes before the sports have to rotate out. So I think I expect all six cores of this game to have a fairly decent start. All right. Well, we'll see if there's going to be any slip ups in the laning stage. Yeah. It's very even so far. Our mid lane. 11 for 1 against the 8 for 0. Of course, Toronto Tokyo taking quite the hit from the Tidebringers. And nothing to say. Bottom lane, Jin Kyu. It's a little low here, but into the trees he goes. A TP away just in time before Yutoro is able to hunt him down. Yep, so the Metamorphosis has been popped, but they have link control up top. And the advantage of having link control is the TB can't really run you down with his ranged attack the way he wants to. So not the ideal position for this meta to be used. If you're able to use it right outside of your own tier 1 tower, you can kind of zone out any other hero to come into the lane, but Faithfeon's doing just fine during this meta. Oscar trying his best to get Xinqiu away from his Terra Blade. Keep that area safe for your Tora. Yeah, nothing to say is doing very well mid. I'm a little bit surprised at this. He's almost a full creep wave ahead. See so the courier taking out up top. Mira continuing to trade as best they can here with Y. Yeah, doing a good job, making sure this top hard camp is blocked. Oh, well, they're gonna try to move up. I mean, Collapse has hit the level three. See if he's got enough lockdown and damage to take this kill. And yes, he does. At the same time in the mid lane, Toronto Tokyo. Very low there. Has to get out of the range of a potential tiebring he will, but there we have it. First blood up top. A yeah, good quick read from Spirit there as soon as they knew that they had the setup and the level three on Magnus. Yeah, this mid lane is going excellently for nothing to say. Toronto Tokyo here has a hard choice of do I go for the bounty rune or do I stay in the lane and try to farm? Ooh, nice light of fist. Dodges off the torrent. But yeah, overall, uh, I think very stable lanes all around. TB like and about even. Mid lane is really the only outstanding uh, lane so far to me. Sure, and we know how scary nothing to say can get when he has a start like this. The setups that he'll be able to offer to the team, they're going to be huge and a fair bit of damage to follow up each and every time that nothing to say gets a catch. Yeah, and LGD really on top of refilling the bottle, right? You see Toronto Tokyo is not quite getting the same support mid, and that's because their heroes are um, forced to stay in their lanes right now. They can't really move their pieces on the map. And already winning the lane, getting that free bottle refill, he's going to be able to steal the small camp away from Ember. This is huge. Nothing to say is off to a great start in this Game 5 of the Grand Final. And it's very hard for Toronto Tokyo to do too much about it. Of course, Kunkur early on. So HP is not going to be too scared of being burnt down by the Ember at the early levels. Yep, and up top you see like this is generally how the early game is developing in this grand final where the Tiny gets the one versus one lane against the Mag because there's no real kill threat. Neither side can really pressure each other too much and the two supports are kind of battling it out in the jungle. But here we go, collapses really far up into the lane. This could be a lot of pressure. See Mira. Back at his side though in case Arme and White yep. find the connection. I feel like the one small edge PSG LGD has had in this grand final is they're able to keep their safe lane really close to their tower constantly. They're not losing lane control on their safe lane. And it's allowing for them to have very good uh, creep equilibrium. And that then in return makes Collapse forced to play much safer. Oh, see Mira. Not quite able to close the gap on the courier. Has left Collapse, collapse rather on his own. Nice little uh, circle around the tree line. We'll keep Collapse away from the two of them. He's actually a player that very often manages to get these jukes where he kind of takes a route that people don't expect him to and gets out of these tricky situations. Wonder if he can get out now though. Why is on top of him? Yeah, he has a slow. This is a fair bit of damage. Does still have the skewer for a follow-up impetus or the combo of Arme can close in on him. Yep, Faith Beyond getting initiated on bottom. Fly is used, meta's used, but immediate TP out. Again, great presence of mind. You can tell why these players are in the Grand Finals. They're not giving anything away for free. 
It's not like neither team is attempting to make moves. It's just both teams are really on top of it as mid. Seeing the setup here with a combo. Nice dodge. Flies off to the side. It's Toronto Tokyo. In fact, and over in the triangle, they are able to catch out. Or oh, in fact, well, why well, did deny the bantering, but it will cost him his life. Coming over for that one there as Team Spirit were prepared for that move. Yeah, and Toronto Tokyo picks up the illusion rune there. So a little bit of miscoordination there. I think if you time that ancient seal a bit better, generally speaking, you know, you're going to use the X into torrent. If you get the silence after the torrent goes off, then the potential to get the boat in is there. And if, I think if they do the combo that way, they might have gotten the kill. But of course, the fear of Ember potentially dodging the torrent with a slight forced them to use it too early. Yeah, now they've sort of shown their hand mid. It's going to be hard for them to make that play again. Top lane, the Nightmare set up onto Arme. Collapse. It's got enough damage. Doesn't look like quite... As the Shockwave will miss. Still trying to chase down Arme, but the Shockwave and Skewer already expended. There's no further threat here against the tiny army is going to be fine that's good pressure though they force them off of the lane they finally have managed to get lane control up top and immediately when they get it they have the opportunity to pressure the tiny so force them off the wave force them to go into the jungle and he doesn't have any sustain right so he's going to have to spend gold on the extra region they're going for him early on here with the three of them surrounding the terror blade yatoro is trapped in the trees the moves from the supports of PSG OGD start to come up, in. Up. See the counterplay attempt it. Set up with the Nightmare, but a TP's already coming over for nothing to say. He'll be ready to fight if Team Spirit push any further, and they won't. They'll respect the potential of a backup coming in for Arme. They step away to not be caught out by the combo of the Kunkka. Yep, Battle of the Power Rune now resumes. It's about 30 seconds left, so both teams probably talking about which supports can we bring to the runes, who can be there in time to help out. One haste, one DD, it can change the flow of the game entirely. Toronto Tokyo also just sort of cutting the wave, maybe getting the momentum of the mid lane in such a state that he'll have that ability to check the rune, but yeah, PSG LGD just fully on it. DD, it's a big rune. This allows you now to have the damage to potentially burst a hero that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. And bottom lane, Faith Beyond's really trying to pressure this tower. And now that he's forced out the Arctic burn from Imposhka, he ha Imposhka has to be very safe. He can't really sit there and be as annoying anymore and just continuously nuke the creeps. So expect this bottom tower to start falling. Meanwhile, top, Am is doing a great job of just defending. He is. He's clearing out the wave, holding off the pressure. Something that Team Spirit can't quite do themselves here down bottom. Faith Bian. So here, it's an important smoke here that LGD are doing. They recognize that Am is going to sit at the tower. The Radiant team can't really defend their own bottom tower. So what are they going to do? They're going to mirror your play. They're going to go and attempt to take top lane tier 1 tower. So the smoke up here, it's a preemptive move in case Team Spirit tries to do something. But Spirit reads it perfectly. They are aware. And making sure not to get caught out by these early moves as PSG LGD do start to, to slowly ramp up in a, an early gold advantage. Now hitting the 1k lead, they'll be able to catch themselves. A lonely bane in the river, Mira. Yeah, and Yator actually gives us a position away. He used the reflection there, so now they know the Terra Blades in the triangle. And you can look bottom. Faith Beyond has absolutely no fear. There's no hero that could gank him in any shape, way, or form. So he's off to a really, really good start. And when we talked about the strap coming into it, it's all about timings, right? So you want, ideally, for him to finish up his Helm of the Overlord and the Agadim Scepter before 20 minutes. And if the game continues the way it is right now, it's highly likely to happen. Double damage. I mean, Spirit, I do want to try and put the pressure up top. Try and push Yame out of this top area of the map. See in the mid lane. Trying for the catch, but again, Toronto Tokyo fully prepared. Yep. It's well out of the way. Spirit are aware that the boat was used, and that means the top tower is very unlikely to be defended. It's hard for them to get on top of Arme. Again, playing smart with the Avalanche, putting a stop to the combo. And now time's been bought for PSG LGD to come around. Yatoro immediately out with the TP. Doesn't want to be around here anymore. Mira will get found in the trees, though. Another death here on the Bane as PSG LGD continue to fight back against Spirit's attempts to get something done whilst the pushes are coming in elsewhere from PSG LGD there. Definitely getting a little bit more done in this in this first 10 minutes. Yep, they absolutely are. And the uh, purge creep here on the Lycan. This allows you to take away the level 4 Flame Guard from the Ember, which is his major like fighting tool right now in the early game. So that gets purged, immediately has to back off. This tower is gone. Now look at this timing. Yeah, 10 minutes, a second tier 1 tower. Playing it fast, PSG, LGD. Yep, LGD have the entire map to play with right now. They, they're controlling the entire... It's basically wherever they want to go, wherever they want to kill, 
is an option for them. And Team Spirit, they just have to try to play this map split game where they're dragging the PSG LGD heroes around and trying to get Yatoro to farm safely behind everybody else. We are going to see with the space the Collapse has got. He's going to have a good timing here on the Blink Dagger. I mean, how proactive do you expect to see them be here with this Blink pickup? Is it an immediate smoke and, a, and an attempt for a kill? I think very likely they're going to try to make some counter move where like they try to set up a play where they expect LGD to do something and they know where their heroes are going to be and then they're set up ready to take that fight. I don't really expect them to make some aggressive smoke, most likely around some enemy tower or in order to defend one of their own. See, just this constant micro here. Oh my god, Faith Beyond's being so annoying. Yeah. Toronto Tokyo's trying to farm jungle with That's his flame guard, but he's just purging it off yep. every single time. And he's taking all the camps himself, Faith Beyond here with the wolves. Yeah, and it's a tough position to be in if you're Team Spirit. You've really drafted this like very late game heavy draft. You you know it's going to take a long time for you to come online. I think if you see a team like OG play December Spirit, he probably would have gone for more of a slight chain build and try to make moves, try to set up tempo, and try to break up the, the pace of the game. But Toronto Tokyo opted to go for the more farm heavy route. So their draft is going to come online much later than PSG LGDs. And that's why they're allowed to dominate the early game the way they have been. Nothing to say. He wants to set up in the mid. Arcane Rune in the bottle. Full armlet. On top of the phase. Very tanky. Kunkka this early on. And a lot of damage to dish out. Yep. And if we take a look at the vision game, which we've been talking about so much during this series, because it's just so important. You notice you have the scouting wolves from Faith Beyond. So there's extra two wards, basically, that are running around the map and providing vision for LGD. And then on top of that, the Team Spirit wards are so defensively placed, they're right outside of their own towers, protecting their triangle and protecting their tier 2 bottom tower. So it's not really giving them any information about what's going on in the game. They don't really see any heroes on these wards. Whilst LGD feel very comfortable moving around the map, so vi vision superiority definitely in favor of LGD. They understand what's going on in the game right now much better than Team Spirit does. Team Spirit's playing exclusively off of game sense. You can see the confidence from PSG LGD because of that. A vision control. Smoke ups, they swing through the, the triangle here of Team Spirit. See if Spirit gets caught out on the top. They don't, Yatora. Man, he, he to always back sniffs off. it out. Yatora is so good at sniffing it out, I feel like. Yeah, and he's made the call for Collapse to back off as well. They're both out of here. Yeah, and this is purely a game sense read. This is him looking at the minimap, understanding what LGD is doing, and responding to it perfectly. There was no information of that play coming. Wonderfully done. There's a little bit of a play attempt set up in the bottom lane. But they just don't have the damage. It's hard, uh, just with the two of them. Not a job for the supports alone. Aren't but look they? at Yatoro, he's making his way over. Maybe, maybe indeed with the Terra Blade and the Metamorphosis, they could get the damage done if they get a grip onto Arme. He is tanky though, 2.4. 2400 HP, he's got the, the Echo Saber, the Treads. See if they can do it. Nightmare set up, instantly TPs are coming in. See if they can do the damage quick enough, Yatoro. Focusing down with the Metamorphosis and the Illusions. They'll be able to take it. They kill off Arme. Mystic Flare's coming in, but Yatoro is able to sidestep it. PSG LGD, can they get a grab in return? Nothing to say. Trying to charge in. See Mira head into the trees, trying to distract them from the rest of them. But here comes the Micro from White. Nice. He's able to lock down Maposhka here with a setup from the Centaur. Drag back into the combo. He'll try his best to break the combo. Nothing to say here with the curse thrown out, Maposhka. But he will still end up going down. Still though, Spirit, they'll take that. They got in, they're able to take Arme off the map. Yatoro is able to continue to farm here with the benefit of Collapse and the Empower. Yep, you're absolutely right. But they did use both the Lycan form and the boat. And if we think about how LGD wants to play this game, it's important for them to have their cooldowns to get big kills or get big moments. Whilst Team Spirit are happy every time nothing's happening in the game, they feel like they're getting ahead. They feel like they're progressing their game. And that's exactly what's going on now, right? They know there's no Lycan form, there's no boat, there's no team fight that's going to happen in the next two minutes. And they're very happy about that. Yeah, it's we're seeing as well Toronto Tokyo able to silently play his game here. He's been getting a lot of space. See already with this time with the, the first time pick up the Yules. He's already rather hard for PSG LGD to catch. He's got the Javelin on his way towards the Maelstrom. So his game, his farm, certainly going to be picking up pretty soon here. See if PSG LGD are able to find any more action to keep this league going. Our mate in the neighborhood, ready to brawl in the jungle of Spirit. If Spirit give it to them. But so far in this game five, Spirit, they've returned to sort of that, that, that fantastic ability to read the moves and just avoid any sort of engagement that is not preferable for them to be involved in. Yeah, and I think when you're playing some sort of like Enchantress Skywrath 
type draft, you want to be getting kills right now. You want to be punishing them. And if you take a look at the graphs, it's been about a 2 to 3k lead for most of the game. They're not really progressing on LGD's side. Yes, they're ahead, but they're not getting more ahead. And with their style of draft, you want to be getting more ahead as the game progresses. So. It's looking like that 20-minute timing really is going to be everything for them. Absolutely, especially now with the, the Shadow Blade done on Arme. I mean, he is ready to be a, an incredible killer at this stage, of course. The power of the Tiny, ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I think the two supports from Team Spirit are going to be really, really important for this upcoming team fight because if Bane is able to get a grip on the Tiny for long enough for TB to take good positioning and output damage, that might just be enough for them to win the game. If this Tiny goes down, PSG LGD's draft has nothing. It's all about Arme. This time around, Mira Maposhka having collapsed by their side. Arme. He's just got himself Shinku behind him. Setting up with the Shadow Blade in preparation to clear out the wave. We'll see if Spirit hang around to try and hunt him down. Yeah, Maposhka with the read. He does have a sentry. Oof. Looks like he might have ran up with that wave if Arme had just been slightly more patient. So if we take a look at items, you see the Winter Wyvern's building the blink. He understands one good curse, you know? It's all about getting the one good spell off. So having the positioning, staying back, and then blinking at the right moment, that's going to be what he's going for. And they're giving him space, right? They're letting Meposhka sit down here to try to finish up the blink. They understand how important this is. Absolutely. It's going to be huge, these curses, against a lineup where you're running these three melee cores that want to be charging in at you. Absolutely possibilities for a huge turnaround Winter's Curse to come out in these team fights. Yep, there definitely is. And if you look at Yatoro, he's building up for that Eye of Skadi. He wants to be tanky enough to tank the damage and then potentially get a Sunder off. That's going to be this big game for him. If he's able to stand his ground with Skadi and the Tiny initiates on anything but him, he might just be able to be tanky enough to stay alive. The one person who's really not getting any farm in this game right now is Collapse. He's, he's kind of understood that, you know what? I'm just going to get my shard and I'm going to be happy with that. If I can have it by 20 minutes, that's everything I need. We've seen before from Collapse how much he can get done with limited resources. This man's Magnus, certainly something to be feared. Something that got tripped up in the game, of course, where Jinkyu had the Rubik to deal with it. Something that isn't, of course, here this time round. So a bit more free of a game for Collapse to make his moves occur. Yeah, I feel like both teams are just waiting for this 20 minutes. Uh... I mean, if the pacing keeps going like this, I mean, LGD is going to hit their timing, and then you really got to look at that team fight. The nice thing about having so much time right now is I expect Team Spirit to be really ready for that fight when it comes. But look at this. There LGD are going to try to make a move right before it. Yep. Here, here they go. Ancient Thunderhide leading the charge. Of course, we'll be spotted out here by Spirit. I'll know that there's likely going to be some action following it. Great read from Spirit again. And look up top, Yatoro's just farming. Five heroes committed down here for LGD, but Yatoro has the space that he wants. Can they get a grab underneath the tier two tower? Jinkyu, nothing to say, they're gonna try. Collapse, he's gonna go with the RP just onto Jinkyu, drag the Scarf underneath the tower. They will lose the wipe in return, but Yatoro is ready to turn up the grips there. They've caught nothing to say underneath the tower. Yatoro's bit this up for now though. Slider Fist comes out as they're looking to turn on, and nothing to say, they get him. Jump forward with the remnant, he's looking for more. Trying to try and get him with the chains onto both Y and Arme. Arme goes down. Y and Fabian the last to alive, but not for long. And Shockwave claims the life of the Enchantress. The Spirit will collapse. Oh, he'll end up dying here. To the, the Thunder Hide of Faith Beyond, but of course that will also get claimed by Yatora. Some more money for them on the defense. An aggressive dive underneath the Tier 2 tower. But as we said, the turnaround, it's absolutely there. Yatora is able to get involved, and PSG LGD, they get punished. Yeah, beautifully done by uh, Team Spirit. But keep in mind, RP was expended, Metamorphosis was expended. 20 minute timing coming up, and Roshan's available too. So, huge rune, arcane rune for Ember. This could be a game winning rune for him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think was, once we see that Lycan form come up, expect them to make some kind of move. Actually, Tiny's missing a thousand gold for his shard, so probably not going to be able to use this timing. So, great fight for Spirit all around. Like, proving that they can kill the Tiny is huge for them. I mean, the Poshka's maybe even already leading into more action. It's got the Winter's Curse at the ready. Both Toronto, Tokyo, and Collapse up here, ready to play around him as well. Yeah, Faith Beyond's about a thousand gold away from the Ags. Collapse, he's got that horn toss, he's got that setup. Quick catch and a drag back on as Jin Q gets him in reach of the rest of the team. They've got to watch out for these pickoffs. 
This is something that Collapse was tearing them apart with earlier in the series. Yep, and Collapse has recognized that, you know, the idea from LGD here is to silence him when he blinks into Horn Toss. So he can't get the screw back. Very similar to how the Rubik functioned in the last game, but this time around they're just going to try to use a silence from Skywrath. So what does he do? He goes for the sky. Great Str game understanding from Collapse. Strange the pit now as well. Even just with the one member down with no sky, no Jin Q. It's still enough that PSG LGD feel that they cannot take this fight there. Letting this go to Spirit. I, I, fe I feel like the pacing of the game right now, it really does favor Team Spirit. And they expect LGD to make some kind of move to try to break it up. I think they can't just let them farm out this five minute Aegis. Expect something to happen before that. Oh, it's such a it's such a calm before the storm kind of moment, I feel like. You see, Toronto Tokyo is just slowly farming up his items. I mean, this Ember Spirit's been a beast this event. And yes. he's only a thousand gold off of his own Aghanims. And then after that comes a shard, and then there's just flame... Frem oh. Sorry. Fire remnants everywhere. <laughs> and he hasn't been caught yet this game. One zero three. Have struggled to contain Toronto to Rokio, Tokyo in this early stage. He's also going to have that DD rune ready for the next fight. Level 18, he's... He's going to hurt. Some of these heroes on the back line, they're not going to stand much of a chance at all. Jin Q and Y, they better be pretty scared. Toronto Tokyo making the jump in on them. Yeah, the positioning of the supports, it's really, I think, the story of this game. Because both front lines are so tanky. I don't really think they're going to go down without the assistance of the supports from both sides. So Miposhka and Mira going up against Y and Zin Q. They both have very, very tough positions to be in. You're going to have Ember remnanting into your back line, chasing the Skyrath, chasing the Enchantress. And at the same time, if Tiny gets on top of you, you're just dead. Yeah. If he gets eyes on you, you're oh. gone. And here's that time. So they've got the Ags ready on Faith Beyond. Ready to make the move here. As you say, they don't want to be held back by the idea that Yatoro has got an Aegis. They want to fight regardless into it. Yeah, they understand. If we wait too long, then Yatoro is going to be too strong. And here we go. Here we go, Arme. Oh, so, they see him. Set up for success here. Looking towards Yatoro. Right? Poshka Toronto Tokyo and Collapse setting up across the cliff side as Y will be the first to get poked upon. See how Team Spirit want to tackle this. There's a DD on Looking for options, Collapse, he's in, instantly caught out by the Ancient Seal, so no skewer to follow. Y. Chains, back up. Is there anything they can do to save their Enchantress? I mean, does Y need saving at all? He, he, he's going to need to, as the Nightmare holds him back. Yeah, Wolf Form both used on Lycan as well as Tiny. So this means full reset. Now, Team Spirit are in control of the pace. They get to decide what happens in this game. Yeah, they could push Aegis, Metamorphosis, ready for, for use here. Tier twos could be on the table for Team Spirit. Looking for some kind of pickoff. They know LGD can't fight back if they get on top of their heroes right now. They've got their eyes on mid. Yatoro's done it to rack up the gold again after the Scardi, 2800. He's got that. Butterfly queued up, knows that they're not going to be wanting to pick up any sort of true strike anytime soon here on the heroes of PSG LGD. The evasion would be huge. I wonder if it's enough though. I like the idea of the Satanic more. Yeah, he's going for the okay. Satanic. I really like this because if he can survive the tiny combo, if he can get through it, you can purge off the silence from the Skywrath, you can get one hit off and then Sunder. Yeah, the dispel is beautiful. I mean, if you're a Team Spirit fan, you're very happy with the pacing of this game. You saw LGD being unable to use their first timing of the game to really do anything. So if this keeps happening like two, three more times, then you're in the late game. And boy, are Team Spirit geared up to take that late game. Ready with the setup top. Back Toronto, Tokyo, Invis Rune. Ready to go. See if he can get a, a surprise jump onto PSG LGD. Why? It's the closest right now. It's just the two supports playing up here, really. Putting themselves in the most dangerous position whilst the cores are able to farm on the safer side of the map. I think Team Spirit are going to look for some sort of smoke for this bottom triangle ward. This is a ward that they usually fight around when they have it, so... Let's see what they do. It looks like they're moving over. Gem on Miposhka. They understand the importance of the vision this game. And there's no Tombstone this time, right? They're, they don't have that kind of teamfight vision tool on Team Spirit as they did, or sorry, on LGD as they did in the previous two games. Now they're relying on the wolves. So having the gem secures you that there's no wolves on top of you. They don't see where you're moving. They don't know what's going on. So 
Great item pickup by Miposhka, understanding the importance of it. It's a tense game. I mean, you know the team spirit has got the solid jump, but PSG OGG, they've got the hard hit. If they can get it with the oh, tiny we're going to see Collapse come in. He's in with the horn toss, he's going to look to separate. Nothing to say for the rest of the team. Fiend, Fiend Scrub as well, locking down the Kunka. They get a quick grab, nothing to say, out for a minute. 10 seconds on the Aegis, and once again the wolf forms are used, but Am is deciding to retreat. They don't see the opening they want, there's no buyback on the Kunka. Yeah, it's hard to fight with one of their most farmed cores right now in the game. They need them all up, really, to tackle Team Spirit head on. Bit of timing left on the Metamorphosis, so Team Spirit, they can push on. 26 minutes in, starting to take down this Tier 2 tower. Up top, ooh, quick fingers. Jumped away from the stun of the Tiny. It's the fortification is soon to be coming to an end. You see Spirit, they're happy to go for the dice behind the towers. Toronto Tokyo is in, and he's found himself Jin Q. Great recognition there. You know, Tiny initiates on your top. What does that mean? That means there's no heroes mid to fight. Immediately dives in. Wherever the Tiny is not, Team Spirit have massive freedom to make moves. The Tiny, it's really all about this Tiny. And two last wolf forms have not gone PSG LGD's way. In fact, the game is slowly swinging into Team Spirit's favor, and they're kind of getting past that impossible timing of fighting this tiny. Oh, Collapse! He's got another grab! Jumps in Why? He's gone! Yeah, if you're PSG LGD right now, you really gotta try to find a way to catch Team Spirit off guard. But they have the gem. They're setting up their vision smartly. They're playing around where they, they can see the dire heroes. If you look at the minimap, look at where they're positioned. Bottom side of the map, two hill wards here to cover any sort of entrance that LGD try to make. So they're always aware of what's going on. Very smart positioning on the map here. Team Spirit recognized that as long as we just delay the game, we don't feed, we don't give away anything for free, we're in a good position. Yatoro will carry us. That's all right. In position now to maybe push down a threat in another tier two tower. I see the setup looking for Toronto Tokyo, but again, he senses something's up, and they don't get that catch. Yatoro now beating on the bottom tier 2 tower, doesn't get any sort of response. It means now they ex expect most of the LGD heroes to be on the top side of the map. I mean, they've got Metamorphosis up in 10 seconds. Can they start to poke the high ground, or is... Now, how, how aggressive do you want to get with these Ooh. pushes? <laughs> It's a scary decision to make. I don't envy carry players that have to make this decision at yeah, this they, position in the game, but... Are they going to make the call to commit? Metamorphosis is up for you, Tora. How hard does he want to push it into the base of PSG LGD? Doesn't look like they want to. I think the idea here is to try to force the LGD heroes back into the base yeah. so that they then can play around their own wards and then potentially move over to the top side, remove any sort of vision that LGD has, and then get map control that way. And, you know, with these illusions pushing safely, you're forced to respond... Oh! He looks for the jump, but collapse. He's not able to get the grab back on. Nothing to say. So nothing to say. Pika is up, but Mira holding him for the longer of the feast. Gets cancelled by the avalanche. The winter's curse coming to a quick end. As PSG OGD, they're charging on the base. Boat comes crashing down onto Mira. Ancient seal for now onto Yatoro. He's looking to back up and reset inside the base. Toronto Tokyo. He's diving in. Past the tier threes. He's able to take out. Nothing to say. Looking at a remnant over to the side. He's got his eyes over towards Y. Or maybe even more, actually. He's holding on to that. Not jumping back quite yet. As they've killed off two. And with two dead, they may just have the room here to push up to the high ground. Yatoro is stepping up. Still a bit longer with the Metamorphosis left. They're taking this Tier 3 tower. There's going to have to be buybacks. Jin Q back into the game. But a Tier 3 taken here. Some damage being done to the Rex as well. No Kunkka for 40 seconds. Yeah, and no wolf fight. Collapse. Oh, he finds a grab. Jumps in. Drags back on the sky. Up, mate. Jin Q. He's gone for 70. Another man down. PSGLGD Spirit, they'll keep the push going. And they you've got to be careful, you know, Collapse is looking for another one. There it is, he's in, drag back on wide. He just can't stop finding them, Collapse. Every single time, pick off after pick off. You can't stand anywhere near Spirit. No, you absolutely can't. And Yator is recognizing, you know, I don't have meta. I'm not, I don't have my strongest spell, but neither do they. And he's just pushing it here. I think they're going to keep going for this buildings. They do not seem afraid. There's so much confidence right now in how they're playing. They get the buyback. He's been X-marked, but he has 3,000 HP. Oh, so tanky. Sunder, Satanic at the ready if he ever feels threatened. 
But look at this, LGD are coming in from behind. They recognize that they can't go on the front line. They need to catch the backline heroes. They're gonna try and go for the easy kill first, or at least the, the easier, maybe. But no, it's not. TP out there, oh, but to stop it. Arme's in with the combo. They catch the Bane, they need more though, nothing to say in the team. Doesn't look like they're gonna get it. Meposhka's off into the trees. They won't be able to find him to stop that escape. Team Spirit, they take a Rex, they take a tier three in the mid lane. They only end up losing a Bane, pushing them up now to an 8K lead against PSG LGD. Yep, and once again, both the wolf forms are expended. So do you know what that means? Roshan's available. Metamorphosis is ready in 10 seconds. Team Spirit are gonna eye it up. It's gonna get even harder to deal with Yotoro now. He's got the full Silver Edge done, so the ability to sort of duck in and out of the fights. He is gonna be a right nightmare to deal with. We see Arme's farm not too far behind, but you definitely feel that at the moment, with the timings that they've hit, Spirit as a unit are so much harder to deal with than it is for them to take down PSG LGD. Yeah, absolutely. And it's reflected in the way that Arm is playing, but he's about to get caught here to the he top is. lane. There's Collapse, in with the Horn Toss, dropping the RP. The BKB was out in time, he's into the Invis, but the physical, is it gonna be enough here from this Terra Blade? Yatora is focusing down Arme, Arme is trying to run, but he can't get away from him. Arme out for 80. They're ready to chase for more Collapse. Steering in to close the distance on to Jing Chu. They've caught the sky up. Set up there as well with the cast. They're ready to close up onto Fabian as well. They're going for a third kill here. Skewer from Collapse. Back into the claws of Spirit. Team Spirit has lasted through the hardest part of the game. Now everything is theirs. They just need to play this calmly. Don't overextend. Recognize that as long as we play around our own timings, this game is firmly in our grip. I mean, there's three dead. There's no buyback, it's only nothing to say. And why left here for the defense? A Steve Spirit. They're under the tier fours. They've got a fortification. But there's still those long, long seconds before they get their two cores back in the game. PSG LGD. They're gonna have to try to do something. I don't think they have enough time to wait for Tiny to respawn. See how carefully Team Spirit play it. Goes back. There's this still 20 panic. seconds, no army. They can push. They can push his spirit. They don't need a back. 20 seconds without army. They're going to look for more grabs before they close it up. Jump four for collapse. Shin Chu goes down. Nothing to say as well. HX point, nothing to say. Has a buyback. Eight seconds until army with the ancient. They're looking to close it up. They're they can taste the, the championship. They can taste the money. There's but the no backdoor protection is no in. Creeps. The backdoor protection is in. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. PSG LGD, they'll start now to force Spirit back out the base. Meposhka will get himself out with a blink. They just need to reset Spirit. They're trying to get out. Faith Beyond's on top of Mira, though. So, they've got the curse. Holding back the Lycan. Why? Being a bit of a nuisance off to the side. Get the impetus onto Mira, but why? It's chased down by Collapse. You saw they've got him. Toronto Tokyo, long mana. James holds it back, but now with a BKB armor. He has my back, though. Straight back in with the remnant. Gets instantly caught out with the Torrent. Well, the silence as well. Jump forward. Collapse. BKB. Steal back. Into the clutches of Yatoro. Yatoro. RP. They're going to be able to lock him down with the RP. Where's the detection? Where's the detection? No detection. They need to see him. They don't get to see him. Oh my. He's going to live. He's going to turn towards Mira. He's still very low here. And then a slight change. They get him. He they finish him off. Oh, nothing oh, to oh. say. What a TP. What a TP. Oh he's out. He's alive. God. So, no buyback on Toronto Tokyo, no buyback on oh Faith Beyond, boy. no buyback on Ame. Oh my goodness. There is a Roshan. There is. Oh, I thought that was going to be it, Owen. I mean, it was so close. But the backdoor protection kicks in. PSG LGD, they're able to pull together a defense. They lose their tier fours. But the Ancient still stands. Yep, Satanic used, Sunder as well. You can feel the nerves. I can feel it. It's just so much on the line. Just one sentry ward could have won them the game there, but supports unfortunately not able to get into range. Let's see what they can do around this pit. They're still down 16k PSG LGD, but they've got all their ults up. Can they make any sort of steal? They've already managed to set up here. On to the Kunkka. They're going to go straight to work. Yatora coming in with the BKB. The curse holds back on out the side. Nothing to say. He's going to go down. Out for 110. Yatora is ready to step over to his next target. He's looking over towards Army. Collapse. Popping the BKB. And Maposhka keeping himself alive with the cold embrace. Spirit. They'll turn over towards Ame, but Ame still got the BKB to go. He's killed off another support. He's looking at Toronto Tokyo. Toronto Tokyo by some of the yours. He's got another remnant. Slide of this into the remnant of the high ground. He's away. Both Ame's teams again. Yeah, sneaking around under the cover of these silver edges. 
watching one another. Metamorphosis is out, but so is the two wolf forms. It's both teams taking it safe right now. But look at why he's stuck oh. on the cliff. Why? Dude, look at how carefully they're playing it. They're scared to walk yeah, up there and try to kill him. <laughs> Watch, like... Oh, they got him! There we go. They'll take him off the cliff! But look at Roche! Oh, oh he's killing Roche! Oh, no, he can't do it, surely. Blink out time, collapse. He's got his eyes on him. Still no nothing to say or why for 50 seconds. Time is alone! He's gone in alone. That was a risky move. He's got the back of a Jin Q. But Spirit, they're going to chase on! Slight chase! Oh, no, he's oh, gone! Man. Two minutes, no, Tiny! Ancient exposed! Spirit! They'll make the walk over towards the ancient. As they're they're not waiting for the creeps. They're ready to close it this time. Only two left. Can they stop a PSG? I don't think they can. GQ's got it over. It's over. GG. It's over. GG. They've got it. They have done it. Team Spirit. They come into the grand finals. Two games straight up. They take them away from PSG. LGD. Game three and game four. PSG. LGD. They hit back. But the game five, even though they get knocked down in three and four, Spirit, they come back with the same skill and ability that's taken them this whole road to the grand finals. And what a road it has been. They take down Fnatic, OG, VP, IG, Secret. And now in a best of five at the grand finals, the international 10, they defeat PSG LGD. Are going to be the favorites coming into the tournament. Absolutely, and they don't just defeat any PSG LGD. They beat PSG LGD playing their best draft. This was all the heroes that PSG LGD wanted. Like Seb touched on, Lycan, Tiny, they invented this. This was the most dominant combo of this tournament, and they beat it. They figured out how to beat it, and they beat the best team at playing it. I mean, it's insane as well. Four of them, their first TI. That's crazy. Gatoro, Toronto, Tokyo, Collapse Spirit the first time. They've been on the TI main stage. Mipochka, he's been it before, but only top eight. This time, leading the boys to the championship title and taking home $18 million in Xenia. It's unbelievable. I, I know before this tournament, I was streaming and people would ask me like, where do you think Team Spirit are going to place? And I honestly said, on a good day, if everything goes away, maybe top six. I never saw this coming. Not in a million years. What, what an a, unbelievable performance. What a story, what a road, what a dream here that they've achieved. The spirit now claim the ages. Ladies and gentlemen, your international tag champions team spirit. Especially for these fucking yeah, guys. Yeah. They came out from him. Hello? 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 <laughs> Hello, Miposka. Congratulations on winning the International 10, I must ask. You are the captain of a team who has with four players who have never played at a TI. How did your team come together and become so strong? It's all because of our manager, Corbin. He made this team. He invited no, invite me and already a good stack. <laughs> they are uh, about to take some pictures. <laughs> But I don't know, it's just because we, made, we did a lot of work, hard work, also 
we had a boot camp before that international, and that was the uh, hardest boot camp I ever I had. So, so I, 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 actually, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it just he, happens. It just happens. He said the manager. He said the boot camp. He said the team. It just happens. Now, you and your teammates are just, you're so young, and this is only the beginning. What is next for you? I have no idea, actually. I, I, I don't have idea. I don't ever know what to say. So I, I have no idea. <laughs> we, we, maybe we're gonna think about this later. But right now, I don't. I don't really know what we're gonna do. Maybe, maybe even someone will. Uh, call will bre broke. I forgot word. <laughs> <laughs> You are going to come back next year and defend your title, right? I wanted to say maybe someone is going to leave from Dota. I, I'm not really thinking. No, I'm not really sure that it's not going to happen, you know? Because it's such a big price. And do, do you really need to play Dota now after this? So I, I have no idea what, who gonna, who gonna, gonna what back. I, I hope you understand me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. There is so much going on right now. You just won a huge tournament, the biggest tournament. So to not know is totally fine. Look at your teammates. They are celebrating right now. Do you have anything that you want to say to your fans? <clears throat> um, as I already said, sometimes thanks for your support, every fan uh, who supported us uh, till the tournament. So, uh, uh, a lot of people wrote me a lot of messages uh, that good luck guys, good luck, we believe in you. And I don't know, thank you, thank you for everything, thank you all. All right, go ahead and celebrate with your team. Once again, everyone, I present to you Team Spirit, your champions of the International 10. And now, back to you. What a fantastic performance from Team Spirit. They pull through here in this best of five. They take game five. That was their eighth game of Dota 2 they played today, by the way, and they crushed it. Also, if you were to look at Team Spirit's team earnings before today, you would have seen that they had, uh, out of their six years that they've been around, $500,000 to their name. It, it upped a little bit. It's already updated. 18 million added to the list, Brian. I mean, this team has been, has been fantastic. They delivered some amazing Dota. This team was a qualifier team. They were yes. losing two to one yes. in a best of five to make it to TI in the first place. I had to say that really loud because I don't know how else to portray like this is an insane run. They have had so many elimination games throughout the losers bracket, throughout qualifiers, making it sixth of the previous major, I think. I don't even know at this point. It's it's amazing. It is it is amazing. Can you make sense of it all now, Jenkins? Is it has it has it clicked? No. Uh, I'm gonna try not to scream about it this time. The crowd is already going wild. <laughs> yeah. But also what a great group of guys to win this. This is so good for the Dota scene. There are so many more tier two players out there now that are now inspired to play the game and potentially win a TI. But these guys, you know, we have the, we, we heard the story. They clean up their rooms. They're the nicest guys ever. They're so nice to all the staff or whatever. Yep. The anime ran at the major. <laughs> like, it's so good for the game that these guys want. You you legitimately couldn't write a better storyline than this. That's just the charm of this team. From the very beginning, there were a group of guys who wanted to root for it. And honestly, this is a Cinderella story of which we have never seen before at TI. They started 0-4 in the groups, and then they just made it, they barely made it to upper bracket. They lose their first game to IG, 2-1, and one. and then they just stomp through the lower bracket, and here they are, they, they actually did it. And there's something so emotional about watching a, a group of young boys have their entire lives changed. Like, it, it's a feeling that you can't really put into words. But I mean, they didn't put it into words. Yeah, I don't know words either. Right? They're like on the floor, is like, 
What yeah. just happened? We saw it in the interviews. It's like, we're just playing some Dota. They didn't really let it settle in, right? When when we heard from DM yesterday, he's like, that, that hasn't settled in. The money hasn't settled in. It's just some Dota being played. Yeah. I mean, congratulations. It's it's just to be a part of that and to have seen that firsthand. It's something else. I, yeah. love, I love the raw passion of yeah. just like hugging the ages, <laughs> just just feeling that moment because I feel like in order to do what they did, you have to have just raw passion. You can't just you I don't you can't just you know practice your way to winning.